Hey y'all, I'm Brugly, and it is finally here. The official longest Backrooms Explained video on the YouTube platform. I promised back in the five hour version that I uploaded that if that video got 20,000 likes, I would do a 10 hour version with twice the levels. And, uh, <laughs> it got 50,000 likes and 1.1 million views. Thank you for that. So here is the 10 full hour version of Backrooms level explanations. This video has old levels, it has new levels, nostalgic levels, uncanny levels, and everything in between. Now if this one gets 80,000 likes, I'll do a 24 hour version this time next year. Anyways, sit back and relax, and let's explore the infinite liminal abyss that is the Backrooms. Love y'all. Backrooms level 790 is classified as a class dead zone because of its environmental hazards, mainly. But there's also the chance for an anomalous and powerful entity to be here. We just don't know. The level itself is pretty deceiving because it looks nice and safe. It's a calm looking British style village made out of nice little houses and shops. But the level's looks are deceiving because underneath this pretty exterior, the level has a goal of unaliving you through a bunch of accidents or crazy scenarios that are literally just insane. And I'll explain those in a second. This entire village is always covered in snow and ice, and it gets covered again every day by a snowstorm that pops up and causes a blizzard. The houses themselves look like British brick architecture, but inside the houses, uh, they seem to have surprisingly modern appliances and floors and furniture. They also have central heating, electricity, and water. The constant temperature of the level is 28 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative two degrees Celsius, which is really cold, if you didn't know. The ground underneath the snow is covered in very, very slick ice, and this ice can cause people to slip and fall if they aren't careful. The main way you could fall would be if you were trying to travel from building to building. And speaking of buildings, there are a few specific ones that I want to talk about. There are churches, which are pretty uncommon. There are detached houses, which is one of the most common. Then there are semi-detached houses and terraced houses, which are the two main buildings that you'll see the most of. The rarer buildings are corner stores and tea shops, and these are sprinkled throughout the level, but they are extremely rare. The tea shops are by far the rarest and if you find it, you're very lucky because they are the best place to stay inside of and wait out the blizzards and other things to try to hurt you. The tea shops also have cool things inside of them like almond water and heat and even Wi-Fi. So that's pretty cool. And as I just said, these tea shops are the chillest and best place to ride out the blizzards that hit all the time. And the only problem is that they're the rarest. A weird quirk about all the buildings on this level is that if any part of them breaks off or cracks or something like that, like that, it will automatically fix itself two days later, but the inside and the outside will look completely different. There'll be different colors, be different layouts, different designs, and even the objects inside the buildings won't be the same either. So it could get pretty confusing if you're trying to travel through the level. Now, I bet you're asking yourself, how is this level a class dead zone when it sounds like a nice, pretty winter wonderland? Well, it's because the level tries to unalive you through seemingly accidental methods. And these accidental methods increase in opportunity each hour that you stay here. The longer you're here, the higher chance of something bad happening is. And speaking of accidents, let me explain what those are. The first method of causing accidents is through snowstorms. Now these are a daily thing, and if you go inside the blizzard or inside the snow, it just instantly unalives you right then and there, like you just drop down. The next method is by roof tiles or shingles. Older looking buildings will shoot off their roof tiles and try to hit you in the head when you get near them. Apparently, the tiles can hit you so hard that they literally unalive you from blunt force trauma. That is literally insane. The next method is through black ice, which is the type of ice that's on roads and sidewalks. 
and this is the stuff that'll cause you to slip and fall and maybe even hit your head if you're not careful. Now a really strange method that this level uses is carbon monoxide poisoning and this happens if you try to turn on ovens and appliances inside of some of the houses. Not all of the houses do this but some of them do and if an oven or something is turned on it will release the monoxide really fast and you probably won't be able to make it out of the house in time. Man that's dangerous. Now the last four methods are pretty self-explanatory and those are food poisoning, electrical fires, random branches falling down and hitting you, and huge openings from the ground forming for you to fall into. But as you can see, the level does not want you here. I mean, it's literally trying to get you in every way imaginable. I mean, literally like Looney Tunes type of goofiness. Each one of these methods is used by the level with the sole goal of getting rid of you. Or it could be that the level is controlled by a really powerful being who can manipulate things like the ground or ice or something. Either way, the level is really dangerous even though it looks like a snow globe city. There are no bases here, and to enter the level, you can come from the factory on level negative 7, even though you shouldn't come here, and to exit, well, sorry, but there hasn't been one found yet since the level goes out of its way to get rid of everyone who comes here. Good luck! Level 854 is classified as a class not alive zone. I can't say the real word or YouTube shadow bans my videos. And the level has several fire hazards as well as a very carcinogenic atmosphere, which means it's toxic. And on top of all that, there is a very strange anomalous entity that lives here. But more on that later. The level itself looks like a home that's been burnt down to a crisp and is fully collapsing. The walls are blackened and the ceiling has holes and beams falling through it, and it, it just looks like a gross, disgusting, distorted, broken house. Any regular house stuff, like clothes and TVs and beds, all that stuff's gone, because it's probably ash on the floor where everything else is. The floor itself is covered in debris and wreckage, and it's smoldering and smoky and still on fire in some spots. But now, I'm going to explain the layout of the level and how you might be able to explore it and hopefully make it out alive. Again, hopefully. When you get to this level, you'll find yourself in what I think is the living room part of the level, which is on the third floor. The only thing is that this particular part of the level actually looks different to each person that comes here, and it never looks burnt or broken. It looks like a series of clean rooms that are all decorated in white. There's places like bathrooms and sinks and bedrooms and just regular house stuff, but you have to not touch anything or interact with anything because, as you might have guessed it, this part of the level isn't even real. An illusion that's been created by the anomalous entity that lives in the shadows here that I mentioned earlier, which again I will discuss fully in the entity section, but just know that that entity falsely makes the beginning of the level seem safe to lure you deeper into it. So now that you know that the first part's a trap, I'm just going to explain the rest of the level's layout. So exploring the rest of the level is extremely dangerous, and in fact it's not recommended to come here at all because of how dangerous the air and the fire and the, everything here is very dangerous. So the level actually is not dangerous because it's big or because you get lost in it. It's actually pretty small as levels go. It's approximately 200,000 square feet, which is about the size of a big warehouse building, but inside of that seemingly pretty small space is where the danger is. All of it's covered in debris and trash and smoky fires, and because of the debris that's piled up everywhere on the floor, it's hard to walk around and explore. It's also really hot too. There are in fact windows scattered throughout level 854 as well, but these windows seem to be indestructible and they're also resistant to the fire here, so you can't break or burn or hop out the window and explore outside, you're just trapped in here. Fully. There also seems to be exactly three floors to this entire house. And you guessed it, it is time to explain how each of these floors is laid out and how you might make it out alive. <laughs> Keyword, might. So on floor three, like I mentioned earlier, is where people start at. And oftentimes that is where that illusion begins, where you'll see the pretty white rooms and no burning stuff. But keep in mind, that's not real. You're being lied to by the entity that lives here and you need to get rid of that illusion as fast as you can. Now, even though it's an illusion, this floor three tends to be the safest floor because there is less smoke and pretty much no fire here and there's very little debris, but the walls are still covered in scorch marks and the floor is kind of breaking and cracking 
And you might also notice the wallpaper here is a weird yellow color, very similar to level zero. Which I thought was pretty interesting. There's two bathrooms on this floor, uh, but the toilets are full of a rotten, disgusting goo that apparently stinks really bad. There's also random paintings and pictures on the wall here, and some of the paintings actually look like pretty landscapes. But there are also some paintings of families, with all the family members scratched out of those pictures, which I also find pretty weird. So after you make it through that level, you'll be on floor two, which is the middle floor, obviously. And this is where it starts to get bad because there is smoke everywhere, literally everywhere. There's also debris on the floor and it looks freshly burnt and it stacks up to a few feet high. And just, it's a really nasty burning place because of the smoke I mentioned, there's hardly any visibility past a few feet. So there might be something lurking deeper in the smoke. Who knows? The walls here are the same as in floor three and are burning and scorched. And there's actually one huge burnt room that seems to be a living room type deal and a couple smaller ones that look like game rooms. There's also a room here at the very edge that sort of looks like an attic space where there's insulation open and there's a huge window. This zone isn't as smoky as the rest of floor two and it's actually kind of hard to get to and it might be the layer of the entity that lives here. Now, floor one is obviously the next one, and of course, it is the worst. It's by far the most dangerous one because of all the active fires and smoke, and it's so hot that you might just burn instantly if you're not careful. Now, there is a way to traverse this first floor because the fire that's here and the smoke that's here seems to come in waves. And these waves can be timed out to where you can run and try to get to the exit between the waves. Good luck at that. But there's also so much debris here that it's several feet high and you can just barely see over it, which will make traversing even harder. This floor on the level also seems to be where a kitchen area used to be. It's burnt, of course. And it also seems to be where a workout room used to be as well. Again, all of that is burnt to a crisp, just like the rest of the level. And since this floor is the worst, of course, it's the hardest to breathe here. Just from the heat, there's barely any oxygen and you need to just not come to this floor at all. You need to try to exit somewhere up top or here, here's an idea, just don't come to the level. How about that? So now finally, I'm gonna talk about the entity that lives here and possibly controls this level. The entity has been nicknamed the woman, and this entity is an anomalous entity that has the power to cause wanderers to hallucinate. And the example is those white perfect rooms at the beginning. That was a hallucination created by the woman. The woman entity is a feminine looking figure with grossly burnt and wrinkly skin. The entity does everything in her power to keep people trapped in the level by making those hallucinations and making you think that you're safe, when in reality she's just luring you deeper and deeper into the broken and burning debris to get trapped forever. Also, during her hallucinations, she can transform herself into a figure that she thinks would keep you safe. Like she could look like a family member or a friend or something like that from real life, and you would think that you're seeing that real person, even though it's not. All these things are meant to trap you here so she can inevitably eat you, which is, sounds great to be honest. I'm kidding, it sounds awful. I'm sure you're wondering, you know, how does one escape one of these hallucinations and illusions? There's actually been three different methods discovered that kind of work, and the main one is that you just eventually realize that you're being manipulated and you get out of there. The next one is that you confuse the woman entity to stop the illusion. So anything you see in your in your dream or hallucination, you just run up to them and confuse them and it'll stop. But the last one is my favorite method because it's to literally just attack the woman and to fight her off and that'll break the illusion, which would be just hilarious. Imagine running and punching this random entity and then getting out. I would do it to be honest. It's completely not known how this entity came to be or what the extent of her power is or why she traps people in this burning house. But she sounds pretty fun, right? There's no basis here, obviously, because you, you couldn't have a base here or burn, of course. And to enter this level, you have to be on level 853 and go through a door labeled 351, and then you'll get here, which actually is pretty cool because it's not random. You know, you actually have a choice to go here. You have to find that door. You don't have to worry about randomly being sent here. And to exit, you actually have to find the front door on floor one for the easiest exit, which is not really easy, so. Or you could follow that woman entity around until you're sent out because sometimes she might run to a different level to escape you, but yeah. I don't know. This level is a huge burning house. It's controlled by a weird woman that makes you have hallucinations to trap you and burn to death eventually. I mean, that sounds pretty fun to me, right? This is the most normal backrooms level. Hope you liked it. 
So the 189th level inside of the back rooms has been given a classification of class 2 and is unsafe, but kind of secure with a very low entity count at the start. When this level was discovered, actually. But what is known is that a ton of people have entered this level at least one time by complete accident. And you'll learn how later in the video. The level itself is made up of what seems to be an endless cluster of bathrooms. The bathrooms themselves, well, they look like bathrooms, obviously. I don't know what you're expecting. They look like just public bathrooms that you've seen before in like a store or like a bathroom center. Y you know what they look like. Except these have a very lonely and empty feeling to them. Most of them have stalls and sinks and towel dispensers and that sort of thing as well. Just the regular old bathroom stuff. And all of the things in these rooms work like they normally should. You know, the paper towels come out, the water runs, everything works. And normally each of the bathrooms has two different exit doors in them. And these two doors have random chances to either lead to another bathroom room or they lead to a different level and they're the exit. However, those doors change and you can't really map out the level because the doors are different and the bathrooms are different as well. It's sort of just a randomized cluster. So there's no real way to see where you're going. Sorry. Some of the bathrooms also have windows in them that allow light to come inside. And on the outside of those windows, most people have reported seeing some pretty strange things to say the least. So in real life, when you look outside of a window, You'll see just a field or a road or whatever. But here on this level, people have said they've seen staticky blue skies with really weird clouds in them. Or they've simply just seen a white void and nothing else. That's pretty weird, and it also means that this level takes place inside of something else entirely, and it's not just confined to the bathrooms. There is stuff outside that you technically could explore, uh, you just can't get through the windows. But I probably wouldn't jump out a window into an endless white void. It's just me, though. The air and the ambience inside of these different bathrooms is actually pretty clean and fresh at the start. And actually, some people have reported uh, smelling a faint smell of air freshener, which is pretty nice. There's also a very, very faint and subtle sound of water flowing uh, that's constantly happening through the pipes and the ceiling and the toilets, which makes the level kind of have a chill vibe to it, again, at the start. And you'll understand why I'm saying at the start soon. But like I said, most of the bathrooms here just look like empty and lonely public restrooms, but there's actually a very rare type of bathroom that you might find if you're lucky. They've been given the name luxury bathrooms, and you'll know when you're there. They're pretty obvious. I mean, they're gold. They all have golden appliances and finishes and sinks and marble and everything. It just looks like a rich person's bathroom. There's also a chance for whole entire showers and bathtubs and jacuzzis to be inside of these specific luxury bathrooms as well, and all of them are gold and marble and everything like that. But the reason these types of bathrooms are so sought after is because instead of regular old water coming out of the drains, it's actually almond water here in these luxury bathrooms. So you can have a pretty big source of almond water if you're lucky enough to run into one of these bathrooms, and you can just fill up a bunch of bottles and leave. Or if you're not lucky, you're stuck with the regular almond water just in the other bathrooms. Now, from what I've explained so far, you're probably thinking, Brugley, you titled this video, NEVER USE THE BATHROOMS IN THE BACK ROOMS, and it seems pretty safe so far. Are you clickbaiting, Brugley? Uh, yeah, well, that's where you're wrong. I didn't do it for the clicks, I did it because a pretty unnerving phenomenon on this level is occurring. It's known as the, quote, increasing danger theory, and it goes like this. According to the information we have right now, the level is seemingly safe-ish for the first 50 or so bathrooms that you can get to. But after that, it's almost impossible to find an exit door to a different level. If you remember, I said that each bathroom has two doors. One might be an exit, and the other one will take you to the next bathroom. Yeah, well, eventually the exit door just <laughs> doesn't exist and goes away. Explorers who have gone past the 50 room mark have said that they feel progressively less and less secure, and they feel more and more in danger, like they're being watched, like something's there. On top of these feelings, the rooms themselves even start to decay and to break down in certain ways, and they'll become more dangerous and more tumultuous to even explore. One specific explorer said that he made it through 200 bathrooms before he found an exit, which means he was literally there for a long time, a year maybe. He found that as he got stuck deeper and deeper into the maze of bathrooms, the air went from smelling nice and fresh to smelling foul and rotten, like a real bathroom. 
and the toilets, instead of being clean water, they started to fill up with a mysterious waste material. The lights also became dimmer, and the bathrooms got pretty much pitch black with no light, and mold grew from the walls, and pipes leaked and exploded, and everything like that just started to get worse and worse the deeper this guy got into it. And possibly the scariest thing the dude found was behind some of the doors. He said he heard weird entity noises happening back there, but obviously he didn't open the door because why would you open a door if you hear like a monster behind it? But there's also been reports of strange figures lurking in the shadows deeper into these bathrooms. It's unknown what they are and things like that. There's also some non-documented entities. And speaking of those creatures here, uh, you have to get past that 50-ish room mark to even see any because up until then, it's pretty safe and there's not really any places for entities. But if you do get past that 50 room mark, you most likely run into smilers and hounds and facelings and the normal entities like that. But then like I said, there's also those weird noises that have been heard so who knows what kind of disgusting monstrosities live deep in the roof and in their stalls of these bathrooms one last really weird thing that was found deep into this level was a green door with no handle. When the explorer opened this door, he was greeted by an entity called Mark, and then Mark led the entity to an exit door, which took that person to level 4. Apparently, Mark lives behind this green door in a bathroom that he's converted to like a mini house, and he seems to think this level is a good place to live. He tried to convince the other guy not to leave because this place has everything he needs. Who knows? <laughs> I, just another quirk of the backrooms, I guess. To enter this level, you can go to a restroom on level 2, and you can open a door inside, or you can sit on a toilet in level 2 and spray air freshener in the air, and you'll be sent here. Now, you actually might want to come here to get almond water from a luxury bathroom if you're lucky enough to find one, but they are very rare. And like I said, you're also risking getting stuck and chased by weird eldritch entities deep into the bathroom, so I don't know if it's worth it or not. But to exit the level, you do have to get pretty lucky, and you have to go through a door that exits the level, and not one that takes you deeper in. Most of the time, the door just takes you back to level 2, but you could also find that Mark entity to be sent to level 4. Or you could be a poor, unfortunate soul that gets sent too deep into the bathrooms until they become entity-filled, dark, and corrupted, and you'll never be seen again. <laughs> Sounds like fun to me, though. Level Fun Plus is located somewhere deep inside its parent level, Level Fun, and it's said to be much more dangerous than that main level. Physically, it looks like a large, open, indoor play place area with trampolines, inflatables, ball pits, foam pits, and weird building structures that kind of look like they're out of a carnival. You know what I'm talking about. The sublevel has been described as rather open concept and sprawling, which is actually pretty different from the typical tighter hallways of level fun. And this area also seems to possess many more enigmatic factors like non-Euclidean geometry, strange time warping effects, and, and so on. We'll get into all of them in a second. When you find yourself inside the level, you'll be subjected to acute deja vu, meaning that everything here in the level will seem familiar and you'll feel like you've been here before or that you've seen it before somehow. You know, these slides, these ball pits, these trampolines, all of them feel as if they're taken right directly out of your memories. Like someone took your brain, drug the memories of childhood out, put them here, that's what you see. Now this deja vu poses another problem that you might not think of because it actually makes wanderers feel at ease and comfortable. You'll feel like you're at home because your surroundings seem like they're safe. I mean to you, it just seems like it's your memories. The slides that are all over the level have also been known to have a few strange quirks. The main one being that they can shift, change, and warp at any given time. And they always change when each wanderer gets on them. So one person will get on them and they'll take the appearance of a slide from that person's memory. And then if another person gets on them, they'll take an appearance from a slide from that person's memory. Yes, it's all very confusing, but you get what I'm saying. But because of this, this will trick people into thinking these slides are actually safe, when in reality, obviously they're not safe. They're not. <laughs> so I just talked about the slides a little bit. I want to talk about the ball pits now, because the ball pits here give off extremely unsettling vibes and are often surrounded with darkness themselves. And sometimes these ball pits in Level Fun Plus are perfectly aligned, each ball stacked on top of each other to where it just looks like one giant ball pit cube, and it just depends on where you're at the level. 
But if you do see this, it's not a good sign because that probably means the entity here is near you. But again, it's just another weird quirk of the level. Now, on that same sentiment, it is not recommended to slide down a slide into a ball pit either, because weird things like to hide in ball pits in the back rooms, and we just have to assume that those things hide in this level as well. See my video on that in the description below. It's got a bunch of views. You might have seen it. I don't know. Anyways, there's something probably in the ball pits. Moving along to the trampolines here, these are pretty normal compared to all the other crazy stuff. They seem to be plain and just look like like normal ones and work like normal ones from real life. Nothing crazy to see in these spots. I mean, I don't think there is. So I'm sure you're aware that this level is home to a level-specific creature known as the Party Creator. Now, the creature that runs and cultivates this sub-level is not to be trifled with. Like, it's crazy. And let me explain what it's all about right now. So the party creators are another type of party goer, but they have some striking differences as well. For one, they have a bluish purplish hue to them, which is different because the other party goers are yellow. They also appear to be much bigger than the normal one, and some reports have these things being at twice the size. It just depends. They also have a grotesque red smile carved into their faces, and they have these red spots dabbled all over their skin and body. I think you can guess what these red spots are. I can't say it, or YouTube will slap me in the face, but you know what they are. Anyways, the party creators almost seem to be a godlike being to the regular party goers. They possess non-Euclidean abilities that most entities just don't have. They, they don't have access to them. An example of this is the ability to create parts of levels and change the layout of them at a whim. These things can seemingly do that. They seem to also be in control of the party goers in a way, and according to the Backroom's archive, they exist on a higher level of sentience and existence than other party goers do. So when a wanderer finds themselves trapped in level fun plus, the party creators will just play with their food. The wanderer is the food, of course. And after the wanderer, you know, thinks they're safe since the level looks all nostalgic and like your memories, you think you're just chilling, the party creators will then chase them around, seemingly for no reason other than just to get a kick out of it. You can try to hide inside the slides or ball pits or trampolines or buildings, none of it works. These things will find you, I promise. Now, I'm sure you're wondering where party creators come from, and the answer is actually pretty unique, but pretty simple. They are evolved versions of the party goer entity, and after a party goer stays inside level fun for long enough and consumes a wanderer, they will then themselves be promoted to being a party creator. So it's kind of like a hierarchy system. No one knows what happens if you can somehow manage to destroy or eliminate a party creator, but some people theorize that you can turn them back into a party goer or that they'll disappear to the void and some people even believe that you can escape the back rooms if you do that all of these theories of course are just theories because no one has made it out of the level to tell the tale <laughs> we, just, we don't know To enter level fun plus, you have to wander really deep into level fun until a party creator just gets annoyed that you haven't been consumed yet, then they'll just literally drag you to their sub-level to hunt you themselves, which is crazy. To exit, you can't. Sorry, there's no way out. But seriously, no one knows how everyone that gets dragged into the sub-level has never been seen again. So the leading theory is that you have to let yourself be consumed by a party creator and it'll somehow let you out or it might not. That sounds insane. I don't know. But yeah, to summarize, Level Fun Plus is a sub-level deep inside of Level Fun where deja vu, nostalgia, weird environments, strange ball pits, strange party creator entities come together to try to mentally break you down and then consume you. It's that's it. Okay, so first for the video is Backrooms Level Negative 980. This level is classified as a class, uh, whatever this is, mysterious box thing, and the whole level is very unknown and enigmatic. It's full of structural and spatial glitches, but the main layout of this entire level is a large labyrinth of nightmarish and nostalgic and liminal corridors that all look different. 
the area that you'll be in when you first get sent here is what looks like a huge hospital, except there aren't any beds or equipment, and the floor is slippery. The floor is slippery, and it's made out of a white tile, and it's slippery because there's almond water on it, and the walls are grayish brown, and they're made out of concrete. Now, these hospital hallways are pretty much infinite, and they're only lit up by these dim green lights. To exit this first portion of the level, you're gonna need to find a black wooden door, open it, and then go through it to be sent to the main part of level negative 980. So as I said earlier, the entire level is made up of these nightmarish and nostalgic and liminal corridors and areas. And pretty much, after you go through that black door, you'll be going through your old memories. So the first room that you'll be in after you go through that door is your first ever memory from real life. You'll just be walking directly through it. So it might be your childhood room or something like that. After this first memory area, you'll keep going through doors and exiting doors, and you'll just keep going through different nostalgic moments from your life. These moments are liminal places like playgrounds and old restaurants and old pools and schools and old stores that you went to a long time ago. All of these spaces will give you these really strong feelings of nostalgia and sadness and loneliness because they're all empty and old looking. And you'll get that typical liminal vibe from them. These corridors, of course, are very glitchy and volatile and warp constantly because it's a negative level and they're all pretty much the same way. And they'll keep going for as long as you do. As of right now, that could be forever because there's no listed exit. So I guess you can get lucky and no clip out. But for now, it sounds like you're just doomed to wander an eternal labyrinth of liminal spaces from your childhood. There's actually one guy who got sent here a long time ago named Hein and he's been trapped here for a very long time in level negative 980 and he's been communicating to the outside people through an unknown internet means and he's been documenting these different levels and stuff he's been through but it sounds very glitchy and dangerous to be trapped here and I really don't think that you would want to stay here for long especially because who wants to be trapped in their memories forever So next for the video is level negative 999, which is even deeper than the last one. But this level is safe, which is nice. The level itself has a class habitable rating, and it takes the appearance of a long road that goes through a mountain chain. It's similar to a mountain chain that you'd find in the Pacific Northwest area. The weather is misty and moderate, and the entire level has calming sounds of birds chirping and light drizzling of rain hitting the leaves. It's pretty much, it's like a woodland escape. And the road seems to actually loop back around to itself after a couple hours of walking, which means that it's not infinite, it just is a huge circle around a mountain. And surrounding the actual mountain is a huge, vast, unexplored ocean, which as of right now has never been like touched or anything, so it's probably not recommended to go there. And as a matter of fact, most of this level isn't explored because it's so deep into the back rooms that only a few people have been here so we're going off just a couple of people's accounts of coming here the only slightly scary part of the level is at night where people seem to feel like they're being watched or that they feel unsettled in some way whatever that means no one knows why these feelings happen since the level is supposed to be safe but yeah just look over your shoulder, I guess. But overall, this level is a pretty mountain landscape with a road that loops around and it's always raining and chill and the vibes are good. And because this area is so safe, a few communities have been set up. However, not much is known about them because only a small number of people have been here. The only really anomalous thing about the level is something that happens here called log cabins. Now, obviously, they're just log cabins, but they appear randomly around the road and the woods on this mountain. And when I say appear, I mean they literally just spawn in randomly at any time. They look out of place, and they kind of just appear and disappear at random, but they seem to disappear when people aren't in them for long periods of time. Inside of the cabins, you'll typically see a bedroom and a living room and a kitchen or something like that, and they all seem very familiar and liminal and like you've been there, but as I said earlier, they seem to be glitchy as well, and just very not normal.
To enter this level, you can try to go into a red building on level 11 for a chance, and to exit, you can jump off the top of the mountain for a chance to be sent to level 4251, but I don't know if I would leave this level, because it seems pretty safe and like a paradise for someone who enjoys being in the woods, and I also wouldn't leave because you gotta buckle up for what's next, which is level negative 1000. So level negative 1000 is classified as a class undetermined difficulty because it is too broken and warped and volatile to even classify properly. It's made up of a bunch of gray hallways that kind of look like a castle in a way with huge windows that are shoved into the side of the walls. The hallway itself that you spawn in is very glitchy and warping, of course. I know I've said that about a billion times this video, but it's true. It's so glitchy, in fact, that it's hard to photograph and it's hard to get any video or audio because it literally just almost isn't real. So walking to the end of the hallway you spawn in, you'll find a gate that has been locked and it needs two keys to unlock it. These keys to the gate are inside two other rooms that are in this hallway. Now these specific rooms are behind two specific doors, which I'll get into right now. They're known as the left and the right door. The left door opens to some kind of weird maze, and this maze is glitchy and non-Euclidean and liminal looking of course but your goal is to make it through this maze to the end where you'll find a room full of chairs yes i said chairs somewhere in this room is one of the keys to unlock the gate from earlier the chair room itself is unsettling and liminal and it feels just very off in a way like it shouldn't exist and your brain will kind of start to play tricks on you because it doesn't seem like you're real so you kind of have like this derealization effect to find the other key you have to make your way back through the maze and then go into the door on the right which leads to a hallway with a ton of different doors that all lead to different rooms these rooms are full of chairs each and every one of them is and they're all glitchy and unstable like the rest of the level but you're gonna need to find the room with the second key in it but to do that you're gonna have to open all the doors and search under the chairs that are everywhere and see if you can find it. If you somehow find both keys and then you make it through all the liminal doors and all the chair rooms and halls and you're finally able to get back to the main hallway to open the gate, you're gonna be disappointed because the bad news is the thing behind the gate is just the entrance to the next level, which is level negative 1001. Some people for a long time thought it was an exit or an entrance to the promised land or something, but it's not. It's just an entrance to the next level. So sorry to those of you who thought that you might escape the back rooms because you probably won't. There's also supposed to be an entity here that lurks around these glitchy hallways. It's kind of invisible to the human eye, but when you think back of memories where you think you saw it, you can kind of see it in your head. It cannot be photographed and it cannot be seen with a naked eye, just in your memories. So the entire level is just so glitchy and distorted that it's not good to stay here for long because you'll eventually just become part of the glitchiness. And only a very few people out of everybody that's been here has escaped to tell the tale. To enter it, you can find a gray pillar on level negative six, and to exit, you can open the gate with those two keys to be sent to the next level, or you can break the window in the hallway to jump into the void and just stay there forever, I guess. But I think this level might be worse than level 404 or any other glitchy level that I've gone over. What do you think? I think it's terrible and scary and horrifying. Level 906 of the back rooms is a very safe level and has a survival difficulty of, quote, you're safe here, end quote. Cool. The level is known as the Cygnus Archive amongst most of the backrooms wanderers, and it was discovered accidentally when a wanderer no clipped through a book by touching the signature of the author of the book. The level itself takes the appearance of a massive, endless library complex. The library has different architecture throughout, but some parts of it resemble Victorian era and some parts resemble Baroque style from real life. Although there can be other styles as well, like modern too. The level has a very strange property where you cannot photograph it at all, and if you try to, your camera will just crash and you won't be able to take pictures. So all the pictures in this video are just recreations or AI generated versions of what we think the library might look like. So the library's endlessly sprawling wooden shelves are full of books and folders and maps and other documents written in various languages. 
Now, most of them, they make no sense and are incomprehensible because we don't speak the languages, but they all have the signature of one single person, one author, but more on her later on. The books don't necessarily obey the laws of physics as we know them, and really none of the level does. For example, some of the books and shelves have the ability to just float in place without being held up by anything. So you can just see floating shelves flying around. And there's also ladders randomly moving to different shelves and it's just a bunch of weird stuff like that. The library sprawls out in all directions, even directly upwards above you, which gives it this strange infinity feeling. The level is lit through candles that hang down from the ceiling, and even though the ceiling can just barely be seen, since it's so high up, the candles somehow light up the entire level just fine. Now it's thought that the ceiling you're seeing actually isn't the ceiling because it goes up forever. It's just some kind of roof. We don't know. Just don't overthink it. This is the back rooms. It'll mess up your mind. While walking around the level, it is a common thing to notice books or scrolls randomly clipping in and out of shelves and in and out of the level, going to different places or even floating in the air. This is a normal behavior for the level, it's just a pretty strange place. It's thought that the books get sent to different levels in the back rooms, I'll touch on that later, but uh, we don't really know why this happens, to be honest. The library has one unique entity that seems to have full control over it, and this entity is beloved by all fans of the back rooms. The entity takes the appearance of a short, humanoid woman with pale skin, long blonde hair, and light blue eyes. She normally wears some kind of ornate, fancy dress, and of course, she calls herself Blanche. Now, I won't be fully explaining Blanche's history or description or powers, because I'm gonna give an entire video to her. She's actually crazy. But just know that she is very welcoming of wanderers who visit the level, and will often invite them for a cup of tea in her office. Blanche is extremely powerful too, and seemingly holds all of the knowledge written in these books and scrolls in her mind. So she has all this knowledge and all this information about everything, and she still chooses to be kind. I, I, I gotta respect it, I mean, that's pretty impressive, I can't lie. Now if a visitor is hostile in any way, whether it's to Blanche or just mean in general, she will seemingly teleport them to the level that they came from without even moving. She will just look at them, call them rude, and then just Poof, they're gone, which again, I kind of respect. Now, besides Blanche, there's only a couple more entities, but I'm only gonna get into one this video, and those are the Light Guides, or Entity 35. And these are very small points of light that look like an orb floating around, and they kind of float around the level's bookshelves in random patterns and through the hallways and rooms and everything. They're kind of just shooting around randomly. It's unknown why they do this or how they do it or if they even have a purpose, but some people theorize that they help Blanche out in some way or she somehow controls them and uses them in her bidding. Now, besides the libraries and bookshelves of the level, there are a few other notable places that you can explore and get lost in. And I'm gonna explain them right now. So Blanche's office, of course, is one, and this is actually where you'll spawn in the level at. It's a small, calm room in what seems to be the very center of the level. It has a desk and some tables and chairs and a few shelves with Blanche's favorite writings on them. On the tables are unfinished books that she seems to be working on, as well as some other artifacts, specifically things like a portrait of Blanche herself, an unfinished book by her as well, books on human philosophy, and just a ton of other scrolls and books on gardening and botany. And like I said, you will spawn here when you noclip, and then you will walk out of the office and see the rest of the level. The tea room is another place that you can visit on the level, and it's a small kitchen area with a dining area inside, and it's near Blanche's office. It has a working stove, cups of tea, and ingredients as well, and Blanche tends to take wanderers here to have tea and food with them if she somehow enjoys their company. The last area that's been found so far is a very unique place referred to as the guest rooms. Now these are huge winding bedrooms and hallways that seemingly are controlled by Blanche herself. I mean, she controls the entire level. These rooms are safe and you can relax in them and 
take a break from your horrifying journey through the back rooms and just stay here for a little bit if Blanche lets you. She can also change things about the rooms based on who's inside of them, which is a pretty interesting note. Now, there's actually one more area, but it really hasn't been confirmed yet, and it's not really an area, but I'm going to tell you all about it anyway. It's rumored that a prolonged exposure to this level, so staying inside this place too long, will cause a phenomenon called witnessing the beyond to occur. Now, it's said that this phenomenon can cause significant overflow of information and damage the nervous system. It can completely get rid of your sense of identity and your cognitive ability as well. And it's almost like you've absorbed too much information that your tiny little human brain can handle. So it just is like, poof, you no longer exist. Now, there's no proof of this happening per se, but people have claimed to seen it happen. You know, wanderers just walk and then they just poof and seemingly just evaporate. Um, but who knows? That kind of adds a scary twist to the level. Again, we don't know if it's real. It could be a rumor. Now, to enter this level, you have to find a book with the author name Blanche on another level in the back rooms and rub your index finger across her signature. And this is how the first person who got sent here found it. They did it accidentally, of course, because who would think to just rub their finger across the author's name? But it is the only way to come here. To exit, you have to find Blanche herself and ask if you can leave, and then she'll guide you to a level that you choose. And that's how powerful she is. I mean, you can literally choose whatever level in the back rooms, and she'll send you there, as long as you're nice. If you're hostile, she'll send you back where you came from, even if it's a bad level, so just beware. Books from this level have been seen all over the back rooms, in the deep levels, in the negative levels, in the enigmatic levels, and no one really knows exactly how this happens or what the purpose is. If Blanche is just sending them here for people to read, or if they somehow control and intertwine all of the levels, we don't know. Leave a comment telling me what your theory is about it. I'm really interested to hear what you gotta say, because I have no idea. Anyways, that was level 906. I hope you enjoyed. So Backroom's level, The Web, is classified as a class 5 difficulty and is extremely unsafe, very unsecure, and has a moderate entity count. The level itself has been categorized under the enigmatic level list because no one really knows where it's at or why it behaves the way it does. We do know that it takes place somewhere beyond level 8 because that's where you might be able to get to this level from. Anyways, the level itself takes the form of strange looking corridors and hallways that dead end or drop off at completely random times. The hallways are also interlinked by staircases that interconnect and fall off at random times as well. And all of these areas are very claustrophobic. The halls in this level behave very strangely because you could just be walking down them and then the hallway will end and there'll be like a 500 foot drop right in front of you. Makes no sense. And as I said, the hallways are very small and tight and claustrophobic. And most of the time you're gonna have to either duck or crawl when you walk around to explore. There are a very few lights and windows scattered in this level and they're extremely rare, which of course leaves most of the hallways and rooms in complete darkness. The level itself has a disgusting smell to it. It smells of rot and mildew and rust and decay and it's everywhere. You cannot escape the smell. When you first get sent to the level, you'll start your journey in a very small room that's around six feet tall and just a few feet wide. The room itself is made out of some kind of hard concrete, and you'll notice instantly that it's got some weird kind of substance on it. The substance in question is pitch black and it's thick and viscous. The leading theory on this is that it's liquid silence. In fact, most of the hallways here are coated with this liquid, and the reason we think that it's liquid silence is because there's literally no noise that echoes through the level, which makes it even scarier when you explore deeper into it, especially since all you can feel is your own heartbeat. Anyways, after leaving this first room, you'll start your descent down into the winding hallways, staircases, and rooms below. After a couple miles deep on your journey into the level, you'll start to notice cobwebs beginning to form in the corners of the ceilings and floors. And you might even see some mushroom type fungus as well. The ceiling itself seems to be empty rafters. Like there's no actual ceiling, it's just the wood beams that hold it up. Anyways, this ceiling area is where most of these initial cobwebs can be seen. 
Inside of the webs, you might be able to see a crawler entity or two, which is just a type of anomalous fungus spider-like creature. More on them in the entity portion of the video. But at this point, the level's halls and pathways will start to become even smaller and more claustrophobic and damp. Everything will start to feel wet and cold and disgusting, and the mushrooms and webs and liquid silence that coats the walls and the ceiling really just add to that disgusting ambience of the level. Eventually, the hallways will open up into tons of different offshoots and staircases that you can go down, and all of them are more terrifying as you go. Now, it's about this time in the level when you see all those hallways shooting off that everything becomes smaller, like to the point where you're going to have to crawl around. And it's at this point when everything becomes so clogged with spider webs that you pretty much can't avoid them. The webs themselves are not really anomalous, they look like ones from real life, they're just much bigger and thicker, and they too have liquid silence on them. The webs can be walked through, although that's disgusting, and it's literally the worst decision that you can make while you're in this level. So avoid the webs at all cost. And I'll talk about the reason for that now. So if you barely just touch a web or graze it, nothing bad should happen. But if you start walking through a bunch of webs and ripping them down or off of you, you will cause the vibrations that you're making to go from web to web up into the ceiling and down into the floor below you, which is also full of webs, and this will alert the entities that cause Call this place home. Now, as I said, the main entity that you'll see here is just Entity 17, or Crawlers, which are the physical animated form of this weird fungus in the back rooms. There are different stages of being infected by Crawlers, and the ones mainly seen here are smaller stage 4 infections. And these entities are mainly congregated up in the ceiling or in the floor of the level, and they're the least of your worries. The rarer and more elusive entities are the silent spiders. These are the entities that are responsible for the big webs once you get deeper into the level. They take the appearance of oversized real spiders, and they can range from 10 inches to a couple of feet in size. They are completely silent when they walk, and on top of that, they seem to be coated from head to toe in that black liquid silence that's all over the level. This means you can't hear them coming. And normally, they won't outright attack you, and are actually pretty easy to scare off if you're ready to scare them off. The real danger is when you get wrapped up in their webs because you're crawling on your hands and knees through these really tight hallways and you can't move around and the webs eventually just wrap you up. And this mainly happens when you go too deep into the level. Now once you're in those webs wriggling around, they will send the signals to the spiders, then they'll rush in, wrap you up, and then they'll pull you to an unknown place. When you're wrapped up, they will put you in this weird looking gross black cocoon thing, and they will hang you from the ceiling. And since the webs are coated in this black liquid, no one will be able to hear your screams for help. After a person is wrapped up, it's unknown where the spiders actually take them. Some people think there's a secret layer underneath the level, it's really just unknown. But there is a theory that those small cobwebs at the beginning of the level somehow can alert the spiders that are deeper into the level that you're here. So if you see cobwebs when you start walking through the level, uh, don't touch them because they might alert these giant spiders. So now for the question that I'm sure all of you have been asking this entire time. How do I escape this horrible level? Well, there's actually a pretty decently consistent one. It's located at that hallway junction, where those hallways meet, and if you take a offshoot hallway to the left, and then no clip into the floor there, you should be sent to level 10, which is a pretty safe level. And this exit has been pretty effective so far, and that's pretty good news. Now, this level is entered by falling down into the cavern inside of the caves on level 8, which mostly happens accidentally, since no one wants to jump down into a cavern. But as far as we know, that is the only entrance, we hope. Backrooms level 318 from the fandom is classified as a class question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark difficulty and is very mysterious and very obscure. That is the only backrooms level with that classification, by the way, so you know you're in for a doozy. The classification graphic says that you're safe now and everything is okay and it's just you. So obviously, some kind of thing or creature or entity is trying to create this level and run it. The level physically takes the appearance of a derealized looking sprawl of houses. The houses are colorful, but lifeless, and they seem to resemble those houses from I Spy books and those old weird claymation style movies, and some of them even have like a Mr. Rogers vibe to them. But overall, the level seems very fake, almost animated in a way. 
a soft song plays the entire time you're here, and it's almost like a carnival sound. And the danger of the level tends to get worse and worse and worse the deeper you get into it. When you get sent here originally, you'll get this overwhelming calming sensation that just makes you feel at home, almost like you've been here or that you remember you being here. And this calming sensation will just get more and more pronounced the longer you're here to where eventually you walk so deep and you're so comfortable that you just fade into the level. More on that later though. The actual houses that are here can be fully explored on the inside and the outside. And inside of them, you'll find some pretty unnerving stuff. Mainly, each house is empty, like completely barren of any resources, any furniture, any dust. It, it just seems like no one's ever lived here. It's empty 100%. There is no dust, no trash, no sign of human existence. And most of them are completely abandoned like this. Except for some houses have staircases and fireplaces and that kind of thing. But in general, these houses are safe to stay in. But staying on this level as a whole is not safe. And you'll see why in a second. Just make sure you don't get stuck here for too long and you'll be all right. The paths that connect the houses and the roads in front of the houses are all made out of a weird concrete gravel type mixture. And all the houses and roads are placed on an expanse of grassy hills. The grass itself is fake like plastic and it seems like it's literally just ripped from an I Spy book. It's very similar to level 94, but with a much different layout because the houses here are more neighborhood like and, and not really dotted randomly like level 94. The level document is written from the perspective of some kind of entity or creature or something. Quote, it's time to wake up. This isn't the reality you're familiar with. That reality is fake. It's time to embrace the real world. End quote. That's a sentence that's right in the middle of this article. So as you can tell, this level is some kind of trap that you as a wanderer perceive to be real and not dangerous, but it is. While you're journeying through this level, you'll believe that the surroundings here are real life. You'll think it's 100% reality. It'll seem more and more so the deeper you walk. And just like the level name says, you will need to wake up in order to realize that it is a trap. The third paragraph of this level entry says, quote, Now that you're here, I suppose I should show you what's new. Everything is simply beautiful. You can fly, teleport, do anything you ever wanted to. Don't worry, there's no fake ending to be found this time." End quote. Yeah, it's totally not creepy or unnerving or anything like that. Not at all. The level is also thought to be infinite since the edges of it have not been found yet, but the deeper you get inside of it, the more fake it'll actually look, but you'll be under the level spell and trance, so you won't be able to tell it. At the start of the level where you begin, the houses look like they're from real life, but eventually they'll get to where they look completely fake, like a small display someone made for a project at school, but you will still think they're real. As I said earlier, the level plays a soft, cartoony sound through the whole thing, which this might be the source of the trance, we're not really sure. We're also not sure where the sound comes from, if it's speakers or if it's just the atmosphere. So here we have a whole level that looks like an uncanny, I spy, Dr. Seuss background with strange effects that make you think you're safe at home. But who or what is literally controlling it? Who is writing this? Who is making the level go around? What is it? Well, in the entity section in this article, we might get some insight on that. The page says, quote, You want to know more about me? Well, I suppose you deserve to know. Hello, Gary. I'm what they call the Awakened. I will. <laughs> I made this perfect reality. I don't really have an awesome looking true form. I'm just this human, this guy in a brown jacket. And I'm always smiling. You'll never be fully dressed without one, you know. That's the only feature that really stands out about my body, though. I don't have eyes, just a smile. The rest is just a shadow, although I can see." End quote. So from that entity's disturbing self-description, we can pretty much deduce that it takes the appearance of some kind of vague humanoid shape with a jacket and pants. And the most noticeable feature of this entity is its massive smile carved into its face. Because besides that, it's not got any eyes or shape, and then it finishes itself by saying the rest of its body is shadow. So we can assume the creature is a physical form that takes the appearance of a shadow with a smile that kind of looks human, and that's all we know. It would probably look something like what a smiler with a body would look like. It's terrifying to think that that creature controls and traps people here. The end of the page has a hidden link that takes you to one more sentence. Quote, it doesn't matter anymore. 
There is no end to this nightmare. There is no home. There is no true ending. That's how it's always going to be if things keep going at this rate. And I know for a fact that things will keep going on like this. Go. Just go. Leave. You don't deserve a good ending if you can't make one yourself. I guess it's safe to say that you've overstayed your welcome. Goodbye, Gary. Never come back. End quote. So yeah, it sounds like this entity is uh, kind of sad, to be honest. Maybe he doesn't want Gary to leave. Maybe bro just needs to take a chill pill. To enter the level, you have to wake up. And to exit, there aren't any. I don't know what else to say. There's, you have to stay here. It's unknown what both of those mean, what wake up and stay here mean, but we can assume that it's really hard to enter and the exit is also really hard to attain. So for the time being, it seems as if you're gonna be forced to explore this uncanny expanse of hills, houses, empty streets, and loneliness while being talked to by a shadow thing with a smile on his face. Cool. Personally, I love this level and I think it's really good. I think it's Agent Anonymous's best work I've read. I've read a ton of their levels and I've gone over them and I 100% recommend checking the article below, reading it for yourself. This level actually is very, very well done and I think it speaks a lot to the community of the back rooms where sometimes levels are made, you know, too kid friendly when in reality, the back rooms is a living hellscape. It's, it's not kid friendly, it's not safe, it's scary. And I think this level does a good job of expressing that in a cool, horrifying, liminal way. You know, the house is here, the fake ambience, it's all perfect. Hope y'all enjoyed it as much as I did. The level starts with a quote that reads as follows. Been walking around this countryside level some more. Gets me thinking, seeing all these abandoned things. Do you ever wonder how entities see us? Like, the entities we don't talk to? I wonder if they wonder where we came from. End quote. Nice. So yeah, level 184 is classified as a class 1 difficulty and is safe, devoid of entities, but it isn't fully secured because we don't know where the borders are. It's close enough to being safe, okay? The level also goes by the name The Field of Forgotten Forts, and it's a very liminal and picturesque expanse of countryside with a ton of abandoned structures. The level is calm and pleasant and is very scenic and relaxing, and there's also a lot of natural resources and fertile ground for growing plants as well. The level is considered to be eerily peaceful though by most wanderers who have been here and it gives this feeling of nostalgia but uneasiness at the same time, sort of like level 94 does. The fields of this level grow flowers and plants just like the ones from the front rooms and they grow and reproduce and decay just like the real life ones as well, which makes this place seem even more real than other levels. To make it easy to understand the layout of the level, it's been split up into three distinct parts. The grain fields, the canola fields, and then the unkempt plains. The grain fields are huge expanses of wheat and barley and even rice plants in some regards. You can harvest and eat anything that grows here, and it's completely safe to do so. This is the area where you're most likely to run into a bunch of tiny abandoned sheds or little barns and even a few houses that are old and decaying and abandoned. Most of these old sheds and houses give off really eerie and strange familiar feelings of a past life. Almost like you can feel the beings and things that used to live here, but you can't see them. The canola fields look very similar to the wheat ones, except this area is full of vibrant and bright canola plants. Inside of this area, there are bigger abandoned farms and old decaying farmhouses and barns as well. These old farmhouses are usually barren of anything on the inside, but some have old remnants of furniture and paintings and kitchen utensils and kitchen tables and beds and that sort of thing. Again, you kind of get the feeling of these old energies and this forgotten life when you explore these houses. You feel like you're being watched by the residents of the houses, but you can't see anybody because there's no one there. Past these canola fields, there are the unkempt plains, which are these big, uncultivated, unused plots of land land with no crops or buildings. These places have tall grasses and soft rolling hills, and the only structures you might find here are old fences and stone walls and maybe an old rusty car or two that have been left to decay. And these places are very empty and desolate and lonely, and you could theoretically live here if you want, but it's kind of far out and there's not really anything else to speak of. 
Since this level is pretty safe and natural, of course there's been a few bases that have been set up here, and there are two main ones that Meg has made, and they are here to harvest the grain and the canola plants. Like I said, both of them are run by Meg, but theoretically, you could live in a rural abandoned house yourself, if you wanted to, or you could just wander around the fields and relax in them for as long as you need to. Cutting through this level, there are random dirt paths and random little brooks and streams that roll through the fields, and these areas help you with exploring the level and finding new places. As I said, no one has found the border of the level yet, so it's thought that it could be infinite, so just explore at your own risk. The ambience of the level is a calm sound of wind blowing through grass and the faint sound of bugs chirping and a light breeze blowing at all times. The sounds give off senses of calmness and peacefulness that isn't often felt through the back rooms. But at the same time, it makes you wonder, what happened to the people that used to be here? Why did they leave and abandon their houses and homesteads? And what made them leave? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm pretty interested to hear what you got to say. To enter the level, you can walk deep into another level that resembles it. So another level that has fields like level 10 or level 811. And if you wander off deep into those levels, you might find that it'll start to transition into this level. And to exit, you can find a rough dirt road and walk down it until you find a sign that directs you to level 11. Follow that sign and you'll be sent back to level 11. Or sometimes you can even no clip into one of the many structures that is abandoned here. But overall, this this peaceful, abandoned expanse of fields and hills sounds like a paradise, if you make it here alive, that is. But I love the vibe that you get from this level. You kind of get that uneasy uncanniness, like something used to live here and there used to be a, like a civilization here, but it's post-apocalyptic and abandoned. But even though there's nobody here, the stuff still grows and you can still live here for yourself. So the weather on this level is mostly pretty mild. There could be some rolling clouds and maybe a few spring showers that pop up out of nowhere. But overall, the entire place is devoid of much harmful weather. Like I said earlier, though, there is a pretty decent breeze that blows most times. And this breeze adds to the ambience of loneliness in the fields. But from people who have been to this level, they describe it as very liminal and empty and almost sad in a way. And some people even say that they feel like they have been there before. And it's like they're coming back after their home was destroyed or something but overall the back room just does that to some people and they get those weird feelings from it Backrooms level 768, or the Temporal Abyss, as it's been nicknamed, has a survival difficulty of Time Expedite, meaning that time is weird here. From time paradoxes, to the dilation of your biology, to Dreamcore creatures, this place gets strange. The level is split up into several different parts, of course I'll be getting into all of them, but those specific areas are the lobby, the staircases, and the paths. Let me explain. Level 768 as a whole consists of an ever-expansive cloudscape that goes out in all directions. There's a blue sky above these clouds that has a gloomyish purple undertone to it, and that sky is dotted with thin, wispy clouds. Pretty much, you're walking on the sky, but there's still sky above you. The air in the level smells sweet and enticing, almost like a freshly cooked dessert. The clouds that are above you almost look artificially made, and they have this sort of ethereal, painted look to them. The floor that you're standing on is made out of some kind of white, brick, shiny material, and the clouds that are at your feet and at your side seem to be made out of some kind of fluffy, cloud-like material. We're not sure what it is. Anyways, this expansive level has so many smells and so many areas that can be explored to the point where you could get lost very, very easily. The white brick floor tends to smell like dusty chalk, and the clouds that surround you tend to smell like sweet vanilla. And you instantly just get this strange, liminal, dreamy feeling when you're sent here. Almost like you are dreaming, but you're walking through it, but you're not. 
When you get no clipped inside of this level, you'll be in a place called the lobby. This lobby area is the starting point per se, and it consists of a platform with strange walls that are all made out of this smooth, shiny brick. The platform does not have a roof, but it does have walls, and it's just this large open place that eventually segments off into different paths and bridges and stairs. There's no visible support structure holding up this lobby, or any of the level to be honest. We don't know how it's holding itself up, it's assumed it's all floating by itself. But there are many platforms similar to this lobby scattered throughout the level, none of them are as big as this area though. Venturing past this lobby, you'll step out into an open, shiny sky clouds as far as the eye can see in all directions and fluffy expanses that never end you'll see bridges and staircases and shiny things you can step on it's all very mesmerizing i know the bridges here can be pretty much any architectural design some of them can be just normal bridges with evenly spaced steps that go up or down some can be strange with spiral steps and zigzag formations because of these strange variations, wanderers can easily get confused or lost or fall off the level by losing their footing. So you have to be wary of where you're walking since everything is shiny and white, it kind of blends together. All of these bridges here are made out of that same weird shiny brick stuff and it just seems to be floating like somehow this stuff is floating in the air with no support structure don't ask me i don't know the length of the bridges is also different depending on where you go some could be straight and long some could be topsy-turvy and curvy and windy it really just depends on where you're at other bridges can lead to random staircases that then lead to more expansive bridges and it seemingly never ends and because all these bridges and staircases seem to be interconnected and melded together, this makes for a massive complex of paths that you could go up or down on. It also makes getting lost easy. Moving on from the bridges to the staircases, the staircases will often randomly go up towards the sun or the sky, or they could go straight down to the void below. A lot of the architecture makes no sense, because why would you just build a staircase that ends in the sky? I don't know. The backrooms is weird, obviously. But these staircases give people feelings of just dreaminess. The feeling that you're free and infinite, like you can just float around forever. You know, walking up these staircases, seeing the beautiful sky around you, it's kind of a crazy feeling. A lot of the staircases do randomly cut off though, and that could lead to you falling down to another part that you've never been to. So again, be careful. That's like the fifth time I've said it, I know. I'm acting like a mom, who cares? But if you could somehow stay on the same path while crossing the lobby, the bridges, and going up and down staircases, you might eventually run into a strange, invisible barrier on this level. Let me explain what I mean. So the level is infinite, like I said, you know, it sprawls out in all different directions, but it seems like there's a limit to how far a wanderer can explore before like cheating to get out of this barrier. The barrier itself acts as a sort of dome and it feels completely solid when you run into it, like it can be broken, but you can actually see completely through it. It's completely clear. You don't know it's there until you run into it, like I said. The barrier can be broken though, if you run fast enough into it or if you like smash it with a hammer or something, it just needs a large amount of energy to do so. And every time the barrier is broken, it makes kind of a glass shattering sound when it collapses. And this hole in the barrier will allow you as a wanderer to explore even further out into the expanse of clouds. Now beyond this dome, there aren't many confirmed locations or maps or anything. So go past this glass dome thing at your own risk. Who knows if you'll even make it back alive. Now that I've gone over the physical layout of the level and kind of how to explore it, I can now go over the time anomalies that make this place a living nightmare. Let me tell you. So the level appears to be safe. You know, it's, it's a soft expanse of clouds and soft staircases and weird flying eyeballs and that kind of thing. You, know, you think you'd be fine. You're wrong. The level is actually essentially a trap for wanderers if you stay here too long. Time acceleration is the effect that mainly occurs on this level, and what it does to people is scary. I'm sure you can guess what it is, but pretty much time itself ends up speeding up at like a 30 times rate when you're here. The smoothness of your skin, the color of your hair, all bodily functions, and your age will go up rapidly. It's like the level is a YouTube video that someone's playing at two times speed. Now, these effects do not happen instantly when you get here. Instead, they happen after a random amount of time that you've been here. You'll know an anomaly is about to start when the bluish sky above you starts to turn dark and hazy. And the sun that's in the sky will disappear and a clock or clocks will take its place. After both those things happen, 
time will start to speed up for you and you'll essentially age, like, like I said, 30 times faster to the point where you won't be alive anymore. You'll kind of just disintegrate into a skeleton. But this is where the time paradox starts. Because once this happens, you'll essentially be born again and again and again, and you'll just restart this aging process all over. Like baby to adult, adult to baby, you know, over and over and over again, forever. It's like a purgatory of sorts. Obviously, your goal should be to escape this level before the time speeds up and the time paradox happens. But if you can't manage to escape before the anomaly begins, you need to find how to exit fast while it's happening. But more on that in the exit portion. The only entities that have been sighted and the ones that live on this level are the eyes from level 78. These entities are strange, sentient, ethereal, angel-like beings that take the appearance of human eyes. Some eyes float by themselves and some have angel wings and some are like shoved into the clouds and blend in. They're decently common to see here and they're not outright aggressive, like they're not just gonna fly up to you and, and attack you or knock you off something, but they do tend to lure wanderers deeper and deeper into the clouds and further from potential exits, essentially trapping them deeper into the time paradox. They seem to have this angelic quality to them. It kind of lulls and lures wanderers even deeper. Sort of how sirens would lure pirates into the water to drown, these eyes lure wanderers deeper into the clouds to cause more time paradoxes. So the level looking so safe and being so comfortable to actually stand in is a big problem with how dangerous the time effects can be. So you'll need to listen closely to what I'm about to say about the exits so you can get out before you're cursed to be born and unalive and born and unalive over and over and over again. In order to escape the level, you'll have to find a gap in the bricks or in the clouds on this level. Now these gaps are gonna be extremely rare since the entire plane is like completely full. But if you do find a gap, you have to jump down through it and you'll not know where you're jumping, but you'll wake up on level 78. Gaps are extremely rare. And because of this, if you find one, you need to take it. That way you're not trapped. And since there are so many clouds that roll over the level surface, a gap might disappear and you might not be able to find it again after you see it once. To enter the level, you have to find a ladder in level 78 that leads up into what seems to be like a cloud and then you just climb the ladder into it and you'll be here. Once you get out of that entrance, it'll disappear behind you. So like I said, you need to make sure you find an exit ASAP. So I think level 768 is what I consider to be almost a perfect backrooms level. It's got the liminality, it's got the nostalgia, it's got the comfort, it's got the eeriness, the uncanniness, and the strange just time-based nostalgic effects. The entities here fit the level, you know, they're, they, they blend in, they're cool, they add to it. I think this level will be extremely fun to go to, minus the decaying rapidly and being reborn over and over again and getting lost in clouds. But let me know what your thoughts are on it in the comments below. So the Haunted Pools is an enigmatic level found deep inside of the back rooms. It's unknown if it's a sub-level of the actual pool rooms or if it just has water similar to the pool rooms, we don't know. But what we do know is that the level has been given a class four survival difficulty by me for having a dangerous environment, the presence of hostile entities and mind altering substances throughout the level and specifically in the water. The level is like one big trip, if you know what I'm saying. Everything seems like you're hallucinating while you're here. It's hard to tell what's fake and what's real. But there are several different zones that encapsulate the layout of this level, and those are the pools, the slides, and the break rooms. And as I always do, I'm going to get into them right now. The level starts you inside of the murky, cool waters of the pools. The depth of these pools can change depending on where you go on the level, but typically they're around waist deep for everyone, unless you're like really short or something. The halls are similar in this level to the pool rooms, except they're not as wide and expanding. They're more claustrophobic and they're way darker. When you look around you, you'll really notice that everything is dark. The walls, the ceiling, the atmosphere, it's all this heavy, dark energy. The light on this level is non-existent and all of the light you're gonna see is gonna come from your own flashlight or your own light source that you bring. So don't forget to bring one. The walls seem to be made out of some kind of large black and white tile, similar to the pool rooms, but again, not the exact same. These are bigger and fatter. 
When you wake up in the water on this level, you'll first notice these really colorful carnival amusement park looking figures and tubes and plastic hallways and slides surrounding these water filled hallways. Many of these plastic structures have what looks to be clown faces etched onto them and they give off extremely unsettling energy, obviously. And the entire time you're walking through this water, you really think that something or someone is watching you. Some people have even reported seeing the eyes on these clown faces tracking their movement and you know moving their eyeballs where you move. More on that later though. The plastic areas that you'll likely see are hallways, slides, and rooms. And it seems like all of them are randomly generated, kinda. Their layouts don't make any sense, it's a jumbled mess, and this leads to the environment being almost impossible to map out. It's not that the geometry here is non-Euclidean or there's weird properties there, it's just that it's so claustrophobic and confusing of a layout naturally that it's hard to map and you can't really tell where you're at. Going down one of the slides that you see in the level will result in you being launched even deeper into the complex of the halls and the rooms. It's almost like a giant game of shoots and ladders, if you know what that is. So when you get here, your goal should be to go down as few slides and walk through as few tunnels as possible and just try to find the exit. The ambience and the atmosphere of the level is stale. It smells of old mildew and rot, almost like rotting old sugary candy. The smell gets worse inside of the slides here and inside of the tunnels, so it's thought that maybe the materials of these things is what's smelling, or an entity somewhere smells bad, or the water just stinks. Either way, it's, it's not pleasant. The water here is actually slightly thicker than normal water or almond water, and it kind of feels like a cloud substance, like a cotton candy thing when you move your hand through it. It smells sterile, but also old and mildewy. So when you breathe in that smell, you get really lightheaded. Think of how like when you open a glue paste bottle and you sniff it or like rubbing alcohol, that's what the water here smells like. It's really pungent. The slides in this level are so confusing to crawl through and they can literally go off in any direction. They can go up, they can go down, side to side, diagonal or whatever, they can go anywhere. And they all lead to different places each time. The slides are also dangerous for another reason and it's that smilers and other strange entities lurk in the deeper parts. And the only reason you should ever enter a slide is if you're walking towards a dead end or if you're being chased by something and you want to avoid it. Other than that, you probably shouldn't get in them. Now, the last part of the level is what's been nicknamed the break rooms. And this is a large, colorful set of rooms with very strange architecture. You know, you got these weird pillars, weird shapes in the floor, weird arcade machines. And it feels like a place that you shouldn't see. It feels like something that is like exclusive, not to you though. You're not supposed to be there. The floor here is dry. There's no water, which is nice, I guess. But this is also a place that a level exclusive entity has been seen multiple times. The entity in question takes the appearance of a large statue-like clown that moves around like a normal human. It's almost got the vibe of an animatronic and how creepy and uncanny it is, but it seemingly stands off in the distance and just stalks wanderers as they navigate through the level. It's unknown if it actually attacks and consumes or does anything to these wanderers because it mainly just stares awkwardly from far away. But just to be safe, you shouldn't approach it or go towards it. And this entity doesn't have a name yet, but it has been seen many times in the hallways, the pools, the tunnels, and in the break rooms, of course. The other entities here are smilers, skin stealers, maybe an insanity or two deep in the tunnels. And some think that the slides themselves are entities because of how they can seemingly move around and they can change their own layout. This isn't confirmed, but who knows. Now those giant clown faces from earlier are also thought to be sentient in their own way or if the clown entity can somehow look through these clown faces as like cameras or something. So like, let's say the clown entity is far away, but it wants to see where you're at, so it can somehow look into these clown faces at what direction you're going. We don't know, it's terrifying to think about. Something's definitely watching you. That's what you need to take away from this. All the plastic areas and tunnels in this level are so uncanny and unnatural feeling that you literally feel so wrong walking through it. Like I said earlier, it feels like you're tripping on something. Everything seems fake, but when you touch that water and you're getting all claustrophobic, you know it's real. And of course, the clown faces on things don't help, and the strange layout of the slides don't either. Now, the water itself, like I said, is very strange, and it actually acts as a slight hallucinogen to anyone here. 
it makes all the colors and all the shapes look like they're twirling and moving, and it all looks very psychedelic to wanderers who consume or stay in it too long. The entire level ends up looking like an old animation if you stay in the water for too long, in fact. And if you quote unquote, you know, take too much of this water or sniff it too much, you'll literally just fall over into the water and you won't wake back up. An entity might get you or the clown might get you, we don't know. Just be advised to not stay in this water and never drink it unless you want to have like the craziest trip story of your life. To enter this level, any wanderer can on Halloween day. In fact, the only way to enter this level is on Halloween. And you can just be walking around any other level and you can be sent here from 12 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Halloween day. And it happens randomly, so prepare yourself. You, you probably should be ready. To exit, you have to find a break room and then no clip through one of the pillars inside of it to get out. Which means you're gonna have to brave some of the labyrinth of these strange plastic halls and the decorations and the entities and the clown faces to get out of here. But you probably got this. Probably. Maybe not. This level just strikes fear into many wanderers in the back rooms because of how just unnatural it looks. It seems like some sort of twisted Halloween carnival ride that you're forced to stay in forever. The strange noises that echo from deep in the hallways, the weird uncanny faces staring at you, the water that makes you hallucinate, and the tight hallways you have to crawl through. It's not a fun place to be, but it was fun to make. So the Flesh Rooms is a level that popped up a few months ago, and it's one that we don't really know too much about. There's not even a classification for it, so I've taken it upon myself to give it a class 4 difficulty for its strange environments, dangerous properties, and it just overall being disgusting. We have no idea where the level is, especially in relation to other Backrooms levels, but since it's so strange, I'm gonna guess that it's an enigmatic or negative level. The flesh rooms themselves takes the appearance of a disgusting, undulating, moving labyrinth of muscle tissue and fluid. There are two known parts to the level so far, and I'll be going over them in this video. You can check the timestamps if you want to skip to both of them. But the level as a whole has been described as grotesque, absolutely nasty, smelling of rot and iron, and all the surfaces being covered with a corrosive, thick, slimy saliva type substance. The saliva itself actually has a ton of weird properties that I'll touch on later, but the rest of the level is very hard to walk around and explore, and this is mainly due to its random drop-offs, huge caverns and hallways and walls that dead end, and it's a crazy thing. We'll get into it all. The floor is also very slippery, and you could literally just lose your footing and slip down a 400 foot tall drop without even knowing. But let's get right into the different parts of the level. So the first part of the level is the very beginning. It doesn't really have a nickname, so I'm just going to call it the beginning. This area has a very strange boxy square appearance to it. It has no visible roof, and what looks to be a black void is the roof or what's above the walls. Now, theoretically, you could actually climb over the walls and jump into different hallways if you really wanted to, since the walls are just around 10 feet tall and there's no ceiling, but good luck with that. I don't know why you would. You're not Spider-Man, bro. Anyways, this first part literally looks two-dimensional, and what I mean by that is that it literally doesn't look like it has any depth. It looks like you're walking on a flat surface, but there's like the image of textures of flesh on it. When you walk around, you'll still sink down into the flesh and it'll make noises like squishing and stuff that you think it would make, but it still looks two-dimensional. Now this part is actually typically the safer area in the level since there isn't as many drop-offs and not as many cliffs or tunnels that you can fall into. But after you walk for long enough here, you'll eventually see all that stuff anyway, so don't get used to it. This first area is devoid of any other sounds except the footsteps of whoever's walking on it. There's no gurgling, no vibrating. It's eerily calm and still. Now, as far as its 2D appearance, we're really not sure what to make of it. It's kind of like level 998 or Zenith's clouds, where they look 3D, but they're actually 2D. So somehow this flesh looks 3D, but it's 2D. We don't know. The saliva here in this part has the consistency of jello, or in some cases, pudding. And it's a lukewarm temperature to the touch, but you shouldn't touch it, of course. And after walking through these 2D flesh halls for long enough, you'll eventually find the chasm type area that leads on to the next part of the level. 
And this chasm type area is where everything opens up and there are huge caverns and drop offs and this is where everything gets really dicey. So buckle up. Like seriously, you probably should buckle up. This second area is known for its very volatile environment. It takes the appearance of cramped tube shaped hallways. These hallways, unlike the first part, are not 2D. They are very 3D. Trust me, let me, let me tell you. They constantly are shaking and bouncing around. Saliva is dripping off the walls and pooling on the floor. And it's all just this nasty moving mess. It's in this area where you'll have a hard time even just walking around. Since the entire thing is shaking and moving, you might not even be able to stand up. Like, it's literally that hard. The deeper you get into these tubes, the smaller some of the passages get. To the point where you literally might have to get on your stomach to crawl around to get to the next chamber. Which, of course, I wouldn't recommend doing, but you might have to. The really deadly part about this area is that the hallway's positioning and just, like, normalcy is not consistent. That's right, the hallways move. Like, they can twist and contort and flip on their own. So you could just be standing there, semi-flat, looking straight down a hallway, and then out of nowhere, the entire hallway tube thing that you're in will go straight up, throwing you down to the bottom. We don't know why it happens. There are theories. I'll talk about them later. Now, in this second area where these tubes are, you'll be able to hear faint gurgling and swallowing sounds echoing from deeper within the level. And when the hallways flip around and they start to shake, the gurgling and the sounds will grow louder. This area is extremely dangerous, and it needs to be avoided, if at all possible. Unless for some reason you like walking through intestines. So the saliva that's coating the halls and the walls and everything in this part is very strange in and of itself. It seems to be a very corrosive liquid, and in fact it'll give you a burning sensation when you touch it or leave it on your skin. The pain isn't too bad after just touching it, but repeated exposure can be very, very painful. The real strange effect, however, is that it kind of acts as a hallucinogen, or a toxin, which can seemingly trick any wanderer's brain into thinking that they're not in danger, and they could just keep walking into this labyrinth forever. Typically, these effects will not happen unless someone falls, or is knocked down, or rolls around in the saliva, because it doesn't really affect people who just barely touch it. But if you get a ton of it on you, you need to pour almond water over it to fight against the effects and you should be okay. If not, the toxin will convince you to walk even deeper into the level. Lurking in this deeper area are a few things. Smilers have been spotted here in these cramped hallways, things like crawlers have been seen, liquid pain pools have been seen as well, and other things like that. But there's actually something else that plays a way more dangerous role in the level. It's an entity that takes the appearance of a tongue-shaped appendage, and it seemingly scours the hallways, knocking people deeper into the level. Some people think that this tongue thing is responsible for the hallways in the second part, being able to shift and move and flip and shake. Some people think that all happens by accident. We don't know. Whatever it is, it's extremely an unknown entity and an enigmatic one. We don't really have any details about it. All we do know is that it's been seen only in the second area and that it attacks people. So play it safe and do not go down there. Unless you have saliva all over you and it's making you, don't go down there. So to enter the level, you have to eat one of those meat pies on level 67 and you'll wake up here in this 2D area. So that's good that it's not an easy level to get to, so you don't have to really worry about getting sent accidentally here. If you want to leave the level before you get lost in these fleshy tubes, then you'll need to find a pool of liquid pain somewhere on the ground in the first part, and then you have to jump into it. These pools are typically located like kind of deeper into that 2D part of the level, so if you find one, nosedive right into it, and you'll be sent to the hub level. Now the pain will hurt, you know, momentarily, because you literally just jumped into a vat of it, but it's much better than being thrown into a flesh cave and being digested, obviously. There are no colonies, no outposts, or anything like that, since no one wants to live inside of flesh tunnels. But you might run across a decomposing wanderer or two. That's just a common thing, I guess. Theories on what these hallways are and these caverns are range from it being a giant creature to it being the core of the back rooms itself. And this is where it gets its energy from consuming people to it all being a hallucination caused by the saliva. We really don't know. Me personally, I think it sounds a lot like the hive level. If you know what that one is, I made a video on it. But essentially, all entities come from that hive level. This one's very similar to that, except this one's somehow worse. I don't know how, but it is. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. 
this one was disgusting, and I think it was a perfect Halloween week one. So the game is the name that's been given to a collection of six sublevels in the back rooms. Those sublevels are press start, the stage, game paused, you cheated, game over, and you win. Now I've gone over most of these on the channel in depth in their own video, but I'm gonna be going over them in this video as well, so I'm not gonna be like that YouTuber that makes you go watch a different video. I'm not like that, okay? There is specific new information about all the levels in this video, and you can skip to the timestamp of each one if you wanna see a specific one of them, but we're gonna get into it right now. The game has been classified as a class three difficulty overall, but that also includes the ending sublevel, which is a class zero. So it's really class four or five, let's be real. Anyways, it's one huge level composed of the ones I just talked about. They're arranged in a sort of game that the wanderers that get sent here are forced to participate in. They have to. And at the end of this game, there's supposedly a safe haven type level that can be accessed. More on that later though. The game can be accessed itself by finding a poster that looks like this, scattered throughout the back rooms. No one knows who puts these posters up or how they get there, but in order to get here, you have to follow the directions on one of these posters. And if you want to get to that safe level at the end, you have to complete the game. The game itself has been regarded as some kind of rite of passage recently, a thing that people in the back rooms will do as a last ditch effort to find peace, find a level they won't get attacked in, find a home. Since you know the back rooms is so terrifying, they want to get to this game, want to beat it, and they want to get to the end. But in order for you to understand what the game is, and how you yourself can beat it, let's get into it. The game starts in a place called Press Start. Like I said, I went over this before, but the level itself is an area that's around 400 square feet in size. There are no visible doors or windows or other lighting here, and the entire room is painted a very dark shade of purplish black with its signature black light and glow-in-the-dark shapes on the walls, on the floors, and the ceilings. Think of like an old arcade or laser tag arena. This part of the level also has that carpet that you'd see in like an old movie theater or arcade. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, the very center of this level is where the stuff begins, because there is an arcade machine, just one of them, with the words press start on top. The appearance of the machine can change based on who's here, just know it's an arcade machine. When you walk up to it, it'll boot up and it'll start a booting sequence that's kind of like a terms of service. You can either accept or deny, which you should probably accept, and the message on the screen reads as follows. I may not know exactly why you're here, but I can think of a few reasons. Perhaps you've been screwed over in some way and you're looking for a second chance to get your life together. Maybe that you've come here to seek fortune, unlike what's ever been witnessed by humankind before, or perhaps you may just be participating for the thrill, and you love a good challenge whenever you find one. What matters is that you have found one of the flyers that I have scattered about the back rooms and have taken up my offer. Ahead of you is a grueling game that will test your skill, your wit, and every last thing that you have ever learned. Do not take the upcoming challenge lightly or play foul, as those that do will face harsh consequences. Only the most worthy will make their way to the end of this game and obtain the prize that I have chosen to offer. For those of you who are ready to play, good luck. You're gonna need it. So yeah, a pretty foreboding, ominous letter there on the screen, but if you press accept, you'll be sent to the next sublevel and next part of the game, which is called the stage. Now the stage is a place that we didn't know existed. This is not an old thing, this is a brand new thing. This is actually what bridges together all of the sublevels in this game. The stage is a large area that takes the appearance of a maze. It seems to be around a mile in the perimeter, and each different person that comes here gets a specialized different maze shape. It's almost like the back rooms knows what wanderers here, who comes here, and how to make the maze tailored specifically for them. The maze consists of very small, cramped hallways that typically have carpet on them. There are also arcade machines randomly placed in these hallways, which kind of clogs it up, but this is where the game itself takes place. And each wanderer, to complete the game, must go and complete a series of quizzes and find a series of tools and objects to help defeat entities that are swarming around this maze. Now, if you remember, we used to think this maze was a part of level you cheated 
which isn't technically wrong since you cheated does have a maze, but this is a brand new maze. And this is its own thing. Like I said, it connects all the different sub levels of the game. But now that we know that it's a connector between, you know, level press start and the rest, it's pretty cool. I gotta say, it's a pretty neat thing to find. Anyways, the center of this maze is where the Wanderer needs to get to. They have to go through these arcade machines, beating them, completing the challenges on the screen, finding tools and weapons on the ground, and then, you know, defeating the entities that are chasing and flooding these hallways. But at the very center is where a powerful entity known locally as the boss lives. And in order to truly get past the maze and complete this game, you have to get rid of the entity, you know, annihilate it, demolish it, whatever you want to do. And you have to do so by using the objects that you find in the maze. Now, if you're in this maze running around and you try to cheat, or if you try to break through a wall, or you try to exit through a door, the backrooms will consider this as cheating. And you know where cheaters go in the backrooms. I mean, a million of you do, but if you try to cheat, you'll be sent to level you cheated. However, if you do beat the entity at the center, you'll win the game and you'll be sent on to level you win. Now, level you cheated is a place that most of you, like I said, are familiar with. It's a detainment type zone in this game that you're playing. People get sent here for cheating and tampering and exploiting the game, and this is just a terrible place to be. You can only access level you cheated if the backrooms decides to send you here. So there's like no way you can come here purposely, which is kind of good. The area itself is a very small, featureless room with a slightly open door that leads right to darkness. Beyond that door is a very dangerous version of the maze from earlier, except there are more creatures in it, and the environment is more crumbly, and it's collapsing, and the entities are more aggressive and strange. A lot of the creatures here have never been seen before. It's overall just a weird space. It's like the game is punishing you for being a cheater, which it pretty much is, but if you survive level you cheated for an hour, you'll get a chance to find a token to get sent back to the game to start over. We both know that's probably not happening though. I mean, seriously, it's, it's level you cheated for goodness sakes. There's no way you beat it. But if you somehow do, you might get another chance. So I'm sure you're asking now, what happens if you do unalive while playing the game or in level you cheated or something like that? Well, you actually do get three chances at this game before you're sent to the next sub level, which is game over. So if you do unalive three times somehow, which I guess you're just really bad at the back rooms if you do that, but if you do that, you'll be sent to game over, which is a series of abandoned concrete halls that lead to nowhere with strange creatures walking around and hostile entities waiting to attack. The creatures that live here are just very strange and the level itself is strange. There are random rooms that are placed in weird places and there are bedrooms and offices that are abandoned. When you get to the level after failing the game three times, you'll see the game creator entity standing out in front of you, which is these red and blue eyes. You've seen it before. That entity will determine if you tried hard enough in the game, and based off of their decision, the entity might grant you one more try at the game. But who knows? It's, it's up to them. And they're an entity. So I wouldn't trust them. This place is like a purgatory that can't be escaped. Level you cheated was like a jail sentence that can be escaped, but this place is forever. I mean, you're stuck here in this weird concrete loop because you unalived three times. Honestly, you probably kind of deserve it. If you, if you can't beat this in three times, you're just bad, honestly. I could do it the first try, of course. And lastly, of course, is the famed level you win. Now, this is the place that you get sent to if you complete the game and survive the maze without cheating and without unaliving three times. This place is like an 11-story building it's absolutely huge inside. It's got different floors for different things. There are supermarkets, offices, nightclubs, lobbies. It's completely safe as well. And it's pretty much the end of the back rooms in a way. You never have to leave. You can get your food and water here and you can interact with other wanderers who beat the game. You can just chill forever in this building if you want to. The building itself is also in the middle of a green field. To me, that's pretty safe, I guess. But also I wouldn't want to do that because I'd rather just continue to explore this infinite you know, reality and not be stuck in a level but you can do whatever you want to, I'm not gonna judge. As I said earlier, the game is a conglomeration of all these levels that I've discussed today put together. Now, we originally didn't know that they were connected like this. We had a theory about it, but we didn't know until that maze, you know, the game place was located. After you press start on the arcade machine, he gets into that maze. Now we know it's all interwoven and all connected. Now, if you wanna enter the game and try to get to the level you win, you have to find one of those posters advertising it in the back rooms and follow the directions on it. To exit, you can press decline on the press start machine if you don't want to do it again, 
you can try to cheat and get sent to the level you cheated and then make it out of there, or you can win and just win. But my favorite is that you can find a wooden door on the first floor of you win, and then there's a sign on it labeled goodbye, and if you go through that, you'll be sent to the hub level where you can go on to explore the back rooms. Honestly, that's probably what I do, because I don't, I don't want to stay in one place forever. Anyways. The Drained Depths have been classified as a Class 5 difficulty, and they're extremely unsafe and unstable as an overall level, and the entire place is just very dangerous. As I always do in these types of videos, I'm going to be going over each reason the level is unsafe, whether it be the environments, the entities, the non-Euclidean geometry, all of it. So just get ready to strap in. This one is weird. Level 37.8 is a vast expanse and a winding complex of white tiled rooms, hallways, and corridors and walls that all look like the pool rooms, except this sublevel is devoid of any liquid water, any of it. There's nothing here. The layout of the level is also very up to debate and it changes constantly depending where you go. It's also been noted there are plenty of unconventionally shaped hallways, rooms, corridors, levels, chambers, all that kind of stuff. Everything looks strange. Sometimes there are huge open rooms, sometimes there are small cramped corridors, all the places are empty of water. That's all you need to know right now. Now you might be saying, what would the level not having any water have to do with anything? I mean, how could that be dangerous? It actually is shockingly dangerous because this could lead to several dangers of getting stuck in a deep area, falling into a huge deep chasm where a pool used to be, or losing your footing and slipping down a slide or something and not being able to get out. I'll get into all the dangers later, but that's just where you need to get your head around. This place is not safe. The tiles themselves here have been noted to be very dangerous and not welcoming to humans at all, as falling on them or running into them can result in pretty bad damages to the body, like fractures and contusions and all that great fun stuff that happens when you fall on stuff. Pretty much, it's a hard surface, don't jump onto it, and if you fall, try to cover your head. It's also been reported that walking on the tiles with bare feet can lead to blisters forming faster than the usual blister. It's almost like these tiles are very corrosive to human flesh in general. So just don't walk around this level with the dogs out, okay? It's pretty simple. I don't know why you'd be walking around the back rooms with no shoes on, but moving on. Another strange and unique property to the sublevel is that you might run across a segment of rooms or hallways that are completely upside down. And it's not just the physical level and the tiles that are upside down, it's the gravity too. In these reverse parts, the gravity will go from the floor being normal and to throwing you up to the ceiling and making that the floor. Because of this random gravitational shift, the wanderer might become disoriented and confused, or you might get motion sick to your stomach since you just got thrown up to a ceiling, kind of like being on a roller coaster. But it is said that when this happens, feelings of discomfort and uneasiness and just horror overtake your thoughts, and they give you this uncontrollable fear. Now, just like some of the other sublevels of the pool rooms, the lighting here seems to come right out of the walls themselves. Like there are no obvious sources of light, like windows or light bulbs or whatever. It just seems to literally emanate from the tiles. And it's almost like the level produces its own light. This lighting can also give wanderers here these really uneasy trapped feelings because you feel squeezed in and claustrophobic, almost like you're in a cage. You know, you're walking through these empty pools and these tight hallways and chambers, and on top of that, there's no light source, so you kind of just feel like you're in a box. While exploring these empty rooms, it's also not uncommon to hear random noises of machinery. These noises have an unknown source, but it's been described as a low machinery hum, almost like a buzz from the lights over on level zero. But the noise can be very annoying to people and almost rage inducing to those who are, you know, susceptible to noises. So you gotta watch out for that as well. Some people even claim that these noises cause hallucinations to occur and distressing mental states to happen. I don't know about that. That's just what the document says. This level is also genuinely considered to be one of the most unsettling ones throughout all the lore. Like it's so disturbing and it leaves you so lonely that it's almost like solitary confinement in a way. It's sticking you in these empty tile walls and forcing you to walk around with no end in sight for days and weeks and years. And because of that and all the other things that I've talked about, you shouldn't come here, obviously. Now, why is there actually no water in this area? Now, you know, this is a proper sub-level of the pool rooms, so technically there probably should be some type of water, but it's thought here that the tiles themselves have another strange property that's not really understood. It's that any liquid that comes into contact with this tile, the tile will soak all the liquid up and it'll dry instantly. 
So if you drop a bottle of almond water, or if you cut yourself, or if you just take a leak or anything, the tiles will absorb it faster than lightning, and the ground will be completely dry. This means that if you lose bodily fluids by accidents, or if you spill your water source, or your food has liquid in it, it'll all soak right into the ground, and you'll never see it again. And I think you can see why that's a bad thing. You don't want to have like a little water bottle left, and then you spill it all, and then it's gone, you know? But that's what happens here. So I mentioned briefly earlier, but the slick nature of the tiles makes traveling around this large expanse even more dangerous, because you could just be walking straight on a path, and then slide down into a massive empty pool and you'll have no way out because there's no ladder that goes that far down. Or you could fall and slip and hit your body or head on the ground and it's just very slippery and overall a very hard to traverse level. It's recommended to keep in mind where you're stepping and what shoes you wear in order to not slip and fall into oblivion. In the deeper places of these drained pool rooms, lighting also becomes less and less apparent and it ends up getting pitch black in some of the areas and these darker areas will start to appear more and more. These chambers and passages that are pitch black can be very slick and lead to even more chasms and falls and random hallways you can get lost in. And you know you, you couple that with the labyrinth and layout of the level, and then you've got a very, very bad time on your hands, especially if you get lost easy. Just try not to slip and fall into an empty pool. You're never getting out. But even the dangerous level, the enigmatic geometry and the liminal loneliness aren't bad enough because we haven't even talked about the entities here. The reports of the creatures that lurk in these empty halls have been frequent, but also strange. Tales of shadowy humanoid figures in the darker areas have abounded over the last few months, as well as reports of tall, white shapes that blend directly into the tile walls here and pop out at the last second to attack you have been cited too. Then even more reports of entities being inside of the actual walls and their eyes poking out of missing tiles and staring at you. Some think that these entity encounters are just your brain playing with you after you got stuck here for so long, but most people agree that they're probably real. I mean, let's be honest, the backrooms is a crazy place. It's not too crazy to think there's entities here. So let me know what you think in the comments. There's also a huge number of facelings in this level that are very dangerous to humans. They seem to have a heightened hostility to people and will attack. Uh, you also probably run into a smiler or a hound in the deeper parts, especially in the huge holes where the pools used to be. They're probably there. Another reason to not fall down. But there might be even more entities. We don't know. You probably should just hope that you see the regular ones and not the entities that are hiding in the walls or they blend into the walls or the shadow humanoids. Good luck though. To enter this sublevel, you have to find a slide in the pool rooms and go down it, and you'll have a chance of being sent here to the empty version of the main level. And to exit it, you have to find a very small pool of water that is not disappearing and not being soaked up into the floor, and then try to noclip through it, which will take you back to the main part of the pool rooms, level 37. Although this exit is very rare, you probably shouldn't get your hopes up and just don't, don't think you're gonna escape because you're probably not, or you're either gonna have enough water or you're gonna get attacked by a tile entity. Just Good luck, bro. That's all I gotta say. So Backrooms level 1411 doesn't actually have a classification graphic, so I'm gonna make one for it. That's what I do. I'm gonna give it a classification of a class three difficulty due to its environment and its entities within, and it's just overall strange effect that it gives you. The level is actually created by another YouTuber named Nostalgia, and the description of the level is as follows. Level 1411 is a series of interconnected and interlooped hallways that are constructed out of a small tile. Think of like the pool room styles, but even smaller. The level's layout is kind of similar to level zeros and many others because it seems to have non-Euclidean geometry, which if you're not sure what that means, pretty much it means you could just be walking in a straight line, but actually end up behind where you started. Pretty much reality doesn't make sense. The level's roof above you is made out of tile as well, but it's black and not white or gray, and it actually absorbs light and sound, which of course means there's gonna be no echoing and means that any light that's shining will get sucked up into the roof and it'll be dark in some areas. The level seemingly has these mannequins placed in very random spots in the hallways. The mannequins themselves are around six feet tall, and they're made out of what we think is wood. They kind of look like those little stick figures from art class. You know the ones I'm talking about, but these are human-sized. These mannequins give off extremely unnerving energies and vibrations, and even though they don't have any eyes, you can feel them staring at you. And even if they don't seem alive, they seem fake or whatever, they're alive. 
Trust me, they are. Each time you see a mannequin, you need to keep your eyes on that mannequin until you're out of its direct eye shot or until you can't see it anymore. Because if you turn your head or if you look a different way, they will silently move closer to you until they're in range of attacking you. Kind of like that apirophobia level, but in real life. Now, they don't attack you viciously or claw at you or anything. All they have to do is to touch you. Just a basic tap or poke on the shoulder and you'll be gone. If they manage to do this, then your bones will fly out of your skin and you will end up as a pile of just meat on the ground. Just a lumpy sack of flesh. Now, even though your bones are gone, the horrific part is that you're still completely conscious and sentient. Like you still know what's going on, but you won't be able to move or talk or do anything because you're just a flat piece of meat laying there. That's got to be one of the actual worst things to happen in the back rooms. I mean, that's that's horrible. Wow. But if you somehow make it past these mannequins and don't get turned into a lump of flesh and you wander deep into the halls, you're still not out of the woods. Because like I said earlier, this level is full of these dark areas and these dark zones where there's no light because the ceiling and the walls absorb it. These areas are extremely enigmatic and they almost act as a sort of pocket dimension within themselves. So if you're walking for one second in the light, you see this dark area and then you walk into it, you'll be enveloped inside of this dark dimension. The entire light that was behind you will be gone and you'll be in complete darkness until you continue to walk the other way out of it. These dark areas, of course, attract smilers and other weird entities that live in the back rooms. You might even run across a phobic centipede or a skin stealer inside of these dark zones. We don't really know what all lives there, but you can take a guess. These types of entities like this type of level because it brings a lot of opportunity for easy prey. You know, the mannequins will just take your bones away for some reason, and you'll end up as lumpy flesh, and of course that is easy prey for some kind of creature. It really is unknown why the mannequins do this, but we have some theories, and I'll go over the theories later on in the video, but for right now, you just need to know that it does play a role in the level. Even deeper into these strange halls, there lies more weird, just, stuff. The first is that there's rumored to be a strange, enigmatic, floating eyeball type creature that, according to legend, is from the very first victim that was turned into a lumpy flesh pile by a mannequin. And over the years, this eyeball that was small grew into its own sentient being, and now it terrorizes the deep halls of this level. Anyways, the eyeball floats around in an unknown way, and it's, again, sentient in an unknown way, but if it sees you, it'll chase after you. Its ultimate goal, of course, is to absorb you into itself. Now, the good news is this eye can only see in one direction at a time, obviously the way it's looking. And since there's plenty of dark areas and corners you can hide in, I'm sure that you could probably evade it pretty easily. And unless you can't, then you're screwed. If you do encounter and evade the eye, then the exit of the level will make itself appear. And if you escape that eye, no matter where you're at in the level, you can look up to the ceiling and you'll be able to see a green glowing exit sign. All you have to do is follow that sign and you find the way out. But again, it's not that easy because there is another strange creature that lurks even deeper into the halls. It takes the similar appearance as the eyeball, except this is one giant yellow smiley face sphere thing. So it's just like a sphere with a smiley face. The face tends to lurk near wherever the exit is and it picks off unsuspecting wanderers that think they're about to make it out which is kind of sad. Imagine like beating the entire level, running to the exit, and then getting eaten by a smile. Most normal backroom stuff, guys. Cool. An even deeper theory is that this smile face is the head of that first victim from the mannequin, like the eye was, which leads us to the strange effects that this level might have and the theories we have on it. So the eye and the smile face are these large, weird body parts that have morphed into their own entity. They've developed a consciousness, they've developed ambition and goals, and a drive to eat and whatever. This leads us to believe that the level has the ability to take these body parts of wanderers who got deboned by a mannequin and evolve them into entities of their own with their own thoughts and minds. Now, it's unknown if the Wanderer has any power inside of these creatures or if nothing of them exists anymore, just their physical self blowing up to be bigger. But it's definitely weird that the level can take these body parts and turn them into stuff like this. You know, giant eye, giant face. What other giant things are walking around deeper? I mean, you're going to walk down and see a giant leg or arm walking around. We don't know. We just can't tell yet.
To enter the level, you have to be in a mall somewhere, or on level zero, and then find a mannequin on display, you touch it, either on purpose or accidentally, and you'll get sent here and you'll wake up at the start of the level. And if you want to exit, you have to encounter that eye creature and of course evade it until the exit sign appears, and then go through the door. And that's only if you can make it to the door before getting eaten by a smile. It's simple as that. I mean, all you gotta do is avoid mannequins, dark areas, hallways, giant eyeballs, smilers, phobic centipedes, giant smiles, and strange non-Euclidean geometry. Sounds pretty easy to me. So, first up for the video is level 7111, or the race with the parasite. Yes, this is insane. The level itself is classified as a class death zone difficulty, and it's got several environmental dangers that make it pretty much uninhabitable and not safe to live in. Now, the level itself actually looks like a dark, musty forest that's kind of decaying. The trees have no leaves on them, and the ground looks old and eroded and cracking. There's no day or night cycle here, and the further you go into the level, the worse it gets, which is pretty common in a lot of backrooms levels. In fact, it gets so bad that it'll eventually just start steaming and burning. The whole ground itself will just catch on fire, but more on that later. It's possible for this level to have multiple wanderers on it at one time, but it's so rare that two people have likely never seen each other simply because of how big this level is. It's infinite. The only other thing on here, besides you, will be a very dangerous parasite type creature. Now the creature takes the appearance at first of a leech. And this leech wants to do nothing but harm you. The parasite is able to adapt and morph into more dangerous forms, like a lizard man looking thing, in order to better chase and stalk you. And the second you get sent here, that parasite will start going slowly towards you. Kind of like that snail trend from real life where the snail slowly gets closer to you as you get older. This parasite will start going to you fast the second you get here. It almost seems like this level is alive. Like the forest and the parasite are connected and the whole thing is a living creature in a way. There's a bunch of logs in this entry and in the third one, the person explained that the level changed how it looked completely after this person saw the parasite turn into that lizard man. So that might mean that the level triggers a change when the parasite itself changes or something like that but we do know one thing and it's that this parasite has one goal to chase you deep into the level the ground can start to erupt and spray fire and brimstone everywhere which is dangerous to you and the parasite as well but your main goal should just be escaping and running away from this giant lizard thing chasing you <laughs> to enter this level you can no clip through sub level 2 of the shady gray after falling asleep there but i would never come here and to exit you can climb a tree near one of those brimstone fiery explosion areas on the ground then jump off of it to be sent to a safer level hopefully. But pretty much, this level is dangerous, and it's got a parasite that hunts people to extinction. And it can adapt to whatever it's chasing. So, have fun with that. Next up for the video is level Don't Move. And it's classified as a class undetermined because of its weird properties and undocumented entities. The level itself looks like a stony old church building with endless winding hallways, and some of them have torches lining the walls. Now, the hallways themselves are all different. Some are tall, some are short, some are wide, some are stony and dirty, some are clean and precise. It all just depends. The whole level, though, is set in a monochrome gray, black, and white type color, and all the pictures of the level turn out that way too. And those torches that are on the wall are the only things here that aren't gray or black and white, because sometimes when an entity is near, they'll turn blue. Now, there is another part of the level, uh, it's called the gardens, and it's outside of the church's walls. And it's a really weird area where an exit is located, so more on that later. But the garden itself is full of flowers and weeds, and it just looks really liminal and creepy, and just eerie overall. The entities in these church hallways are smilers, hounds, and memory worms. And then there are two level exclusive entities here as well. The first one is the nuns, which are humanoid type entities that look like nuns from real life, except these nuns literally don't show their face. Like they have a veil over themselves at all times. They roam the hallways and they seem to have no real meaning. They're kind of just floating around. The second entity is the Pope. 
who is almost never seen. But when people do see him, apparently he's staring at you and stalking you from around corners. And if you look at him, he'll go into the nearest door and slam it right in your face. But whatever you do, don't look into his eyes because you'll regret it. To enter this fun level, uh, you have to stand in a cultish looking circle in the woods on level 512 and you'll be sent here. And to exit, you can find some holy water in the garden area that I talked about and pour some of that out on the ground to be sent out. However, most people say that if you do it this way, you'll be sent to a more dangerous level, but I'm just trying to escape the Pope. I don't know what else to do. Lastly for the video is level 1957, aka the Bridge of Bravery. This level is classified as a class Zeta difficulty because it is potentially safe and secure, but it also might have a dangerous entity or two, and the environment is kind of dangerous. I'll talk all about it in a few minutes. The level itself takes place on and around a rusty old bridge above a thick wooded forest. Some of the trees in the forest have reddish leaves that can either be dark red or light red, and there are other trees that are not red but are instead pitch black which is pretty creepy. The level has an anomalous effect on it that makes all flashlights and artificial lights not work. Like you can click the on button and nothing will work as long as you try it. And things like phones and radios don't work either. The only tech that works here is DSLR cameras, which is how we get these images. Now, when you do get sent here to this level, you'll wake up on top of that old rusty bridge that's over the woods. The trees under the bridge are blackened and the sky around the bridge is so dark that you can't really see anything. It's almost always nighttime. But once you start walking on the bridge, you'll notice that there are paths that are cut down through the woods that lead from the bridge. And that way you can go on these paths and explore the woods around. But it's not recommended to do that since after around 20 minutes of being here, you'll start to get a really strong sense of paranoia, which is also common in the back rooms. It's still scary, but you should aim to stay here for less than 20 minutes so you don't start getting paranoid. For the first 20 minutes of you being here, you'll have this feeling of courage and exploration. Kind of like you just want to go around and see what's in the woods, explore everything, go on all the paths, but that feeling is really dangerous because that courage can be fake and lead you deeper into the woods, and once it wears off, you'll start to get paranoid, and some people have been seen walking in the woods and have never been seen walking out. Now on this level, there is a weird community of people who hide in the woods. They live in these weird red tents, and there's around 30 people. They're very strange, but overall, they're nice enough, I guess. But the people have been seen hiding in trees, stalking you sometimes, so it's not really known if you can trust them. Nevertheless, to enter this level, it's actually pretty tricky because it seems like no entrance works more than once. However, a recent entrance was no clipping through a red door on level 11, but it probably won't work if you try that again. To exit, you have to stay around for 20 minutes, and then a portal will open somewhere in this level. Now, you have to find that portal to leave, or you might be stuck and never be able to leave. So the second you think 20 minutes is up, start running around and try to find the portal and jump through it, and you'll be sent to another level. The good news is, the level itself isn't too big, just a few miles, so who knows? Good luck with that, though. Level 420, aka the Frozen Lake, is classified as Class 5E, which means the environment is the only real hazard here, not entities or anything like that. The level is a huge frozen lake that measures around 100 kilometers or 38.6 miles in size. On all sides of the lake, there are towering snowy mountains that surround it kind of like a bowl. The temperature here gets to around 14 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 10 degrees Celsius during the hottest part of the day, and it drops all the way to negative 9 degrees Fahrenheit at nighttime, but that's not as cold as it gets. Exploring on this level is actually really hard since there's always blizzards taking place in some spots of the level. During these blizzards, the temperatures drop even more than before and can get as low as negative 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Nice. And these blizzards can happen at random times as well, but you can kind of predict when one's going to happen because there's going to be one huge strong gust of wind. And if you feel that, you got to run for cover because it's about to get crazy. The day-night cycle here is 24 hours and 
the nighttime is way more dangerous than the daytime because of those temperatures and the blizzards. And the main reason is because the blizzards can last for hours and hours at nighttime, while in the daytime, they typically only last for like 20 minutes. So far, the group that's been exploring this level, the BPC, has found three distinct zones. There might be more than this, but only 30% of the accessible parts in the level have even been explored, and three distinct zones is all that's been found so far. And they are the mountain ranges, the frozen lake, and the base. The mountain ranges are obviously the huge mountains that surround the lake. There are caves and caverns and crevices throughout these mountains, which make it really difficult and really strenuous to explore. People who fall into a crevice are immediately considered a lost cause, since there's practically no way to save them, no safe way at least. There's actually a mysterious substance inside of some of these crevices that are life-threatening, so that's cool. The caves in the mountains are actually a pretty safe spot to offer protection from a blizzard, and they're typically warm compared to the rest of the level and hover at about 36 degrees Fahrenheit. But the BPC considers these caves unsafe and unstable, so you can't really stay in there for too long. The frozen lake is the next zone, and it's exactly what it sounds like. The ice on top of the water is pretty much impossible to break with any tool that's been tried. However, there are some natural cracks in the ice where you can see the water, and it's a deep blue color, and there's been no living organisms seen. Samples of the ice have been examined, and there's actually a really dangerous amoeba that's been found inside of it. This amoeba has also been found in the snow on this level, and it poses a huge threat to you if the snow or the ice gets into an open wound or in your nose or in your mouth. If someone does get infected with it, a 27-day infection period starts. This is called the amoebic necrosis infection, and you won't even know you have it for the first couple weeks. But after that, it'll slowly make its way to your brain and cause a ton of symptoms ranging from a fever to seizures to complete organ failure after 27 days. Nice! But the BPC has created a medicine to combat this disease, and it's made out of almond water, a royal ration, and liquid from a megaflora. And this medicine has indeed been shown to get rid of the amoeba, so if you're infected, just go to them, I guess. The last section of the level is called the base, and this is pretty much the safest spot on the level. It's located at the base of the mountains between the mountains and the frozen lake, and there are a bunch of log cabins here, and these are the safest spots to hide from the blizzards. The cabins are just above freezing, so they're still cold kind of, but they're safe still, obviously. And they actually have electricity from an unknown source, as well as some basic furniture just laying around. Around the base section, there are also some fruit trees outside that grow fruit, which is interesting. Mainly, there are guava trees that can be harvested for food. Although one time, it was witnessed when a fruit was taken from the tree, the tree withered away after an hour. So it's kind of like a pick your poison thing. You can pick eating or you can pick getting rid of a food supply. These trees also have a slimy blue liquid inside of them that keeps them from freezing. And if a tree branch is cut off or something like that, this blue liquid will ooze out and that section of the tree will freeze. The only outposts here are the cabins that the BPC lives in to do research. And you can enter this level by getting into a snowstorm on level 39 and to be teleported here. And you can exit, theoretically, by running into a blizzard which can take you to level 790, but I'm not going to try that. Level 154 is classified as a class 5 survival difficulty and is very much unsafe, unsecure, and actually has a low entity count, despite what you might think. Because the entities here are not what's actually dangerous. It's the level itself. Because this is the level that's home to something called the Laser Game. More on what that is in a few minutes. I'm going to explain what the level looks like now. The level is physically made up of looping and winding hallways that go on forever. The hallways are made of stone, and they're all the exact same color, which is pitch black. And the only light in the level comes from these really dingy colored lights in the ceiling that don't even really put off light, kind of just a random glow. However, the main attraction of this level is the big open rooms where the laser game is played. Now these rooms all have doors with a specific symbol painted on them, and I'll get into what they mean in a second. But the entire level can be separated into two distinct parts, the corridors and the laser rooms. 
Obviously, the corridors are just the black stone hallways that I just talked about. And the laser rooms are, well, the laser rooms. The temperature in the hallway corridors is typically just lukewarm until you get closer to a laser room because then it starts to get hot. So that's kind of how you can decide if you're close or not or where you should go. It's also heavily recommended to carry a flashlight and maybe some powder or breadcrumbs with you so you can mark your path and not get lost in these infinite hallways because those are the only ways that you can escape the level and if you don't find them you're just going to be stuck here forever so you got to find those labeled doors because there's no water food or supplies on this level at all so now i'm going to talk about the laser rooms themselves obviously the laser rooms are where the laser games are located Behind each of those doors with those symbols on them, there's huge open rooms with a bunch of lasers pointing across it. Yeah, it's like some Mission Impossible stuff. Past these lasers, there's always a pedestal with a pendant on top of it. And this pendant is going to be in the same shape as the shape on the door. That's how they're coded together. You can probably guess where this is going, but your goal is to get to that pendant by crawling, jumping, or rolling under these lasers at all costs without getting hit and there's also a time limit for each room now obviously in most of these rooms you can hit a laser or get grazed by a laser and you'll be semi-okay just a little bit burnt but you probably wouldn't want to in some of them because the lasers are more powerful there so the goal is for when you and whoever you're with if you're with somebody when you both get to the pendant, you immediately grab it and touch it, both of you. And then you'll be teleported out of the laser room and back to level 1, which is where you came from. And that's how you get out of this level. And then once you touch it, you get to keep the pendant. The one you took will be immediately replaced by an identical one. Now this all sounds, you know, pretty easy, right? Just avoid the lasers, touch the pendant, and you'll be fine. Well... That's not really the case with all the rooms, which I'm going to get into the individual room types right now. The first room is called the line room, which has a straight blue line painted on the door. The lasers inside of this specific room stay still and they don't move, but they are the most powerful out of all the lasers because they just stay in one spot and they just beam constantly. Obviously, they can cause bad injuries and burns if touched, so don't. The line room has a lot more time on the clock than the other rooms typically. It starts a 60 second countdown the exact moment you walk into the room, so you don't have that much time. If you can't make it to the pedestal with the pendant in time, then the pendant will retract into the floor and you won't be able to get it. The lasers will turn off and then the door will unlock and you'll have to walk out. Now obviously, you might think that you get off the hook too easily, but you gotta think. Getting a pendant is the only way to get out of this level. So now that you didn't get the pendant, you're trapped here again and you have to go find another room and they're not even common, they're pretty rare. So you should never fail, you should try your hardest here. Now the line room is one of the easiest rooms because the lasers don't move and it's not that big of a space. So if you see it, I recommend going for it. Now the next room is called the circle room, which has a yellow circle painted on its door. And just like the line room, when you walk inside the room, the door slams behind you and locks itself. And you're stuck here until you win or until you lose. However, the lasers here are actually always moving, although they're moving pretty slowly, but they're still moving. And this circle room does not have a timer, which is nice. On top of that, the room itself is pretty small and the lasers themselves are pretty weak. They're actually the weakest out of all the rooms, so getting hit by one would just mean a minor scrape. You can even block these specific lasers with a thick non-reflective object, like a chair or a stool or something, you know, something sturdy. But this is the only room that that would work on because of how weak the lasers are. Now the next room after this is the triangle room, which has a red triangle painted on its door, and this is the smallest of all the rooms because it's the most dangerous. This room has a puzzle inside of it that's made up of seven prisms that have to be aligned in a certain order to block the lasers, which is cool if you're smart. If you're not, you might be screwed. If you come into the triangle room, you can't even leave until the prism is solved, and there's no timer, so you could just be stuck in there. So for this reason, it's not recommended to try this room at all, because some people might not be smart enough to solve the puzzles. The second to last room is the square room, 
and it's marked with a green square on the door. This room is seemingly impossible to escape through, because the lasers are so close together that humans just can't squeeze through without getting hurt. But apparently, some people have actually made it through, but no one knows how they did it, so there's gotta be some like cheat or some puzzle to solve, but so far, no one knows how to get through. Don't go in a square room, alright? Now the last room is called the Pentagon Room, which has a pink pentagon painted on its door. And this one is by far the easiest for pretty much everyone, depending on the Wanderer. It involves running, like sprinting. When you step foot in the Pentagon Room, behind you, the laser will start, and it will start to move forward. So the second you open that door, you gotta start running as fast as you can to the end of the room where the pedestal is, because that laser is gonna be going, and if you get caught by that laser wall, man, it's over. And this room is pretty much just a test of physical strength and agility. It's pretty much like the storm in Fortnite, just moving right behind you constantly, but faster. But that being said, if you trust in yourself to run at all, this is definitely the easiest room to escape the level in. Now to enter this level, there's only one way, and it's from following these colored bulbs in random areas of level 1 that match the colors of the pendants. And then you'll be led to the entrance to here. And you can only exit the level by touching and grabbing the pendants past one of the lasers in the laser rooms. Which will take you back to level 1 where you came from. I guess the cool thing is you can keep the pendant as kind of a trophy. It's not magic or anything, but it's pretty cool. So Backroom's level negative exclamation mark is classified as a class 3 and is still unsafe and unsecure, but instead of being infested with entities, it's actually got a low entity count. Now this level is named actually the Reversed Hospital, and it looks like a long blue hallway with bright blue lights in the roof. The hallway itself is around 12 miles long, or 20 kilometers, so it's actually a little longer than level run for your life. But that's not a huge problem, since you don't have terrifying monsters chasing you. Now along both the left and the right sides of the hallway, there are doorways. Most of them are locked, but occasionally you'll run across one that's not locked and it's just open. And if you go in there, you'll see a very liminal looking hospital room. These rooms are said to look just like ones you'd see in real life in a doctor's office or a hospital, and they've got beds and couches and sometimes even TVs, but they actually don't have any medical equipment, which is pretty strange. Now in some of the rooms, there are actually windows on the opposite sides of the wall from the doorway, but it's not recommended to go near those because they could be window entities. So unless you want to get sucked in, don't go near. Now in these rooms, there are some cabinets with a few small supplies like first aid kits and gauze and that kind of thing. But there's also some pretty strange stuff there as well. Specifically, there are weird pills that are in these cabinets and in these containers that aren't like ones from real life. So they're not like Tylenol or anything. They'll be weirdly named and shaped and they'll have strange effects on you if you take them. I don't know why you'd take a random looking pill, but whatever. Some people have said they feel an extra urge to take them, even if they've never taken one of these pills or not, they feel like they should. And on top of that, wanderers who have actually used these pills have never been seen to escape the level and have actually never been seen again. So, I would not recommend taking them. Now alongside the med kits in the cabinets, there might also be some almond water or even some liquid pain. And there's even a chance to find cashew water and royal rations. So pretty much as long as you play it cool, you're gonna be fine in these rooms. Just don't drink liquid pain and don't take mystery pills. Now adult facelings are pretty common on this level, but they don't just wander around randomly like most facelings. They're actually dressed up in doctors and nurses outfits and they walk around kind of like they're in a real hospital. And when they're in this state, they're not dangerous at all. They're literally so docile and friendly that you could probably just punch one of them and they wouldn't do anything, but there's still something dangerous about them. Even when they're being nice, they still try to bring those mystery pills that I just talked about to you. Any person they see, they'll bring these pills to and they'll try to get you to take them. So whatever you do, whatever you gotta do, just ignore them. Do not take them. But these facelings aren't just running around like doctors all day though, because there's actually an event that happens on this level that I'll talk about in a second where it can actually get 
pretty dangerous. Not as dangerous as the main level exclamation mark, but still pretty deadly. When you first get to this level, you'll get a sense of peace and you'll feel really safe, to be honest, like nothing could get you. You'll actually be the only person on this level when you're here, just like the main part of level exclamation mark, because only one person can be here at a time. But the level isn't just sunshine and rainbows, and uh, I'll get into that now. For example, any communications like radios and Wi-Fi and that kind of thing, none of it works here. Like, no technology at all will work in this level. Also, parts of the ceiling are falling down and decaying, and some of the tiles above you could just fall on your head. So watch out for that. But none of that compares to the event that happens here called the blackout, which is pretty much where all the lights randomly shut off. Now, this blackout effect actually happens on other backrooms levels as well, like level 33. It's unknown why it happens, but it could mean that the backrooms are tied to the same power source or something like that. Who knows? We haven't even documented it yet. But anyways, the lights will just randomly shut off and the facelings that were nice earlier will start chasing you and being super aggressive. On top of that, if you're in one of those hospital rooms that I talked about, the door will shut and it'll lock you in there until the blackout ends. Outside of the rooms, the facelings will start to become aggressive and start chasing you. And unless you have a flashlight, they won't stop chasing you. That's the only way you can ward them off. Plus, you're gonna need a flashlight if you wanna see anything, cause when the blackout happens, it's dark. There are also a couple more entities here, uh, but these are rarely seen, but it's still good to note them. There's an occasional skin stealer, even a smiler or a hound can be seen as well, and also the window entities from the rooms. And during the blackout part of this level, those entities also seem to come out of nowhere to chase you. So just be careful and be vigilant and you should be all right. So just like the normal level exclamation mark, there is an exit door at the end of the hallway. So that's where you're gonna wanna go as fast as you can. Don't dilly dally around, don't waste any time. Walk the length of the hallway to get to the end. There are other exits, however, like you can no clip into a door to be sent to level exclamation mark, which would be terrible. And sometimes you can no clip through the floor itself to be sent to level 11, which is a pretty good way to go, to be honest. Now, if you go through the exit door at the end of the hallway, you'll just be sent to a random level. However, most people have claimed that you'll be sent to only a safe level. That's not confirmed, but that's what people think. Now, to enter this level, there's a chance you can go through the exit door on the regular level exclamation mark to be sent here, or you can run saveme.exe on a computer in the end's library to be sent here. So yeah. This is a blue light hospital hallway type area that's pretty safe until all the lights go out and entities start chasing you. It's like a slightly more safe version of the normal level exclamation mark with its own unique dangers, like the random medicine and the facelings and the window entities. Pretty cool. Let me know what you thought of it down below. So Backrooms level 668 is classified as a class liminal with this Y looking logo next to it. And it's very unstable with no established colonies. Now keep that IES part, that eyes part in your head for later because it'll be useful. So that Y shaped symbol is actually a poly gamma function symbol, which is a fancy math term that I'm not smart enough to understand. But yeah, it's important to the level because the entire place is very glitchy, volatile, and corrupted. The level's page was written by a wanderer who explored the level, and it starts off with calling level 668 scene 01.8. And it says this scene, 01.8, is classified as a Y-ranked scene of the dev rooms and was discovered on October 17th, 1989. Now pause for a second. I know that all sounds crazy and weird. Like what are the dev rooms? What is all that stuff? I'm going to simplify it down right now. So this scene or reality that you first see when you get to this level as a whole is actually a sub-level of the entire dev rooms, which is just a conglomerate of the sub-levels or realities put together. I'll be explaining all the other sub-levels and realities later on this video. There'll be timestamps if you want to skip to them, but this first scene, 01.8, is the first sub-level in this dev room scene. So yeah, this first specific scene, or 01.8, takes the appearance of a picture that you might see at the eye doctor. 
One of those images with an outstretched road or a field or a river or something like that sprawling out in front of you. That's what the first part of the level looks like. And this specific scene can actually be divided into two different areas itself. The road and the field of wheat surrounding the road. These areas can be fully interacted with and walked on or explored, but you probably shouldn't. And I'll explain a little bit why in a second. But for now, I'll talk about the rest of this scene's layout. The road is said to be endless, and it goes on forever, over the horizon, and there's never an end to it. And from the start of it, it looks completely straight. But as you walk on it further and get further along on your course, you actually might notice that there's curves and hills and dips and mountains like that and that kind of stuff. But the level doesn't show it on the outside, you can only experience it once you get to it. Because from the start, it just looks straight. This effect is caused by some kind of mental hazard that this level gives you and anyone who comes here. It kind of clouds your vision, it kind of makes you uneasy and unsure. This effect hasn't been studied much, we just know that it might make you hallucinate stuff. That's all we know. The physical road itself, like the material on the road, can also change depending on where you're at in the level. For instance, at the start of the level, it could look like just a dirt road, but as you go on, there might be concrete or gravel or whole highways or bridges. That can be pretty much any combination of road that you can imagine. So not only the roads are changing material and design, the stuff on the side of the roads also changes. And some have reported seeing an ocean on both sides of the road. But the most common environment to see is a road with wheat on each side. And because of this, these have been nicknamed the Field of Wheat, which might be referencing level 10's name, the Field of Wheat, I'm not sure. But if you paid attention to the beginning of the video when I went over the level's classification, you'll notice that it didn't say anything about how dangerous this level actually is. Spoiler alert, it's really dangerous. Specifically, the left side of the road is extremely dangerous and is a huge threat to any wanderer who comes here. And all people who have walked off on that direction of the road have never been seen again and have been reported missing, except for one single person. And this person said that as soon as they stepped foot off of the road to their left, they lost their vision completely. Their eyes just went pitch black, they couldn't see anything. On top of losing the eyesight, which is horrible as it is, they say the level also gives you this irresistible urge that drags you away from the road. It's almost like there's a magnet pulling you away and you just feel like you should walk away from the road. But for some reason, this one wanderer was lucky enough to get back to the main part of the road by resisting that urge and finding their way back while being blind, which is impressive. Once they got back to the road, they got their eyesight back, and it's safe to say they never stepped off of it again. So, I've explained the roads and the stuff surrounding the road. Now, I'll talk about the thing that's off in the distance in front of everyone that comes here. So, most of the time, people report seeing hot air balloons or a house or a bridge or something like that off in the distance, just like in those eye doctor tests from real life. Whatever it is is normally a really bright color, and you can really know it's there. It's very vibrant. But the only problem is... It seems that no matter how far you walk on this road and down towards the object, you never get closer to the object. It stays the same distance away. This can also mess with your head because your brain thinks you've walked miles and miles and explored forever, but in reality, you haven't technically moved any closer to that object. Nice. But on some rare occasions, there have been some reports of the object being physical and explorable, and some people have gone into the houses, but they almost never are. So don't get your hopes up. When you look around on this level, your field of vision will also have a very weird effect. It's another phenomenon that makes this level even more dangerous because it seems that your field of view is more circular, like you're looking through an eye test. You can't really see out of your peripheral that well, it's just right in front of you, whatever you can see. Which again, makes this place even more dangerous. And the further you go down on this road, the more distorted your surroundings will get, and the more derealization effects that you'll eventually start to feel. Now on top of all this, the good news is, there aren't any entities. Hooray! And there are no bases or civilizations here because it's uninhabitable and you can't sustain life. You know, with the going blind if you step off the road thing. It might make it slightly hard to set a base here. So now I'm going to talk about some other scenes that can be accessed by walking along this road for long enough. These scenes are very glitchy, very unexplored, and very unknown, and we only have a few to go over, which I'm getting into right now. The next dev room that has been discovered is seemingly made up of different types of buildings. Report A says that one of the buildings is a hospital, 
which is a collective term for these non-Euclidean white hallways that seem to be hospital hallways. Like I said, these areas are very glitchy and you'll find yourself not really being able to walk around because you'll constantly be stepping in different places. For instance, if you step forward, you'll actually turn around and walk backwards. It's very unexplorable because of how non-Euclidean the geometry is. The hospital also has very bright lights inside that offer this weird blurry static in the air. It also makes you very disoriented if you stare for long enough. Report B, or the metal, is actually a cavity made out of a bunch of different metal frames that you can explore. Report C, or roadception, is when a type of road appears right in front of you in this scene, and it's between a collapsed and an uncollapsed state. And if you walk on one of these in-between roads, you'll eventually step out onto a completely different one, and you won't be able to go back to the previous one. It's kind of like a road randomizer. If you think about it that way, it makes a little bit more sense. But if you see a gravel road in front of you that's all glitchy, you step on it, then you take another step, it might be a dirt road, then you take another step, it might be a concrete road. It just goes like that for the foreseeable future. And that is Report C, or, or Roadception. Now, Report D is actually a military hospital, but it's spelled... Uh, like this. Hashtag, hashtag, asterisk, null 014 military hospital. Yeah, I know, it's, it's weird. But this actually might be referring to the enigmatic level 14, or the military hospital level, that's on the wiki dot and has been found before. Maybe it's somehow crossed over with level 668? I don't know, it's a very enigmatic and glitchy level on its own, so it makes sense that it's coupled together with this really weird, glitchy, and enigmatic level on its own too. Level 14 is a very weird level, it's not the normal 14 you know, it's very strange. I don't have an explanation on it, but I'll link one in the description for you. All you need to know is that this area of the dev rooms is very glitchy and it's very unexplored, so if you see a military hospital, don't go walking in it. There are two more reports, FFF, O, FFF, and E, both of which are null and corrupted. Cool. So to get to these scenes from the original scene, you have to find a mirror inside of a room along the first road, no clip into it, and you could have a chance to be sent to any of those areas I just talked about. To exit, you have to find a red and white walled house alongside the road, go into it, and then you'll be sent back to the very beginning of the scene to hopefully find an escape. After this, the rest of the article is full of nonsensical rambles that seem to hint at the level's danger. Some of the pages say run away or leave with these weird glitchy animations, so it's probably telling you you shouldn't come to the level. Now this picture right here is the last ever picture taken of the level where the grass seems to be turned purple and the sky turned neon green and everything seems to be fully corrupted and glitchy. The level has not been accessed since this picture was taken. And the final message of the wanderer who explored this level is very scary. It says, the truth is in my horizon with this picture attached. Scary stuff. Let me know your theories on it down below in the comments. Backrooms level 64 is classified as a class 3 survival difficulty and is unsafe and unsecure with a very low entity count. Specifically, there is one type of entity here that I'll touch on in the entity section, but mainly it's the level and the level's properties that are going to be dangerous to you. The level in its simplest form takes the appearance of an infinite house with very dysfunctional lighting, and that's just a fancy way of saying that it's dark. The level has many, many rooms and hallways and staircases and stories to it, and it seems like a house of horror that you might go through in your dreams. No matter where you go, there's going to be another door or a staircase leading to another brand new part that you haven't seen before. It just keeps going and going. The walls of the level have decorations on them, like ones you'd see from real life, you know, paintings and portraits and that kind of thing, and everything seems like a house. Now, as I said, the entire level is very dark, but it's not that there's no lights that work. I mean, there's lights in the ceiling. It's just that the darkness is like a real thing. It's an effect and it absorbs all light sources, which leaves the level in a kind of dark glow type thing. If you try to use a flashlight or your phone or something like that to light your way, it will not light up very bright. And unless you can see you really well in really dim and dark situations, you're not gonna be able to see much. The structure and layout of this house changes when no one is looking. And the document specifically says when no sentient being is looking. So that means that when anything that's alive is not 
opening their eyes or looking around, the level will change its layout like a giant Rubik's Cube. And it's not just the layout, it also changes its decorations and design and everything. And this effect will cause wanderers to feel mass amounts of anxiety and paranoia, and you kind of just feel like something's watching you from the darkness every time this happens. This level also often induces the feelings of nyctophobia, which is the irrational fear of the dark. And even if you don't have that now, when you get to this level, it'll probably give it to you. The furniture inside of the level seems to be pretty normal compared to real life, and the only really different thing is that they're all covered in mold and rot. Everything is just decaying, it seems, and it gives off a really disgusting smell to the whole level. There's also dust all over every surface you touch here, and even when the level layout changes and it shifts how it looks, there's still dust. The hallways in this level are pretty small and very strange, and they often lead to other empty, strange rooms. Some parts of the level are completely 100% dark, but in other parts, there's this kind of dark glow that lights everything up just barely, like when you squint really hard, you'll be able to see. But most of the level is fully dark. There's also some weird anomalies with the nature of this level, and you'll start to notice them when you walk around and try to escape it. Specifically, the geometry, of course, is very non-Euclidean, as a lot of backrooms levels are. Some of the hallways have been reported to be upside down, as well as some of the staircases upside down, and many of the fixtures have been seen on the ceiling, and everything's inverted of how it should really be, and it's just very, very confusing to be in. Nothing makes sense. And it makes even less sense that everything changes when you go in a fully dark spot and can't see, or when you blink and look away. If you physically cannot see anything, the level is changing right before your eyes. There's also sections of the hallways in this house that appear to be voids. Like the hallways themselves are voids that you can walk through. Black voids. So this entire house in general is very dangerous because you could get trapped in these dark spots and have to just feel your way around. Kind of like how level 6 is completely dark, except this level, you're confined to these houses and rooms and hallways. The only entity that's been seen on this level is one that's been nicknamed the Lurkers. And in an essence, these are large humanoid worm-like creatures that are around 6 feet tall. Kind of a cross between a human, a worm, and a centipede. Some of them have been reported as being 20 feet tall, which is a little crazy, but who knows? It's the back rooms. Lurkers have a ton of little legs on the bottom of them that kind of help them walk up and down and crawl on surfaces that you wouldn't think would be possible. And they hide in the extremely dark spots in this level. The good news is, is that they're pretty rare to find, and they only attack if they see you. It actually seems like they cannot hear at all, like they don't have ears or anything, so they don't use sound to hunt, they use some sort of nighttime vision in their eyes, like dogs and cats have in real life, to hunt their prey. And if they see you, they will attack on sight, so just be wary of that. But yeah, that's the only entity that you might be able to see. If you avoid the pitch black areas, you should be safe, I hope. Now the level's effects of changing and shifting aren't just for you, they also are the same for these entities. So if you see a creature and then you look away, the level will shift and you won't see it anymore because it'll be moved. The only problem is, you will also be moved and your entire surroundings will look different and it's gonna be really hard to explore when you have no idea where you are. So through an unknown means, level 64 can actually transform itself back into a normal sized house that's not infinite at all anymore. And it does this completely randomly without any warning, like it just shrinks down to a regular house. And it never lasts for long, but this is the most important stage of the house of shifting because during this stage is the only opportunity you have to make your exit. As far as bases go on this level, there are actually several ruins of old abandoned bases that are inside deep hallways and deep basement areas from previous groups that have tried to put up camp and stay here, but because of lurkers attacking and the level changing so much, they had to leave. But to be honest, I don't know why you would set a base up here. That doesn't seem like a good idea.
Level 61 of the back rooms has been given the totally comforting classification of a class 4 difficulty, which means the level is unsafe, unsecure, and explain. Also, there's a medium entity count too, which I'll go in depth about in the entity section, so just wait for that. The main level takes the appearance of a series of trains and train cars on an infinite track. The entire level is infinite, and it seems to randomly generate new data as it moves along. When you first get sent to the level, you'll be at the front of a train, where the train conductor might be in real life, you know, the very front. You'll notice that the train doesn't seem to be too old. In fact, it looks clean and sleek and really fresh. And since you started here at the front, you're probably going to want to start to explore the other train cars behind you. But you should be very cautious about doing that, because crossing between train cars is extremely dangerous, and it could lead to you flying off the train and landing outside of the train. The only way to cross is this tiny little path. Just go for it at your own risk. The train itself is moving very fast, and with one wrong step, you could miss and slip off and fly into the surrounding void of the train, but more on the outside part later. But if somehow you do manage to get to the next car behind you, you can explore it. The first car you'll get to will look like a normal passenger train car. There are seats and benches and tables and bars to hang on to when you're standing, and typical train stuff. The floor is clean and sterile smelling, and everything feels empty and completely clean. Almost to the point where it all feels fake, like AI generated or something. For the first few cars of this infinite train, they'll all be similar to this one. Just really clean, normal looking train cars with seats. But further back, the cars will start to turn into sleeping quarters and other rooms like dining rooms and bunk rooms. The bunk rooms have small beds on either side and sometimes there are bunk beds too. And the dining areas typically have a bench seating style with a table in the middle. Again, in these areas, everything seems spotless and like brand new, almost like it's never been touched before. It's very clean, very empty, and very liminal. There are also less windows in these deeper places like the bedrooms and the dining rooms than there are at the front. After you get past those sleeping quarters and the dining rooms, the level starts to lose its clean charm, and things start to look weirder and more dangerous, and they kind of get older. In fact, the level seems to go back in time the further you walk back into the train. And what I mean by that is the actual train itself, like the decorations and all that, will slowly age to an older time period the further back you go. The front of the train where you started is new and clean and fresh and all that stuff, but the further back you go, it'll start to look older and ancient and that kind of thing. Now, it's actually unknown if time itself goes back when you venture further on the train, or if the train itself just changes. We're not sure. These older areas that look almost abandoned are very rough and dark and uncomfortable to be in. They're loud and they're dirty, and you can really feel how fast the train's moving in these areas. It's also inside of these older areas where the most dangerous entity of the level lives. These entities are called camo crawlers, and these are ones that have been in the backroom's lore for, I guess, two years now. They're extremely unsettling. They take the appearance of a very vague, large humanoid shape with four spindly arms. They have the ability to blend in with any changing environment that they're on, just like an octopus or a chameleon from real life. They can change their skin color and shadows to match perfectly with their surroundings. They have massive white eyes on their face and huge ear slits that they use to hear the prey coming, and they almost rely fully on those ear slits for hunting. These camel crawlers can range anywhere from 3 to 8 feet tall, and they really like to attach themselves to the roof of things and then drop down onto prey. So on this level, they hide in the dark corners of the train cars on the roof and wait for unsuspecting wanderers to walk back and sit down or fall asleep or something, then they'll jump off and they'll pounce. The good news is, they seem to be pretty rare, and they don't really attack that often, but if you do run into one, you're more likely to run into an occasional hound or an occasional smiler as well. Both of those are dangerous, but by this point in the back rooms, you're probably used to them, I would assume. But as I said, the train is literally infinite, so you could just walk back forever and ever and never reach the end of it. But what happens if you fall off the train and end up outside of that train?
Well, the outside area seems to be randomly generated when you're inside of the train. Like, you'll be able to look out the window and see almost like it's loading new chunks from a, like a video game. You know, on Minecraft, when you're loading a new part of the world and the chunks are loading, that's what it looks like when you're looking outside from the inside of the train. But when you fall off the train and are on the outside, you'll see that everything is actually black, like a void. Your entire surroundings are blacked out, as far as you can see. And the only light is coming from the trains that speed past and random street lamps that are there as well. But when you're out here, you'll not only notice that black void, you'll see other trains speeding past you, going the opposite direction. You'll notice that the trains don't look as big as they feel, they just look like normal sized trains, but when you're inside of one, they go back infinitely. Which is just another thing of non-Euclidean spaces in the back rooms. The floor of this void outside area seems to be some kind of black concrete that just goes out for infinity, with these railroads just inside of the concrete. It's just a black, infinite void with trains running through it. Not many people actually see the level in this state, though, because oftentimes when you jump off the train, it'll cause you to no-clip through the ground to another level. You have to fall off just right to be able to see it like this. But of course, I'm Brugley, so I can tell you all about it. But yeah, the natural form of this outside area is just a void with trains driving for eternity in all directions. To enter this level, you need to sleep inside of the upper segment of level 60, and you can exit by jumping off an old part of the train, or you can wait for a train to stop randomly, and then you'll be sent to level 11. But the train stopping is really rare, it almost never happens. But besides the camo crawlers and falling out of the train, the real danger is just the trains themselves when you're trying to make your way around them when you fall off one. They're moving so fast, you kind of have to parkour your way around and, and just try to survive, I guess. But yeah, hope you enjoyed that. Backrooms level 1.618033988779498894 or Midas's touch is classified as a class this symbol and is unsafe, unstable, and has body altering hazards. You'll hear all about those later if you're interested. The level goes by another name too, which is level Phi. Now, Phi is this symbol that's in the beginning of the level, and it's actually the first letter in the real-life Greek alphabet. It often represents wave functions in quantum mechanics, like the golden ratio. I'm not going to pretend like I know what that is, but what is the golden ratio, you may ask? Well, it's the long number in the name of the level, the 1.6 one that I'm not going to keep saying because it's too long. Now that Bruegley's math class is over, let's talk about the level description. The level takes the appearance of a massive warehouse with pipes running along its walls. The pipes have a soft rushing noise coming from inside of them, and they're always warm to the touch. Windows are also a common thing to find in this warehouse, and they're always whited out with bright light coming through them. You can't see what's on the outside, it just seems like there's LED lights shining in on you. Alongside the warehouse area, there are a few other ones, like hallways and offices and storage areas, and they seem to be randomly generated where they are. None of them make sense, it's kind of just mumbled and jumbled together. But that's a pretty common thing inside the back rooms. Nothing crazy. What is not common in the back rooms is that everything inside this level is made out of gold. Pure clean gold. On top of this, the level also shares the strange non-linear layout that level zero has, where you could be walking in a straight line and you'll end up in a different set of rooms completely because of the geometry. Inside of some of the rooms, there are objects like tools and vests and hard hats and stuff like that, and just other typical warehouse stuff. But again, all of that is made out of pure gold as well. The gold on everything is very well polished and shiny, and it reflects that blinding light coming in from the windows to the point where it's pretty hard to see it sometimes. Now, even though the gold is, you know, pretty to look at, it actually makes this level one of the most dangerous environments levels out there because of its properties. When you stay in this level for long enough, you yourself will begin to slowly turn into pure solid gold. You might have heard of the Midas's touch from history or the, the epic that's on this level. That's pretty much what this level is. The process seems to have five phases in it and it starts just days after being stuck here. And just so you can get all the gory details, I'm gonna go over each phase right now. You're welcome. Phase 
phase one is the first 48 hours of being in this level. Now, you typically won't show any symptoms of turning yet, but just after the first day, you'll start to see small flakes of gold forming on your skin, and this strange yellow discoloration appear on your fingers. Now, once you start seeing these symptoms, you need to get out of the level fast, and I'm going to talk about how to do that in the exit portion. Hold tight. Phase two is around the three-day mark and the flakes of gold that were on your skin are bigger and thicker, almost like scales, and they're more abundant. And that yellow discoloration from your fingers has turned into some kind of golden rings encapsulating your fingertips. Your arms and legs will start to feel heavy, and it'll be harder to use them. This is your last chance to escape. Now, phase three and four are a couple of days after the previous one, about a week after. And at this point, your legs have turned into solid gold, and your hands are almost fully gold as well, and the rest of your body is becoming harder with more sheets of golden flakes. And by the end of this first week, the only thing left is your beating heart and your head. Now, phase five is the worst, of course, and you'll end up falling down in this phase because of all the weight of the gold around you. Your neck and your head will start to become encapsulated with gold, and the rest of your insides will too. You will then pretty much become ingrained into the floor of the level that you're laying on, you know, because you just fell over from the weight, and you'll start to melt and mend together with the floor, and you'll become a part of the rest of the gold on this level mixed together with other poor souls who couldn't escape. So with all that fun info out of the way, let's talk about the ways you could slow down this infection and how you can escape. So the process can be slowed, but it can only be slowed, not stopped. And it's done so by pouring almond water on the affected areas where the golden flakes start to form. Now this could give you long enough to reach the exit safely, but so if you see that gold forming, you literally need to run to an exit. But if you don't want to even risk anything, you could technically bring some kind of object to stand on the entire time, like a uh, rolling office chair or a shopping cart or something. This will keep you off the ground and you'll still be able to move around and it'll stop the direct contact with the golden floor. Now that object you bring will start to turn to gold itself, but it turning into gold is slower and better than you turning into gold. Now, if you have golden flakes on you when you leave the level, they'll stay there for actually a week or so until they shrivel up and fall off. A lot of people actually use these as like a currency. They kind of collect them and use them as this really valuable thing, like a rite of passage. That's not really crazy info. I just thought you should know. It's pretty cool, actually. Now, if you thought this level couldn't get any weirder, you'd be wrong, of course, because across the depths of this level are strange liquid puddles of this golden substance laying on the floor. It's also dripping from the ceiling, too. And this liquid is a seemingly non-Newtonian liquid, like that goo from your childhood that if you punch, it rejects you, but if you softly touch it, you can go through it. And it's thought to be produced when this level is turning a liquid into gold. So if someone spilt water or something on the level, that would turn to liquid gold as well. So nothing is safe from this level's Midas's touch. Now, further beyond the warehouse and the hallways and the offices and the storage rooms, there are even stranger indoor areas called the ruins. These look to be an ancient style of ruin that take the appearance of Roman or Greek architecture. And of course, all of this is made out of gold too. But here it's not solid gold. It's actually all golden flakes and dust. So for some reason, the ruins transform into gold way slower than everything else. That's all. Literally nothing else is known about this. It's weird that they exist. We don't know who built them. Why don't they turn into gold like you do? We don't know. Now, the last warning I have for you on this level is that there might be golden dust floating around in the air. And if you breathe it in, you can accelerate the gold spreading from your nose and your mouth to the rest of your body, causing your insides to turn to gold faster. The way to stop it is by wearing some kind of mask or shirt wrapped around your nose. Now for the question you've all been wondering this whole time, how does one escape this level before turning into a golden statue and then melting into the floor? Well, you can actually no clip into a pipe to be sent back to level two, but this is a form of escape that's really finicky and it doesn't always work. In fact, you might just bust the pipe, which will cause spewing gold dust to be all over you, and then it'll cause you to pretty much turn very fast. So you could try that at your own risk. And there's another listed exit on the level that's hidden in the document that says, quote, phasing through the floor can occasionally take one to the true manifestation of the golden ratio. 
So whatever that means, I, I wouldn't try no clipping into the floor because I, I don't want to go to the true manifestation of the golden ratio. Unless you're clinically insane, you, you probably shouldn't go either. And to enter this level, for whatever reason, if you want to get some cool gold stuff, you can walk through a door with the Phi symbol on it, or you can accidentally no clip into a golden color box on level one to be sent here. Either way, you probably shouldn't do it on purpose because the exits aren't guaranteed and you might end up being turned into gold and absorbed by the level. Good luck. So first up, the document starts with an exploration log that was found on this level. The log is between two explorers and the two people are wandering through the woods of the level when they come across an apple tree. But the apple tree just looks off to them. It's bigger than apples from real life and it's leaking some kind of strange juice. Thinking nothing is wrong, one wanderer just bites into the apple and after that, they knew that they did the wrong thing. The apple tastes off and it starts leaking that weird substance. The wanderer then starts to convulse and to purge repeatedly. She falls down and her skin starts to split apart and her bones start to shift and multiply into multiple legs and arms. Her face starts to morph and distort and she grows pincers and legs. The other wanderer that she was with watches in horror at what's happening to their friend and freaks out because their friend just turned into some kind of human centipede creature. So he drops his apple, runs away as fast as possible, and he's almost in the clearing until he trips. And you can guess what the centipede does next. So yeah, that was the intro log. What a great way to start off the level. You know, I definitely wanna go there now. It seems really safe. Now it's time for the level description. Level 65 of the back rooms is the 66th level. And it's been classified as a class four difficulty being very unsafe, very unsecure with a medium dangerous entity count. The level itself has been split into five specific parts. The main area, the apple trees, the mouths, the centipedes, and the stump. So first I'm gonna explain the main area so you can kind of get a sense of what we're dealing with. Level 65 is a constantly foggy and misty forest that has a bunch of different types of trees scattered throughout it. The trees seem to all be a reddish color and their leaves are also dark red. Across this forest landscape, a thick, humid fog stagnates through the level, which makes it really hard to see out in front of you or really hard to see above you. There's no other weather besides a cool breeze that blows through the forest which keeps the temperature at a nice, chill, fall-like temperature. The trees inside this level are not regular trees uh, because they seem to be carnivorous, as in they literally eat meat. What kind of meat do they eat, you might ask? Well, it's specifically the meat of individuals who don't make it out of the level. Their corpses being absorbed into the ground by the tree's roots. So far, we have giant centipedes, weird poisonous apples, and carnivorous trees. Nice. Speaking of the ground though, it's littered with red leaves and those oversized centipedes, some of which have been measured to be over six feet long, which is totally not horrific. No, it's totally fine. Anyways, that's the main part of the level, a red colored misty forest with cannibal trees. Now I'm gonna talk about the apple tree section. So the blood apple trees on this level manifest themselves evenly in evenly spaced rows. Each row is approximately 15 feet apart from the other row. And from the outside perspective, they just look like an apple orchard with red trees and apples. Nothing too crazy. But it's when you start looking at the actual apples that you notice something is off. The apples on the trees are very anomalous and, and like I said, they seem to leak this red, vicious liquid. The liquid is very similar to stuff that comes out of our veins, but it's thought to be from animals. But just know that you should never eat any apples that you find on this level. Don't touch or bite or lick the apples because what well, you saw in the log, what would happen? You'll start to turn sick and you'll start convulsing and you'll eventually crack yourself into a centipede shape and then you'll be a person but you'll also be a centipede pretty scary to think about to be honest but once a person eats an apple or touches an apple and starts to purge and throw up that's when they're completely lost and they can't be saved no matter how hard you try not even almond water could save them there the next part of the level is the mouths yes the mouths 
These are really rare areas in the ground of the level that look like large, fleshy pits. They're around 9 feet in diameter, and they're an unknown depth, and they take the appearance of a circle, and it looks like a mouth. From far off, the openings just look like cave openings, but when you get closer, you'll notice that the mouths are covered in a flesh-like material, and sometimes you can see bits of matter swirling down their esophaguses, or esophagi, if you want to be fancy. Now, it's obvious that you shouldn't go near these mouths unless you want to fall in and never be seen again. The origin and the purpose of these fleshy pits are unknown, but there are some theories that have emerged that could explain them. One theory is that the level feeds directly through these mouths, and just like the trees that feed from the ground here, they soak in human bodies into themselves uh, to somehow fuel the level. Others think that the level is some sort of giant super creature, and the mouths are just openings to its insides. Either way, it is pretty disgusting to see a biological mouth in the ground, in the woods. That is pretty terrifying. Some other weird things have happened surrounding the mouths as well. A common occurrence is to hear screaming coming from inside the mouths. Now, the screaming is either disembodied or it could be from somebody who fell in. We don't know, but hearing echoing screams through flesh mouths in the middle of the woods is definitely nightmare fuel. So moving on past the mouths to the next part of the level, which is the centipedes. Now, these can be normal sized, like a few inches long to, like I said, up to six feet long, and they are very aggressive entities. They'll chase you the second they see you. They're also very quick, and they can climb things, uh, so you're pretty much screwed if one sees you. In a gross twist of fate, some wanderers have actually managed to unalive a centipede in self-defense, and they've noticed that the inside of the centipede, inside of the skin, is a full human skeleton in the shape of a centipede that's been morphed into that shape, which is absolutely disgusting. But I guess it makes sense because it happens when you eat the apple and that red juice inside of it. Again, it is unknown how this happens, why it happens, or the biological process into how the humans transition into centipedes and how the bones crack to take the shape. We just don't know. All we know is that it's extremely dangerous to encounter these creatures. The last part of the level is known as the stump which in and of itself is a very deep area inside the level. It looks like a cleanly cut black stump that has a bunch of anomalies that surround it. For example, when you get close to said stump, you'll experience sensory issues and things will start to look distorted and broken. You'll be really disoriented and you'll start to panic. After this, you'll begin to hear auditory hallucinations and see visual hallucinations pop in and out of your peripheral vision. And of course, literally, no one knows why this happens, but some people have even reported seeing silhouettes of dark human figures crawl out of the ground near the stump when the hallucinations start. Again, it's not known if it's a hallucination or if there are actual shadow creatures there. But when these hallucinations start, everything around you begins to turn a deep crimson red. The trees become black silhouettes, and everything becomes this derealization effect of this red horror. So if you encounter the stump, the best thing you can do is to instantly run the opposite way so you don't get trapped in its circumference of hallucinations. The stump itself seems to call wanderers to it and kind of lure them its way, which is why it's really hard to escape once you're there. Because of these attributes, this has led people to believe that the stump is sentient somehow, or maybe the core of the level. Other than a few theories, no one knows why the stump does this, or how it does this. It's just one of those things in the back rooms that we'll never understand. To enter this level, you can walk through a pair of wooden gates on any outdoor backrooms level. And to exit, you have to do the same thing, and you have to find a wooden gate tucked away deep into the level. Just make sure it's not near a tree, or a mouth, or a stump, or a centipede. Actually, just make sure it's not near anything, because you probably want to make it out alive, right? This level was actually really good, and it's actually one of my favorites in a long time. You know, the dark liminality of the woods, mixed with the horror of the centipedes, and the mouths, and the apples, mixed with the psychological aspects of the stump, it makes this entire thing really good. Seriously, this is a great level. Go check it out if you're interested. It gets the Brugley stamp of approval, for sure.
Akram's level 4.4 is classified as a class 5B difficulty and is very unsafe for human life. And it has several environmental dangers. Now I'm gonna have to censor a lot of stuff in this part so YouTube doesn't strike me down where I stand, so just bear with me and try to enjoy it. Level 4.4 is very similar to the regular level 4. It's almost like a copy, pretty much. There's open office rooms, there's hallways, there's dimly lit corridors, and everything like that. Except there are two huge glaring differences that you'll notice very fast. So this sublevel is way smaller and less expansive than its main counterpart of level 4. That's the first difference. The other difference is that it has a reddish hue to it. Now what do I mean by this reddish hue that's all over the office walls and floors and ceilings and everything? I'm talking about this red juice that's just splattered everywhere. This red juice. So level 4.4's walls and floors are coated in this juice, and the entire level is trashed. The tables are flipped upside down, the chairs are thrown everywhere, there's huge scratches on the wall, and everything is ripped and torn to smithereens. Even the wallpaper itself is just falling off. We have no idea how all this stuff happened. And the source of this carnage is unknown, it's just a gruesome sight to see. And anyone who comes here is probably going to be traumatized. Hold your traumatization, because it's about to get really traumatizing. So the level's windows here differ from regular windows, because when you look outside of them, you'll just see water. Just an infinite expanse of water. Not the top or bottom of it, the middle part. Almost like you're in a submarine, somehow. And there's just almost a more decayed feeling about this abandoned office. So while the debris and that kind of stuff has no real explanation for being here, and the tables have no real explanation for being flipped, and there's no real reason for things to be ripped, there is a reason for the red juice and the that you might find lying around. You see, when a wanderer gets sent to this sublevel, or when they accidentally find themselves here, they are filled after a time with an intense and uncontrollable form of red juice lust, or blood lust, if you will. Hopefully YouTube doesn't censor that. Which is pretty much where a person becomes extremely dangerous and reactive and volatile. It's self-explanatory. You just get really angry, you see red, all you want to do is slash and grab and end whatever you see. And this lust will cause wanderers to be uncontrollable and to attack others or, you know, their friends or whatever at random. They will literally just run after and pounce on any person that's there or near and they'll always want to do this. They'll always have that drive. And if there's not anyone there, then the wanderer will bang their heads on the walls and, you know, claw the carpet and on their own limbs and off their own digits, that kind of thing. They care nothing about anything but attacking and consuming, so they just don't even care what happens to their own bodies. You know, they're running around hurting themselves, ripping their skin off and everything, and that is why there's red juice everywhere on the walls. It's thought that only humans are infected with this lust, but it's also theorized by some that entities could be trapped accidentally here as well and also get infected and kind of transform into these worse versions of themselves that are just more aggressive and bigger and more gory and stuff, which is pretty freaking scary to think about. Just imagine like a wretch, but bigger and more flayed open and more scary looking, if that's possible. But I think it's safe to say that you just need to avoid this area at all costs. You don't want to come here. You don't want to have these effects in your mind. Past this office section of the level, there's actually another strange area in this sublevel called the Locker Zone, and this is an area where wanderers claim to be drawn to it. It seems like they're being lured somehow, but you should avoid this and not go there, one, because the longer you're in the level, the more you're going to get filled with the lust and craziness, and two, because inside the lockers, there are some unnerving sights that I can't really get into. Just know that there are gross things in the lockers. You can pretty much guess what's in the lockers based off of what happens on this level. There are parts there inside. This level is just a really grotesque place that no one understands and it's really gross and gritty and it seems like the back rooms is just playing this evil twisted trick on anybody that gets sent here almost like it's a purgatory sometimes the lights of the level will flicker darker shades of red and you want to get out of here before you start turning crazy i assume i hope also and especially before you run into something that's been here for a while because things that have been here for a long time are even crazier and you just want to leave as fast as possible so if you want to do that listen up to the exit section right now
So to enter, you have to interact with a body on level 4.3 uh, just by no clipping through it. But note that this normally happens accidentally when people are kneeling down to inspect a body that they see on a different level. So when they're doing that, they accidentally no clip here and get sent. That makes it scarier to me because they don't want to come here. They, they get sent here accidentally. To exit, you have to run to the nearest window that you find and no clip through it at all costs to be sent on to level 7. And it's thought that somehow these levels, levels 4.4 and 7, are connected since there is water outside of these windows here, but we don't know for sure. It's just a guess. But yeah, this level, avoid it. This might be the most dangerous and volatile level inside of all the back rooms, and it's in a sub-level of one of the safest levels. It just goes to show you always have to watch out where you're going, always make sure to check around the corner before you go, and make sure to not accidentally noclip here, unless you want to end up trapped. That's a crazy thing, running around, clawing stuff, and bashing your head around. You don't want to do that. Trust me. So yeah, those were two sub-levels of level four. Hope you enjoyed them. Let me know what you thought. Let me know which one is your favorite. If your favorite was level 4.4, you're, you're probably crazy. I still thought it was pretty cool, though. Level 67 is the 68th Backrooms level, and it was discovered when a wanderer was on level 11, and they randomly started to smell baking bread, so they followed that smell, they found an out-of-place door, and they went inside of it, and they were here. This was their first mistake. The level takes the appearance of a bakery from the 1980s, with a very chill vibe and aura. The actual level itself is pretty small, at around 2,000 square feet, so you don't have to worry about getting lost inside, you just have to worry about possibly never leaving. The interior of the bakery changes colors and vibe and layout depending on who is here. It can change itself in other ways also. For example, it'll produce pastries and smells that the wanderer who is in line enjoys. So if you like croissants, then the level will have croissants. This is a really weird phenomenon that happens through a lot of Backrooms levels, and we have no idea how it knows all this stuff about us, uh, but it just does. And as I said at the beginning of the video, the level has been nicknamed the Bakery of Desire. And you'll see what I mean by desire here in a second. Uh, just remember to not trust any of the food here, and don't eat it if you're given food. The rest of the level can be explained into three different parts. The waiting line, the counter, and then the eating area. So the waiting line is the part, of course, where you get in line for your food. Now you're not going to be waiting in line behind other people, you'll actually be waiting behind facelane entities, which are of course the main entity here. Now the facelanes here are passive, and they don't really do too much, but they're obviously kind of creepy to look at, and you could make them mad if you try to cut them in line or something like that, so just don't do that. And that's the only rule here. If you do, uh, they'll return to their normal aggressive state and start to freak out and attack you, so just wait your turn in line, and you should be pretty good, I would say. Once you get to the counter, you'll place your order to the facelane cashier in front of you, and then the cashier will actually give you the order in a second, but first, it will try to persuade you to get a certain pastry that they like. Like, they'll give you their suggestion, but try not to take it if you can, because we don't really know what they're made out of. We have an idea, but we don't really know. Now, the actual food on this level has some really strange properties that you should know about, and it seemingly makes people behave weird. Eating food, pastries, donuts, whatever's on this level, will cause you to start behaving erratically, and you'll start to crave that food. It'll make people like Squidward was when he figured out that he actually liked Krabby Patties, you know, when he was eating them all and stuff. Yeah, that's what you'll be like. You'll try to eat all the food. And this might be because of the theory that I'm going to say right now. So you'll start to crave these pastries after you eat a bite of one, and if you start to feel this craving, you need to escape the level. Now, the document of the level says, quote, Note that occasionally, the effect of the desire to indulge on those favorites may lead to fellow wanderers in the level acting erratically and make attempts to simply retrieve those pastries without waiting in line. It is best not to interfere. They will promptly be disposed of subsequent to the event. I'm not really sure what disposed of means, but it sounds like they get rid of people who get affected by this. Now, how do they get rid of people, you may be asking? It makes me kind of think that these pastries might have a secret ingredient in them, if you know what I'm saying, a secret ingredient that may or may not be meat. 
Um, not animal meat, though. Maybe just wanderer meat. But that's just a theory. A backrooms theory. After you order and get whatever pastry you did ask for, you'll be able to walk to the seating area, which is a liminal-looking diner place with booths and chairs and calm lights and whatnot, just like an old diner. This area is only visible after you pay for your food and after you order, and before you pay, you physically just can't see it. And in order to pay for your pastry, you have to give almond water to the cashier. So I've explained the level layout, I've explained what might be inside the food, but now I'm gonna talk about the possible side effects that you could get from eating the pastries with the secret ingredient inside of them. The effects in this level will vary from wanderer to wanderer, and before you eat anything, you should know what these effects are. So if you order your favorite pastry, which is the pastry that the level thinks that you like the best, if you order that, it is the worst one you can do, it is the most deadly. Because when you're closer than from a foot away from that pastry, a nearly irresistible urge to eat the pastry will flood you. You just get this huge impulse to just dig right into that delicious food. You have to deny this impulse because once it's ingested, certain effects will occur as follows. In the first five minutes, you'll start to inflame and you'll start to get a sore throat. And in 10 minutes after, you'll get gastritis. 12 minutes in, you'll get extreme erythroderma. 20 minutes in and after, you'll just pretty much go into cardiac arrest. Eating a donut can give you cardiac arrest in the back rooms. You heard it here first, folks. Now, it's important to note here that after a person succumbs to eating their favorite pastry, one of the workers that works in this bakery will come out from behind the counter and drag the wanderer to the back room where the kitchen is. And when this happens, the clerk and the worker that dragged the body back will vanish into the back kitchen. And we don't really know what happens back there, but we can assume that your body's being used for something. Now, if you eat a neutral pastry or something that you kind of like, but you don't really like, then nothing really bad will happen to you. You'll not feel this impulse to eat it, and you won't have any negative effects if you do. So try to find something that you kind of like, but don't really like at the same time. The only problem is these pastries are really rare because normally the level tries to give you the ones you like, but yeah. Then there are the least favored or hated pastries, and these are actually the safest options to eat. And if you want to get out of the level, you have to order one of these that you don't like and then eat it because that is the only way out. But it should be noted that the effects caused by the pastry that you don't like can lead the wanderer to believe that the smell and the look and the taste of the dessert is actually far worse than it seems, like there's something hidden inside of it. Some have reported to have the smell and taste of rotten flesh when they eat these pastries. It'll take a really strong person to overcome these thoughts, you know, you're eating flesh, but you have to do it to get out of the level, so... But yeah, that's kind of like the duality of decision making there. But the second you eat a pastry that you don't like, even though it's got some kind of rotten meat inside, you will be transported to either level 11, level 31, level 57, or level 98, and you'll just be slightly sick. So yeah, if you see someone unalive, or if you somehow unalive yourself in this bakery and a worker comes out to get you and drags you to the back room, um, you probably know what's gonna happen. Because the level document pretty much confirms my theory from earlier that the things inside of these pastries might not really be pastry stuff. It might be, uh, well, you can infer. I can't really say. I mean, I hope this isn't the case, but why else would they take wanderers to the back room? where the cooking is done. My full theory is that eating pastries causes you to go insane, which it pretty much confirmed it in the level document, and it's because of the rotten flesh that is integrated inside of them. It causes you to crave more and more until you eat too much and there's no going back. After this, the level will trap you in it, and once you are alive, you yourself will become part of a beautiful pastry, and you'll get dragged to the back kitchen, and uh, you know, you can infer. I don't know though, that's just my theory. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm interested. So the 189th level inside of the back rooms has been given a classification of class two and is unsafe, but kind of secure with a very low entity count at the start. When this level was discovered actually, but what is known is that a ton of people have entered this level at least one time by complete accident, and you'll learn how later in the video. The level itself is made up of what seems to be an endless cluster of bathrooms. The bathrooms themselves, well, they look like bathrooms, obviously. I don't know what you're expecting. They look like just public bathrooms that you've seen before in like a store or like a bathroom center. 
You, you know what they look like. Except these have a very lonely and empty feeling to them. Most of them have stalls and sinks and towel dispensers and that sort of thing as well. Just the regular old bathroom stuff. And all of the things in these rooms work like they normally should. You know, the paper towels come out, the water runs, everything works. And normally each of the bathrooms has two different exit doors in them. And these two doors have random chances to either lead to another bathroom room or they lead to a different level and they're the exit. However, those doors change and you can't really map out the level because the doors are different and the bathrooms are different as well. It's literally just a randomized cluster. So there's no real way to see where you're going. Sorry. Some of the bathrooms also have windows in them that allow light to come inside. And on the outside of those windows, most people have reported seeing some pretty strange things to say the least. So in real life, when you look outside of a window, You'll see just a field or a road or whatever. But here on this level, people have said they've seen staticky blue skies with really weird clouds in them. Or they've simply just seen a white void and nothing else. That's pretty weird, and it also means that this level takes place inside of something else entirely, and it's not just confined to the bathrooms. There is stuff outside that you technically could explore, uh, you just can't get through the windows. But I probably wouldn't jump out a window into an endless white void. It's just me, though. The air and the ambience inside of these different bathrooms is actually pretty clean and fresh at the start. And actually, some people have reported uh, smelling a faint smell of air freshener, which is pretty nice. There's also a very, very faint and subtle sound of water flowing uh, that's constantly happening through the pipes and the ceiling and the toilets, which makes the level kind of have a chill vibe to it, again, at the start. And you'll understand why I'm saying at the start soon. But like I said, most of the bathrooms here just look like empty and lonely public restrooms, but there's actually a very rare type of bathroom that you might find if you're lucky. They've been given the name luxury bathrooms, and you'll know when you're there. They're pretty obvious. I mean, they're gold. They all have golden appliances and finishes and sinks and marble and everything. It just looks like a rich person's bathroom. There's also a chance for whole entire showers and bathtubs and jacuzzis to be inside of these specific luxury bathrooms as well, and all of them are gold and marble and everything like that. But the reason these types of bathrooms are so sought after is because instead of regular old water coming out of the drains, it's actually almond water here in these luxury bathrooms. So you could have a pretty big source of almond water if you're lucky enough to run into one of these bathrooms, and you could just fill up a bunch of bottles and leave. Or if you're not lucky, you're stuck with the regular almond water just in the other bathrooms. Now, from what I've explained so far, you're probably thinking, brutally, you titled this video, NEVER USE THE BATHROOMS IN THE BACK ROOMS, and it seems pretty safe so far. Are you clickbaiting, Broogly? Uh, yeah, well, that's where you're wrong. I didn't do it for the clicks. I did it because a pretty unnerving phenomenon on this level is occurring. It's known as the, quote, increasing danger theory, and it goes like this. According to the information we have right now, the level is seemingly safe-ish for the first 50 or so bathrooms that you can get to. But after that, it's almost impossible to find an exit door to a different level. If you remember, I said that each bathroom has two doors, one might be an exit, and the other one will take you to the next bathroom. Yeah, well, eventually the exit door just doesn't exist and goes away. Explorers who have gone past the 50 room mark have said that they feel progressively less and less secure, and they feel more and more in danger, like they're being watched, like something's there. On top of these feelings, the rooms themselves even start to decay and to break down in certain ways, and they'll become more dangerous and more tumultuous to even explore. One specific explorer said that he made it through 200 bathrooms before he found an exit, which means he was literally there for a long time, a year maybe. He found that as he got stuck deeper and deeper into the maze of bathrooms, the air went from smelling nice and fresh to smelling foul and rotten, like a real bathroom. And the toilets, instead of being clean water, they started to fill up with a mysterious waste material. The lights also became dimmer, and the bathrooms got pretty much pitch black with no light, and mold grew from the walls, and pipes leaked and exploded, and everything like that just started to get worse and worse the deeper this guy got into it. And possibly the scariest thing the dude found was behind some of the doors. He said he heard weird entity noises happening back there, but obviously he didn't open the door. 
because why would you open a door if you hear like a monster behind it? But there's also been reports of strange figures lurking in the shadows deeper into these bathrooms. It's unknown what they are and things like that. There's also some non-documented entities. And speaking of those creatures here, uh, you have to get past that 50-ish room mark to even see any. Because up until then, it's pretty safe and there's not really any places for entities. But if you do get past that 50 room mark, you most likely run into smilers and hounds and facelings and the normal entities like that. But then like I said, there's also those weird noises that have been heard so who knows what kind of disgusting monstrosities live deep in the roof and in their stalls of these bathrooms one last really weird thing that was found deep into this level was a green door with no handle. When the explorer opened this door, he was greeted by an entity called Mark, and then Mark led the entity to an exit door, which took that person to level 4. Apparently, Mark lives behind this green door in a bathroom that is converted to like a mini house, and he seems to think this level is a good place to live. He tried to convince the other guy not to leave because this place has everything he needs. Who knows? <laughs> I, just another quirk of the backrooms, I guess. To enter this level, you can go to a restroom on level 2, and you can open a door inside, or you can sit on a toilet in level 2 and spray air freshener in the air, and you'll be sent here. Now, you actually might want to come here to get almond water from a luxury bathroom if you're lucky enough to find one, but they are very rare. And like I said, you're also risking getting stuck and chased by weird eldritch entities deep into the bathroom, so I don't know if it's worth it or not. But to exit the level, you do have to get pretty lucky, and you have to go through a door that exits the level, and not one that takes you deeper in. Most of the time, the door just takes you back to level 2, but you could also find that Mark entity to be sent to level 4. Or you could be a poor, unfortunate soul that gets sent too deep into the bathrooms until they become entity-filled, dark, and corrupted, and you'll never be seen again. <laughs> Sounds like fun to me, though. The Red Rooms. Now, judging by the name, you might actually think it's a pretty simple explanation, or even a repetitive level. Mm, spooky red level, mm, scary. Well, you're actually kind of right, in a sense, but you're also insanely wrong. You see, level Red Rooms is located deep in the first ever Backrooms level, which is level zero, which, as all of you know, is the first level that everyone gets sent to when they know clip to the Backrooms, just the plain old level zero. It's normally a very easy level to escape and to get out of. In fact, it's where everybody learns how to noclip, typically. And overall, there usually isn't even much danger. Or so we thought. Because the Red Rooms has just been found a couple of weeks ago, and it's already been given a difficulty rating of Class 5, and is unsafe, unsecure, and a dead end. Which is way different than the regular Level 0's difficulty rating of Class 1. Anyways, the Red Rooms itself looks very similar to Level 0. I mean, it is found deep inside of level zero, but there are some obvious differences. One of them is the deep red color that absorbs every surface around you. The walls, floors, carpets, ceiling, and even the lights are red here. The carpet is the very first huge difference, and it's very, very rough to the touch. It's almost like you're touching steel wool. On top of that, it's also very sticky which contrasts the regular Level Zero's carpet because the carpet there is wet and slick and squishy, which is the opposite of this. Radio waves and any form of communication don't really work here, and they kind of work, but the deeper you get into the red rooms, they just stop. The layout is winding and labyrinth-like as well, just like the parent level, but if you noticed in the level classification where it says the level is a dead end, that is your ultimate fate if you get stuck here. Because there has never been any evidence of people escaping or no clipping or finding a way out of the red rooms. And that is a hugely dangerous thing for level zero and all of the back rooms. Because we have no idea if it's some kind of entity that takes people and eats them, or if it transforms those people into the entity itself, or if the level just swallows people whole. People are just disappearing to never be seen again when they come here, and it makes it even worse because everyone who goes to the back rooms gets to level zero. And that means that there could be thousands and thousands of people that have unknowingly wandered into the red rooms and have gotten stuck never to be seen from or heard from again. You can avoid the red rooms by not following the red lights on level zero, and if you see kind of a threshold where red meets yellow, uh, don't walk into it, obviously, because that is the last chance of freedom 
that you have. If you go past that red threshold, it's over. There's no turning back. You cannot go back the way you came. Either you get attacked by an entity of some kind or you get swallowed by the level. But also some people have apparently been sent here completely randomly and they had no say in it, which is also really scary to think about. I think it makes the back room so much more terrifying if you have this chance of getting sent to level zero and never making it out of level zero to explore the thousands of other levels, especially since this was just now discovered. I mean, imagine how many people have fallen victim to it before it was officially cataloged. So yeah, this changes the lore because it makes the first level way more dangerous than it already was. So, Backrooms level 33.3 is a sub-level of its parent level 33. Now, I have gone over level 33 in another video, but in case you haven't heard of it, or if you're new here or something, it's pretty much just a crusty, flooded, abandoned mall. But this sub-level is part of that giant mall complex. The sub-level has been given a Class 5E difficulty rating, meaning that there's a dangerous and hazardous environment, and that you'll encounter many things that don't make any sense. The level resembles an old abandoned mall, but it's not really to the extent of decay that its regular parent level is. This sublevel is more just empty, not necessarily overgrown and flooded. It actually looks to be an abandoned mall from the country of Croatia, specifically, because we think it's Croatia because there are stores like Spar and Mueller here. We don't know, could be a guess. There are also a few empty markets and fish markets and that kind of thing in the level 2, which is different from its parent level. The level has been split up into four sections as of right now, and I'm going to hop into those explanations right now, I guess. The first one is the main area, or the main hall. This is where most of the shops and the staircases and the hallways are, and this is the central location for this sublevel. You can only go up or down from here, you're just right in the middle on this main hall. Now, if you remember, the name of the level is the Dusty Mall Depths, and that's because on this level, there is an enigmatic type of dust that inhabits it, that floats around, that's over everything. I'm going to get into all that in its properties and stuff later in the entity portion, but just know that it's very dangerous. But here in this main hall, there is a moderate amount of that dust all over the surfaces and in the air. An estimated 50-ish percent or so of the air is filled with dust. And again, you'll know what that means later. But another strange quirk here in this level is that there is a lack of good gravity throughout this mall, meaning that you'll have the ability to leap and jump around easily and kind of just swim through the air like you'd be on a planet or the moon or something. The main level 33 doesn't have this effect, so it's really unknown how it's centralized to this sublevel. I don't know, man, the back rooms is weird. Don't ask me. The second section of this level is known as the second floor, where many of the smaller shops and offices and hallways are located. This part feels more liminal and empty and darker, almost as if it's like a transitional place that you've been trapped in. There are several big bathroom complexes here, as well as closets and offices, and everything here has this layer of dust and emptiness over it all. Now on the far wall of this second floor, there is a large spiral staircase that goes up and down. This staircase is very enigmatic and is surrounded and shrouded in mystery. Some people think it's just an infinite staircase, some people think it's the way out of the back rooms, some people think it just doesn't do anything, it's just a staircase. We don't know. Now on the second floor, the dust content is surprisingly low, there's only about 20% in the air that has dust, but that does mean that it's about twice as safe as the first floor. The third section of the level is thought to be underground, like a basement type area. This is where it gets crazy because there is more dust and debris in the air. It's also where there are parking garages located, as well as meat markets and other shops. The entire vibe here is darker and dingier and just more quiet and empty. This section does, like I said, have the highest dust concentration and pretty much all the air here is very infected with it, making it hard to breathe and even harder to think clearly. There's just so much dirt and dust and abandonment that it's just, it's not recommended to come down here or to this level, to be honest, but if you're gonna be here, don't go to this part of it. It's very dangerous unless you have a gas mask. Also, the gravity here in this basement area is pretty normal, which is weird because everywhere else, it's not normal. I don't know. Now, there is actually a final floor, and it's not really a floor, it's more of an outdoor area, and this is the fourth zone. 
It's accessed from randomly appearing exits throughout the level, and it takes the appearance of a small outdoor mall type place with coffee carts and shops, and it's very eerie and empty, and it just looks like it's fake because it's so perfect. There's been a few reports of facelings walking around out here, which is the first sighting of an entity you might see, besides the dust. This place is actually the least polluted area in the level because there's barely dust in the outside. Uh, there is still some. You don't get off the hook that easy, let me tell you, but it's way better than being inside, trust me. Gravity is also normal here, so no jumping around for you. So this whole time, I've been yapping about gravity being different and dust being everywhere, and I'm sure you're wondering why those things even matter. Let me explain. So gravity being different across the different parts of the level is a very strange, unknown, enigmatic thing that we don't understand. It's significantly reduced across this level compared to normal gravity from other levels in real life, and it's been noted that when you jump around and you know fly through the air, it's less of flying through the air and more of swimming through the air. And people say it's harder to swim through the air here than it is to swim through water. Now this might mean that the strands of reality or the atmosphere here is harder or deeper or thicker than normal reality. Who knows? Maybe that's why the dust sticks there too. We don't know. But this gravity and thick atmosphere might give wanderers sickness and shortness of breath and exhaustion and dizziness and that kind of thing. Just pretend the sky above you is like dense and thick. That's what this is. Now as for the dust that's on the surfaces in the level and floating around in the air, this is where the level gets that class 5e difficulty from. The dust particles are strangely thick and they just hang and stay in the air. Like I said, it could be because the air is thicker, or it could be because the dust itself is more of an entity that can do what it wants. But if you do inhale or come into contact with this dust, this can lead to a host of different problems. Inhaling the dust can lead to internal bleeding, choking, gagging, acid reflux, and combustion of one's stomach and internal organs. Yeah, that's awesome. Yay, woo woo! And depending on how long a wanderer stays here and how much dust they inhale, uh, your organs could literally get so infected and your insides could get so infected from this dust that you could literally just turn into dust yourself. But it is for this reason that it's not recommended to come to this level under any circumstance. Unless you want to become like a stuffed teddy bear, but with dust. Now it seems as if the dust spreads inside of people like a bacteria in a way. Each particle splitting and multiplying in seconds, almost like it's a live virus and not dust. It also seems to be sentient because like I said, it attacks different organs and systems in the body like it knows where they're at and it goes for them. So it's definitely not normal dust. We just call it that because it looks like it is. Who knows? The leading theory is that it's sentient and it's some kind of hive mind and that's why you should not breathe it in. Now, as far as actual like flesh and blood entities, there are a few normal ones like facelings and hounds and skin stealers and smilers, like one or two of those. But these entities are also infected and susceptible to the dust and can suffer the same fate as people who stay here for too long, which is pretty weird because most of the time entities are impervious and invincible to the levels that they stay in. I don't know, I guess the backrooms has had enough of everybody. Especially Smilers, they look weird. To enter this level, you have to be wandering in level 33, the main part, until you get too deep and too far in, and then you'll end up transitioning into the sub-level before you can even turn around and leave. To exit, you have to find a hallway back to level 33, you can't go back the way you came, it disappears, you can't see it, you have to find a new one, or you can find a door labeled security. And if this door labeled security gets opened, it should take you to level 81. But the time you're here looking for an exit, try not to breathe in as much as you can, because if you do, you'll be filled with dust and all of your organs will be attacked and you'll just become one big dust bunny thing. Level 68 of the backrooms is classified as a class 3 difficulty and is very unsafe and very unsecure. But it has a low entity count, but it's not the entities that you should be worrying about. The level itself seems to take the appearance of a massive movie theater that sprawls out for a long while. It's just one massive complex with different parts of that same theater. The entire level doesn't feel like a theater though, it almost feels organic, like it's alive or like it's an organism that you're walking around inside. There's things like fungus and grass that grow up in the darker hallways and mushrooms sprout from random areas as well. 
There are also corridors and hallways and rooms that intersect to this massive theater, and they all lead back to this one large theater room. Now, the room is full of theater-style seating and chairs, all made out of a reddish, dark gray fabric. And at first glance, it seems pretty innocuous, pretty normal, until you examine it closer. You see, these seats seem to be coated in some kind of saliva material, making them a gross and sticky mess. Now, despite them obviously being a soggy, disgusting, nasty chair, they seem to draw people in and lure them to sit down on top of them. Like, even though it looks disgusting, you want to sit down. It's almost this irresistible urge. And when wanderers do sit down, they describe the chairs as being abnormally comfortable. Like, more so than any other chair they ever sat in, this is the most comfortable, even though you're sitting in a soggy chair. You see, once all the people inside the theater are seated in a chair or they choose to sit down, the chairs themselves seem to release some type of chemical enzyme into the fabric of the chair and the saliva that's coating it. This enzyme has one function and one function only, to rapidly the skin of the thing sitting on top of it, which is, you know, just great as it is, but it doesn't just stop there. The enzyme melts and re-solidifies clothing and skin to the chair fabric itself, virtually fusing the skin of the thing sitting in the chair to the fabric of the seat that it's sitting in, causing whoever's sitting down to melt directly to the chair and be unable to move. Nice. Now, while this is happening, the victim doesn't really seem to notice anything, and they're distracted by something else. There's a ton of theories on what distracts people. Some think it's a pheromone or an enzyme, some think you're just losing your mind. I don't know. Now, once you're successfully melted directly to the chair, the screen at the front of the theater will start to play a movie. How nice. The films that are played here are random and they don't seem to correlate at all with anything from real life. There's not been one single movie that's known. Now, it's unknown if the backrooms itself made these movies, or if somehow they're being played from an alternate reality that's like Earth. We just don't know. But the movies do tend to be really gory and really graphic, and wanderers are just physically stuck in the chair watching this gory graphic movie, unable to move, and unable to run away. Hey, did I mention they're melted to the chair? Once the movie that's playing ends and the credits roll, the people who are stuck inside of the chairs start to shake and convulse violently, eventually succumbing to the shaking. Think of the scenes from Stranger Things Season 3 where the victims start shaking and then they turn into that jelly-looking stuff, and you've seen that before. That's kind of what happens here. Anyways, you're no longer there, if you know what I'm saying, after the credits roll of the movie. The chair you were sitting in will then break down the tissue and dissolve it via digestive enzymes. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't stop there because this level just doesn't know how to. Surprise! After the flesh is broken down by the chairs, it will then be sucked into the chairs uh, to never be seen again. Almost as if it's consuming you for lunch or dinner or breakfast. It's consuming you. The chairs are eating you, which is not very fun. I gotta say, it doesn't, doesn't sound too good. Now, the reason this level is so scary, besides being melted to a chair and digested by it, is that from a quick glance, it seems like a safe theater level. You know, there are several safe theater levels scattered throughout the back rooms, and many of them play as sort of a home base for wanderers or a destination for them to get to because they're so safe. So victims of this level might think that they found one of those safer levels when they get sent here, only to sit down and realize that they've walked into their own grave. Now, survivors of this level are few and far between, since the level can somehow warp your mind into this false sense of security. It seems that the only way that people make it out alive is they somehow notice what's happening before the chairs release that enzyme to you and consume you. Now, if you can get out of there before then, you'll be okay. Now, I bet you're asking, if I do get out of the chair fast enough, if I do, you know, it's luck, where do you go to exit? You know, how do I escape? I don't know what I'm doing. I was, I was trying to segue this into the exit portion. Well, let's just go to it. So to enter the level, you have to walk into a theater on level 11, and you seemingly have a random chance to be sent here just completely random, you could be on level 11 chilling, and you'll be sent here. 
which again is terrifying because level 11 is a widely known safe level and the fact that you could be sent here from a safe level to be digested by a chair is pretty scary. Now to exit, you have to get up before you get stuck and run to the movie screen at the very front of the theater and then proceed to no clip into it. Or you could also run into a hallway that's here and find a door that looks like this to be sent to level 74. Either way, you gotta get out. And the only way to notice what's happening before it's too late is if you sit down and you start to feel your arms getting sticky and harder to move and you kind of get uncomfortable. And this happens randomly because like I said, most people who sit here think it's really comfortable and really relaxing. And this mainly only happens to people that are wearing short sleeve shirts since their skin is touching the seat directly. So if you're wearing a hoodie or something, you can't feel the fabric of the chair, uh, you're probably going to be consumed by it. Sorry. But if you feel yourself getting stuck to the chair, you gotta get up and run to the screen to get out, or you'll never be seen again. So level 6.1, or the snack rooms, is classified now as a classed unalive zone due to its numerous hazards. But the level is generally still referred to as the snack rooms, even in its devolved state. It used to look like a huge food court area with very liminal features. This ambience of being alone, this feeling of nostalgia, you get exactly what I'm talking about. The food court area spread out for miles and miles, and it was just one continuous hallway full of restaurants and concession stands and vending machines and restrooms and everything like that. There were also other places to get food and water, and it all just felt really safe and really cozy. There were several sitting areas with tables and booths as well, which most of the times were empty, but sometimes sparsely populated. The entire level was so liminal and so relaxing, and it was just a really perfect place to be after escaping level 6, because level 6 is literally one of the worst levels, and a lot of people don't make it out of it. So the snack rooms were a welcomed sight to many a traveler over the years. That is, until the downfall of the snack rooms. So the level now known as the Fallen Snack Rooms, or the Food Court, is a huge, massive food court that looks like it's been abandoned. The once clean and liminal layout has changed to a layout of decay and destruction. The ceiling is collapsed in in some areas, the stairs are all broken up, the floor is all disgusting, the shelves and the vending machines have been knocked over, and many things are just scattered throughout it. It looks like something's just gone crazy and trashed the place. It also looks like the level was left in a hurry because there are still meals and food on display. So now instead of being safe and nostalgic and liminal, it's horrifying and empty and liminal. The lights that once lit up this place are mostly blown out and there are puddles of liquid pain scattered throughout the level. The level itself seems to have become corrupted and volatile over the last year. So what actually happened to this level? How did it end up like this? What's the reasoning? It's been concluded that the snack rooms underwent a spatial tragedy, obviously, and it caused everybody to leave the level quickly, uh, but that does not take a genius to figure out. I'm just stating the obvious. It's important to mention a few things about the level pre-collapse that might make things make more sense. So before all this happened, level 6.1 had a similar effect as level 11 has on its entities and its people. If you don't know, level 11 makes entities docile and not aggressive. Like, it completely calms them down, they're not aggressive, they won't attack you. The snack rooms were similar to this. Entities could walk freely around the level, and they would be completely fine and normal, just like the people were. Until one day, this effect seemingly just stopped working. Out of the blue, it just quit. Which, of course, sent the entities there into an aggressive frenzy. After this event happened, the entities would attack more and more and they would start chasing people out of the level until the entire place was virtually abandoned and it caused the people that were still remaining here to hide deep inside of it. There were a few safe spots at first where the lights were left on and many remaining people were trapped inside and are stranded here and some say they can still hear the screaming and talking of those trapped people deep inside the snack rooms. Some people also blame this shift in behavior on level 11 itself, and they say that level 11 is what caused these snack rooms to change. Others think it's completely random, but there's even more to the story that many people don't know. But that's what I'm here for. 
So before this shift even happened, and back when the level was 6.1 and it was completely normal, there was one incident of an entity attack. It occurred when a hound entity no-clipped into the snack rooms by complete accident, and for some reason, the entity was not docile or calm due to the normal effect that it gives every entity. It was aggressive, and because of this, it started to chase people and attack everyone on site, which caused panic. This panic became widespread, and people were running around screaming and stuff, but eventually it was dispatched and gotten rid of by the people there. But ever since that date, something has been off about the level. The balance and the force has shifted to say. That single hound entity changed everything somehow, and we literally have no clue how it happened. After the Hound, more and more aggressive entities started to come to this level. It's almost like they're being drawn to it like a moth to a flame, and then eventually it caused everybody to leave and run out, except those that are trapped deep inside of it. Theories. So earlier I briefly mentioned just a couple theories as to what happened, but now I kind of want to dive deeper into them. So the level 11 effect is not really well understood and many people just don't trust it and they don't know how it works. Like how can one level make normally aggressive entities not aggressive? Like how does it work? Where's the science? And if we don't understand how it works, we can't be prepared for when it stops working, which is exactly what happened on level 6.1. No one could have prepared for the effect to stop because they had no idea that it would. That one single hound started a chain of aggression that wiped out an entirely safe level that everyone knew and loved. And like I said, we still just have a couple theories as to why it happened. Was it a change in the level 11 effect itself? Or did whoever controls the back rooms just decide to change it? Or was the level destroyed on purpose for some reason? There are a ton of unanswered questions that we still all have and now we're just left with this faint memory of what used to be a safe haven level in the back rooms. To enter this level, you can walk into a restaurant on level 11 and you'll have a chance to be sent here each time you do that. So you can just walk into like a restaurant over and over again, I guess, and you'll eventually get sent here. And to exit, you have to find a set of glass doors, walk outside of them, and you'll be sent back to level 11, or you can find a window that's indoors and you can break it, jump through it, and you'll go back to level six, which I wouldn't recommend doing because level six is awful. But I do wanna hear all your theories in the comments about this level. I'm very interested to hear what you have to say. My personal theory is that somehow a shift from level 11 changed the entire vibe and the docile effect somehow, and it caused level six to stop giving that effect off and eventually entities just overtook it. But that still doesn't explain why there are so many entities that are drawn to this level. Is it because there's food here? Is it because there was lots of people they could prey on? We just don't know. So level 78, or the psychological planet, is classified as a class PSI which means it's going to be unsafe and unsecure because of the mental hazards and not really because of the environment. There are several levels that are within this classification that I might go over eventually and then combine them all into a series, but this level is the first one I'm going over. Anyways, let's not get sidetracked. The level is not supposed to be entered under any circumstance. I repeat, don't come here, you idiot. And that's just what the first sentence says. Uh, just, I guess you should listen to it. But personally, I think I'm gonna go by myself. The level has been described as a strange and otherworldly grassy planet that is suspended in the middle of an endless blue sky. So think of level 94's grassy hills, except it's not infinite here and there's not houses like that. The level does have very rare suburban style housing though, and the entire place just stretches out for a few miles until it drops off into the infinite blue expanse of the sky. On rare occasions, mushroom-like entities have been reported dotted over the grassy landscape. They might be real, they might not, I'll get into all that later. The thing about this level is that no one has reached the actual end of the grassy plain. People get sidetracked due to the mental effects that it puts you under, and it's really hard to because your surroundings will start to warp. Again, I'll get into that later. So for right now, I'm gonna go over the things that people have for sure seen, and then I'll get into some theories and some other things towards the outer edge of the level. Victims, I mean wanderers, who find themselves inside of the level will spawn outside in the middle of the field, surrounded by itchy, cool grass for as far as they can see. The only noticeable feature around you is in the sky, directly up, and it is this off-putting, smiling orb sun type thing. 
The immediate surroundings of this spawn area feel a lot like those old windows wallpapers from those really old computers. That's the first thing you really notice is how it looks like that and the sun thing in the sky above you. This piercing, smiling sun never stops staring. It never blinks, it's always there, and it genuinely can terrify you if you let it. In fact, some wanderers just get terrified so much that it fills them with this huge sense of horror that they try to run away. I mean, it's, it's pretty ugly, but, but at least it's smiling. Whatever you do, do not run away from it, no matter how creeped out you get. If you choose to walk straight and explore the level, then about 6 kilometers or like 3.7 miles into it, these strange artificial suburban houses will begin to pop up and appear in front of you. They look lifeless and fake. Like they're not even in the grass, they're kind of just, they look badly photoshopped there. Around this time, the sun in the sky will begin to randomly clip and appear in different parts of the sky. Even when it disappears, the level stays bright, which means that that's not where the light comes from, even though there's no sun. Anyways, these weird core liminal looking houses are very interesting, and I'm going to dive into that right now. So if you enter them, they'll be completely empty of furniture and decorations, except for a few photos and pieces of debris on the floor. The photos here all are infected with photoocular scenarisis, which is just the fancy term for the floaters or static vision you can get in real life. These pictures all have that effect when you look at them. When you do look at the pictures and when you're inside the house in real life, random things will begin to pop into your field of view and float around. Now, if you take the photos off of the level with you, this effect will still be with them. This can happen on any level if you look at the pictures. It'll normally manifest itself as bizarre lines of text popping up, or sometimes eyes will pop up, and sometimes eyes with wings, and sometimes other weird mushroom type things will appear. It just depends on where you're at. It doesn't end there though, because looking at the eyes and the text in your photo for longer than a few seconds seem to manifest those lines of text and eyes in real life in front of you. Like the blurry text and the uncanny eyes will spawn right in front of you and they'll all be like staring at you and surrounding you. And a scary thing about the images that you take here is that the effect will continue to work until you leave. And even when you do leave, the effect will still be within the image. For that reason, these pictures are often used as a weapon to fend off entities or people because it would be kind of terrifying to see some guy with a bunch of eyes surrounding him. So you could use it to your benefit or you could just not. Anyways, this effect is the most dangerous part of the level because after a certain time of being here, you'll start to lose the line between what's in the picture and what's in reality, spiraling into this weird core madness of not knowing what's floating in front of you. So about 6 miles or 12 kilometers into the level is where it ends, and it ends up fading into the blue sky. At this point, it's theorized that the ground itself will begin to warp and wave and undulate like it's water. Like every step you take will make massive waves in the grass, causing it to be impossible to keep going, and for this reason people have never been able to get to the actual edge very easily, or at all, we don't know. This waving effect will be extremely disorienting and frightening to people experiencing it, especially if you just took some pictures earlier and went inside the houses and you saw all the eyes and stuff, and now you come outside and you see all the ground waving like water, you probably think you're tripping hard on something. But in this wavy grass part, the eyes and the sun will congregate and stare at you as well. And this is your last chance to escape with even just a drop of your sanity left. Just try to avoid the sun and the eyes staring at you. But now I'm going to do a little bit of a deeper dive into the weird creatures and entities that live here, even the ones that we aren't sure are real, but people claim to see them. So the Smile Sun is obviously the first. This is the biggest entity on the level. And like I said earlier, it takes the appearance of a large green sun with a very, very off-putting red smile on its front. The entity does not outright attack you, but after a prolonged exposure, it seems to cause your field of view and vision to get more staticky and unstable, and it makes your eyesight worse, eventually just becoming a grainy mess. So it's recommended to not stare at the sun at all. Shrooms. So shrooms are sentient beings that sprout out of the grass and inside of the houses on this level. It's said that staring at the shrooms for long enough will cause them to develop eyes. Once you make eye contact with the eyes, you'll begin to feel the effects of being on shrooms. Like the hallucinogenic, you'll start feeling like that. You'll get dizzy, you'll be confused, you'll not know where you are, your vision will become impaired, and things will start to pop up again. Now, shrooms tend to grow around people on this level who are full of fear, and they kind of seem to be reactive of how your behavior is. So if you're scared, the level knows it. 
the Smile Killer. So this is a very rare creature that exists here. It's been reported as a tall humanoid figure that's almost seven feet tall, and it carries a big knife with it as a weapon. It seems to have the ability to hypnotize those who look at it in its face, kind of like the sun in the sky does, but not really. The entity only appears in the houses on this level, and it can only be seen briefly when the sun in the sky disappears. So when the sun comes back, it'll be gone, but when the sun clips out and goes away, you can see it. And because of this, you never really know where it's at, it could be right behind you, and then the sun will just go away and it'll show up and it can slash you. Really creepy stuff, to be honest. Finally, the eyes. So the eyes are a very common thing on the level, as you've heard. They're in the houses, they're outside, they're on the sun, they're on the mushrooms, they're everywhere. And they are realistic human or animalistic eyes that just pop into your field of view on the level. Some of them are biological, some of them might be in your head, but they solely seem to attack the mental state of those who see them. Which is bad, because everyone in the back rooms already has a bad mental state, this would make it worse. Some eyes have been reported to have these angel wings around them, and it doesn't even look 2D or anything, it looks like a real eye with a real angel wing. It's physically there. The only way to get them to disappear is if you close your eyes, but then again, you can't really go anywhere with your eyes closed all the time, so you're just gonna have to kind of avoid eye contact in order to escape the level. These eyes are a common thing you see in weird core pictures from real life, and it's unknown how or why they appear here in the photos, or in your field of view, or in the sky above you. It's all just a mishmash. We don't know. To enter this level, you have to fall asleep on any backrooms level and then participate in a lucid dream. That's right, you access this level by lucid dreaming, that's the only way to enter. So if you can't lucid dream, you should be good and you'll never get stuck here. But the problem with that is, you're still technically in the level because you can get trapped in it forever, and if you do and you can't escape because the eyes are watching or the sun won't stop looking at you, you'll eventually just fade away and decay in real life because you're mentally stuck in this weird core world. So to make sure that doesn't happen, to exit, you can somehow make it to the edge of the blue sky and the grass and there'll be this door that appears and you can open it up and run through, or you can just lay down and have a staring contest with that giant sun in the sky and go insane and be consumed by the mushrooms with eyes. It's really your choice. I would choose to leave though, if I were you. The Intoxicated Pools This level is classified as a class 3 survival difficulty and is generally unsafe and unsecure due to a hazardous environment. The level itself is a huge expanse of rooms and hallways that resemble the pool rooms slightly. There's white tiles here and strange staircases, but the obvious difference is the color of the water. Some of the floors under the water are not tile here as well, and they're actually a shaggy carpet, which is an effect similar to level 7's carpet floor at the bottom of its ocean. The size of the sublevel isn't fully known yet, but it's definitely large. Well over a thousand rooms, because people have been exploring and people have gotten lost, and we just have to assume that it's huge. The lighting on this level comes from the widened out windows, just like the regular pool rooms, so that's one thing that they share. The temperature of the water here is pretty much impossible to actually measure, because depending on how close the water is to the windows, the temperature can be vastly different. For example, the closer to the window the water is, the hotter it'll be. So hot to the point where you can't even touch it. And the further away, the more freezing cold it'll be. Now, the water in this level is not actually regular water or almond water, and that's why I did air quotes that you couldn't see. Because this is actually thicker and slimier than both of those. It also can't freeze or boil, despite some of it being blisteringly cold and blisteringly hot. The water itself is also a dark lilac color, and it's been described as a purple goo. It's almost like liquidy jello in consistency. The feeling of this goo is very uncomfortable and it's just not very good to touch and many wanderers have reported getting goosebumps and just feeling very uneasy while being inside of it. It just doesn't feel right. The water is also full of several types of pathogens that carry all sorts of disease and sickness to those who touch it. Especially those who fall in or accidentally dunk their head under water. Because if you do that, the pathogens will go in your nose or ears and get to your brain and respiratory system, causing you to have a hard time breathing and other illnesses as well. In some areas, there are also pieces of fungus and moss that are floating on the surface of this jello water, and it's thought that this fungus and then the pathogens are connected together somehow, and that the purple color of the water has something else to do with it as well. 
Some have also reported strange psychological effects, like wanting to jump into the water, or feeling really dizzy, or obsessed with staying inside of the purple water here. People who do that stuff typically aren't seen again, so don't do that stuff. Many times people will begin to feel obsessed and venture deeper into the sublevel, wanting to get into the water, and once they do, no one ever sees them again. To enter this level, you can no clip on level 58 to have a chance, or you can cause an accident, whatever that means, on level 96 to be sent here as well. And to exit, you have to be very careful because no clipping is thought to take you directly to the void level. So no no clipping here, which of course, if you don't know what the void is, it's pretty much a death sentence. It'll keep you trapped in an infinite dark area forever. So the way that you need to escape is you need to find a dark, small and empty hallway and walk through it until you get to the next level, level 871. Now this is the only way you can make it out of the level alive. So unless you find that hallway, you'll be swimming in purple goo forever and perhaps being absorbed by this purple goo. I mean, it does do weird things to people, so I don't know. Next and finally for this video is level 37.1, or as it's more commonly known, the deep end. So this sublevel is also classified as a class three difficulty, just like the last one, and is unsafe and unsecure due to its environment. Its physical description is very, very similar to the regular pool rooms with the randomly segmented halls and rooms that are full of water. But the main difference in this sublevel, if you couldn't tell by the name, is the sheer depths of the water here and what might lurk inside of them. You see, normal pool rooms hallways can be decently deep, like 10 feet or so, but most of them are just waist deep. These hallways in the deep end can be well over 40 meters deep to the point where you can't even see the bottom of them. It's just a dark abyss under you. And this makes navigating the level really hard since you have to tread water and you can't just walk. You have to just swim through this darkness to get anywhere. Another thing that makes this sublevel difficult is the lack of light. The corridors and hallways here are just pitch black for the most part and can only be lit up by artificial sources like flashlights and phones and whatever else. Now there are some rare cases where the walls themselves have this weird dingy glow, but that doesn't matter much to be honest. The connections from room to room in the deep end are also extremely hard to use because most of them are underwater. Not only are they underwater though, they're very claustrophobic. It's a very tight window to get to the next part. So you can't just walk through from hall to hall to get to the next room. You have to swim in the pitch black in freezing cold water with no light to get to the next area. The level is also not well maintained and clean like the pool rooms is. The regular pool rooms keeps this shiny surface and really sunny, vibrant vibe, and there's no dirt that ever shows. But the tiles and everything here on this level are gross. The water is darker and murky, almost green in some areas, and the air is musty and stale. And it's just a very cold, unpleasant place to find yourself stuck in. The structure and layout of the level can also change very fast while you're exploring sometimes resulting in very confusing and twisted structures and weird hallways that never end. This is due to non-Euclidean geometry, which is just the icing on the cake for this amazingly dangerous level. I mean, I guess it wasn't dangerous enough that it's dark and you can't see anything and you're stuck in water. I guess they just had to make it, you know, non-Euclidean as well. Thanks, backrooms. As far as entities go, there aren't really any that permanently live here. There's only been a few face lanes that have been seen wading through deeper waters far into the level, which is actually pretty scary. And it's actually unknown how they got there, but whatever. There's also been some instances of the Hydrolytus Plague virus, which of course is a very dangerous virus that lurks in water in the backrooms. So be careful if you have to swim here. And there's also been uncorroborated reports of seeing Glitchtons in this sublevel. Now Glitchtons might be a real entity, they might not be, we don't know. They're kind of like this silent skeleton type entity that's been known to lurk deep in the waters here. Who knows? But overall, this level will really mess with your mind. You know, from the freezing water temperatures to the non-Euclidean layout, to the small claustrophobic and pitch black hallways, to the nasty smell. It just feels like an old forgotten part of the pool rooms that no one was supposed to see, except thousands of you all just did. You're welcome. To enter the level, you have to wander too deep into the pool rooms, and you'll find yourself stuck here with no way to return. And to exit, you gotta get lucky to be honest. 
One of the ways is to randomly find a water slide in the wall, jump in that water slide, and it'll take you to another sub-level, which is level 37.4. It's safer, it's still not safe, but it's safer. Or you can just try to no-clip, but that might not work. It's really hard to exit from the deep end, I gotta say. So level 627 of the back rooms is classified as, wait, there's no classification graphic. What do I do now? I guess the video wins here. Let me just make one up real quick. It's classified as a class faded and is moderately difficult due to its environment. And another thing that I'll talk about later. The level takes the appearance of a very small, indestructible room that's made out of porcelain tiles. Think of the tiles in the pool rooms. These are kind of like that. The level is widely known for its dark and strange and depressive energy and vibe that it gives off to people who are stuck here. That feeling seems to come from inside of the walls and in the dark areas of this level, which is not cool at all. The level's actual tiles are just slightly larger than the pool room's tiles, and they have more of a bluish hue to them, which means that this level is not a sub-level of the pool rooms. Now, other than the tiles, there's also a few sinks and stalls that have been seen, but uh, that's not the main thing. Inside this level, there is an old 80s-style plasma television, but as you can tell, it's no normal TV. No chance. This one is leaking a vibrant, iridescent, static-like substance. It's melting, pretty much. Where its screen used to be is now this flow of static, but I'll talk more on that later. You're going to want to stick around for it. It's crazy. So level 627, like many levels of the back rooms, has some strange properties, specifically two of them named separation and copying, which both of them are just exactly how their name sounds. So if you get in here to this level alone, it seems to produce an exact copy of you that follows you around the entire time you're here. It won't say anything. It'll just stand there and watch you. That's called the copying effect. Now, the separation effect happens if you get sent to the level in a group of people. And if you do get sent in a group, if that happens, then you will be separated from the group, and all of you will be sent to your own different copy of level 627. The lighting inside of this small room is pretty limited, since most of it comes from the leaking TV in front of you. But there's also some dingy light source from the ceiling that works sometimes and doesn't work other times. Other amenities in this level include there being drinking water, which can come out of the faucets on this level. That's right, the drinking water works, but the TV is melting. Classic backroom stuff. But to be honest, that's about the only good thing that's here on this level, because the level itself smells like mold and mildew, and it feels stale and disgusting. Now, there's no gross standing water or anything that would give off the smell. It's just that the entire level seems to just emanate that smell. Just nasty rot. Now for the exact layout of the level. The level tends to be consistent and unchanging, which is nice because a lot of levels in the back rooms change their layout or design randomly due to non-Euclidean geometry. So this one stays still, which is good for you to map out and good for you to escape. But when you first get into the level, you'll be at the western side or the western wall, which is just the wall that leads to a hallway that dead ends. Now behind you on the other side of the room is another tiled wall with the mirror and the sink on it where the TV is. Behind that wall is the entrance to a very small crawl space area that's very dark with very bad vibes. The melting TV and the screen and stuff is on the sink wall with the mirror, and the TV is plugged directly into an outlet right next to the mirror. It is impossible to unplug this TV, no matter how hard you yank on that cord, it will not come out. You can't break it in half, you can't cut it, the cord is impenetrable, and the TV can never be turned off. The ceiling in this level is also very short, and anybody over 6 foot 2 has to crouch and kind of hunch over when they walk, which isn't a problem for me. Anyways, the dark energy and depressive vibe that I talked about earlier comes from the crawlspace area and the walls. Now, it's really concentrated in this crawlspace area, and it's more so than any other place in the level. The area down there is just pitch black and lifeless, and it's dark. You cannot see past your own hand, and you just don't know what's beyond that. You can't tell if there's an entity that lurks down there, or if people are just making it up. Whatever it is, these weird energies and these dark feelings are coming out of this area. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments below. Now, the mirror above the sink behind the TV also has a few interesting quirks to it. One of them is if you touch it in any way, it'll disappear instantly and reveal an exit behind it. 
but not an exit from the level or anything. You're, you're not that lucky. It's just an exit to another exact copy of this level. It's like room inception. The level will just keep going on and on. Each room's mirror behaves the exact same way. If you walk up to it and touch it, it'll disappear and it'll reveal another room, just like the previous one, right behind it. So most of the rooms are the same, minus the fact that some of the rooms are more full of that liquid static that's coming from the TV than others, or there might be less lighting in different rooms. For example, one of the rooms that you might start in will just have the sink area being filled up by this TV juice, but the other room might have the juice all over the floor or wall. We have no clue how far the rooms expand. It might be infinite. It might not be. We don't know. So now I'm going to dive a little into what this TV staticky liquid might be. Now, in the Backrooms canon, it's known as HXMI-12, because that's the text on top of the TV, but its real name is unknown. The static's physical form is a luminescent, light, pinkish-bluish liquid with a syrup-like consistency and texture. The liquid smells like burning plastic and ozone, and it has this really staticky and volatile aura around it. It's made out of what seems to be random chemicals, and it crackles and statics when it leaks more out of the TV. It also rapidly changes colors from pink to blue, and this kind of gives it a strobing effect that can make people sick if they watch it. So watch out for that. Now, if you come into contact with the static, it will instantly cause a harsh burning sensation to occur, almost like you just touch lava or something. Even though it's not hot at all to the touch, it's actually pretty cool. It feels like you're being burned. The burning sensation is not the worst part though, and in fact, it's just the beginning. So if you touch the liquid from this TV, after an unknown period of time, the liquid on your skin will begin to spread and consume and envelop you completely until you become one with the static liquid and are just this static human like melting into the floor. This liquid leaks more and more from the TV the longer that you're stuck in the level. So the longer you stay, the more likely you are to get the static to touch you. It's kind of like floor is lava. So because of this, you'll need to escape as fast as possible unless you want to turn into a liquid static human monster thing. Now, remember what I said that some of the rooms are coated with more of this liquid static? Yeah, those are the rooms you're going to want to avoid because even touching a wall in that room that's covered in it with just a slight drop will have the same effect. You'll eventually be consumed. And the only way to counteract this melting static is by leaving the level, which I'm going to tell you how to do that right now. Wow, that was a really good segue to the next section. To exit, you have to touch a mirror and jump through it to different rooms until you find one that has a regular TV on the sink. Now, this TV will not be melting, it will not be broken, it will not be whatever. It is a regular looking TV with just random stuff playing on it. Once you find that, you need to run towards it and no clip through it to be sent to the next level. This is the only way you can escape and the only way you can avoid being melted into static. No clipping through walls or floors or anything else has not been proven to work, and this is the only way you can do it. So you better hurry up and find it. So to enter the level, for whatever maniac wants to know, you can fall through the floorboards of the attic level to be sent here, or you have a chance to randomly glitch here just from being on level 10. So try to avoid those two levels so you don't get sent here, and so you don't get turned into static. Okay. Also, there's no colonies here, of course. Level 898 of the back rooms is classified as a class variable, and it's due to its safety and entity count and overall just layout being very diverse and very unpredictable at all times. Pretty much the entire level will get more dangerous the longer you stay in it. The level is an incredibly mysterious and unique place, and it takes the appearance of a school. The school is very empty, and it's almost like it's been abandoned or forgotten over the years. You just get that weird barren feeling from it, like nothing's been here forever. Almost like something's over your shoulder watching you at all times. There might be. More on that later, though. The level mainly consists of the school's hallways and classrooms, and the hallways themselves are lined up with lockers on both or one side, depending on where you are. The lockers have a layer of dust, and the entire level has this eerie stillness that cuts through the air. You feel like you have to whisper and not make any noises while walking through it, or something's going to hear you. The only other things besides the hallways here are the classrooms, like I said, and then some few random staircases that'll pop in and out. 
these staircases lead to unknown places for the most part, and it's just a rule of thumb to avoid them. You know, they're dark and they give off this ominous feeling, they smell of mold and rot, and you probably just shouldn't go up or down them unless you have to. So when a wanderer enters these hallways, they'll actually start on a staircase itself, and it has multiple doors to the sides of it. Uh, the only problem is that these doors will not open, and they only go the one way, which is straight ahead of you, and that leads to a hallway, the main hallway. Now the walls of the level are painted in this crunchy popcorn texture, and the ceiling is a tiled drop ceiling, like most real life schools are at least in the USA. The lockers along the wall will sometimes have supplies in them, like almond water or food or notebooks or anything like that. And these same supplies can also be found inside of the classrooms in the level as well. There are also whiteboards and a couple of computers and all that kind of stuff in the classrooms as well. And even sometimes you might find a facelin in there studying. But just like the hallways, these rooms tend to have an eerie and empty vibe, and they're so quiet that every noise you make sounds like you're banging on a drum. There are also windows in these classrooms that can open up to the outside of the school. I say outside with air quotes, of course, because you can't actually know what's out there. It seems to be a grass field on all sides, but video recording devices and cameras do not seem to work when trying to photograph or record the outside. We really don't know what's beyond the field. Now, so far, I bet you're thinking that the level sounds really chill, just like a, you know, old abandoned school. How could it be dangerous? Unless you just hate schools. But now I'm going to get into the dangerous part of the level. You're going to want to buckle up because this is where it gets really weird. So when you walk to the end of one of the hallways, specifically the hallway that you start on, a nearly exact copy of that hallway will appear on your left. And on your right, there will be a stairwell, which will go up or down to yet another hallway. So the hallway to your left goes off in a different direction, and it does not loop back to the first hallway that you just came from. So it's not just like this big loop or circle or anything. It is different halls each time you get to the end of that hall. The copy will almost be the exact same, but it'll just slightly be different than before. Each difference is barely noticeable, and it could be as small as like there being one less locker, or a light being out in the ceiling, or a pencil being in the floor, something like that. Anyways, these repeating hallways are very confusing, and will cause wanderer sanity to slowly break down as they try to remember which way they went, and which way they're going, and if they're going in circles or not. And each time you go down a hallway or a staircase, your mental health and your sanity will get worse and worse and worse, and that's when the level's stages begin. So each new hallway is actually referred to as a loop, even though it's not a loop, and these loops can mess you up pretty bad. <laughs> stage one, or the early stage of the level's loop, starts with random pencils appearing on the floor, and binders and paper as well. Now this doesn't seem too weird at first, I mean, you're in a school, there's gonna be paper and stuff, but stage two's loops is when you get to the end of that hallway and go on to another hallway, the second copy. This is when clothing and trash cans will start to appear inside of these hallways and it'll become more muddled and jumbled up with junk. The level will then begin to decay more and more and the smell of mold and rot will get stronger and stronger. And you'll start to hear these really strange shuffling noises coming from over your shoulder. Like something's there, but when you turn around, there's nothing behind you. The later stages of the loops here will see the lights flickering and the floor being ripped and there being soggy holes in the ceiling and the ceiling itself will start to collapse and the entities on this level will begin to run around and run right past you and attack you. At this point, you'll feel mentally exhausted, and physically as well from walking for so long, and the entities can make easy work if, you, if you're not careful. So yeah, it's right here at this point, when the level starts to be more decayed and rotten, the entities themselves will be the same. More dangerous, more decayed, more rotten. When all these entities start coming out, you'll feel like you just need to hide inside of a locker or a classroom. I mean, it seems like a good idea, right? You get in there, you shut the door, nothing can get you. Wrong. In these later stages of the looping halls and the distortion, an infestation event will occur and entities that are rare and unusual will start to appear. I'm not talking about your normal skin stealers or hounds or smilers. They'll be there, but I'm talking about the real dangerous ones that lurk in the depths. Like entity Ariana Membris, or this giant spider thing, lives here as well. And let me tell you, they're dangerous. They're large, seven to eight foot tall arachnid type entities that are extremely fast and agile. 
They seem to live in the ceilings above you, and when this infestation event starts, they drop down and will sprint up and down the hallways and staircases even, looking for food. If you try to hide from them, they'll smell you out, and they'll eventually get you, and there's no point trying to run away, because they're faster. If you jump inside of a locker and hide, you're risking jumping right into a Smiler den, since it's pitch black inside the lockers, and the Smilers live in pitch black, you can guess how that's going to end for you. So to avoid this infestation, and to avoid these crazy hall looping things, you need to get out of the level as fast as you can. To do so, you can find a small vent and crawl through it to get to a crawl space area and you'll be sent to level 19, or you can find a ladder inside the level somewhere and climb it up and you'll get sent out of the level as well. That one's more dangerous though, since you kinda gotta go deeper into the level, I would recommend just using the crawl space exit. Now to enter the level, you can get sent here from level 11 by just going into a schoolhouse, which kinda sucks because Level 11 is a safe level, and the fact that you can get sent to this infinite looping school hallway thing and get chased by giant entities after being stuck for days can really happen. That sucks, to be honest. It really does. So level 899 of the back rooms is classified as a class undetermined since its safety and stability is crumbling. According to the little graphic here, it's, it's crumbling, which just sounds like a ton of fun to me. The level apparently also has inconsistent time fluctuation as well, and it's just highly unadvised to enter level 899. Now, since it's a rather recent discovery, we really don't know much about it to ensure its safety, so take my word for it. Let me do the explaining. Don't go there. The level itself takes the appearance of a long, interconnected subway car system inside of an infinite underground tunnel. The entire level, inside the subway and out, is dark, except there are a few random light panels that can be seen. The level is also fully monochrome and has no color to it, which is very disorienting to people who get stuck here because everything is just dark and you can't really see all grayscale. But the level doesn't just stop with everything there being grayscale. In fact, if you bring anything onto the level itself, that thing will also become grayscale, including clothes and food and anything else. Food you bring here will eventually fade into gray and become lifeless and tasteless and lose its color. And any color on your clothes will also do the same. But as I said, it doesn't just stop at items, it can affect living things as well, like you or entities. Because the longer you stay on this level, you know, walking through these subway carts or walking through the tunnel, the more your skin color will fade away until you ultimately become a gray-colored humanoid thing. This effect will stay with you when you leave the level as well, and uh, as I'm making this video, there is no cure to stop your skin from turning gray. Cool. The length of these subway cars is assumed to be infinite, but that's mainly because no one has found an end or anything like that. And the tunnel that the subway cars are in is also assumed to be infinite. The tunnel itself is a giant architectural wonder, and it's completely straight and goes on in one direction forever. There are like no turns, no curves, no bends, no elevation changes. The entire thing is just flat and straight and is made out of concrete. The state of the subway cars is about the only thing that's different and that changes on the level as some of the cars look older and run down and some look new. On that same note, some of them are also newer models and some of them are also older models, which you'll see why that might happen later on in the video. But this effect is similar to the one on level 61, where the trains on that level are different models and different ages. But these changes in age and appearance have been attributed to those time warping effects that I hinted at earlier and that crumbling stability that I was talking about. Now I'll get into the time warping stuff in a second, but for now I'm going to talk a little bit more about the tunnel. So the tracks that the subway cars are on are made out of metal and concrete, but they show no signs of breaking or cracking, and they actually seem to be very durable, which isn't normal because normally concrete and stuff can crack pretty easily. However, no matter any of this stuff, it is not recommended to step off the subway, because if you do that, a few things will happen. The first thing is that your sanity will drain to really low critical levels. For some reason, being in a dark tunnel with these subway cars flying past you will make you go crazy. Who would have thought? Additionally, the second you step off the car onto the ground of the tunnel, your vision will blacken and you won't be able to see anything. 
and this will obviously send a rush of fear through you and it'll make you freak out because you can't see anything at all. The level's already dark and grayscale as it is, but losing your eyesight would make it that much worse. If you step off the path and subway here, you pretty much lose it. This eyesight losing effect is very similar to the one over on level 668 that I went over a couple months ago. Now on that level, if you step off of the path, you'll lose your eyesight. But in this level, if you step off of the subway, you will lose your eyesight. But I just think it's pretty interesting to see these kinds of parallels and similarities across the different backrooms levels. Maybe one day we'll find out how they do that, how the backrooms does it, but for now, it's just a random, random parallel. The air in the tunnel is also toxic and it smells of decay and old metal and just reeks of rot. And almost everything around you is just wet and just eerie when you're outside of the subway. But now I'm gonna explain the 899 time warping effect, also known as the 899 event. So the 899 event is a time fluctuating anomaly that occurs randomly on this level and as of right now there is no way to predict when it's about to happen or why but when it does happen this is what it looks like when the event begins the gravity of the level inside and outside of the subway cars will start to weaken drastically meaning that small random objects will start to hover and float and then will eventually drop repeatedly floating and dropping as well as this the temperature in the level will go down drastically as well from a stuffy heat to an uncomfortable cold now after a few seconds of this gravity and this temperature change time itself will reverse rewinding all the action that just happened back before it happened at this point your vision will begin to blur as a wanderer and the space around you will start to warp making it hard to see and walk and stand and the air will start to feel like water and you'll begin to swirl and rotate and you really just can't walk straight because the air itself is spinning so you're spinning too at this point the ground seems to start shaking violently like an earthquake and the tunnel that's outside of the subway will start to shift and crack and unlike many other backrooms levels this tunnel does not heal itself when it cracks there's these massive rifts and cracks in the concrete tunnel itself that seem to build on each other each time a time warping event happens leading most people to believe that the level is destined to collapse at any point in time in the near future and it's because of this and all the other effects like blindness and sanity dropping and time warping and all that that it's not a good idea to come to this level But if for some reason you did want to come here, you can enter it by finding a black or white subway car in any level, getting into it, and then you'll be sent here. And this will effectively trap you into the level until you find an exit. Now to exit, you have to travel from subway car to subway car until you eventually get in one that is full of plastic balls from like a ball pit. Once you see that, you have to jump into the pit and then you'll be sent to level 60. Now the problem with this is that it's very rare to find these ball pit cars, so you're just gonna have to keep going and going until you find it, no matter how many time warping effects you have to endure. If you wanna get out, that is. You could just wanna stay here forever, I guess. The article says there's no entities or life here at all, which might be true since there's not one officially documented, but the level is brand new and it's been newly discovered. So there is a theory that these weird effects and these weird time warping things and sanity loss and eyesight are all because of some kind of entity that lurks deep in the subway tunnel or follows the subway wherever it goes or something like that. We don't know if that's the case or not, but it definitely is a possibility. So yeah. Level 899, the infinite subway tunnel and subway with strange mental effects and space-time anomalies where you lose your eyesight, your skin color, gravity stops, and time warps. Would you go here? Let me know in the comment section below if you would. Level negative 250 of the backrooms is a very, very deep negative level. And as most of you know that watch my videos, negative levels are very unstable and volatile as it is. But the deeper they get and the further from zero they get, the worse they become with their environments, their features, their creatures, and, and so on. That rhyme, by the way, that's pretty cool. So negative 250 is classified as a class not alive, wink, wink, zone, due to its numerous hazards, 
presence of lethal creatures and entities, and its overall just unstable environment. I apologize for not being able to say D-E-A-T-H in the videos, because I'm already going to be skirting demonetization with this video, so I gotta censor myself where I can, or YouTube will just slap me across the face. Level negative 250 should never be entered intentionally, or accidentally for that matter, just never come here as the majority of people who wander here are never seen again. The level consists of several abandoned sidewalks that sprawl out over a large area. The sidewalks curve around and branch off into thick growths of dark forests, and they'll splinter off even more inside the forest as well. Each of these sidewalks extends out for undetermined lengths, and they also cut into different types of sidewalks. When you get to this level, the first thing you'll notice is that it's got a red coloration to it. You'll also look around and you'll see these randomly put electric poles, and you also see the red sky just above you. The red sky has been described as staticky and volatile. It's almost like you're looking at a screen up close. You know how you, when you do that, you can see all like the individual pixels? That's what the sky looks like here. And the forest that surrounds the sidewalks and the poles is very dark, almost pitch black. And the entire time you're here, you'll get this very unsettled and uneasy feeling from walking around. You can see why the environment's terrifying. At first, you won't feel as if anything's wrong. You don't see any weird creatures, and the sidewalks just seem to be strange, yeah. But to be fair, most of the backrooms is weird, so nothing really is standing out right now. But that all changes a few short moments after entering the level. Because right after you spawn here and you start walking around and observing the surroundings, you'll begin to hear faint rustling in the leaves. The rustling is obvious, since the level is actually pretty quiet beyond that. But once this rustling noise is heard, a wanderer's paranoia and anxiety will skyrocket. You'll feel like something's moving around every time you move. You feel like something's over your shoulder, in the periphery of your vision. But when you look over there, you won't see anything, and it's just a pretty bad place to be. After a few minutes of this, you'll start to think your mind is playing tricks on you. Continuing along your walk down these dark sidewalks, you might run across a few random buildings and a few abandoned shacks with these alleyway type things sticking out of the trees. These alleyways need to be avoided at all costs, as they're most likely traps for smilers and other entities that lurk in the darkness. Wandering even further into this red hellscape, you might come across the base of one of these electric poles that's sticking up out of the forest. Now, sometimes these poles can be very dangerous because they have exposed wiring just dangling down from them. So if you see some exposed wiring, be sure to avoid that. Unless you just enjoy the nice, tingly, warm, fuzzy feeling of being tased by a million tasers. So yeah, avoid that. And also avoid the alleyways, like I said. But even the alleyways, the exposed wires, the dark forest, the red sky, none of that is dangerous when it all comes down to it. Because the real danger here lies with the creatures themselves inside this level. Of course, the level itself is, you know, scary and dangerous and not safe. And I'll talk more about that later. But the entities here are awful. Entities known as predatory pylons lurk here. Now, you might not know where they're at when you get here because they blend in with the electric poles that are in this level. And they pretty much are indistinguishable from the physical appearance of the pole. They're wiry, they're spindly, but they are flesh and blood creatures. And they can move around the level and crush you underneath their huge bases. They typically move when you're not looking at them, which might account for that rustling noise that you kind of hear when you get here. It could be one of them taking a big step and then stopping by the time you turn around. But these entities are the main reason that you should never, ever stand still in this level at all. Make sure you're always moving around. Make sure you're trying to bob and weave. That way you don't get stepped on. But it's not just these pylon entities that are bad because it gets even worse. Now, this is not in the official page for the level, but there's been unconfirmed reports of strange, large, shadowy creatures swinging and jumping from electric pole to electric pole. These entities are said to be giant humanoid shadow creatures that are only discernible from their eyes that glow in the darkness, and they typically glow pretty bright. The entities are completely silent, and they make zero noise when they swing around, and they attack wanderers by reaching down from the poles with their really long arms, and with one quick, silent motion, they scoop them up to never be seen again. Again, this entity is not confirmed, and it has no official name or classification, but there's been multiple reports, multiple pictures of this entity being talked about, so I'm going to choose to believe it's real, and I'm going to choose to warn you about it. Just know that it makes no noise, and it blends in perfectly with the black trees, try to keep your eyes peeled. So besides the strange pole creatures, the shadow entities, the staticky red sky, the abandoned buildings, the pathways, everything like that, the level also has some non-entity dangers that I hinted at from earlier. Because there's a place deeper down in this level, only accessible through an unknown pathway, 
that's been nicknamed the Cromel River. This is a dark red liquid river that cuts through the forests of the level. A strange misty smoke comes off this river constantly, and the river itself is extremely volatile and toxic to be around, especially to touch the water or breathe in the mist that comes off the top of it. It seems to be similar to the compound from real life chromal chloride, which is a chemical poison here on Earth. But that doesn't matter because, you know, this isn't real life, it's the back rooms. But the main thing you need to know is that this liquid should never be touched, never be jumped in, never be breathed in or anything like that, as the toxins in this chrome compound can get inside your lungs easily. And if you touch it, a series of rashes and bumps and blisters will start to form all over your body until you become this one huge fleshy mess. This one massive growth of pus-filled human flesh. Now, due to this river being so dangerous to be around, it's recommended to never leave the path that you start on, no matter how scary it seems. You gotta keep going. Don't look back. No matter what's behind you, no matter if there's a giant electric pole walking or if there's a shadow creature swinging from pole to pole, never look behind you. So believe it or not, this level is actually a pretty new discovery, and we still don't know much about it, but we already know of several dangers that pose threats to life. So in order to avoid being snatched up by a shadow figure or stepped on by a pole, you're going to have to exit. And you can do so by finding a dumpster in one of those buildings I mentioned earlier and getting into it and trying to escape. But whatever you do when you're here, do not try to no-clip through the sidewalks in the level, as it's thought that if you do this, you will get sent to the void as if, you know, it couldn't get any worse. Backrooms Level 94, aka Level Motion, is classified as a survival difficulty of 3 and is overall pretty unsafe in general. It takes the appearance of a couple of different things ranging from a big town to a stone castle to green rolling hills and all of the level is covered in a retro grainy type effect. Kind of like an old movie or a video game. And the entire level is almost like Dreamcore, in a way. I know some of y'all like that. The part of the level where the main town is, is pretty safe, especially during the daytime, since there aren't any entities here. But at nighttime, it can get pretty dicey. In the very center of this town, in the main area, there's actually a fountain that's flowing with almond water. Which is kind of cool, I'm not gonna lie. Wanderers have described the feeling of this town as kind of a 1930s stop-motion background, which is pretty campy and cool, to say the least. On the outskirts of the town, there are small houses with furniture and other normal house stuff. There's also retro cars and vans from the 1930s time period, and there's even huge milk vans full of almond milk for the lactose intolerant crowd among us. Oh, you said among us, funny, funny. Scattered around the town's roads, there are these things that look like siren poles, but they're actually speakers, and they play really old campy cartoon music sometimes. Specifically, the sirens only play the music during these safe times, which is daytime on the level, and then the music will play until nighttime when it gets really unsafe and unstable and lots of entities start to come out. But I'm going to explain those entities during the entity explanation section of the video. The grassy hills of the level are actually infinite, and they just keep repeating themselves over and over again, but sometimes there will be like a random car parked on the side of the road, or you might run into a water tower that's just there. And sometimes on the top of the hills themselves are just random pieces of furniture, like chairs or tables, just sitting there. Which is pretty unsettling, I gotta be honest with you. But it's not as unsettling as the transparent hills that are there. Hills that you can literally see through that have castles sitting on top of them. That's terrifying. I mean, that'd be pretty trippy. Like, just imagine walking up to an invisible hill that you can see through and seeing a whole castle just on top. I'm not even sure how, like, my brain would process that, but whatever. You can actually walk up the Invisa Hill, get it, Invisible Hill, and get to the castle. But the castle area specifically is known for draining sanity, so be sure to carry almond water with you so you don't go off the deep end. Inside of the castle, you'll notice that there is a huge funhouse area. In fact, the entire castle itself is a funhouse. Playhouse. Whatever you want to call it. It's full of playsets, slides, ballrooms, ball pits, and, you know, the other typical funhouse stuff. If you wander through this castle enough, you'll actually run into a huge doorway that opens into the throne room, where, of course, the entity called the Animated King lives. 
Now, you'll be tricked into a false sense of security by the animated king because he seems nice and stuff at first, but he'll actually try to control you instead of helping you. So watch out for that. The animated king will put you through a test before he turns you into an animation entity, which I'll get into what an animation is in a second. But if you pass this test, you might be sent out of the level, and if you fail, well, you're probably not going to be leaving anytime soon. Now, let's get into some creatures, shall we? So there are actually a lot of entities and creatures here, and they're very dangerous, especially in nighttime. As per usual, you got your regular entities like Smilers, Skin Stealers, Hounds, and Male Death Moths, and even Death Rats, which are slightly less common, but still pretty common. But the level exclusive entity, like I said, is called an animation. These things look like stop motion characters, but they're very hostile because they attack anything that isn't animated, which is pretty creepy, not gonna lie. And they attack victims based off of what they look like themselves. So like if an animation entity is a claymation character, then it will try to drown its victim in clay, what? Or if the animation entity is like wood or something like that, then it will try to hit its victim with blunt force, and so on and so forth. You get the point. They aren't very smart though, so you can pretty much avoid them with ease. Just make sure you don't get caught by them or, you know, you'll drown in clay or be beat over the head by a bat. The other level exclusive entity is called the Robomen, which are just retro robot toys from the early 1900s that live inside the castle and they kind of act like the guards of the castle and they're really hostile and will instantly attack you if they see you. So just avoid the large walking robots. To enter this weird place, you have to successfully escape the end level and then go to the hub level right after. When you're there, a rectangle hole will just manifest itself in the ground inside of the hub and it'll slowly start to close over time. And if you want to exit, you can either complete the Animated King's trial and pass it by conquering your fears in animated form, or you can get teleported into level 7, 9, or 53 by randomly going into one of the houses on the hills in the level. So to summarize, this pretty interesting level, pretty cool level as well, it's pretty much just a dream core world filled with weird animated glitchy type things that kind of makes you feel peaceful and at home until you get to the literal invisible hill with a castle on it where you'll be forced to watch your biggest fears unfold in animation. If you pass, then you can leave, and if you don't, then you're condemned to stay here forever as an animation entity. Pretty neat! So this backrooms level as a whole is classified as a class variable difficulty and is unstable and has varying safeties and varying levels of danger depending on where you're at. And I say that because the level is split up into two different sub-levels so far and both of them are pretty much fully unexplored. All we have is a few pictures from a wanderer or two that have been here. So first up, we have sub-level 1, and it's so new that we haven't even named it, we're just calling it sub-level 1. But it's classified as a class habitable zone, and is very safe. But it is the only safe one out of the two, so don't get used to it. It looks to be a huge grass meadow that goes out for several hundred feet. The meadow itself is green and bright, and it typically looks like a spring day. There is a day and night cycle, so you do have to worry about getting cold sometimes, but that's pretty much all that's here that's dangerous. And there are only a couple of anomalous and strange things that have even happened here. The first one is that random supplies and objects fall from the sky and land in the forest. Now this forest is what's surrounding the meadow I talked about, and it seems like these objects just fall from nowhere, but some of them can be pretty useful. Supplies like tools and almond water and even wood planks to build stuff with, you just never know what's gonna fall. And that's all weird of course, but there is one more weird thing. You actually cannot no clip out of this sub-level. No matter how hard you try, you 
can't leave except one single exit, which I'll get into in a second, but the no-clipping effect just doesn't work. Now that's kind of like the green mist level that I went over a couple weeks ago. That level also doesn't let you no-clip either. So let me know in the comments why you think that you can't no-clip out of these levels. What does it mean? Is the backrooms breaking? Is it learning and getting more powerful so it doesn't let people leave? Who knows? So further out in the meadow, there is a concrete shack that has an open door on it. And the shack is actually the entrance to the next sub-level. Inside of it, there's a small manhole cover in the floor with one of those manhole great things on top that you have to open to go down. Now, you should not be going here because the next sub-level is easily one of the dangerous places in the back rooms and terribly more dangerous than this meadow area. But if for some reason you want to go, I'm going to explain it now. But around this shack, people have reported that they get weird senses of paranoia and overwhelming fear without even going in it. And when they're inside of it, they're kind of just overtaken with fear and paranoia. Unless you're insane, you shouldn't go in the shack. But if you do, you'll be sent to the next sublevel, which is classified as a class zone and is extremely dangerous. And currently, no one has left. Alive, at least. Now, this sublevel 2 area is an endless labyrinth of stinky, damp, dark concrete tunnels that are dimly lit by old looking lights. Now, the tunnels are pretty much unmapped completely because they're so windy and curvy and they almost seem to change every once in a while. The halls are dotted with entities in some of the spots, and lots of them are actually unknown or undocumented entities. But of course, there are some normal ones, like skin stealers and death moths and facelings and clumps and hounds. You know, the typical kind. But if you run into any of those that I just listed, then you need to turn around and walk the other way slowly. Not like it's going to help much, but... You know, I'm just trying to be nice here. There's also a level exclusive entity here called the Puddles. And these puddles are made out of a thick black substance that will try to attack and detain people who walk by. The liquid is sticky and it seems to be sentient in a way. And it seems to be some kind of super creature that literally lives just to eat people. It's kind of like what the symbiotes look like from Venom, that kind of material. But yeah, it literally just attacks anything it sees, even other entities. But of course, there are other hazards in these concrete halls, like partygoers and smilers, but typically these are only found deep into the halls in the glitchy warping areas, which eventually the halls themselves will just start to decay and get glitchy and warp and almost like an error message when you get too far into them. Now, it's actually thought that if you do walk far enough into them, there'll eventually be no entities or puddles or any dangers, actually. And this comes from a user named I Am Stoppable, who posted this image to Meg Authorities on August 8th, 2022. That user claims that the picture they took is a safe spot that people are currently living in. Now, the user has said that since they've got there, the smell in this area has gotten worse and more sour and that the grass seems to be decaying and even the concrete walls around them are broken and decaying and are starting to show bricks instead of concrete, which might mean that the bricks on the other side of the concrete is how you get to the next sublevel but we don't know for sure. As of right now, there's just two that we know of, the metal and the concrete tunnels. No one knows why the tunnels are decaying and showing bricks instead of concrete, but some people think the level is on the verge of exploding or completely decaying on top of itself. So who knows? Let me know what you think in the comments. So yeah, as of right now, all we know is two sub-levels. One is a nice safe meadow area, and the next is a terrifying concrete maze of hallways full of entities and decay and sentient black sludge that wants to eat you. But yeah, that was Backrooms Level 1069. Hope you enjoyed it. Backrooms Level 9999 is classified as a class pending, which means that its safety is undetermined and there is also an unknown entity count. Pretty much, no one is really sure if this level is safe or not. Now, the level itself looks like an abandoned amusement park that's covered in a thick fog, almost always. The park is on some sort of island, and around this island is an ocean. And the ocean is very, very deep, like extremely deep. And the water is actually salt water, like real life oceans. Right off the bat, it is not recommended to go into the water because nothing is known about it. No one knows if there's any entities in there or if you'll just unalive if you go into it. Who knows? 
Now the amusement park itself is pretty normal compared to real life ones. There are a ton of rides like roller coasters and merry-go-rounds and all the typical stuff that you've seen in real life. There's also a lot of Ferris wheels. Now all of what I just told you is pretty normal, right? You know, it's pretty, it's pretty accurate to how our life is as well. Except on this level, the roller coasters are very weird. They have very strange and anomalous effects that can either be extremely good or extremely bad for you. And I'm gonna explain what that means now. Each coaster is an exit from this level, but it's not as easy as just hopping on one and being sent out. Instead, the leading theory is that the level itself will choose if you can leave based off of your karma. That's right, your karma. Pretty much the level somehow figures out how good or bad of a person you are based off of your entire life. And it goes off of however good or bad it thinks you are in order to choose which level it sends you to. So when you get to a roller coaster, the level will just choose how good or bad you are as a person, and then based on how it chooses, it'll either send you to a nice level or a dangerous level. And on top of this, whatever it chooses, the ride will then turn to be either dangerous, foggy, or clear. If the roller coaster turns dark and gloomy, like you're seeing now, then the level apparently thinks that you're not a good person based off of your life's deeds. The sky will turn dark and then red, and then the ocean around the level will go from water to liquid pain. Once this is all happening, you'll be sent to a scary or terrifying level in some way, like level exclamation mark, or the void, or something like that. If the roller coaster does not change, and it stays at its normal fogginess, then the level thinks you're a neutral person, and that you're not that bad, but you're also not that good. People on the neutral roller coasters are probably sent to one of the first five levels, but it's unknown because we can't tell. Now, if the level's fog goes away and a bunch of lights come on, then the level has decided that you have good karma and are a good person. When the level's in this state, it looks like a normal carnival from real life, and the fog that's normally on this level is gone. It's also thought that you'll be sent to a pretty safe level, like level 6999, or level 11, if it chooses that you're a good person. Of course, these are all just guesses based on how we think the level reacts to people. It could be something else entirely, though. Who knows? I mean, <laughs> this is the backrooms. We have no idea. But if none of that makes sense, I'm going to explain it in the simplest way possible. You can get on a random roller coaster on this level, and then that roller coaster, or the level itself, will choose if you are a good person or not. And whatever roller coaster you're on will then transform into either a dark and gloomy one, a normal foggy one, or it will clear up, and it'll be lit up and nice. And based off of what the level chooses, you'll be sent to either a dangerous, mildly dangerous, or safe level. The only entity here on this level is facelings, and if you don't know what they are, they're just semi-sentient humanoid beings with a blank face. And on this level, they've been seen walking around the rides and riding them, except there's never been any scene on the roller coasters. Only people have been there. Weird. There are no colonies or outposts here, and to enter the level, you have to be sent here randomly from the previous level, level 9998. Now, it's really rare to be sent here, but you could just be walking along the previous level and just fall through the floor and wake up here, so that's cool. To exit, you have to do what I said and ride a roller coaster, and then it will decide which level it sends you to, based off of if it thinks you're good or bad. And no one knows how this level can judge a person's life, because that would mean that it would have to have had access to that person before the back rooms or somehow the level has downloaded data about each person that comes here or something like that we don't know there's been no higher power found that's controlling the level as far as we can tell and it seems to be that this area as a whole is alive and the entire level is an entity and it acts as sort of a moral compass the better person you are in its eyes the better level you get sent to and the worse person you are the worse level you get sent to So Backroom's level you win is classified as a class habitable difficulty and is safe and devoid of any entities, harmful entities that is. And that is pretty much the opposite of level you cheated that I went over a few weeks back, which blew up by the way, so thank you for that. This level is actually pretty weird because of how it looks and behaves and some other things, but overall it's safe. The entire level takes place in a building that has 11 stories. The building is apparently out in the middle of nowhere, in a field, because you can look out the windows and just see a big empty field. When you actually get to the level, you'll start in an office lounge type place. Now this is the 11th 
floor or the highest floor of the building. When you finally realize where you are, you'll immediately lose all your stress and you'll feel relieved instantly. It's kind of like your body knows that you won the game of the back rooms. The rest of this 11th story is pretty normal for an office building. It's pretty liminal and pretty empty looking, but it gets a little weirder the further you go down to the stories below you. And in these levels that are below you, there's almond water randomly placed on tables and that kind of thing, and there's also facelings wandering around, but each level is different. For instance, the 10th floor is some kind of supermarket that's similar to a Walmart or a Safeway Vons or that kind of thing from real life. And there are facelings actually shopping around for things and working the cash registers here. And on the shelves, there is literal merchandise to buy. Like there's fresh food and fruits and vegetables and even seafood you can buy. And of course, none of that makes any sense because why would there be a fully functioning supermarket in the back rooms? But who cares? You just won. Now the ninth floor is full of weird looking restaurants also run by facelings. And these places are just named basic things like food, you know? They're also very liminal looking and they're mostly empty unless you run into another wanderer there or the facelings that work in the store. Now the eighth floor has a ton of bedroom type places in it. The bedrooms are small and plain looking, kind of like just ones you'd see in a house, like a spare bedroom. And there's also a balcony at the end of this floor that juts out from the building. If you jump off this balcony for some reason, then you'll just no clip back up into the bedroom floor or the eighth floor that you were on. Or it's thought that sometimes you can no clip into your bed in reality. Like you can just jump off the balcony and you'll end up back home. That's not confirmed or anything, but it's strongly thought that that's how it works since the balcony is only on the floor with beds. So it would make sense if you jumped off the bed floor and ended up in reality in your own bed, wouldn't it? Now the seventh floor is kind of like an old computer lab. The computers here are pretty normal. There's old and new ones, and it looks like a big school computer lab kind of. The computers can be turned on and off, but you can't break them. Even if you smash the screen, it'll just repair itself. There's also internet here that you can connect to apparently. The sixth floor is a really dark room with chairs where people just go to relax and chill after, you know, being in the back rooms for days or years. The floor is completely empty. There are a few random pillars holding the ceiling up, but there are just random seats around as well. The fifth floor is kind of like a dining area where there's tables and it kind of looks like a cafeteria area here and there can sometimes be entities as well there's big long tables with seating and stuff like that and you can occasionally run into another wanderer or two here just chilling and eating food the fourth floor is kind of like a nightclub or a dance club nothing crazy just random music and colorful lights and that kind of deal and the music played here is very strange and unknown the third floor is kind of like a movie theater that plays real life movies that you've probably seen before and even movies that haven't been created yet like somehow this place can play unreleased movies which might mean that this level takes place in the future what do you think the second floor is kind of like a regular shop with supplies and that sort of thing a little bit of food not as much food as the 10th story supermarket but it's just a tiny shop nothing too special and the first floor which is probably the most special floor is at the very bottom of this building it kind of looks like a hotel lobby in a way and it's a place to relax and to chill and meet other wanderers as well it's kind of the hangout zone if there are other people here at the time you're there and apparently people come here to tell stories and commemorate and just talk about the things they've experienced in their journey throughout the back rooms it just looks like a huge liminal hotel lobby with nothing else really just kind of empty but there are seats there and there is an important doorway in the middle of this hotel lobby that leads outside of the building which i'll get into in the exits portion but now it's time for the entrance sections where you'll finally figure out how to get to this level and win the back rooms now most of these entrances involve winning some kind of game in the back rooms like if you win the beasts game on level 4293 you have an opportunity to be sent here or if you win an arcade game on level 3999 the true ending level you'll be sent here as well it's also theorized that you can beat the game master at a level and have a small chance to be sent as well so technically you could get pretty lucky just by winning a game or an arcade machine you could be sent here 
to exit, you can go through the doors that I just mentioned on the first floor lobby and have a good chance of being sent to the front rooms. Or, at least it's thought. If you don't want to do that, you can jump off the balcony on the bedroom's floor to be sent to your own bedroom. Possibly. If it works like that. We don't know. And if it doesn't work, you'll just be no-clipped back up to where you jumped. So yeah, this level is a random 11-story building with different enigmatic stories in it. Each story is different, and you can only get to this level by winning the back rooms. And then once you get here, well, you might be able to leave. We think. Could just be another fake exit. Who knows? So this level is classified as a class variable difficulty, which means that its safety and stableness changes depending on where you go inside the level. Now, according to the fandom, this level is actually a sub-level of the original Level Run For Your Life, which I've done a video on, if you are interested in that. And if you haven't heard of that, it's a terribly scary level in and of itself, where you spawn in and you have to run instantly away from a huge horde of entities. And at first glance, the first part of this sub-level looks like the normal level. It's a long hallway that's basked in a red lighting, and this entire part is pretty similar to the main level in that there's an entity horror chasing you and your sanity is dropping. But where it changes is that every so often there are doors on the left or right side of the hallway that can open up to different levels, but the levels that they open up to are typically dangerous levels, not safe levels, so they're dangerous. And some of them even lead back to the main part, which is level exclamation mark. So unless you want to go back to the main level and do this entire running thing again, it's not recommended to try any of these exits. So I'm sure you're asking yourself, you know, what does this sublevel do that sets it apart from the main level? Well, the main thing is there are extra steps and extra dangerous things that can happen to you here. There are random liquid pain puddles that you can step in, and there are some carpeted sections of the hallways that have poisonous carpet fluid inside of them. And if you lose your shoes or you walk through these areas with your bare feet or socks on, uh, that might be it for you. Because if your feet touch liquid pain or this carpet fluid, then the pain will be worse than unaliving itself. <laughs> so... That just adds on to the difficulty on top of the entity horde chasing you. There is one pretty cool thing about this level though, and is that if you run for a really, really long time, like 10 plus miles on this level, then you might find a staircase that goes up. And if you go up that staircase, you might get to the promised land, which is a thought to be exit of the back rooms itself, but it's not confirmed if it is. Some people are really thinking that it is, and I've done a video explaining all of that, so go check that out if you haven't. But if you find this staircase, I would recommend 10 out of 10 go into that staircase just to find the exit. I, it's worth it to me to try it. As you know, the main level exclamation mark isn't too long, only a few miles, but this sub-level is way longer and more confusing to run through. The good news is, is that there's these anomalous blue hallways scattered randomly throughout the level that can be randomly accessed to people. Now these don't appear to everybody and it's really unknown why they even exist, but they're pretty safe and they're a good spot to take a break from running for a second. And like I said, these hallways are blue and that's how you'll know that you ran into a safe spot. So a basic outline you can use is that a blue hall has a chance to appear every four and a half miles of running. And these blue hallways are also exits of the level because there's staircases in those that go down. And if you walk to the bottom of those staircases, then you'll be sent to a random level. There are also entities here that are unlike any entities in the back rooms. So that massive entity horde behind you that's going to be chasing you is full of the regular entities like death moths and smilers and hounds and that kind of stuff. But there are also extra entities in this sub-level. And what they do is that their only goal is to cause your sanity to drop. Like that is their entire reason for existing is to make your sanity less. So they're in that giant horde of entities, and you can't really get a good look at them because they're just blended in with the entire thing, but you can definitely feel the effects of losing your mind. And if you somehow get sent to this level after the previous run for your life level, then you'll be extra susceptible and more likely to go insane from these entities. But if you couple that liquid pain puddle stuff and the poisonous carpet juice along with this entity horde full of creatures that make your sanity go down, uh, that makes this level even more terrifying than the main level. It's also longer, so you have to run for further. 
to enter this sublevel, well, there's a 50% chance that you can get stuck here from being in level 2, or you can get here by choosing an unlocked door in the hallway of level exclamation mark, which would absolutely suck because imagine you're already running for your life and you find a door that can open finally, only for it to lead you to a longer red hallway in this level where you also have to run for your life. That'd be terrible. And you can exit the level from one of those blue hallways I talked about, or you can chance opening one of the doors to run past, but as I said earlier, you never know where that's gonna lead you. It might be dangerous or it might lead you back to level exclamation mark. You can also run to the quote unquote end of the level to find that staircase that goes upwards to be taken to the promised land. But that would require running for miles and miles and honestly, I, I don't think I could do that. So I would just try a door or try to find a blue hallway. I thought this level was pretty cool and it, I thought it blended pretty well with the famous level exclamation mark. It's just like it, but it's more dangerous and it's longer. And I like how there are a couple of exits that actually lead back to the main level because you don't really find that oftentimes with sub levels that are written in the back room. So I like how that stays that way. Anyways, hope you enjoyed it. So if you remember way back in the day, there was a level called the Crimson Forest. Now, I actually featured this level in the first safest backrooms level video on the channel, which you can still see, but since then, it has seemingly disappeared. And this new level 9.1 might be what's left of it. This level entry starts out with a little audio log that says, quote, did a quick write up of that new crater thingy where those funky fields used to be at. So yeah, those funky fields might just be referring to the Crimson Fields, which were near the Crimson Forest, perhaps. Backrooms level 9.1 is classified as a class pending, and it doesn't have a determined safety, and there hasn't been any entities found either. Not much is known about it. The level itself is a sub-level of the normal level 9, which I've made a full video on, if you're interested in checking that out. But the area looks like a huge impact crater like the ones that a meteor would make. The crater itself is around 20 kilometers wide, or around 12 miles, and it seems to be completely barren, like there's no grass, no trees, water, or any vegetation of any kind. There's quite literally nothing that points to life here, which almost makes it seem like some sort of extinction event might have happened. Maybe a catastrophe of some sort. Maybe? There's no day or night cycle either, which means the sun is constantly above you in the sky. It doesn't say what the temperature is, but I'd say if the sun's always above you, then it's gonna be pretty warm. Now, the reason this level is called level 9.1, just like the Crimson Forest used to be called that, is because the way the wanderer that noclipped here got here is literally almost the same way that the Crimson Forest used to be accessed. So the main theory as of right now is is that this crater is the last remnants of the old Crimson Forest, but it's just that, a theory. There's no concrete evidence that this is where the Crimson Field and Forest used to be, just a bunch of speculation. And it could be just a massive coincidence that it's accessed the same way as the old Crimson Forest was. Who knows? To enter this huge barren crater, you have to walk away from the main streets in level 9, like as far out as you can, and then you'll be sent here. The grass of level 9 will start to slowly transform into rocky sand and dirt, and then it'll eventually go from darkness that level 9 is in to the light which level 9.1 this level is in. To exit the level, you have to walk down to the crater and in the very middle of it, you'll find a couple small holes that you can jump into and then you gotta just jump into them and you'll be sent back to level nine. So that's pretty neat. Now at the bottom of the level entry, there is another small audio log that replies to the first one that I read at the beginning. This one says, quote, now about the theory section, I don't really see where you're coming from with the Crimson Forest hypothesis. There's no real solid ground for it to stand on. First of all, correlation does not equal causation. The crater could have been caused by a number of different things. Secondly, the crater was discovered several days before we lost contact with CF or Crimson Field. So there's no way it can be what's left of the forest. I understand that it's difficult to process, and I know grieving takes on many forms, but coming up with these kinds of desperate explanations isn't healthy. I know that may sound harsh, but these are the words you need to hear right now. She's gone. 
Mac. My general advice is this. Wait for more information about the crater to come back, and then you can write a draft for it, providing that you keep it to the facts. Thank you. End quote. So yeah, as you can see, this Meg officer is a Debbie Downer and says that there is no way that this crater is what's left of the Crimson Forest. But what does he know? The Meg officer also says that this area was found just a few days before all contact was lost from the Crimson Forest, which is pretty interesting if you ask me. Now, Meg says this isn't what destroyed the famous Crimson Forest, but that still leaves a huge question unanswered to me. What happened to the Crimson Field and Forest and the hundreds of people living in it? They couldn't have just vanished. And I really find it interesting that the exact same way you get to this crater level is the same way you used to get to the Crimson Forest level. That cannot be a coincidence. What do you think? And interestingly enough, this Crimson Forest disappearance is not the only level that's been destroyed or has disappeared. People on Backrooms level 22 had disappeared, and there were thousands at one point in time. As well as the entirety of Backrooms level 78 being destroyed by a meteor. So if you do want to make the connection that the Crimson Forest possibly blew up or was incinerated by a meteor, you can look to level 78, which happened the exact same way. The only difference is that 78 did take place in space, where meteors are, but nevertheless, it was destroyed by a massive meteor type thing. So the backrooms is no stranger to destroying itself. The only question is, who's destroying everything? And if you're new to the backrooms and that kind of thing, and you want to learn more about the Crimson Forest and the Crimson Field, what it used to be, there's a video on my channel about it. I'll link in the description. There's also a really cool found footage video from Frag2 about the Crimson Forest. So I'll leave that below as well. I reacted to it on Toogly a little bit ago, but go watch that video. It will show you why the Crimson Forest used to be so awesome, and I think you'll really enjoy it. Backrooms level negative three, or of light and darkness, is a very, very dangerous place. And dangerous is an understatement. It's classified as a class mirage difficulty for having psychological torture reality warping geometry, and deceptive influences. And I'll explain what all that means in a second, but pretty much it means that nothing is as it seems. The level is located deep into the back room somewhere, and it physically might be the smallest level ever found, cut up into a bunch of parts. In fact, it's made up of a bunch of small cubicle rooms, pretty much just small squares. Each of these cubic rooms has four walls, except the walls are not just material, they're mirrors. So all four walls in each room you're in will be mirrors. And the mirrors are facing inwards towards each other, which is creating an infinite reflection on all sides. Now it's not the mirrors themselves that make the level creepy, it's actually what you see in the mirror. When you're in the first cube, you'll see your own reflection, pretty normal. And you'll see that for the first few rooms at least. Now the good news is, you aren't stuck in one room forever. But that's also bad news, because it just gets worse. Now to exit the rooms, you'll need to look for a part of the mirror that doesn't look completely solid. It kind of looks like it's waving water, and then you can just walk directly through it. And if you do walk through the mirror, you'll be sent to an exact copy of that same room, except each time you do this, go from one room through the mirror to the next room, you'll notice that the mirror will become more cracked and more imperfect, and you'll also notice something creepy looking back at you in the reflection. And it's not your own reflection at this point, because as you get deeper into this labyrinth of cubic rooms, you'll start to see a more mangled abomination of yourself, like a decayed zombie or skeleton looking back at you instead of your normal reflection. Each time the image will get more and more distorted and gross and ugh. Kind of like you're looking into a funhouse mirror from a carnival, except it's way creepier and creepier. It also doesn't really make any sense that you can see your reflection, because there's no light in the cube rooms. Instead, the light comes from the reflection itself. And since there's just infinite reflections, you can hardly tell where anything is. It's hard to find any depth perception. In fact, your brain will be so overwhelmed that you'll get terrible migraines and headaches. And on top of those migraines, you'll get confused and terrified and scared, which will eventually make you have panic attacks and, you know, you'll go nuts. So yeah, that's not fun. You'll eventually get so far deep into these small cubic rooms and these mirrors to the point where the reflections of you aren't even reflections. They act like their own entity and 
kind of move on their own. They almost kind of shadow what you do, except they don't move exactly when you move, and they look gross and disgusting, and they seem to just move around behind the mirror as they will. Of course, at first, you'll think that this is because you're going crazy, you're losing your mind, and you won't think anything of it. But as you keep going deeper and deeper, you'll start to accept that they're not your reflection and that they're trying to hurt you. And at that point, these reflections will start to talk to you and verbally talk you. They'll sling insults at you, they'll give you false information, they'll scream at the top of their lungs, and keep in mind, this whole time you'll be trapped in different rooms with each wall being a mirror, so it's not like you can go anywhere. And sometimes these entities in the mirror will even convince the wanderer to walk to places in the floor that aren't solid and can be fallen through. So they'll literally walk you to a hole that you can fall through and hurt yourself. And if you do that, guess what? You'll land in another mirror room with more reflections. If you don't find the exit to the level, then you could be stuck in this infinite loop of small mirrored room with monsters looking back at you from the mirrors. So you're probably going to want to listen to the exit section. Now this is a quote from a wanderer that came here that they jotted down in a journal. The voice beckoned me to free it, repeatedly and desperately telling me, please, you're making a mistake. Don't just sit there. Let me out of this prison. Don't end up like me. When I opened my eyes, I saw my reflection persistently slamming her blood fist into the wall to my left. The glass was cracking more with each successive punch, and I stumbled back in fear, unprepared to confront whatever could step through that wall once it broke. However, I must have backed up too much such that I went through the wall. Into the same room, in fact. Though my rogue reflection was gone. My nightmares did not end there, unfortunately. All around me, I saw some mirror walls gradually fracturing. Even when my reflections on those walls displayed my same panicked expressions and conformed to match every move I made. What an adrenaline rush. I traversed this maze of mirrors for what seemed to be several minutes, running towards mirrors that lack visible cracks and just closing my eyes before I made impact. Was I escaping my own self or was it something else? So yeah, as you can see, this person is crazy. They're running away from their own reflection and this will happen the deeper you get to this level. To enter, you have to walk through a mirror that's not made out of glass on level 365 and to exit, it's pretty hard. You have to find something to break the mirror that you're staring at and hope that behind the mirror is a tiled bathroom or tiled room behind it. And if you see that tiled room, it'll be some kind of bathroom in a random backrooms level. And if you plan on walking through it, you better hurry because the mirrors here and fix themselves so you have to be careful when breaking them because you don't want to hurt yourself and you don't want to be trapped just make sure you jump through it after you break it sometimes the mirrors can lead to nothing just a blank void and if you go through that huh, no one knows where you go so that's fun So, Backrooms level 998 is now classified as a class variable difficulty because its safety, security, and entity count can change randomly depending on where you're at in the level. Before this, the level was actually classified as a class 5, so it's a pretty new change. The level itself is a blank flat plane that expands out in all directions, and it's split up into three distinct zones or areas, which I'll be going over in a minute. Now, the main and biggest plane of the level looks like it's made out of clouds, but that's just an illusion because the whole thing is table flat. It's not puffy clouds, it's flat. But an image of clouds has been stamped into the floor somehow, and the texture of this floor is kind of like a wool in a way. It's rough and bumpy, but it is table flat, and there's literally no change in elevation. Now, this level is unlike most other levels when it it comes to the entrances because every entrance to this place brings everyone to the same spot which is at the bottom floor of a big concrete stairwell. Now there are eight flights of stairs in total, and it's at the very top of the stairs where you can see the big cloud floor thing. And at the top of the stairs, there's a blank empty room that has that doorway to look out. And in this room, there's something pretty sad, I gotta say. Along the floor of the room, there are a bunch of pebbles that have been lined up and kind of thrown into the corner. These pebbles and stones are kind of like mementos or tokens of people who have willingly traveled here and they left them as a kind of a reminder to those who are coming, you know, that they've been here and are gone now. It's kind of like people who leave those locks chained into fences. It's the same thing. 
kind of sad, man. So when you go out of the doorway of this room and you look into that huge plane of cloud wool floor deal, you can actually look back at the room you just came out of and you'll see that it's just a small plain box like a Minecraft house. There's literally nothing on it. It's just a plain, small, square room. The roof of this box room is actually a skylight, and you can see the skylight all the way from the bottom staircase level, which is pretty cool. Now, you can walk on this flat cloud plane thing for a long time, specifically around 30 kilometers, or 18 miles to be exact, and it's after that distance when the level will start to change. The perfectly white cloudy floor that you're standing on will start to morph into a dark and gray floor and the blue sky above you will start to shift into a gloomy gray sky. This is the second zone of the level, the gray zone. At this point, a breeze will start to blow that makes the area freezing cold, like really cold. And the further you go into it, the darker and colder and more dangerous it'll get. And it's not just dark skies and breezes that you're going to have to worry about. There's entities here too, people. There are other things, which I'll get into in a second. But the entities that are here are mainly smilers and skin stealers and dollars and that type of thing. But there are also unknown and undocumented humanoid entities that have spawned here too. People have no idea what they are, but they've seen them in the distance. The entities seem to not be interested in you, and they kind of just walk around without chasing you. It's like they don't even see where you're at, but it would still be scary to see all of them, and they're aggressive if you kind of instigate a fight. Like, if you run up to one and push it, it's going to fight back. But if you ignore them and just give them their space, you should be okay. Now, as I just said, going deep enough into this gray section will eventually lead you into what most people think is the last area of the level. It's just called the Black Haze. At this point, the floor and the sky are both black. Bad weather will start to appear, storms will start to rage, and the wind will be blowing super aggressively. Like, it'll be blowing so hard it can knock you off of your feet and it'll rain for long periods of time. There's been thunder and lightning strikes seen here as well, and overall, it's just this really turbulent and volatile area. It's also believed that in the stormy section, there are way more entities than in the gray section, so you're gonna need to avoid those too. Now, if you're crazy or determined or just dumb and decide to keep walking through this black section, you'll eventually get to the quote-unquote edge of the level, which is just a wall of black clouds. No one knows how far out this wall is because it's kind of just hearsay and myth and legend that it exists. But at this point, the storms are said to get worse and the winds are said to be like a tornado. And no one knows what's past this black cloudy point. There's been no pictures past it or anything and the last picture that we have is one of the black cloud wall. And as I said, no one knows what's back there. But there are some theories on what is back there and I'll get into those now. There was a rumor that started a long time ago in the back rooms that level 998 is some sort of dangerous trial that you can complete to get to a safe haven level, or even to escape the back rooms as a whole. But since no one's past that black cloud wall, no one even knows if there's anything back there. It's said that most people who have come to this level have been adventurers or people who have just lost all ambition and are seeking a final resting spot. So they come here knowing that they might not get out. It's pretty sad, man, I gotta say. But I don't care how bad it gets to me in the back rooms, I'm not gonna try to go in the black zone. It seems terrifying. The other main theory is that there's just nothing behind the black cloud wall. But that's no fun now, is it? It's pretty easy to enter this level because there are an estimated 200 entrances. That's right, 200. But the entrance is a simple double white metal door that will appear on random levels. You just gotta open the door, walk through, and you'll be sent to the bottom of the staircase here on level 998. Now the exit portion isn't as certain because there's no for sure way to leave. Like I said, some people think that past the black zone, there's a safe haven that's really relaxing and you could be there forever, kind of like a heaven, but no one knows if that's real or not. People could be crazy, but most people that come here know what they're getting into and they know that there's no escape, so they kind of just accept that they're going to be stuck here or that they won't make it past the storms. Let me know in the comments what your theories are about this level. I mean, what do you think's past the black wall of clouds? Why do you think the level exists? Who do you think made it? My personal theory is that something important is behind the clouds. And one day, we might know if that's true or not.
So Backrooms Level 995, or as it's commonly known, Reality Aligned Houses, is classified as a Class 4 difficulty because it's unsafe and unsecure, and it's also very volatile and glitchy. And you're gonna hear why in a second. The level itself looks like a never-ending straight road with houses on both sides of it. Now trying to go off this road and get behind the houses is nearly impossible because of how strange the level's geometry is. So with real life regular geometry, it works the way where you can just walk one direction and not stop until you obviously like hit a wall. But for this level, the geometry of the reality here is so glitchy and messed up that you can't even walk, even though it looks like you can. It just won't let you walk back. In front of these houses, there's a bunch of cars. Most of them don't work because they're either missing parts like engines or motors or sometimes steering wheels, but some of them do work. Inside of the cars, there might be some random objects or tools that you can use. These artifacts and tools seem to all be random and strange and have no real meaning, but they're also found inside of the houses too. Now you can only get into some of the houses on this level, and if you do go inside of them, they look very liminal and almost like a real life house. And some people have claimed that they've even seen friends and family members' houses here. And speaking of the houses, I'm gonna talk a little bit about them now, because they're very interesting to say the least. For the most part, they all resemble each other pretty closely. However, sometimes there is an instance where a different looking house will be in the row. And when you interact with those houses that look different, that's when the weird things will start to happen. The entry calls these weird things spatial distortions, which pretty much means that the environment will start to warp and change itself into something else. Typically, it'll change itself to a very liminal and nostalgic looking place, and you will really get the feeling like you've seen it or been there before. Almost like the entire level morphs into a dream of some kind. And during these dream sequences, many people have reported seeing houses moving and glitching and just floating and other random things being warped like that. Also, during these spatial distortions, the light on the level can be changed randomly from bright to dark to dim without warning. Overall, this level is so volatile and just very morphy and glitchy that you probably should avoid interacting with it. Even the entities on the level itself are affected by these distortions because they look weirder and they behave more out of the ordinary for their species and everything is just different about them. The entities that are mainly found here are the normal backrooms entities like wretches, death moths, hounds, that kind of thing. But they're all glitchy and they all warp in and out of existence, just like the rest of the level seems to. Now, there are a bunch of theories on why this level warps in and out of what you can see and what you can perceive, and one of them is called the glitched reality theory. And this next quote that I'm about to read comes from an anonymous mag researcher, and I think they explain it pretty well. Quote, so we got the test results today, and the outcome was quite shocking to be fully honest. The answers that we got were something that I wasn't personally expecting, so what we found was that these special accommodations on level 995 have something bewildering to them. When they questioned why they decided to interact with these, knowing the potential consequences of the spatial distortions, what we got was that these houses looked exactly like replicas from their homes in the front rooms. The reason we found this significant is that there are numerous amounts of similar claims. If this is true, then that could explain a certain correlation between level 995 and reality. For some reason, buildings from the front rooms also coexist here in the back rooms. This could be a reasonable explanation to why these glitches occur when trying to interact with one. A sort of fusion between two realities. The question is if the back rooms and the front rooms are related in some way. End quote. So yeah, if you didn't understand that, it was pretty lengthy. Pretty much, they think that the glitchiness of the houses here and of the whole level in general is because the back rooms and reality meet here on this exact level in some way. And this is like an in-between zone between both those realities. And that's why some of the houses look like they're from real life and they seem to be here in the back rooms, but they're also in real life. It's also why these spatial distortions happen, because it's not a steady plane of existence, it's constantly warping in and out of each other. I think that's a pretty good theory, and I think it would explain why people have seen their own houses or their friends' houses here in this level, even though they're obviously not in reality, they're in the back rooms. It's also thought that the longer you stay in this level and continue walking down the road and that kind of thing, and the longer you interact with it, the more warpy and glitchy and volatile and more it breaks down, the more, the worse it gets overall. 
overall. It'll eventually get to where it's just so glitching and warping between day and night and real life and back rooms that it'll be hard to exist there properly and you'll kind of just start phasing in and out of existence, which I don't think anyone wants to do that. So you probably need to know how to exit. There are no bases or outposts on this level because, to be honest, it would be too dangerous to stay here for long periods of time. But to enter the level, you can break into a house that's locked on level 9, which is only some of them. Most of them are unlocked, so you have to find one and you kick the door down. And to exit, you can find a blue house that kind of looks out of place, walk inside of it, and then you'll be sent back to level 63, which is probably better than being here. <laughs> So level 990 has a classification of class variable because it has mysterious properties that we don't quite understand. There's also a ton of changes in the environment that could be dangerous if you're not knowing what you're doing, so listen up for this video if you want to know how you can survive. Now the level itself is split into two parts, the above ground city area and the underground sewer system. And I'll explain both of them individually in a second, but first, I'm going to briefly go over some notes about the entire level. The surface of this level is very calm. There's a light breeze blowing and a thick mist that covers most of the air around you. The mist and the breeze are hot though, so the entire level feels like a humid jungle. Like you're literally in the middle of a rainforest. Except there are city buildings there too. Above this mist, there's a light blue sky during the daytime and a dark purple sky at nighttime. So when it's dark, it's actually purple, which would be really cool if you think about it. This level, just like a ton of other ones, has a lot of non-Euclidean properties that mess up traversing and mapping it. So good luck trying to find where you're going. You might as well just go with the flow. Now these properties are actually more common when you're in a tight hallway or an alleyway or a sewer here. So if you're out in the open, you should be okay. Another weird thing here is that wanderers cannot meet up or see each other. Like if there's two people on the level at the same time, they'll never know because they can't see each other and they cannot interact which makes this level have a really strange isolation effect. Kind of like the level zero one. The buildings on this surface area are pretty similar to the ones from real life with just a couple differences. Like some of the signs are written in unknown letters or some of them are blank. And some of the architecture is a little too advanced for humans. But other than that, they're pretty normal. But also most of the building types, as you can see, are covered in vines and in leaves and are incredibly overgrown. There's also two main types of weather that can happen here. One is a calm and sunny type of vibe, you know, chill stuff. And the other is a torrential rain, like literally a monsoon rain. And these two weathers can flip instantly, just with a snap of a finger. One second, it'll be nice. And the next second, it'll start pouring the rain and the streets will be flooded. The last strange thing about the whole level is that the objects here that are inside of the buildings can randomly disappear and appear at all times. And this will happen with vending machines or water fountains or shelves or that kind of thing. Thing. Some of those items are not useful because they're old or whatever, but some of them are food and water. So if you get lucky, you could see a turkey or something teleport into a building right in front of you. So now I'll get into the two specific zones in more detail, the surface and the sewers. So the surface is the area I just touched on, and it's actually where you'll spawn if you get sent at this level. It's the easiest one to walk around in, and it's the easiest to explore, except for the non-Euclidean factors that could get you lost. The best way to describe the surface is that it's like an abandoned urban sprawl that's been overgrown and taken back by nature. The buildings have plants growing on the outside and growing on the inside, and even deeper inside of the buildings, there are gross, disgusting rooms full of decaying plants and mold, which is just nasty. And as I said earlier, this level is prone to random monsoon rain showers, so that means that the surface will be drenched with puddles and runoffs and waterfalls and everything like that too. And these rains can also flood the buildings or entire streets if you're not careful. Entities are pretty rare for this top part, but there are two main ones that have been witnessed so far. 
are. One is a strange, shadowy figure that lurks in really, really overgrown areas of the city and in the alleyways, and the other is a strange type of water creature that's been seen in the flooding rains and waves of monsoons. Not much is known about either of them, but I'll tell you all we do know in the entity section. Now for the sewer section of the level. This is obviously a way more dangerous place, and it's much more dangerous in the surface, because it's very prone to flash floods. So you could just be walking in the tunnel of the sewer, and then randomly you could hear a rumble and turn around and a huge thing of water will be coming right at you. There's also more non-Euclidean properties and more entities here, so just don't come here. Also, there is no natural light in these sewers, which is of course a hazard, but the biggest hazard is those flash floods, and you wouldn't want to be trapped inside of a sewer when it's flash flooding. Just like the top of the level, there is overgrown vegetation in the sewers as well, even though there's no light here, and you could trip and get tangled in it if you're not careful either. These sewers are accessed from alleyways or under bridges on the surface area, but to be honest, I'm not really sure why you'd want to come here. Now it's time for the entities, and as I said earlier, there is a weird shadow one that's been discovered on the surface level. They're pretty much just all black humanoid type shapes, and they've just been seen silently walking in the night. No one knows anything about it. They haven't attacked. They're just there. There's also those weird water creatures that I hinted at that appear during violent rainstorms and flooding. They have no description, but they're just part of the water, it seems. There's also a very specific entity that lives in the sewers called a sewer leech, which are snake-like water leeches that can grow up to eight inches long. They attach themselves to wanderer's clothes or flesh, kind of like just a normal leech, and they latch on with their teeth, and this could actually give you an infection if you don't wash the wound quickly. And these sewer leeches crawl up to the surface if it rains heavily and the sewers get flooded, so you'll have to watch out for them there too. The level itself was discovered on March 15th, 2022, to from an anonymous wanderer who called it a quote silent paradise but also there are weird shadows and a leech that wants to eat you so i'm not really sure what that person was thinking but whatever to enter the level you have to travel far into an abandoned old building on level 11 and you'll get sent here and to exit you can stay in the sewer for a long time or you can go into a weird building that's not overgrown to be sent back to level 11. nice So Ashes to Ashes, or level negative 319, is classified as a class 5 difficulty, and is very, very unsafe and unsecure, and it's really dangerous because of non-entity hazards. So you don't really have to worry about creatures or stuff like that attacking you, uh, it's the level itself that's gonna attack you. The level takes place inside of a really old and broken down house that's all covered in a thick layer of dust, ash, and other kinds of trash and waste. There are three bedrooms in this house, one and a half bathrooms, and there's also a basement, an attic, a living room, and a dining room, as well as a kitchen and office, but you can't even get to the basement or attic, so that's kind of lame. The temperature inside of this disgusting house is always pretty cold. It stays around 47 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 8.3 degrees Celsius. And on top of it being cold, it also feels really damp and it smells dank and just awful, kind of like mold, as you can imagine. Now, no one knows what the outside of the house looks like because every exit is sealed with some kind of impenetrable material. And from what you'll see in a second, you don't really have time to try to exit the house like by going at the door, so no one really cares or knows what's outside. When this level was found, there was a big note carved into the table in the kitchen that pretty much says who was there and why they think they won't make it out of the level alive. One of the wanderers was 13, one was 16, one was 25, and one was 31, and that 13 and 16 year old were siblings. But that note includes some really creepy details and honestly just some terrifying stuff about why this level is dangerous. I'm just going to read you the last paragraph and it says, I do not want to be forgotten, so find a way out. This place ages you by one year every five minutes. I timed it. I've been trying to find a way out for six hours now. I watched my sister unalive about 30 minutes ago, and she since has crumbled into ash and dust. I'm not too far behind, but I'm exhausted. I understand now why my grandfather was tired all the time. I'm going to unalive here. I made my peace with that. 
I'm too tired to go any further. I guess I wrote this to beg you to find a way out. When you get out of here, tell the others not to come to level negative 319. If they happen to find themselves here, tell them to find an exit as soon as possible. Uh, so, yeah. Just like that note said, this level makes you age one year older every five minutes that passes when you're there. So if you stay in the level for six hours, uh, you'd be getting older really, really quickly. And this anomaly is why there's ashes all over the ground, because when you are alive, you literally disintegrate and fall into ash and add to that ash pile. So that is, that, that's so creepy. I'm like, wow, that is disturbing. There's also been some researchers that got stuck in this level after that first note was left, and they left some information on the walls written in blue crayons. Apparently, most people aren't alive at around age 85, according to this note, but one of these explorer's colleagues was actually earlier than that, and they aren't alive at age 60 from diabetes, which means that this level can make you have illnesses that you'd get normally while aging in real life, but you get it way faster here because it ages you so much quicker. The researcher who wrote those findings on the wall apparently developed some kind of illness themselves, and it was some kind of heart disease because of the rapid aging, and well... You can guess what happened to both of them. The weird thing is that this aging isn't just for humans because it affects entities that are here too. One wanderer went to the bathroom on this level and found an old hound in the bathroom, ran away from it, and then the hound started chasing and then just disintegrated because it was so old. And he just watched it turn right to dust. So, yeah. Now, the first person to ever make it out of this level alive and to escape and stuff was named Wanderer BB, and apparently, he was 14 years old when he got sent here, and when he left, he was 38 years old, because he was trapped in the level for two hours, which made him become 24 years older than he was when he got here. He still has no idea how he got to this level, but the good news is he does know how he escaped. The way he got out was he went to the upstairs bathroom and found the mirror there, and the mirror was covered in dust and ash, obviously, so he wiped the mirror down, cleaned the ash off, and then got no-clipped instantly to level zero. He was 24 years older, but he was alive, which is better than what everybody else could say. There's no way to tell how many wanderers have actually gotten to this level and never escaped because the entry is still unknown, like no one knows how you get here, but it is imperative and very important that the second you get sent here, you run upstairs to that mirror and you hope that it works to send you out because if it doesn't, you can age 24 years in two hours, so yeah. Backrooms Level Pi is classified as a Class 2E difficulty and is pretty unsafe with non-entity hazards. So you're not going to have to worry about a wretch chasing you, you're going to have to worry about the level hurting you. That's all you need to know. Level Pi is actually a sub-level that is thought to exist between Levels 3 and Level 4. The level's physical appearance is pretty unique to all the other levels that I've gone over. It looks like this bright, bold expanse of of hills. The grass, the sky, the clouds, all of it is set to the highest saturation possible, which just means that all of the colors are literally as bold as they can physically be. The hills here are so round in some spots that it's impossible to climb up them, so they're kind of just like spheres sticking out of the ground. And also, some of the hills are coming out of the ground at such unnatural ways, or they're slanted in really strange angles, that it doesn't even, like, make any comprehensible sense to your brain. You literally cannot even fathom it. It all just adds to how trippy the level is. The hills and slopes almost act like ocean waves, but instead of water, it's grass. There are also freshly paved asphalt roads that wind around the hills as well, and these roads curve and fall follow them, all the slopes and turns and everything, even the ones that don't make any sense, there's still roads going up them. But some of the roads seem to randomly end or curve and then just stop which is pretty strange. So pretty much the hills and the roads are so curvy and windy and wavy that it would be hard for your brain to even understand what you're looking at. Not to mention how bright and saturated everything is. The most common thing on this level besides those hills and roads are the multicolored gas stations. And these are placed on really strange locations. In fact, it doesn't even seem possible to have buildings where these are. But hey, that's the backrooms for you. They're put on direct hillsides, on top of hills,
hills, on the sides of hills, in the valleys, literally anywhere. Even if it doesn't even seem possible for a building to exist, they're gonna be there. The one constant with these gas stations is that they'll always be near a road to some degree. Now inside of the gas stations, there is legitimately no sign of any human life. But each of them is perfectly bright and clean and spotless. There are things on the shelves too, but they never move and you can't move them. It's almost like they're stuck in time. The actual brands of the gas stations that are here on the level do not exist in real life. Like it's a completely new random brand that no one has ever seen before, which almost makes it creepier in my opinion. The names and logos are just out of the world, like they've never been seen before. However, even after all that, I think that the weirdest thing on this level is that sometimes a random fog will appear and start to roll over the hills. This fog kind of hovers and slithers its way around the hills, and when it gets near you, you can see that the saturation of the level gets lower, kind of like it lessens the color's vibrancy. And the area near this fog gets really pixely when it passes by, almost like the level has a low resolution when the fog is there, or something like that. Pretty spooky. This misty fog is the biggest environmental danger of the level because it's toxic to breathe in. Like, bad toxic. You can avoid the mist by trying to get inside a gas station, but if you don't, well, you know what happens. There are no outposts here, but there was rumored to be a few, however no one knows if there actually was, or if the outpost just vanished somehow, or who knows what happened to them. There are also no entities, and to enter this level, you can find a door in level 51 that opens to show you this place. Now this door is random, so you're gonna have to open a ton of different ones to find it, but hey, be my guest. And to exit, there isn't one set in stone yet. Most people just randomly get sent away, kind of like the level chooses who stays and goes. So if you do get here, uh, you're stuck. Have fun! First up for the video is level Scopopphobia, or level whatever this symbol is, by Nick from the Discord. It's classified as a class 5 difficulty and is unsafe, unsecure, and is completely devoid of entities that we know of, but it is extremely dangerous. So the word scopophobia is actually the fear of being stared at or stalked which leads to anxiety and feelings of being uncomfortable. And since that's the level's name, you can only imagine how creepy this is about to be. The level itself looks like an infinite number of small, tight, and cramped wooden rooms with skinny, steep staircases connecting them. And these staircases require you to bend over and hunch down to even walk through them because they're so short. Even if you're already short, you're probably going to have to crouch. The rooms themselves can be anything, like kitchens, bathrooms, living rooms, and even bedrooms. And everything is made out of wood kind of like the interior of a cabin. Every room only has one thing in common, besides being made out of wood, and it's that they all have grayscale paintings of nature on the walls. Living rooms typically have glass doors or windows or both on one wall, but they're actually blacked out. You can't see through them, you can't break them, and you can't open them. They're just in place of where real windows and real doors would be. Some rooms have TVs that are on, but the only thing playing is just straight up static. And a soft static buzz echoes throughout most of the rooms. There's also soft jazz playing throughout the entire level, never getting louder or quieter, so it's unknown where it sources from but it does add a little creep factor to it. What is known though, is that two people cannot meet on this level, even if they're both here at the same time. The only way to communicate with another person is through walkie talkies, but even then the audio is distorted and hard to hear. This is kind of like how people in the real world can talk to people in the upside down from Stranger Things through radios. Neat stuff. Now it's time to get into the really creepy part of this level. After you get here, you'll start to feel an eerie liminal space vibe that you get with most backrooms levels, but this will wear off in about 5 minutes. Then after this, that soft jazz will suddenly stop, and you'll start to feel like you're being watched. And after about 15 minutes of feeling this, you'll start to hear knocking on the doors and on the windows and walls. And since you can't see outside, you'll probably be freaking out, because I know I'd be freaking out if I heard that stuff. After 45 minutes, those gray paintings from the walls will actually turn into pictures of you from this level. 
like someone took pictures of you and put them on the wall that's what it seems like and you'll start hearing shuffling footsteps echoing through the staircases and rooms behind you then eventually those footsteps will get closer and closer but when you turn around you can't see anything until you look in the mirrors on the level if you do this in the back corner of the room that you're in you'll see something standing and staring at you can't actually make out what it is just a shadow of a humanoid with eyes but that's all you can see and that is terrifying but that is not the worst part because after this you'll start to feel breathing on the back of your neck right behind your ears but whatever you do, do not turn around because you won't be seen again if you do. If you're still alive at this point, then you should be able to escape now. And you definitely need to. Except, no one knows how to escape. But most people said that they happened to escape when they were near a TV. So just go to one of those areas. To enter this level, for whatever reason, you can find an old wooden chair with an eye carved into it and then sit into the chair and you'll be sitting here. But yeah, that level literally gives me the creeps. Like, just imagine being taunted and harassed by whatever this thing is and hearing knocking and running sounds and you can't see anything. I would be terrified. The last level for this video is level negative 974, or Puppy's Domain, from Andro, who is a mod on the Discord server. This level is meant to be the polar opposite to the Kitty's House level, and I think it works in that way perfectly. The level is classified as a class 2 difficulty, and is unsafe with a minimal entity count and there's just one entity. It physically looks like a bunch of hallways that are pretty similar to level zero in the fact that they're winding and curving and stuff like that, except these halls are gray drywall and dark gray carpet, and the lights in the ceiling are not all the same shape. Some of them are distorted and waving, and some of them give off less light than the other ones. And this level also has absolutely no sounds or smells to it, which makes it kind of seem like an isolation chamber in a way. Your voice doesn't make any sounds either. There's also no food or water or tools here, and the only thing here besides the hallways and the lights is one single entity called Puppy. This thing is 9 feet tall, or 2.8 meters tall, and it's a humanoid-shaped void shadow silhouette with thick arms and legs with no fingers or toes. It has no facial features either, but it can somehow sense where people are without any eyes or ears, so I don't know. Puppy doesn't actually walk. Instead, it teleports where it wants to go, but it only teleports when you're not looking at it. So if you take your eyes off of him, then it'll slowly teleport closer to you. The entity also doesn't physically attack you either. Instead, it gives you this paralyzing effect just by staring. And if it does stare at you for long enough, then you could become unable to move and then puppy will just teleport away and leave you to rot from starvation. So that's fun. To enter this level, you can no clip inside the bathroom on Kitty's house's level, or if you somehow make Kitty mad, then Kitty will send you here. And to exit, you can find one of these items on the floor and then fall asleep next to it and you should wake back up in Kitty's house. So the Hallowed Gate is classified as a class undetermined, and most of its properties and characteristics are unknown, and most information as well is pretty rare to come by. The level is sort of an elusive level that's thought to exist somewhere in the void, and the void is just an endless abyss of nothingness that you can get trapped in by trying to noclip between levels in the back rooms. So you could try to noclip from level 0 to level 1, but you might get stuck in this void area. And originally it was thought that nothing was in the void, but this level is most likely there. The level physically is made up of one huge behemoth gate that looks like it's made out of pure gold and marble. And these materials can't be broken or cracked or anything like that, and they seemingly take no damage from anybody that tries to break through. And the gate is always in a closed position, but it can be opened by a couple of ways. The whole level is not just this one gate, there's many other gates and hallways and rooms and corridors and that kind of stuff, but it does start with this one huge gate. One way that you can open this huge gate is you can find an ornamental key artifact that's laying around around somewhere and use it to enter, and another way is that the gate will just open itself to you, 
I mean, <laughs> that'd be easy. Although sometimes the gate will eject wanderers if they don't have the proper key. Uh, so you might want to try to get a key, but who knows? It has a mind of its own. And the fact that it might have a mind of its own leaves some people to believe that it's some kind of artificial intelligence or there's some kind of higher power controlling this gate and the other gates. Since this level does take place inside of the void, most of the floors and walls are just blank nothingness, but you can still somehow walk on the floor as if you were walking on the real thing. However, in some areas there are floors, but right here with this big gate, you're just walking on the air, man. So past the gate and inside of the level, there are these huge open hallways and rooms that have this Baroque style of architecture to them. And almost everything inside, just like the gate, is made out of gold and marble. And the level's halls and rooms are very cold and they stay around negative 7 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 22 degrees Celsius. And the marble makes it feel even colder. These level rooms are split into specific zones or sub-layers, which I'll talk about in a minute, but each of the different rooms are separated by large gold and marble doors, however they're not as big as the original door. And each time one of these doors opens and closes back, it changes how it looks, which can make walking through this entire level really difficult because you can't really tell where you've been and where you haven't been. Now as I said earlier, this level is really rare to get to, and only a very few amount of people have ever set foot foot here and have lived to tell the story. Most people are thought to get lost in the labyrinth of doors and halls, and some people are even consumed by an effect called the blackout cycle. Now the blackout cycle is almost like a natural disaster in a way that happens on this level. And when it happens, the entire level goes dark, and you can hear loud thumping noises echoing through the hallways, and even sometimes electrical buzzes. On top of the loud noises and the ground shaking, there are these creepy ghost like figures that speedily move closer to you. It's thought this blackout cycle is some kind of security system for the level, and it tries to scare people off. I mean, it would, it would work for me if there was a ghost running at me in a hallway, I'm gonna be real. But apparently these ghosts can really mess up people's heads, and oftentimes people suffer amnesia attacks or PTSD from interacting with them, so. But when the blackout effect is not happening, it's almost like this level mesmerizes people in a way, because of how big and grandiose it is. I mean, it's literally just these massive, huge, golden hallways, and, and marble hallways, and everything is just massive, and it's hard to take in the sheer size of it. I imagine that it would be kind of like walking into the Versailles Palace in real life for the first time. But who knows? Now I'm going to talk about the different sublayers or rooms of the level, and they're pretty neat, I gotta say. Sublayer A is made up of the Great Passage, which is the first massive hallway that seemingly does go on forever in one direction. Think of a huge castle corridor. And then there are different rooms that splinter off from this Great Passage. Sublayer B is made up of another area called the Halls of Abundance. Now this hallway and room is held up by thin threads in the void. And in the middle of this room, there is this massive dining table with food and plates and silverware on it. And the food is not old. I mean, it's literally edible, so you can eat it if you want to. Sublayer C is called the Curator's Halls, and this is a hallway full of statues of Backroom's entities. The statues are life-size, and there are creatures that we know and love, like wretches and stuff that are in statue form, but there are also creatures that we don't know and have never been seen before as well. Each statue has a golden plaque on the bottom, and there are words written in an unknown language on it. Sublayer D is a huge courtyard with ornamental plants in the middle. Sublayer E is a grassy area with weird plants everywhere as well. Sublayer F is a massive armory where there are all kinds of combat related stuff, night stuff, and anything you can think of that is related to war. And then sublevels G, H, I, and J are all specific rooms that tie into these hallways I just talked about. And each of them have different properties and are uniquely dangerous. To enter this level, you can enter from the void by any of its sources, but obviously that's not smart because the void is dangerous in and of itself and no one actually knows how to get to the hallowed gate level from the void. It's just a randomly appearing gateway in the endless abyss of darkness. And since normal people really can't find this level, it's kind of hard to say if there's even an exit to it. Backroom's level Megalophobia is classified as a class 3 difficulty and is unsafe and unsecure with some entities running around. 
Now, the word megalophobia actually means the fear of huge objects, so if you have that, tread with caution. The level itself resembles a town, specifically a really old-looking town. And the houses here date back to the early 1800s, but some of them look a little bit newer. Now, even though these buildings obviously look old, they're not broken and they're not worn down or anything. They're in incredible shape. But the weirdness is just getting started because inside some of the houses, the walls have Level Zero's wallpaper on them and Level Zero's carpet. Very strange. The town also has no paved roads or anything like that. Instead, it's just dirt paths or rock paths. Now, even though this town is straight out of the 1800s, there's also electrical poles and wires running through them. And there's even cell phone towers here. So yeah, why does a town that looks so old have modern day technology? The houses here also have tons and tons of non-Euclidean properties that make no sense whatsoever. Like some of them are just massive on the inside, but tiny looking on the outside. Some of the houses are flooded completely from the floor to the ceiling, and some of the doors in the houses open up to nothing on the other side except the wall. And a really common thing is that the ceilings have an insane amount of light bulbs in them. Just a ton of weird stuff like that is happening inside these houses, even though the outside looks like it's from the 1800s. But it still gets even more mysterious, because the entire town of this level is actually inside of a superstructure. So literally everything you see is inside of this ungodly massive building. The building kind of looks like a factory, but instead of just a normal factory, it's a huge factory with massive windows on each side. And these windows cannot be seen out of because there's just bright lights coming through them. They also kind of smell like coal and ash if you get too close, which is another interesting thing. Now, it's not known how big this mega structure is, but it is so big that it's got its own weather and clouds inside of it. Because sometimes the level has rain and thunderstorms, which makes it even weirder because it's raining and thunderstorming inside of a building. It isn't recommended to go anywhere near the walls of this level because of the windows there. And these windows are not just harmless things. Some of them are window entities, which will suck you in and eat you, and you'll never be seen again if you go near it. So, yeah. Something that isn't talked a lot about in this level are the echoes, echoes that, happen that happen in it. it. Like, just talking slightly louder than your normal voice will cause these huge echoes to bounce off the walls, the ceiling, and the roof. So if there's ever a thunderstorm or rain that pops up, you better run inside of a building to avoid going crazy or deaf from all the sounds and echoes. And also on top of that, sometimes you can hear really strange noises like screaming or crying way off in the distance. Just a faint echo of it. It's not known if these noises are real or if you're just going crazy from losing your sanity, but either way, it would be pretty terrifying to hear a bunch of screaming. These screams might also be coming from the next part of the level, which is called the holes. These holes lead to underground tunnels beneath the town and beneath that mega building. These holes are randomly placed and randomly generated along the level, so no one really knows where they're at, but you'll know one when you find one, because it's just a big hole. And if you do jump into one of these holes, you will fall into a tunnel. And these tunnels are part of a huge system of long, claustrophobic labyrinths of tunnels that have a few inches of lukewarm water in the middle. The water isn't flowing, it's just completely still, and it looks like it's supposed to be a sewer kind of down here. Except, instead of being dirty and nasty like a normal sewer, these tunnels are 100% clean. There's no dirt, no grime, nothing. Just clean blue water and clean water white surfaces. And the tunnels themselves are made out of this marble type of rock that actually dampens any sound that happens near them. So if you're splashing around or screaming, it won't be that loud, it won't be that echoey, because the stone absorbs it. The tunnels are also lit up by these really weird orb light things on the walls, which is pretty nice, but it also means that there's a bunch of entities here as well. Speaking of entities, the only entities that will be above ground in that town area are window entities, hounds, and facelings. And these are pretty common in most backrooms levels, so they're common here. And those are the only ones that have been seen so far. There could be more. But down in the depths of these tunnels, there are a ton more, like clumps, 
the hydrolytus plague, insanities, hairworms, which are brain-altering parasites that live in the water and, if ingested, can make you very sick. There's also skin stealers, and these are the ones that have just been seen so far in the tunnels, but as I said, the tunnels are this infinite labyrinth of weird tunnels that no one's ever explored, so there could be more, since no one has any idea how deep they go. There are no bases or outposts here, and to enter the level, you can be sent here by randomly no-clipping from level 38, or you can find a ski lift in any level and ride it to be sent to the town here. But I don't think I'd be coming here to be honest. I don't really like big things, so I kind of have megalophobia in a way, and the fact that there's a town inside of a giant factory is terrifying to me. So to summarize the level, level Megalophobia is a decently large town made out of old looking buildings and roads. However, even though this town is old, there are modern technologies like cell phone towers and telephone wires everywhere. And all of the level takes place inside of a mega structure with huge roofs and walls and windows. This mega building is so big that clouds and weather can form above the town. And underneath all of this crazy stuff is more crazy stuff. A maze of tunnels filled with clean blue water that goes deeper and gets more claustrophobic as you go. Cool stuff. So the broken backrooms level is classified as a class de zone, and it has multiple environmental hazards that make it dangerous to even be in. The level really can't be considered a level because it's so fragmented and shattered and glitchy that it expands outside of what we would normally consider a level. It's just a massive wasteland of corrupted images, planes, data, and other things that our tiny human brains can't even begin to comprehend. Even though it's hard to describe, I'm gonna try it anyway. So the broken looks like a kaleidoscope, kind of, and it's extremely unstable everywhere you look. The architecture and the shapes here don't make any sense to our brains, and they don't follow the normal shapes and patterns that we know of. The terrain itself of the level is made out of broken, swirling matter. And you can actually walk on this terrain, even though it's glitchy and warping. But who knows how that's even possible. The level is very colorful and very vibrant, and the further you walk into it, the worse it'll get for you. Just looking at the spaces around you will make you start to go insane just from seeing what you're looking at. Just seeing everything crumble and warping won't help your sanity either. Now, some people call the broken a splintered plane of existence. Kind of like a reality that went too far and became so corrupt that you can't even tell what it is anymore. It became so digitized that it's not even real. The strange colors and shapes and movements and reality bending things are not the only dangers here though, because there's actually a noise that's constantly blasting full volume on this level. The noises are coming from literally everywhere, but it's like this amplified, disturbing, bass-boosted sound that you could probably think of what it sounds like. I mean, just look at the picture of this level and listen to what you would imagine a noise would sound like there, and that's what it would be. There are also objects in this level that float through the ground and the sky, and they come back up and go everywhere. It doesn't make any sense. The wiki dot describes the level as a place that you can't even fathom or begin to understand because of how corrupted and how laggy it is. Ironically, there are actually structures here in the level as well, but the only problem is that they can change shape and are devoid of any actual material. They're just warped atoms, I guess. So you might see a pyramid or something, but then you can go right up to it and walk directly through it or glitch beside it and you won't even see it again. It'll just disappear. On the horizon of the level, you can see an effect that is kind of like that one from Minecraft when you're loading in new chunks of the world. So if you keep walking, you'll see the world build on itself, which must mean that this level has the ability to load new and infinite parts of itself, which is crazy. The newer the location, the more chaotic and broken it'll be. And for that reason, it's said that you shouldn't wander into this level at all, unless you're insane. Some people think that this level has some kind of relationship with the backrooms as a whole, a sort of symbiotic relationship. Like the backrooms might feed off of this place's unstable and hostile energies, and it might use those energies to create entities or other levels that we know about. Who knows? Now, some of the places found in the Broken kind of resemble other locations and levels and landscapes from other backrooms levels and from real life, except 
these are non-linear, gross, conglomeration, glitchy things of that real thing. So there could be what looks like a city, but it's just warping and glitching and floating around. But again, that's all just a theory. A backrooms theory. See what I did there? Others who don't believe in that theory that I just talked about believe that this place is just a bizarre, random, meaningless plane of reality that doesn't have a purpose or a meaning. So they pretty much think it doesn't mean anything. Personally, I like the first theory that the backrooms draws this dark, magical energy from this level to make other levels itself. But let me know your theories in the comments. Pretty interested to see what y'all have to say. If you, for some reason, want to come here, you want to avoid one thing specifically, and that thing is touching or making contact with any of the glitching fragmented structures. Because if you do that, your existence will literally start to crack and rupture, and then you'll start fading away. Like, you could touch one of those pyramids or one of those statues there, and just start decoding and not exist anymore at all. In any way. It's happened before, and it's terrifying to think about what that might look like. Entities that we normally talk about here on the channel, like hounds and that kind of thing, they're not seen here as themselves, and it's thought that they wouldn't be able to survive anyway, but there actually have been glitchy prism and shape looking things in the sky that kind of resemble entities. Maybe those prisms are like cocoons that entities are made in for the back rooms? Who knows? Now it's said that entities have been seen no clipping here by accident, just like people do, but those entities have seemingly transcended and melted together with the broken's environment and have become these glitchy, warping, broken things that aren't bound by the laws of physics that you can see glitching around everywhere. And they'll just float and warp for the rest of existence. As of right now, no one knows the entrance or the exits to this horrifying level, which honestly makes it more terrifying because you have no idea how to avoid being sent here, and you also have no idea how to leave if you were sent here. Nice! But yeah, let me know your theories about this level in the comments. Is this level some sort of power location that the backrooms pulls power from to make entities and levels, or is it just another random glitchy corrupted level? Who knows? So Backrooms level 7777, aka Bloodlust Masquerade, starts with a warning for anyone who might get shocked or goofed up with stuff like mental trauma or light descriptions of gory stuff. If that kind of stuff messes with you, then you probably shouldn't continue. But as always, I do censor everything pretty much, so you're not going to really hear anything. You're just going to hear code words for deep things. So... The level itself looks like a smallish house from the late 1990s. There's bookshelves on the wall, and the floors have a brownish carpet color. But the carpet itself is covered in a red liquid that typically comes out of people sometimes, if you know what I'm saying. The walls themselves are also painted red, if you know what I'm saying. But this red stuff is all over everything. There's actually been DNA tests done on this liquid, and it's been linked to the same people who have actually been on this level before. Even if they didn't get hurt, it still can match to them, which is really interesting. There are three main rooms in this house on the first floor, and those are the living room, the kitchen, and the bathrooms. All of them have this weird effect called the level 7777 effect, and I'll get into what that means in a second. So buckle up. There's actually a second floor to this house as well with two smallish bedrooms. Now this floor is the only one with windows since the first floor is completely dark. But when you look outside of the windows, it's just a glitchy distorted void. There's nothing out there. The windows also won't even open, so you just gotta look through the glass. And they don't even give light, really. Just instead a kind of a faint glow. So it's recommended to bring a flashlight if you're going to be coming to this level, but trust me, you're probably going to want to avoid the level. When you shine your flashlight in some rooms, you can see that in the different areas, some of them have a black and white effect, meaning that everything you see will be black and white only. Like I said though, this only happens in some specific rooms, so no one knows why, but it's really weird. So now I'm going to explain that thing I mentioned earlier called the level 777 effect. Tighten down your seatbelts. This gets insane. So now I'm going to talk about the level 7777 effect, which appears to everybody as a active cognito hazard. This could really mess you up if you don't keep your sanity with you and your bearings straight. So get ready. 
The second you get to this level, you'll smell rotting and decaying flesh of some sort. Now this smell is kind of wafting through the entire level and it doesn't really lead to one thing at first. Until you start to follow the smell, you'll be led to one of the rooms that I talked about earlier. And if you walk into that room, suddenly you'll feel like you're standing in a pool of quote unquote red paint. Wink wink if you know what I'm saying. Or you'll feel like you're standing on a floor made out of flesh, if you know what I mean. Now if you feel this stuff on your feet, whatever you do, don't look down because of what happens if you do. If you look down at whatever you're standing on, the darkness that's in this level will start to fade away and you'll be able to see in full brightness what you're standing on. And what you'll see is every friend or family member or person you know in real life will be under you. Wink wink. If this happens, then you'll start to go insane, obviously, because you're seeing people you love and care about just there, under you, unalived. Once this insanity starts, there's literally no going back, you'll just keep getting worse. You'll feel hopeless and guilty and sorrowful and sad, but the best thing you can do if you get stuck in this 7777 effect is to try to just chill in the corner of the room until the grief is passed. When this grief state is over, most people will still go insane from what they just experienced, which makes sense because obviously of what you just saw when you looked down. The good news is, is that if you don't show many emotions or if you're pretty emotionally strong or if you're a sociopath, then the level 777 effect won't really mess you up. You'll kind of just go on like normal. But if you're really emotional and things like this mess you up in the head, then it's going to be tough. So. so that was the dangerous cognito hazard effect for this level. And that's what makes this level extremely dangerous, and you probably should avoid it at all costs. So when this level was discovered originally, it was just a class zero, because everybody thought that it was a chill house that was just really dark. Soon after that though, people started discovering the level effect, and some of the survivors of the effect are completely insane, off the deep end, but they remember every morbid detail about what they saw, and they're just extremely traumatized. There aren't any documented entities here, but there is believed to be a couple of undocumented ones, but it also might be that the entire level itself is an entity because of what it can do. So yeah. To enter this level, for whatever reason, you can go into a house on level 9 that will link up to this level, or you can enter from the hub sometimes if you see red paint, wink wink, on the floor. There's only two exits to the level. The first one is you make it through that cognito hazard by being emotionally stable or not having emotions. And if you make it through just fine, you'll be sent to another level. And the other exit is by unaliving. So <laughs> you better start getting those emotions in check if you want to leave. So this level is called Backrooms Level Ohio with a zero on the front and on the end. I'll explain that in a second. And it's classified as a class five survival difficulty with it being unsafe, very unsecure, and infested with an entity. That's right, I said entity, not entities. So the level itself is massive. It's thought to be around the size of our earth and it even kind of looks like it. It's got houses and buildings and roads and bridges and things that look man-made, except it's all abandoned and cracking and broken down, and everything here looks like a massive post-apocalyptic war. Like a battle or an end-time event just happened right before you got there. The ground is blackened and smoking in spots, and there are huge cracks in the ground that go down for miles. The roads that aren't completely destroyed have road signs and street names that are in English, but with weird misspellings and errors. Like if a street was named Baker's Street, it might be spelled Baker's Street instead of just Baker Street. Or the word interstate might be spelled inter, like on your keyboard, interstate and so on. As I said, everything seems like it's completely abandoned, but it also seems like something big just happened. Like the ground is still smoking and is still burning in so many spots. And on top of that ground burning, the sky above the ground has an orange smoky glow to it. 
almost like it's on fire. There is no noticeable day or night cycle, and the sky and the ground level is always a dark, deep orange, like a wildfire happening. And you can also see ashes and embers floating in the air, and hear the ambient sounds of destruction and explosions and heavy machinery from the sky. Now, on the ground, among the buildings and stuff like that, there are also what looks like military outposts. Except they're destroyed and abandoned and crumbling down. It won't take you long to realize what destroyed the society you're standing in because you'll eventually look up and you'll see them. The tripod entities. Now these are massive three-legged metal entities that have seemingly taken over whatever planet this backroom level takes place on. They seem to be using the planet to harvest its resources, like minerals and wood and that kind of stuff. They move around really slowly, but they do take huge steps on the way, and they seem to be sentient and like they have a brain because they purposely avoid big bodies of water or big canyons or something. So it seems like they're either being controlled or they're controlling themselves. Interestingly enough, there are actually a few tripods that have been taken down by whatever military used to be here because there's been some bodies found laying on their sides with huge holes in their metal casings. The only issue is that there's been no planes and no military weaponry or any military vehicle at all found. So either they've all been used or the tripods literally just destroyed what was left. Who knows? The entire level is a post-apocalyptic ghost town that feels like you're the only person in all of humanity left. It gives you the feeling that you no-clipped into someone else's World War III and you got there right as it ended and you're the last person to be alive. Now, as I said, this level is thought to be as big as Earth, but where people normally get no-clipped is near a city and surrounding the city in the countryside. There are some small resources in the houses that are outside of the city, like food and what seems to be some kind of drinkable liquid. It's almost like this level produces its own kind of soft drink, or this planet, wherever this is, makes its own different kind of soft drink. It's some kind of flavored water milk substance called Solzats, and it's been found in the broken refrigerators that are here. It's safe to drink, and it's described to have a sweet and salty taste with no carbonation. Kind of like Gatorade mixed with milk. Now the food that's been found mainly consists of canned food. Except it's not normal canned food like chicken noodle soup or something like that. It's like a turkey dinner in a can or summer dinner in a can. So between the Solzats drinks and the canned food, that leads many people to believe that this level is actually an alternate existence of the earth that we live on. But who knows? And as far as we know, less than three people have ever been sent to this level. And each one of them landed in completely different spots. One started in the city, one was near what seemed to be a beach or bay area, and one was in the deep wilderness somewhere. And because of those three different wanderers, we've been able to get a pretty accurate description of what the place looks like. And it is terrifying. The air itself doesn't seem to be toxic, and nothing is actively trying to hurt you when you're here, but it's still extremely dangerous for a ton of reasons. Obviously, the main reason is the tripod entities that are walking around collecting resources. You don't want to get stepped on, and sometimes they'll shoot one of their legs into the ground, and you don't want to be under that, obviously. But the other reason is the fires that are spreading around the level. These fires can become huge walls of fire and cover the entire parts of the level for days on end. So watch out for that. Also, since the buildings seem to have been destroyed or shot with something, lots of the ones left standing are about to collapse. So that could be a danger too. You don't want to have a building collapse on top of you. Now, as I said, this level is nicknamed Ohio after the only state sign that's been seen standing. And just like the street signs and stuff, it's spelled wrong compared to our Earth. Now, our Earth obviously has two O's, but this Ohio is spelled with zeros instead of O's. And that's why it was named Ohio. It's a pretty fun nickname for an absolutely gut-wrenchingly terrifying place. Now, to enter this level, you have to have no-clipped through a tile floor somewhere, or find a collapsed house and no-clip into the rubble. In fact, the first wanderer that ever came here was just looking through the remains of a collapsed house when he tripped and he no-clipped through the ground and he woke up in the burning city here. To exit, you have to find a body of water outside of the city and outside of the suburbs, like a pond or a river or lake, and jump in it and no-clip through the bottom to get out. And this exit was actually found when that same wanderer that got here first was trying to outrun this massive fire that just blew up. 
and then he jumped into a river to swim away from it, sank to the bottom, touched the bottom of it, and then was sent to level 11 after. Now just imagine for a second, if you will, walking along a tile floor level and then falling. And not just, you know, getting back up and walking away, falling through the floor into this desolate apocalyptic level and then seeing a place just like Earth burning to a crisp with giant tripod entities walking around. I don't know though, sounds like just another day in the back rooms to me. So the pool rooms is a level from the fandom, actually, and it's level 37. It's split up into a couple different zones, which I'll get into later, and they all vary depending on how safe they are or how dangerous they are. The first zone I want to talk about is called the safe zone, shocker, and it's classified as a class zero difficulty and is devoid of anything that could possibly hurt you, unless you like hate water or something, then I don't know what to tell you. This zone looks like a maze of white tiled walls and rooms that are filled at varying depths of room temperature water. The water itself is clean and could theoretically be consumed, but uh, I don't know if I would want to try that, to be honest with you. The entire level has no actual light source, no light fixtures in the ceilings, and the only light that comes into the level is from some random windows that just shine bright light into the halls and then from there it reflects off into the water. This level's day-night cycle has it day for 16 hours and night for 8 hours and during those day hours the windows will appear perfectly white so you won't be able to see outside of them you'll just be able to see like a white sheet of light and at nighttime they'll turn completely black. The deeper you go into this level, the deeper the water itself gets and the less light gets there. A weird thing about the safe zone's walls is that they actually damper and dampen any sound from entering or moving around. And the only sound you'll be able to hear is the water splashing from your legs or feet or, you know, if you're swimming, you'll hear that water. Earlier, I said that this part of the level was completely safe and devoid of entities, which is mostly true, except there's been some reports of wanderers hearing weird noises from an unknown source, and sometimes they've even said that something was watching them from the shadows? That's uh, pretty creepy. The main theory is that people have been hearing sounds coming from the danger zone, since the walls in the danger zone actually amplify sound unlike the walls of the safe zone, which dampen sound. The tiles here in the safe zone actually have another weird quirk, where they reflect light from the windows into different colors, like neon colors, which then can be reflected into the water and thereby changes the color of the water to your eyes. Pretty trippy. The last thing about this zone is that there's actually almond water that drips down from the ceiling, which leads some people to believe that there's a huge store of almond water above this part of the level, which would be pretty cool, but again, it's just a theory. The next part of the level is actually called the Main Center, which, as its name suggests, is just the exact center location of the level, and it looks like a huge room with water on the floor, just like the safe zone, except this time, there's actually platforms that are above the water that people can stand on, which is nice if you're tired of getting wet. This area typically is like a landmark to wanderers and a good place to meet up or a good place to rest. There's even food and other supplies here too, and these supplies will actually refill themselves if they're all taken every hour or so. But the most important thing about this zone is that it has the ability to restore your sanity, which if you know anything about the back rooms, sanity is very important. The last zone for the pool rooms is called the Danger Zone, and, well, it's dangerous. It's classified as a Class 4 difficulty, and it's very unsafe and very unsecure, and it's pretty much exactly like the safe zone, except the walls are dark blue and black, and not white, and they're more cramped and claustrophobic. It's also extremely dark here, and in some cases, it's actually pitch black, and like I said earlier, the tiles amplify every sound, so it's really disorienting, because everything echoes really loudly. The water here is also worse than before, because earlier you could theoretically drink the water, but if you drink the water here, you'll get severe stomach aches. On top of all that, this section actually makes your sanity drop really quickly, which obviously isn't good. But yeah, that's it for the danger zone. 
It's like the first safe zone, but dangerous. There are actually three colonies that call this level home. The first one is called the Lifeguards, which pretty much is a group of around 90 members who live in that main area where the platforms are. They refuse to trade with outsiders, but they will save anyone's life who's drowning or seems to be struggling in any way. The next group is called the Swimmers, and they have around 60 members, and literally they just teach people how to swim around the level. Like, that's it. The last group is called the Republic, and they live in the danger zone. They're armed, but they're friendly, and they'll protect you from any hostile entities that might be attacking. Speaking of entities, the entities here are the typical ones, like smilers, skin stealers, and wretches. But there's one more called the Glitchton, which is a really rare entity, but it's also very dangerous. They look like a humanoid skeleton, but they have neon bones, and also they have a metal arm. They're very aggressive when attacking, and their main threat that they cause is that they can hear very well, so if you're splashing around or whatever, they'll probably come to you. And they wear clothing that's been dipped in liquid silence, so you can't hear them, which is terrifyingly creepy. Like, imagine just being there, and turning around, and seeing a skeleton with a metal arm just standing right behind you. Creepy. To enter this level, you can noclip into level negative 33, or you can noclip into the bottom of an empty pool from level 823, if you want to come here. And to exit, you can find a cylinder stairway and walk up those stairs to be sent to level negative 33, or you can just noclip into any wall that you can in the safe zone area to be sent to level 7. Easy peasy. Alright, now that I've talked about the level itself, I want to show you this pool room's found footage that was inspired by this level entry. The footage comes from a YouTuber named Jared Pike. It's a cool name, because, you know, my name's Jared too. This footage is actually really cool, and I recommend you go check it out for yourself if you want to watch the entire thing. But in the video, we can see the safe zone area with the white tiles and shallowish water, and we can also see the main room area with the platforms. We don't get any footage inside of the danger zone, but we can see the entrances to the danger zone where it starts to get dark, and you can tell that this footage was based off of the pictures from the Phantom's entry, which is always pretty cool. And uh, I think it's really dope, and you should definitely go check out Jared's channel because this found footage is really cool. And I don't know, it's something about this water liminal space in the back rooms that just seems cool. And seeing it, you know, brought to life in found footage form is just pretty dope. Backrooms level negative zero is classified as class pending, which pretty much means everything is unsecured and undetermined. It's thought to be the first negative level in the backrooms, and it looks like the regular level zero, except it's really glitchy and colorful. It pretty much has the same layout as the normal level zero. The colors on this level can be anything from bright pink to purple to black to complete white out areas where you can't even see anything because it's so white to completely glitched out areas. It really just depends on where you are. There aren't any documented entities here, and there are not any bases or outposts either. That's just like normal level zero. The only way to enter this glitchy level is by trying to noclip to the normal level zero from another level and it'll put you here. But this only works on rare occasions, so don't go trying it. To exit the level, it says there isn't one, so good luck on that. Next up is Backrooms level negative 1, which is classified as class 2, so it's unsafe, but it has a low entity count. The level looks like an infinite white hallway with black doors on each side. Each of these doors leads to either level negative 2, level 0, the whiteouts, or level 2. When you're inside of level negative 1, you won't hear that annoying buzz from level 0. You'll actually hear a quiet piano music playing in the background. And no one knows where the sound comes from, and the sound never gets closer or farther away, no matter how deep you walk into the level. The biggest change you'll notice while walking deeper into the level is that your vision itself will start to glitch out, and it'll become staticky at random times. While this is happening, you'll start to hear random advertisements playing inside of your head, and these advertisements are retro ads from like the 1920s and 30s. And while you're in this state of mind, you'll be able to see these humanoid entities in old business outfits walking around the level. You couldn't see them before this happened, but you can see them when you're seeing the glitchy stuff. Although you won't be able to make out any details or anything, you'll just be able to see a humanoid shape with business clothes on. 
Now at this point in the level when you're starting to see this weird stuff, most people freak out and turn around and run back the other way. And when they do that, they run into an entity that only goes by one name, Nutricia. Or Nutricia, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. There's no information on this entity, and that's the only name we have for it, so. There are no bases here, and you can enter this level by breaking a wall on level 0. And to exit the level, you can just take one of those black doors that I mentioned earlier, and you can just open up the door and look in, and if it's a level you don't like, don't go there. But it's recommended to try to go to a positive level. Level negative 2 is classified as a class 4 survival difficulty, and is unsafe and unsecure, with a medium entity count. Also, sorry, my voice is kind of weird. My nose is stopped up. What's new? The entire area of level negative two is actually split between four different sub areas, which I'll explain in a second. The whole level is considered to be dangerous all the time because there are multiple undocumented hostile entities and multiple properties that are not understood about it all. And the level itself actually emits a really weird energy that attracts wanderers to it as soon as they get close to an entrance door to the level. It sort of lures them in. No one knows how or why this happens, so that's pretty creepy. Now I'm going to get into the four different areas of the level. The first part is called the pool. This area is a huge flooded unfinished basement with wood pillars and support beams placed all around. There's also a bunch of pipes and vents on the walls and ceilings, and there's actually uncovered electrical wires that run across the walls as well. That's a recipe for disaster. The only light source in the area are these orange light bulbs on the roof that kind of emit a really calming glow. The water that's flooded this basement is actually almond water, but it's not even safe to drink because it's really high in dirt and iron content, and apparently there's like a harmful bacteria that lives in the water as well, so that's no fun. One of the weird things that happens in this section of the level is that sometimes you can get teleported from one spot in the water to another spot. Like you could just randomly be walking and then be teleported to a completely different hallway. Other than the teleporting though, and the other stuff I mentioned, nothing else has really been discovered about this area. And the only really weird thing, minus the flooded floors of course, is that all the hallways in this zone take only right turns, 90 degree angle turns to be exact. There's never a rounded turn or a hallway, and some of the halls themselves are so short and so skinny that you could get claustrophobia from it. So if you get claustrophobia, don't come here, and if you have hydrophobia and claustrophobia, definitely don't come here. How deep the water is literally changes all the time, so it's advised to be extremely cautious when you're walking around the level. The safest spots in this zone are always where those orange lights are glowing, because when you get there you can see and it's less dangerous, and when you escape that light area and it's all dark, wanderers have reported extreme paranoia. The water itself has had some weird occurrences too, like one time it apparently moved on its own and tried to talk to someone by spouting up water in the air, so the water might be sentient, we don't know. To get to the next zone that I'm about to talk about, you have to walk through the halls of the flooded zone and eventually they'll change into the next level and become less flooded gradually. However, in these halls, there's actually an entity called the Screamers that live here. They're tall humanoids that have no face except a huge mouth and literally all they do, their only purpose, is that they scream at the top of their lungs at wanderers and paralyze them with fear. The screams can only be heard by the wanderer that's being attacked though, so if you get screamed at, no one's gonna come to help you because they can't hear it. Okay. So if you make it past the screamers and the flooded claustrophobic hallways, the next part of the level is called the Hall of Dull Flames. And this is a huge expanse of baby blue concreted walls and ceilings with white carpet on the floor. This entire zone has these blue lanterns that emit this really weird blue light that basks the walls and the ceiling. Speaking of the walls, the walls themselves look like they're kind of vintage from the Victorian era specifically, and there's paintings on the walls from the 1600s. There's been a bunch of reports in this area actually about some weird sounds that happen, like a distorted piano playing Beethoven or the sounds of screaming. The main entities in these blue halls are actually skin stealers and screamers, of course. Not too bad. But in very rare cases, the blue lights here will turn red, which actually means that you should stop moving instantly until they turn blue again. Because if you keep walking when they're red, you'll literally and physically fade from existence. 
The next zone is called the Abyss. I wonder if it'll be scary or not. This area is a huge void type zone where everything surrounding you is pitch black except what's right in front of you. There are some weird structures in this zone too. Like there's entire pieces of furniture and kitchen appliances that are literally made from forks and knives and stuff like that, just kitchen utensils. And there's also this really faint ticking noise that can be heard wherever you are in the abyss. And I guess I was wrong about this zone being scary because it says right here on the wiki dot that the zone is actually safe. You love to see it. Most wanderers end up finding the exit to the entire level here in the abyss. So the areas past this zone are mostly undocumented, except for one, which I'll talk about now. The last zone is called the Kafkaski Maze. Kafkaske Maze? I think that's how you say it. This zone is a huge maze made out of big bushes with purple leaves. And there's actually a sky here, and it's bright blue with clouds, and the grass on the ground is also purple, just like the bushes. And there's these random statues of clocks around, but other than this, everything else about this zone is pretty much not known. And there's sometimes these random empty pedestals with no statues on top, and each of these pedestals has a bronze card on it that says the Shavik. No clue what that means, but... I mean, it sounds pretty weird and creepy. I guess this zone is just a big area with purple bushes and grass and random statues of clocks. Pretty weird. So that's it for the documented zones of level negative 2, and there aren't any bases in any of them, but apparently Meg is trying to set up a base in the abyss. To enter level negative 2, you can enter any of the doors from level negative 1, or you can noclip through a yellow wall on level 13 to be sent here. To exits, you can find a set of out-of-place stairs randomly around the level, and they'll take you to level 14, or you can just find the entrance to level negative 3, which doesn't exist somehow, on any of the zones except for the pool. Nice. Next up for the video is level negative 4, which is classified as a class undetermined because of some really weird and creepy mysterious properties that I'll get into in a second. Physically, it looks like a huge dark forest with literally no signs of human or animal life. Just a massive, untamed forest, pretty much. Everyone who enters this level always enters from the exact same spot, which just so happens to be inside of a barn that's been randomly placed in the middle of the woods. And this is actually the only structure on this level. Now, other than what I just said, this level is pretty much undocumented, and it's kind of hard to travel in because the compasses you have and the flashlights you could use, they'll randomly break or stop working when you're out in the woods. So it's kind of like the level doesn't want to be explored. There aren't any outposts here, but there's been a bunch of attempts by Meg to start one up, and all of them have failed. These are pretty creepy, so watch out. The first attempt was called Outpost Charity, and it was founded a year after level negative 4 was discovered. It was located right next to that barn you spawn in at, and the group that made this outpost was 5 Meg volunteers, which were given 2 months of supplies up front. They were supposed to distribute these supplies evenly among each other, but when the second supply crate got there and was dropped off, the five members never came to get it, so Meg sent out a search team to find them. They found the members in a circle around the original rations crate, and they were all holding hands, and they were all unalived due to malnutrition. None of the rations inside of the supply crate were even touched. It was completely full, but for some reason they were all holding hands standing around it and weren't even alive. That's terrifying. The next failed outpost was called Outpost Burns, and this was created four months after that first incident. This one had three members who lived without issue for three months, but when the fourth month came along, all three people vanished from the camp area. The only evidence left behind was actually a picture taken by one of the members while they were still at camp, and on the back of the picture it was written, in scribbly handwriting, Going North, Don't Follow. None of the three people were ever found again. The third failed outpost is kind of lame. Pretty much it was four people who burned down their rations. Not gonna lie, that's kind of lame. Now, the last failed outpost I'm going to talk about was called Outpost Red Forest. This actually was started by 13 people in a collaboration between Meg and the followers of Jerry. It was made right at the barn's entrance, and it lasted a full 8 months before it fell. Out of all 13 members, only 3 survived, and the ones that did survive have severe issues in their head right now. Apparently, the 10 that didn't make it were all unalived by an undocumented being called the Grey One. And just like the first time, these people were all in a circle holding hands inside of the barn. Not cool, bro. 
So if I had to guess, the entity that destroyed this outpost was also the same one that destroyed the first outpost as well. It kind of reminds me of the Blair Witch though, if you've seen that movie, you know what I'm talking about. To enter this weird level, you can walk through one of the doors on level negative one, which will put you back in that barn, and to exit, all you have to do is wander into the woods, and you'll randomly noclip back to level negative one, or on to level negative five, which I'll talk about in the next negative levels video. Level negative five is classified as a class zero, so it's safe and secure, with no entities. Well, kinda. Let's get a round of applause for a negative level being safe. Physically, the level looks like a huge field that's been covered in snow. And apparently this level actually isn't that big because if you walk out really far in any direction, you'll just be teleported right behind where you spawned in. Somewhere in the depths of this level, there's actually a really old looking World War II era concrete structure with a door on one side and a hole in the wall on the other side. This building just seems to be randomly put here, since it's the only real building here, and it's unknown why it's there. The only real threat to you here is the cold temperatures, but even hypothermia doesn't work like it does in real life here, and it only sets in at a lower temperature, and it takes longer to get to you. So as long as you've got something on, you should be good. If you look into that cutout hole I just talked about inside the concrete structure, you won't be able to see anything, and it's been described as complete darkness. However, if you go in that door inside the structure I just talked about, you'll notice that the area after the door is very similar to the hallways in level negative two. Link to that explanation down below. And the only difference is, instead of the lights being blue, they're red. And the halls themselves have small plaques on them that say New Year's 1945. Nice. The halls are supposedly infinite, but that's not confirmed. And these plaques are not the only things on the walls, and there are other things like World War II propaganda posters, not just ones from the USA or Japan, they're from other places too, like Britain and Germany. And all of the text on these posters are in their own native language. One thing that is noted about these posters is that the people on the posters have really unsettling smiles. Like, more unsettling than the thought of war. Kinda creepy. Really far into the halls, there's been some gas masks found on the floor, and they seem to be really old, but still functional, except none of them have any filters for some reason. Every seven days on this level, the sky fills with shadows of bomber planes from the World War II era. These planes are flying fast, and they're all in different layers, and there's so many of them that just hearing all the noise from them might cause you to go temporarily deaf if you don't plug your ears. They all fly in sort of a grid pattern, and they're literally just a few feet away from each other in the air. These planes also drop quote unquote bombs every few seconds, but these bombs don't actually hit the ground because they fade away right before they do, so they literally happen for no reason. It's still not determined if these planes should actually be categorized as an entity since they don't interact with people or cause any harm, so we don't know. The only danger that they even pose at all is the downdraft from all their wings Sometimes it can cause a blizzard, but other than that, they're pretty chill. And you can enter level negative five by walking really far into level negative four, and you can exit the level by following those red lit hallways until you find the entrance to level negative six. Nice. Next up for the video is level negative six, which is classified as a class three difficulty and isn't safe, but it does have a low entity count, relatively. This level looks like a really old mine shaft with some random entities in it every so often. The level is a very new discovery, so not many people have even been here, and the only people that have are a meg team that's currently trying to set up an operation here to study it more. Scattered around this mine, there are some random flashlights and spotlights and matches on the floor right as you get into the level, which is obviously useful since it's dark. And sometimes the lighting here can change drastically, but typically, the deeper you go into the mine, the darker it gets. So eventually you can go so deep that you literally can't see anything. When you first get here, the mine shaft will be really cramped and short, but as you go further down it, it'll eventually open up into bigger rooms and caves, and then eventually after that, you'll walk into these huge caverns and quarries that are really dark. Now these huge open areas are really dangerous since you can't see anything, and the entities here will depend on how deep you go in. At the start of the mine, you can run into Reviux, Bursters and Wranglers, but when you get deeper and deeper into the caves, the creatures that are there are not even documented, so that's kind of spooky. 
and at a certain point the mine shaft just stops and there's only huge caverns like i said and this area is called the game over area and it's really dangerous and the only entity there is the scumparsa which looks like a giant pterodactyl or a quetzal kind of if you played arc you know what i'm talking about they fly and hunt using echolocation and they have this terrifying shriek when they do that so if you're walking down the huge cavern and you hear a shriek you're probably not gonna make it. And no one knows what's past this huge cavernous area. There are actually two bases here. One of them is the Meg Outpost Blinding Dark, which is located just 300 feet into the level, and they got about 15 members. The other outpost is a really interesting one. It's called the Prophets, and they claim to be the original people who lived here. And they're all completely blind since they've been in the dark for so long. And there's around 30 of them, and they're relatively passive, but don't push their buttons, you know? To enter this level, well, there's no really solid way. The Meg team entered by just walking deep into those hallways at level negative five, so that's the only way discovered as of now. And there's no discovered exit, but it's theorized that the exit is past that game over cavernous area, but I'm not gonna be the one sent there to try to find it out. So Backroom's level ASCII code is classified as Class Astral because the level involves being in space with aliens. Uh, let me explain. The level is a very rare level to get to and it's not even known if it's a level per se because you can only get to it directly from reality. So instead of no clipping into level zero, like someone normally would when they get sent to the back rooms, you can instead be sent here. This entire level takes place on some sort of advanced alien aircraft. Now this aircraft has shiny clean hallways and huge labs and stuff like that, and big computer panels and buttons and stuff. You know the deal. The only problem is, it seems like it's not part of the backrooms and that you're not supposed to be here. And let me tell you why. So our basic understanding of the backrooms is that you can glitch out of the real world and be sent to the infinite landscape, which is the backrooms. But apparently, some other force has tapped into this no clipping ability, and that force is the greys, or more commonly known as aliens. Somehow, some way, they have figured out how to harness whatever wormhole technology teleports people normally to the back rooms, and they made it so you'll get teleported to their spacecraft instead of level zero. It's unknown if the aliens created the back rooms or if they simply just have a better understanding of it than we do, but, but either way, they can manipulate where you're going. So if you are unlucky enough to get sent here, you'll be greeted with empty shiny halls, large laboratories and observation rooms, and thousands of pods with animals and people inside of them. The people seem to be suspended in some sort of liquid, and the animals are frozen in tanks. All of the technology and languages seem to be very advanced compared to anything we have. The craft also seems unmanned and has no aliens on board. And it looks like everything's fully automated and it doesn't require a physical person to work. When you wake up from no clipping out of reality, you'll be inside of this lab. Now this lab is empty except for one robotic arm that's hovering above you. This arm seems to be studying you and taking measurements of your height and weight and so on. Now you can leave the lab and walk around the entire spacecraft with no issue, but seeing some of the humans and animals and tanks might cause you to be spooked out or even give you anxiety. Or who knows, maybe the fact that you're in space or that you just no-clipped and glitched out of your reality, that might give you anxiety too. I don't know. The main room on this ship is where the biggest control panel is, and the biggest glass windshield of the craft is there too. This room has thousands of buttons and knobs that you can press, but there are two that stand out. One button is red and one is green. And these buttons are obvious and you can't miss them. They're also glowing. It's unknown what happens when you press the green button and no one knows where it takes you because all contact with the person who has pressed it has been lost. But if you do press the red button, you will instantly be knocked out and fully unconscious for an unknown amount of time. When you wake up from being knocked out, you'll be in your own room in the real world. Yes, your own room. This is not a joke or prank. This is the real life. You'll be in your room. But you will feel very strange, almost like you just gained a huge amount of knowledge. And that's when it starts. Out of nowhere, you'll have the sudden urge to find a piece of paper and start writing down a series of squares and lines as well as zeros and ones. You'll write this code for two to three pages until you stop. 
and then you'll feel normal again, although you'll be shaken up from the experience. This is what the code looks like when you're done. Now, if you're smart, you recognize that this is the ASCII binary code, and it translates as follows, quote, imminent threat soon upon Earth's leaders and civilizations. Expose and disband hidden knowledge to all citizens. Employ safe and controlled joint study to all minds. Progression imperative for combined survival, end quote. Now, this has happened to three different people so far, and each of them has written the exact same thing in ASCII code once they wake up. No one knows what it means. No one knows the implication. It could be that the aliens are trying to contact us in some way or trying to warn us, and they thought the easiest way would be taking people from our reality and telling them to write this code down, or maybe they thought that we could do something about it. I don't know but they might be trying to warn us or it could be something else entirely. The reason this is considered a backrooms level because it is accessed by no clipping out of reality, just like the backrooms is. So it's assumed that it's tied to that somehow. Now people that get sent to this alien level have no contact with Meg or any other backrooms related officials. And the only reason we know about them glitching there is because when they get back to reality, they tell the same story to military officials that they were just walking along and they glitched through the ground and ended up here, which we just so happen to know is the exact same technology that leads people to the backrooms. Like I said, as of right now, we have no idea if this is a backrooms level or something else entirely, but it is cryptic and it is crazy and you know clip there. So we're going to call it a backroom. The level is called level 922-337203-685-477-5810. Yes, that is a really long number, but the shorter name is level memories. That's the level name, and it is classified as a class undetermined due to a bunch of mysterious properties, unknown information, and undocumented entities. Now, if you remember that video that I posted eight months ago called The End, well, that level was supposed to be the very last level of the backrooms because it was the signed 64-bit integer number and it seemed like nothing could be found past it because it's an infinite staircase and no one knew what was after but this level was found recently and it pretty much proves all of that wrong level memories is some kind of a mishmash backrooms level museum it's made up of a bunch of different rooms or exhibits that all look like different parts of different backrooms levels so one room could look like level zero and the one next to it could look like level seven or level 999 it's whatever very interesting there are also rooms for levels that have been classified as negative levels or sub levels which means that every single possibility can be seen here there's also a ton of different entities here but they're all in exhibits or cages for the most part you know kind of like cavemen from real life museums and stuff like that and because of this layout the level has also been nicknamed like i said earlier the back rooms museum not all the entities are in cages and every once in a while you'll run into an entity that's just wandering around and these are very dangerous because they're the most dangerous versions of that entity so if you see a wretch or something just walking around we'll run away because they'll chase you until they get you the rooms or exhibits that are made up of different levels also have entities that are common in those levels so if there's a level 7 room then there's going to be the thing on level 7 entity entity there or if there's a level 5 room there's going to be the beast of level 5 on the paintings in there this level is also hypothesized to be the actual back rooms exit to the front rooms or real life and there's actually an exhibit room with a floating earth in the very center of it and around the earth is stuff that's from real life like beaches and birds and that kind of stuff it's like an earth exhibit and supposedly if you touch that floating earth in the center of the room then you'll wake up in real life and all of the stuff that you experienced in the back rooms will just feel like a dream. Now, the hard part is actually finding the earth exhibit room because there's literally rooms for each level of the back rooms. And since no one knows how big the back rooms is, or if there's even a cap on how big it can be, no one knows where the front rooms will fall in this. But if you do manage to find it, I guess congrats on escaping. Also, since this is the hypothetical real back rooms exit, maybe the other back rooms exits that I've talked about have not been real exits exits and have been fake exits who knows i mean this also might be a fake exit no one knows let's be real there's not even a real exit you're trapped there forever as far as groups or colonies goes 
is there is a small one here called the guiders and they try to help people make it to that earth room exhibit to exit and they'll show you around the level to the different exhibits if you want to go to a certain level to enter this giant backrooms museum level you have to be on the level before this and face your biggest fear that's behind the door at the end of the hallway on that level if you can make it through that fear and are mentally and physically intact then you'll wake up here in the backrooms museum and so far that is the only way possible to enter this level to leave you can no clip into the corner of any of the level exhibits that you want to go to you know if you roll past level 450 you just walk into the exhibit and no clip in there and you'll be sent there or you can walk around until you find the reality room with the floating earth in the middle and touch it and you'll be sent to real life which honestly i think is a pretty cool exit you know it's hard to get to it's rare and it might lead to reality but who knows it might be fake and it might send you somewhere else no one will ever know so yeah that was the backrooms level memories or the backrooms museum i think it was a pretty cool concept to have a place where you can see all of the backrooms levels kind of like their displays at a museum or exhibits at a museum i think it's pretty neat and i also like the fact that there might be an exit here i think it makes it even cooler Backrooms level the barrier is classified as a class undetermined because, to be honest with you, not much is known about it. It seems safe, but it almost has no information about it at all. When or if you go to this level, you will wake up in a grass field outside of a tree line. The field is full of rolling little hills and lush grass, and these hills and grasses lead into a big, thick, dense population of woods. This wooded area has lakes and abandoned cabins and all sorts of different types of trees in it. It kind of gives you a sense of nostalgia because it feels almost like the woods from reality, our earth. The liquid in the lakes doesn't seem to be water, which is weird, but it is drinkable, and there's even been fish seen swimming in it. So I guess you can get in it if you want to. Also, it's pretty weird that fish are in lakes here because normally bodies of water in the back rooms are empty. So that might mean this is somehow aligned with earth. The cabins I mentioned earlier are abandoned, but as far as we know, they're safe to go into. Inside of the cabins, you'll notice that they're just like Earth's. Most of them have a small kitchen area and a bedroom slash living area together as well. Sometimes though, people have been seen walking into the cabins and never coming out. It's thought that when this happens, the person is likely sent to level negative 188, so watch out for that. But again, inside of the cabins feels like home. It feels like you're in an earth cabin. And to add to that feeling, every once in a while, you'll see a wild animal running through the woods. And these animals aren't just any backrooms creature though, they're animals from from real life, like completely normal ones. Deer, bear, moose, literally like real creatures, real creatures from Earth. Except these creatures aren't aggressive, they're more docile and friendly. But between the relaxing feelings of the woods and the home feeling of the cabins and the exact animals from real life, you might get the sense that this level is connected to Earth somehow some way because so far it feels like you're just there already now there are some other weird things that happen in the barrier level as well like sometimes it'll just completely downpour the rain here and the rain itself will cause the sky and the air to turn different colors and to swirl together the rain also changes the barriers temperature drastically which is pretty weird because it doesn't happen to that extent in real life there are some other weird things that happen here as well. One of those weird things is actually how you get to this level. If you notice at the beginning, I didn't say when you get here, I said if you get here, because barely anybody can. To get to this level, it is done by following a glint in the sky for weeks on end. Now a glint is like a light or a shining blinking thing. The glint can appear in any level and it can be seen when traversing or going between different levels as well. It sort of calls you to it and draws you in and you know you're supposed to be following it. You just know you have that feeling. However, this glint does not appear to everyone and evidently only a few people can even see it. 
and even out of those few people who can see it, almost none of them make the full journey to the barrier level and they end up giving up or perishing along the way. Sometimes a person could have followed the glint in the sky for weeks and then randomly lost it and they were forced to stop. But for the very few who have made it to the barrier, they saw the level I just described. Rolling fields leading into woods dotted with cabins. Now this is where it gets tricky. It's thought that if you go deep into the woods, there is supposedly a massive tower placed there. It's been nicknamed the viewing point, and there is no known purpose for it other than just to be weird. But it's somewhere past that tower where there's supposed to be a location to get back to Earth. Now, the exact possible location for this quote-unquote portal to reality has not been found. Like I said earlier, no one knows if it actually exists or if it's just folklore or made up or whatever. But people have been seen going into the woods and have never been heard from seen, smelt, or anything again. So they have to go somewhere, right? I mean, they're not just walking off the face of the earth, or are they? People think since this level is so similar to how reality looks, that it itself is some kind of gateway. Like the woods itself will eventually transition over to the woods from earth. I mean, the wilderness, the cabins, the animals, they're all like the ones on earth, and even the air feels the same. What do you think? Do you get back to reality by wandering deeply into the woods? Or do you end up like the nameless people who have walked in and have never walked out? There's thought to be one colony outpost in the barrier, but the people who are a part of it, uh, they don't talk. <laughs> and they don't even open their mouths at all. No one knows why, but they could be hiding some kind of secret. To enter this level, you have to be one of the lucky few to have seen the light in the sky and then follow it until you get here. Now, if you truly see the light, then it'll only take you to the levels that take place outside for an unknown amount of time until you make it to the barrier. To exit the barrier, you can walk into the woods for a very, very, very low chance of being sent to reality, if that's even how it works. <laughs> we still don't know. It's just heavily speculated that that's how it would work. Or you can walk into a cabin and be sent to level negative 188. Or you can just sometimes randomly get sent wherever the level chooses. It almost seems like the level has some sort of brain or consciousness because it chooses who gets led here and it chooses who gets sent out or not. What do you think? Do you think the woods of the level eventually fade into a forest from Earth? And if you walk deep enough into them, will you just walk into a national park or a forest? Or do you think that it's not a real exit and the back rooms or something or someone lures people deep into this level for evil reasons? Let me know in the comments down below. The Promised Land is classified as a Class Zero and is extremely safe and secure, and it actually used to be considered a level only in legends or tales because no one actually knew if it existed or not. But now it's been pretty much explored extensively, so most of the level is documented. The level itself is a huge building with exactly 300 floors and around 1,000 rooms that are spread throughout. And each floor has these pink glowing lights in the ceilings, which would drive me crazy to be honest, but whatever. These lights have been known to randomly turn on or off, so just be aware of that. And all the floors have windows that look out to the outside area, and when it turns daylight outside, the curtains and the windows will disappear, and a floor made out of clouds will appear directly outside the window. Kind of like the floor of level Zenith. This cloud floor actually has these trees that grows in the ground and they produce a weird fruit, which you can actually eat. The day night cycle here is pretty much the same as real life, so the windows disappear during the day, but they'll reappear at nighttime. I mentioned earlier that there are over 1000 room types, so here are some of them. There are bedrooms, living rooms, kitchens, dining rooms, bathrooms, infirmaries, lounges, shops, an outside area, nightclub area, the business area, and the promised land resort. Each of these areas are pretty much exactly how their name sounds, so I'm not going to describe them. Like, the bedrooms, the bedrooms, the dining rooms, the dining rooms, it's pretty simple. Now a common question asked is, well, where did the promised land come from, or how did it get figured out? 
Well, according to the fandom, the level's first ever mention was found on a note in level zero near a ripped partygoer's mask. The note said, quote, the last of us are here, and there was a picture of the promised land level next to it. Now, nearby that note, there was a book called The Promised Land that pretty much had all of the level's explanation inside of it. Obviously, the level is really chill, and as soon as the book was read, rumors of this sanctuary level spread quickly throughout the backrooms. So lots of people tried to get there, but very few did. There are only two entities here, and those are the Cloud Trees, which I mentioned earlier, and Storks which are pretty much storks from real life, except they're more intelligent and tameable. As far as bases here, there are actually a few. The first one is the Backrooms Colonists, which is just a conglomerate of colonies that are loosely linked together. Then there are the Forgiven FOJs, which is a group of the followers of Jerry that somehow got to the level. And as always, they're nice unless you talk trash about Jerry. Lastly, there is the Reliquay Outpost, not sure if that's how you pronounce it, which is just an outpost of soldiers that fought in a war that actually happened on this level a long time ago called the Summer War. To enter this level, you can dive through a painting on level 384, but just like all of the entrances I'm about to say, it's extremely rare for them to work. And there's also a rumor that no clipping into a pink light on level negative 150 will work, but again, just a rumor. It's thought that you can also fall down stairs on that big long numbered level that I went over a few months ago to get here. But as always, you just gotta get lucky. To exit this level, you'll actually be exiting the back rooms. So you just gotta find a door labeled exit, and when you walk through that door, you'll be at the same place where you entered the back rooms from. Pretty cool. This might be one of my favorite theorized exits because it's literally so rare. I feel like it's kind of a myth in a way, you know? Pretty cool. Now, unlike most other levels I've covered, there's actually been some documented expeditions to try to find how to get here. There are six expeditions, and the first one was made by four members of the Republic back in 2004. They were sent back to level zero after making it to level 1051. Now, the second and third expeditions were not documented, but the fourth one was. This one was made by seven people from the Backrooms Colonist Group. It happened last year in 2021, and this is marked as the first conclusive successful mission to get to the promised land. Because when the group made it to level 384, where that painting is, which by the way is an extremely safe level, a member of the group disappeared. And it's thought that they went through the painting and made it to the promised land, and feasibly out of the back rooms. The fifth expedition had five more explorers, no clip into the painting on level 384, and they haven't been heard from since. So it's just thought they either made it, or they're somewhere else. The last expedition had 17 explorers, and it's officially known that four of them are currently in the promised land and have not escaped the backrooms. So backrooms level 710, or Ring and Ruin, is a newly found level. It's classified as a class undetermined since it's pretty new and because several of the properties here are extremely mysterious and not really understood at all. The level entry starts with a quote from a wanderer named Amy. Quote, I opened my eyes to see a hound, so close that I could taste its hot breath. Foul saliva drips from those deadly fangs. A hunting knife materializes in my right hand. I know this place keeps the hounds from hurting me. It is as terrified as I am, poor thing. It disappears, and the knife becomes a chocolate chip cookie. So as you can see, off the bat, this level is already showing some weird properties. Level Description the level is made up of two distinct areas. The first is a silvery ring that's floating in the sky. The second is the ground under this ring with some ruins and an archway. And you'll want to hear what those things are all about in a second. So the silver ring floats horizontally in the sky, directly above those ruins on the ground. It never moves position and never goes up or down, but it's absolutely massive and is around 400 feet in diameter which is the distance from one side of the ring to the other, and 400 feet is actually taller than the Statue of Liberty, so that kind of gives you a gauge on how big this thing is. 
There's no visible propulsion system or way that it's holding itself up there in the sky, so it's a complete mystery how it floats, although it might be a supernatural intelligence that keeps it up there. The ring interacts with one person at a time on the level, and that person is seemingly chosen from any other backrooms level to be sent to the ring randomly. Like they could just be walking on any level and get no clipped to this ring inside of it. And that person will be stuck inside the ring anywhere from 3 days to 23 days before they returned. So the inside of the ring is just a large hallway, and that Amy person from earlier was sent here for 20 days and was able to remember some of what it was like. She says the ring has no doors from the inside, only four distinct windows on each cardinal point. So like north, south, east, west, like a compass. Each of these four windows has a little room next to it with different purposes. The room by the north window has a desk and a chair in it with paper and pencil. The east window has almond water and food there. The south window is a bedroom. And the west window has a room next to it with a very small box inside that each person has to put a personal item in as sort of a sacrifice, apparently. When you're here, you're motivated to do certain things from this gut feeling that the level gives you. The ring itself seems to be alive in some way because it communicates with people on an intellectual level. It doesn't use language or signals, it just gives these people the feelings or the instincts to go do things. So for example, it could give a person the instinct to go to the south room or the north room. The ring itself seems to be like some kind of observation and evaluation structure that literally has the sole goal of studying humans to see how they interact with certain stimuli like those four different rooms. It's also thought that the ring was put here by maybe a higher power or an artificial intelligence because of how futuristic the technology is. Summary of the ring. So pretty much to summarize what I just said, the ring is a circular hallway with four rooms and each room has different things in it. The ring itself interacts with each person that goes there through instinctual brain waves. And it's almost as if it's observing how humans respond to stimulus. Sometimes this ring intelligence will even put entities or pictures of different backrooms levels in the hallways to see how people will react to them. Even though nothing will actually hurt you, they're just put there to see how you interact and change based off of what it shows you. It's kind of like a science experiment, and the humans are the test subjects. You know, you've seen those things with the rats in the mazes. That's kind of like what this is. But who's the scientist, and who's studying us? No one knows. The Ruins On the ground under this ring is a circle of earth with no vegetation. This circle is 1320 feet in diameter, and in the middle of it, there's this huge archway called the Harbinger Arch, along with some other stones standing up beside it. No one knows how this got here, who built it, or what it actually means, but it's thought that this archway is a portal to different realms. And maybe even, just maybe, a true exit to the back rooms. Sometimes, if you look through the arch, you can actually see into different realities, even outside of the back rooms or the front rooms. These are completely different universes. And sometimes you can look through and see the real Earth. People have been witnessed walking under the arch and into it, and never walking out on the other side, so it definitely does lead somewhere, but no one knows where or if it's trustworthy to go into. The arch and the ruins are kind of treated as some kind of spiritual thing in the back rooms, and you get the vibe that they're sacred. After these ruins were discovered, other things that had been discovered previously in the back rooms kind of started to make more sense. Like there's these small carvings in wood and stone circulating through the back rooms in the shape of arches or rings, or there's whispers floating about of a so-called pilgrim's path being talked about in notes on the walls and in carvings. Either way, the ring and its intelligence and the archway and the ruins with their supernatural and interdimensional powers are some of the most unique things in all of the back rooms it seems. So level 922-337-203-685-477-5807 is the signed 64-bit integer limit on a computer in real life. And that same number just so happens to be the supposed highest backrooms level and the most dangerous level in existence. Lots of people think that the backrooms go on for an eternity. 
but people who know about this level know that they do not go on forever. The entities that have been able to get to this level have not been able to get any further for thousands of years. And this level is not only extremely dangerous, but it's also extremely hard to enter. I don't know why you'd want to, but we'll talk about that later. The only description available of this level is that it's a simple, cold, brutal staircase that goes on for seemingly an infinite amount, up and down. The color of the staircase is said to be indescribable. Either a black-white color, which yes, that's a juxtaposition, yet at the same time, it's devoid of color. And if you look at the stairs for too long, it'll make your eyes teary because of the lack of color and your brain can't comprehend it. You can't even feel your weight on this level, which allows you to walk up the stairs for an infinite amount of time. There is no known level above this level and the stairs continue for what is theorized as billions of miles in each direction. And as far as entrances and exits go, there are only two possible ways to get into this level. Both of these are just hypothesized, they're not for sure. The first one is that there is another level called the end, and it's that library room I talked about in my Liminal Spaces Iceberg video. And that level is a fake end, and it's actually a decoy for this level. And some think that there is a secret entrance among all the books to the real end, this level. The other entrance is theorized to be on level, oh, another big long number, 344-1684-1123-1509-8764-90285. It's said that there is an extremely rare chance of that level leading to this level. And as far as exits, there are only theorized ones as well. For example, some think if you climb 5,000 stairs exactly and then jump over the rail into the middle, this will send you back to reality. And some people think if you climb just 85 stairs and then jump off into the middle, this will take you to level question mark, question mark, question mark. This is an unknown level full of skin stealers, hounds, and as well as insanities. And level question mark, question mark, question mark has no known escapes, so don't even try to go there. Your best bet is to try to climb 5,000 stairs to get back to reality, but no one even knows if that works or not. There's another level that is numbered the exact same as this one, except it's negative 922337203685477807. And this is theorized by some to be the furthest down you can go in the back rooms. While the positive version of this number is the highest you can go, the negative is the furthest down you can go. This negative version is known to be an infinite void of glitches. The walls, the ceilings, the floors, the air, everything is glitched, and lines of code fly through the air and roll on the walls around everything. If you for some reason go to this level, you will cease to exist, as you know it, because your brain won't be able to comprehend the glitches. You're left alone with all your memories and the constant buzzing and glitching noises, and this will drive you to insanity. Unlike the positive version of this number, there is no known way to get into the negative version. So how about, don't even try. So to do a quick recap, the supposed highest level of the back rooms is level 92233-7203-685-477-5807 and is apparently an infinite staircase that goes up and down with only two theorized exits. And the supposed lowest level of the back rooms is the exact same number but negative and it's an infinite void of glitches and lines of code. Both sound pretty fun to me. So in the fandom universe, the way out is widely accepted as the backroom's exit. The physical way out will appear to each person differently, but no matter what form it takes, it will always be surrounded with this intense yellow light. Nice. The way out typically appears randomly on any level of the backrooms and is extremely rare, obviously, pretty much to the point where it's almost impossible to appear. So far, only one confirmed person has even escaped through this exit. Reddit user Enigmatic Eva. That's according to the fandom, not me. It's also important to note that the way out leads to a random place in reality. So you'll have no idea where you are, unless you just know geography, I guess. There is one small issue with this exit though, and that's when you go through it, you'll temporarily be in this weird position where you're not in actual reality, but you're kind of in reality. For example, the person that I mentioned earlier, Enigmatic Eva, that has supposedly exited the back rooms, says that there were some anomalies when they went through the exit. To start with, there was an insane amount of security cameras everywhere Eva exited, or that they still heard the buzzing noise from the back rooms in her head, and there wasn't any life in this reality. There was no people, no cars, no animals, nothing like that. Enigmatic Enigmatic Eva did continuously mention a weird creature that she only referred to as, quote, them in their Reddit thread, and that it was hostile and creepy. 
so that's really weird. When Eva went through the way out, she ended up in London, but she lived before she went to the backrooms in the United States. So that made Eva think that the backrooms is somehow connected and intertwined with our reality. So like you can physically travel around the world to different places, but you just don't know it. Nice. Soon after Eva recounted those weird things in her Reddit posts, her replies started to not make any sense. But her Reddit history did seem like she's living a normal life, so it really seems like when the person exits the backrooms through the way out, the real world and the backrooms sort of overlap temporarily and blend together until it slowly fixes itself and puts you back in your real world. Nice. So to summarize, the fandom posits that the way out is an exit that can appear on any level of the backrooms. It can appear in any form, but in this case it was a staircase. See what I did there? And every time it appears, it's got a bright yellow light that is flashing and strobing inside of it. If you go through the gateway, you'll be in some sort of in-between state between reality and the backrooms until eventually reality will go back to normal and you'll be back to how your old life was. Nice. It's got a survival difficulty of zero, and it looks like an infinite arcade. This arcade looks like it's from real life, but it's obviously not, it's in the back rooms. The outside of the place looks normal. You can see cars and trees and street lights, just basic outside stuff. Only problem is you can't get out there until you've done a few things, which we'll talk about later. The arcade games here are not like retro arcade games like you're probably thinking. They're actually games from real life, like Minecraft, Terraria, Roblox, you know, that kind of stuff. Call of Duty even. And the machines are known to induce this really relaxing effect on you. And this effect can actually increase your sanity if you've lost any. So, nice. nice. They also induce feelings of normalcy, obviously, because they're from real life and anything from real life in the back rooms will induce comfort and normalcy. The only downside to playing these games is if you have rage issues, because if you hit the machines or if you break something, you'll instantly faint. And every time you do that, again, you'll faint over and over again. So don't do that. There's hardly ever anyone here though, except in the colonies that I'll talk about later. That aspect alone can make people kind of uneasy about this level because it's just a huge, infinite, empty arcade. Sometimes though, these weird meteorites fall from the ceiling inside of the building, but they don't do any damage to the machines or the floors, the ceilings or anything, which leads people to believe that they're just an illusion caused by the lights on the level, which is kind of weird, but... What in the back rooms isn't weird. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you can indeed get back to the front rooms or reality from this level. But to do so, you kind of have to complete a checklist, kind of like the 13 tasks Hercules had before he could, you know, become what he was. These things can last anywhere from four minutes to 12 years. And the longevity of the task depends on how hard it is. They can be anything from slaying an entity or a creature to eating a certain amount of food or drinking a certain amount of water. It really just depends. If you don't complete the tasks that you've been given, you'll either be unalived or you'll be condemned to stay in the back rooms forever and never escape. Nice. To get one of these checklists, you have to walk towards the sunset on this level, which I guess you can see through the glass panes in the windows, for an unknown amount of time. And then you'll be given a checklist in an unknown way. I really like the details here. But yeah, after you walk towards the sunset and get your checklist, you'll have it, and then you'll have to start completing your task. There doesn't seem to be a correlation on why these tasks are given to certain people, or why some of them are a lot harder than other ones, but it is what it is. If you do complete your tasks, the glass doors to the level will be opened up, and you can walk out, and you can go back to reality through those doors. There are actually a couple colonies here, like the Backrooms Colonist and Cafe Studio 52-1. Now these areas are just kind of chill, relaxing, eatery kind of areas that are on the level, and these are really the only people that are here at one time. Other than that, there aren't really many wanderers here because they're out completing their tasks that they've been given by the level. The next colony is the waiters. These are the people who help you learn how to use the arcades and stuff like that. The last colony is called the Front Rooms Organization, and this is a really weird, mysterious outpost that not really many people know about. They lead people to glass doors to escape the back rooms, but again, it's unknown how that works. But it is known that they're there. Now I'm sure you've all been waiting on how to enter this level, and you can enter this level by running trueend.exe on the computer from the end level. Or you can even get here by glitching through a purple glitchy wall on level 11, which that would be really easy. You'd have to be really lucky to get that one. There's also like nine other ways to enter, but these ones are the coolest ones. There are other ways to enter the level, <laughs> but the level 11 one is pretty much the easiest, and the running the trueend.exe file is also 
the easiest. To exit, you can complete your given tasks and be freed from the back rooms by walking out the glass doors on the level, or you can fail your given tasks and be condemned to wander the back rooms for an eternity. There are other ways to exit the specific level of level 3099, but who cares about those? We're talking about how to leave the back rooms here. First up for the video is Level Vibe from the wiki dot. Level Vibe is classified as a class vibe and is chillin', daydreaming, and what the kids would call a mood. <laughs> the level itself is simply the coolest level to ever exist. It physically looks like a world of daydreams, and every daydream that's ever been thought of appears here. Anything can happen. If you want to be a cat and ride a paper airplane through the mountains, uh, sure, go for it. Do you want to live here? No, kind of, yeah. People who get sent to the vibe rooms will be able to explore this beautiful holographic terrain and can ride the ocean waves on the mood beach. And they can explore mountains as well, which just so happen to be erupting with pure nostalgia. <laughs> Dude, like, what? Pretty much this level is a huge, crazy trip where you can just chill out, vibe, relax, and anything can happen. And there won't be a wretch chasing you. There is one base here, and it's for all those who want to chill. And to enter this level, you gotta look into your own mind, and you might find it. Thanks for these specific instructions, dude. I really appreciate it. And to exit, you have to refuse the vibe. That's it. But why would you want to refuse it? Next for the video is from you underscore on Discord, and the level is called the Moai Rooms. This level has a survival difficulty of class dead zone, and you probably shouldn't come here at all unless you want to unalive. The Moya Rooms look very similar to level zero, but instead of an empty yellow wasteland, the whole thing is filled up with Moyai statues. These statues can see every move you make, and if you make any specific sudden or quick movements, you're gonna not make it out of here. Because if you do that, these statues will surround you. Like, every single statue in this level will make this huge circle around you, and they'll repeatedly then dive on top of you until you're flat as a pancake. Cool. Then you'll be turned into one of these statues yourself and join the army. And the only way to safely make it through the level without being absolutely obliterated is to either crawl or rub your entire body in vanilla perfume. Okay. Okay. Oh, this is nice though. If you're wearing a hat when you get attacked and turned into a statue, then your statue will also have a hat. How thoughtful. To enter this level, you have to find a chocolate Moyai statue and eat it. Because I'm sure those are totally common, you know, in the back rooms. And you have to do the same thing to exit. Because apparently, there's going to be a few randomly scattered in this level. But personally, my advice is to avoid this place unless you like getting pummeled by giant statues. Next for the video is the level from the wiki dot called the back room. This level has a survival difficulty of one and is back room. <laughs> My humor is broken. There are many rooms out of all rooms. This is one of them. <laughs> Thanks for that, dude. I appreciate it. As far as the level description, the room itself looks like a large white room with a window, chair, and a fan, as well as a door. Oh, so it's just a normal room. Cool. For bases and outposts, many people have entered the room, and we don't know where they are. There's also an interview section here, and it reads as follows. The interviewer asks, is this a room? And the room man says, yes. And that's, that's it. That's literally it. The entrance to this level is door. And the exit to this level is also door. How does this level have 118 upvotes, dude? What? Lastly, for this incredible masterpiece of a video that is probably the best video I've ever uploaded, is from Dank on Discord, and it's called Level Banana. This level has a survival difficulty of gentle minions. Of course it does. And it's friendly, grulicious, and bellow, which is how minions say hello. The level looks like a huge infinite scape of yellow halls and floors. Much like level zero, except even more yellow somehow. And there's a constant smell of bananas wafting throughout the halls. On top of that, there's actual bananas on the floor in some places. The only entities here, of course, are minions. 
except they look slightly different and more gross. They're not cute or nice either. Because if you get seen with a banana in your hand, these things will swarm you and like attack you until you give it back. Fun times. And the only outpost here is of course the gentle minions. And to enter, you have to hold a banana on any level and say bellow in a minion's voice three times and you'll just be sitting here. But honestly, I'm trying to avoid an army of these things swarming me, so I think I'm gonna pass on this level. Level 69 looks like a dark and empty infinite highway that has fog rolling at all times. Each side of the highway has massive concrete walls that seem to be infinite in height. And there's literally nothing else here. Like, that's it. The level is apparently so dangerous that you have to stay in the car when you spawn in. When you spawn in on this level, you'll spawn in in the car that you passed out in in level 3 to get here. That's the entrance to this level, more on that later. But if you stay in this car, you'll pretty much be safe. But if you leave the car, it's dangerous. Level 69 has a very low visibility because of the fog and the darkness that's on the level since it's constantly nighttime. In order to see anything at all, you have to use either the headlights from the car or a flashlight or something. This level is pretty unique because there are specific ways that you need to navigate it. And the start of the level is pretty much the same for everyone across the board because you wake up in the car that you passed out in from level 3. Even if you somehow get here without passing out in a car on level 3, you'll still wake up inside of a random car whenever you enter the level. But whatever you do, like I said, do not leave the car since, you know, it's dangerous and stuff. The fog and the entities that live here seem to be kind of scared of cars, except for one entity. So it's pretty much a good way to scare off things if you just stay in your car and keep driving. Now, your car itself might have broken glass or broken AC or something like that. It's really just depending on the luck of the person there. So if you have bad luck, then you might have car problems, and if you have good luck, you won't. Driving this car physically is pretty much just like driving a car from real life, so you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. You also don't have to worry about running out of gas, because these cars don't even have fuel tanks. Nice! So you can go full speed for as long as you want, since there's really nothing in the road, and you can just fly down the road at max speed. But there is always a risk of crashing into an entity or something like that. So pretty much you can either drive slow and waste a bunch of time, or you can drive really fast with a chance of perishing, so pick your poison. There are also hardly any supplies on this level, so the goal is to leave as soon as possible so you don't starve. The main normal entities here are Smilers and Wretches, which are extremely hostile on this level because they don't have anything else to eat. So when they see you, they, you know, they start drooling and get really aggressive. Wretches are considered to be extremely dangerous here because they can break into your car if you're parked or something like that, or if you crash into one, it could cause your car to fly out the road into the concrete wall. Just try to avoid them. Like imagine sitting in your car and trying to take a nap and then you wake up and see one of these things. Nice. Now this level also has a level exclusive entity called the Beans from Above. These are very mysterious and dangerous and they're pretty much one of the main reasons, if not the main reason, that you should not get out of your car. Their exact body description isn't known, but their legs, or arms, look like spider legs or crab legs. You can't see them from the ground, obviously, because you'll be in a car. But if you were to get out of your car, a leg might fly down from above and spear right through you, and then pick you up and carry you up into the darkness. It's kind of like that thing from King Kong, if you've seen that movie. There's only been a handful of survivors from an attack, and they say that the legs feel cold, slick, and completely solid. Oh yeah, and these entities literally cannot be taken down at all. People have tried bullets, explosions, knives, nothing works on them, so. This level also has a weird phenomena that happens called the Whispers. Now this might be an entity or just a weird occurrence that happens here, but pretty much there are these negative thoughts that go through your brain while you're on the level and they try to break down your mental health. So watch out for that, I guess. The easiest and most common way to enter this level is to pass out in a car on level 3 and you'll just wake up here. To exit the level, it's pretty simple. You just have to drive really far on the road and eventually you'll run across a tunnel that's carved into one of the sides of the concrete walls. Now you want to make sure you're either on the right or left side of the road because if you're in the middle, there's a chance you might miss this tunnel and you don't want to do that, trust me. So once you find the tunnel, just drive through it and you can only drive there for exactly 17 hours because then at that point, your car will break down and stop working. 
After it stops working, you just have to get out and you have to walk through the rest of the length of the tunnel. But don't worry though, the tunnel's safe. There's no fog or no entities or anything like that. Just a normal tunnel. And this tunnel will lead to level 11. So it's pretty much worth it. There's also one unconfirmed exit as well. Some people have said that if you pass out while being attacked by a being from above, that you'll wake up in level 0. But I'm not gonna stick around and try to test that theory. So yeah, you got an infinite highway with huge concrete walls on each side and giant spider legs that come down from the sky to attack you. Love to see it. So the sublevel that I want to go over today is a brand new one to the Backrooms Wikidot. I just read over it, it was on the new page list, and it's level 8.1, which, obviously, is a sublevel of level 8. This entry starts with a notice, directly from Meg themselves, that reads as follows. This page has been partially expunged due to an unexpected, unsystematic total collapse and destruction of level 8.1 because of an inadvertent fusion of this sublayer and level 8 whose effect was firstly witnessed on February 12th, 2013, a separate document is to be shown to the general public that overviews the potential hazards that the collision has consequently caused. These environmental hazards in level 8 are only prone to occur near the initial entrance of level 8.1 before it was destroyed, the Meg team. Now since I've read that really fun message, let's get into the level explanation. But be warned, because level 8.1 is a very weird conglomeration, sublevel type thing. It's described by Wanderers as a really complex system of claustrophobic hallways that kind of look like caves, but they're really tiny and you can barely fit through them. This 8.1 area is different than other sub-areas because it doesn't actually seem to be related to level 8 at all, like not in the physical sense at least. Instead, the thought is that they barely are fused together somehow, since on rare occasions you can see a connecting hallway from level 8 to 8.1, but I'll get into that later, it's really unstable, and it's really bad. This partial fusion of level 8 and 8.1 also cause very weird auditory hallucinations and visual hallucinations and distortions. These distortions happen on levels 8 and 8.1 near where the 8.1 entrance is, so Meg advises everyone to avoid any exploration of these distortion areas because they're pretty dangerous. And it doesn't really sound that fun to me. Now, as I said earlier, level 8.1 itself is a mixed jumble of winding hallways that end in dead ends or they loop around and go around each other. The rock that these halls are carved through seems to be made out of a bedrock which is unnaturally durable and hard to break. The bedrock leaks almond water in certain spots, but it doesn't just leak almond water, it leaks a really weird red liquid that smells terrible that's been described as sulfuric. So it smells like sulfur. Nasty. The almond water that leaks through the rocks sometimes makes sinkholes happen or ceilings to collapse because, you know, it breaks down the rock over time. And these things happen frequently, which makes mapping out a safe path in this area almost impossible. The rock hallways also cause those auditory and visual hallucination distortion things that I talked about earlier. Sometimes these things sound like crashing rocks. Sometimes they sound like shrill whimpering. And this whimpering is so distorted and so loud that it causes some people to instantly pass out on hearing it. The frequencies have also broken ceramic objects and can even cause you to have complete derealization after just 10 minutes of exposure. No one knows the source of these sounds, but it's assumed that it has something to do with the fusion of level 8.1 and level 8 together and some kind of disimbalance thing. The hallways also have a really weird physical anomaly in some areas and will cause pretty gross things to happen. Be warned. Like if you touch a wall, you could get sucked into the rocks and instantly just be encased in rock and instantly unalive. Grody. There is another part of this sublevel as if it couldn't get any more dangerous, and the area is called Layer 2. This refers to the actual space between the intersection of level 8 and 8.1, like I mentioned earlier. 
So this layer 2 is where the two different levels connect together. Those distortions from earlier, specifically the auditory ones, are way more noticeable here, way louder. And it's unknown why it's so much louder here, but it can be assumed that wherever the source is, it's here. Layer 2 actually has longer, skinnier hallways than the rest of level 8.1 or even level 8, and there's no light source here, which is the opposite of 8.1, the main area, because there's just this, some kind of light source through the whole level there. But this area, Layer 2, is dark. Like, real dark. The nasty red sulfur stuff from earlier also leaks way more in this level, and it causes pretty deep puddles to form on the floor. The echoing off the walls and the auditory distortions make it impossible to document what kind of entities are here or how many of them there are, and there's no info on them literally at all. There's nothing. So who knows what lurks in the shadows? Gotcha. Maybe the creepiest part of level 8.1 and layer 2 is that there's been no documented instances of people escaping. So for all we know, people could get trapped there for an eternity in the winding, claustrophobic halls. Creepy to think about. Now the way this article's information was apparently gathered was by, quote, a method of analog communication via the use of certain devices. Okay then, I like how specific you are. Kinda goofy, but we're vibing. The main theory on there not being any documented escapes is that there's actually another layer called Layer 3 outside of the bedrock walls that perhaps has an exit, maybe? Or maybe there isn't this area and people are just doomed to wander the small hallways for an eternity. Nice! Also, there are no bases, entities, entrances, or exits documented. Just letting you know that I did not forget to add them to the video, they just don't exist. Level 4000, aka the final frontier, is extremely unsecure and unsafe for the most part. Except in one part, which I'll talk about later. And the level is split up into two distinct sections, which I'll be explaining in depth, of course. But the two sections are called Thalassophobia and the Near Shore Area. The Thalassophobia area is unsafe and unsecure, and has undocumented entities around as well as an extremely dangerous documented one. But this part of the level induces a deep sense of Thalassophobia to you the second you're in it. Even if you don't have that to begin with, it still gives it to you. Which is just terrifying, man. Also, if you don't know what it is, thalassophobia is the fear of underneath of water, the things underneath of it. This area has another weird effect on you, where it drains your sanity constantly, and you can't even help it. It just happens. This section also has extremely deep, dark water, and the sky is always gray, with no sun, and the water is always rough and choppy. The only confirmed entity here is called the Death Whale which pretty much sounds exactly like the name suggests and is exactly like the name suggests, but I'll explain it in detail in the entity section of the video, so be patient. But yeah, that's it for the thalassophobia section of the level. It's dangerous, it's deep, it's a dark ocean. What else is there to say? The next section is called the Near Shore Area, and this area is actually pretty safe and moderately secure, which is way better than the death whale infested water. Since its name is literally near shore, I'm sure you can guess that this section is near a shoreline, quote unquote, but don't get your hopes up because there is no actual shoreline. It's just an infinite section of an area that looks like it's gonna be a shoreline, but you can never get close to it. Kinda sucks. Apparently two Meg members traveled 26 miles towards the shore that they thought was a shore, and they didn't get any closer. This area has these black rock island formation things that stick out of the water, and there's lots of other sea life here as well, like birds and lizards and that kind of stuff, as well as seagulls and mackerels and other fish and, you know, just the typical ocean stuff. And a really creepy entity also lives here called La Camiloa which I'm gonna talk about in depth in the entity section, so you'll see it there. Every four hours in this area, a random mist will start to roll over the water, and off in the distance, you'll see a lighthouse light and the tower very faintly. 
but it's impossible to get to this lighthouse because it seems to change directions. And after about five hours of this mist in this lighthouse, it'll all disappear and it'll all be gone. And that was the last part of the le- Wait, there's a secret part, what? The secret part of level 4000 is called the Silver Waters and is safe, secure, with no entities. This section of the level has only been seen by two people ever and the entrance to it is unconfirmed and obviously unsafe. The water in this section of the level is kind of metallic, it has this weird thick texture to it. And it's also been tested and is actually made of a very similar compound to liquid silver. So like melted silver, but an ocean. Interesting, very interesting. So for the long-awaited entity section, there are two main ones that I want to talk about. And those are the Death Whales and then the La Kamiloa. We'll get into the Death Whales first. These things look like normal humpback whales, which if you didn't know, are already one of the largest things on planet Earth, so that's terrifying. But instead of the peaceful giants from real life, death whales are anything but that. They are dangerous. They can detect you from miles away when you're in the water, and they can swim straight up towards you, and like a reverse torpedo, they will open their mouth and shoot right up at you and try to swallow you. The only chance of survival you have is to swim away just in time to dodge them. They also sometimes just come out of the water and just sit there with their mouth open for a little bit, almost like they're drinking oxygen, I don't know. It's different from real life whales because obviously real life whales have air through a blowhole. So maybe these things don't have a blowhole and they just breathe through their mouth. So far, there's been a total of 56 victims of these death whales and the number will probably keep going up as more and more people go to this level. The next entity is the La Kamiloa entity, which is just terrifying to look at. I mean, just look. This creature is very mysterious and is rarely seen, but it's really unknown how it's supposed to act because sometimes it's aggressive, but most of the time it's not. It looks like a large humanoid that's made out of stone, and it's supposed to be around 100 feet tall, but that's just how tall it is when it stands out of the water. Like, imagine how tall it actually is with its feet touching the bottom of the ocean. It's gotta be like 20 miles tall. The creature has only actually unalived two humans total by accidentally dragging them down underwater, but apparently it's kind of friendly to humans and doesn't actually seek out to attack them, like someone else we know. But yeah, a four mile tall stone humanoid creature is still terrifying. There are actually two colonies on this level. Those are the Ocean Explorers and the Noki Noki. The Ocean Explorers, well, they're Ocean Explorers, and they're the only official group stationed here. They live on a huge inflatable raft on the water, and they guide wanderers to the exit of the level. Kinda wholesome, and they also like to swim, which is also wholesome. Now the Noki Noki tribe is a tribe of 50 people who live on one of those rock outcropping island things and they seem to be like a hunter-gatherer society that just hunts animals in the near shore area. They're moderately hostile to outsiders but can be bargained with if you don't get really aggressive. To enter this level, the only reliable way is to noclip through a wet spot in the carpet in level 0. The rest of them are unreliable and are kind of finicky. Now to exit this level, you can find a specific circle of rock formations and then just wait on top of them to be teleported to the hub. Or in extremely rare occasions, you can see the shore that I was talking about earlier, but the shore has a city on it when you see it and then you can swim towards it and then you'll be in level 1976 but that's extremely rare. The other two exits almost never happen or never work, so don't even try. Backrooms level 266 is classified as a class 3E environmental danger and is unsafe and unsecure, and its main danger is not from entities, but the environment itself. The level actually looks like a giant floating mass of roots and sticks and trees. The trees are really thin and they don't have any leaves on them or anything like that. And the forest area is actually the center of the level. 
and as you wander further down from that forest, the steeper and more declined the landscape gets. Kind of like if you were standing on top of a giant ball and started to walk down the sides. It gets so steep eventually that it just drops off to 90 degree angles. The forest is also always covered in this fog and it's really hot and humid and it stays around 36 degrees Celsius or 96 degrees Fahrenheit, which is really hot. Since it is so hot, it is recommended that if you do come here, bring almond water so you don't go insane. However, you probably shouldn't come here and you'll figure out why very soon. This level is actually a pretty important connector level because it connects level 166 to level 11. So you could technically be on level 11 and then skip 155 levels, you know, which is pretty cool. It's only problem is that it's hard to get here successfully and you shouldn't come here because of the dangers of this environment. If you walk down the slopes of the forest as far as you can, you'll eventually get to the edge where you can see a bunch of roots hanging down into the void below. And these roots have some pretty weird things about them. First off, they are way bigger than the trees that they come from, which is pretty strange. But the real weirdness is that they can move and contort themselves in the ground. Now, this movement can cause huge holes to just open up in the ground, which is one of the biggest dangers here, because you could fall in them. And if you do find a hole, you can actually look down into it and see all the roots moving around and constantly shifting in the ground like massive snakes. Grody. The roots are actually dangerous for another reason too, and it's because if you put an object near or in one of those holes that opens up, the roots will then grab it and close themselves around it, and then eventually, whatever you put down on the ground will be sucked into the ground by the roots roots themselves. Like the roots will literally grab something and pull it through the ground into underneath it. Almost like they're eating it or something. And probably the grossest thing about looking down at the roots into the ground through a hole is that you can see objects flowing through the roots that got sucked from the surface. Like the people who are no longer alive, or entities that have been trapped and pulled under, or objects and stuff like that. You can see all those things being wriggled and writhed through the tunnels that these roots create, being covered and wrapped around by other roots. That's terrifying. Some of the items in the roots have actually been pulled out, but sometimes people try to rescue something or someone else and they get sucked in themselves and end up not making it. So don't do that. There's also been some pretty weird things and objects that have been found on the surface of this level. Like, really cryptic and weird things. Because in a pretty new area of this level that recently got discovered and was nicknamed the Outer Ring, there's been some really strange things on the actual ground, not sucked under yet, on the ground. For instance, this golden locket and this old shear tool. The tool had the word Tapiria stamped into the handle, and that evidently is some kind of bush looking thing. But why would that be stamped onto a pair of shears? I don't know. And who would leave a pair of shears there? And that golden locket is actually the really cryptic thing on this level. Specifically, the things inside of that golden locket. Like these two pictures of random people. One of them is not blacked out, and the other one looks like somebody marked the face out. Then there's this picture of a front porch of a house with flowers hanging up and the lights on. Then a really weird looking row of orange trees that are glowing, which I believe might be from level 166. Then a random blurry picture that doesn't even seem to be of anything. Just a blur, unless I'm missing something. Then the last three pictures that are on this locket seem to be from level 266 itself. But the very last picture is extremely unsettling looking because of how blurry it is. I can't quite tell what it is, but it kind of looks like someone being grabbed by roots. Because whoever took this picture, they must have been shaking when they did because it's blurry. So I don't know. No one has any idea who took the pictures or why they did it or what was the purpose in it. But it is very, very mysterious to say the least. Are the pictures of those two people, the family of the wanderer? Who knows? Is the picture of their house, their childhood home? Is the blurry picture an undiscovered backrooms level? Tons of questions and not any answers. Nice. Now Meg actually says not to explore this level at all because of how dangerous it is and no one should come here voluntarily and if they accidentally come here they need to leave as soon as possible and honestly I do not blame Meg for saying that because I don't want to get sucked underground by roots. 
To enter this level, you have to walk down the path of glowing trees on level 166, and you'll be forcefully no-clipped here to level 266. So yeah, I guess that wanderer did take the picture of how they got here. And to exit, you can stay in the woods until you find a random elevator sticking out of the ground, get in it, and then you'll be no-clipped to level 11. Or, sometimes you can find a rusty mirror leaning against a random tree, and then no-clip through that to be sent to level 148. But yeah, what do y'all think about these pictures? What do they mean, and why were they in the locket? Let me know your theories down below in the comments. So Backrooms level 60 is classified as a class 5 difficulty and is unsafe, unsecure, and very dangerous due to its environment and other things, which I'll explain in a few minutes. The level physically takes place next to the ocean, and it's made up of different segments of a pathway. That's why it's named the Baywalk. Now, the pathway itself is well kept in some spots, and broken and destroyed in other spots. And it's all slightly lit up by dim street lights. Some of the lights are broken, and some of them are just off or collapsed. So there's not much light here, so don't expect to be able to see much. On top of this, the level is always dark. It's always nighttime, and the sun has never been seen here. Which means that this is a perfect place for smiler entities to be. And trust me, they're here. <laughs> but more on that in the entity portion of the video. The pathway along the water gives off a very relaxing feeling to anyone walking on it. And overall, it makes anyone who comes here pretty calm even though it's very dangerous. There's a light sea breeze blowing and the sounds of waves crashing probably helps with you feeling relaxed. Although this relaxed feeling isn't good because it's the level trying to make you let your guard down. If you're chill and not stressing about anything on this level, then it leaves you more open to entity attacks, which apparently is what the level wants. Now, as I said earlier, the level is split up into a couple different segments. The first segment is called the upper area, and this place is the main part of level 60. The pathway here looks pretty new and well kept. The floor is concrete and it doesn't have any cracks or any breaks or anything. And most of the lights here don't work. There are huge swaths of complete darkness. And this upper area is also the most dangerous part of the level due to those big parts of darkness. And it's in those dark areas where the level tries to make you feel calm by having a nice breeze and a nice calming sensation from the water. And that effect has been nicknamed the painless death. And since there's less lighting, there's more smilers. So good luck! The next area is called Segment 2, or the Lower Area. Now this is where most people who get sent to the level spawn. This pathway is made out of dirt, and is physically located below the upper area. In this section, everything is unfinished looking and kinda grimy. This part also is way closer to the water, so if you aren't careful, you could fall into it. In some rare cases, you'll be able to find a staircase that leads up to the upper area. But these aren't common, so yeah. And even if you do find a staircase, you should not go up them because of the smilers and the darkness up there. The good news about the lower area is that there aren't any creatures down here hiding in the shadows. It's pretty safe. But you do have to stay on the lookout when you're walking so you don't trip over something and fall into the ocean below. Speaking of the ocean, it's got some pretty strange behaviors to say the least. Now the ocean for the most part is like the ones from real life, but instead of it being, you know, miles deep like the ones we have, it's only four feet deep, which doesn't seem bad at first, but trust me, <laughs> it's bad because this ocean area is pitch black. Like literally no light comes down from the lamppost here, which means of course, that smilers have infested this shallow ocean. So if you fall in, you're pretty much falling into a smiler pit. The ocean also seems to be able to be no-clipped through sometimes because people have been seen falling off of the lower level into the ocean and then just disappearing. So that's pretty cool. But this no-clipping effect doesn't always happen. On top of this, sometimes this ocean will randomly and unexplainably disappear, and the only thing that will be there is the black sand at the bottom where the ocean used to be. To enter this level, you have to get into any body of water and drown. That's right, drown. And you'll have a chance of being sent here, although I don't think I would come here and risk 
literally doing that just to be here because I like living. And to exit, you can either jump into the ocean and hope it's in a no-clipping phase where you can be sent out, or you might be able to no-clip through the upper level to be sent to the next level, which is 61. But both of those exits are not 100% real or 100% proven because no one truly knows what happens to people who fall into the sea. Who knows? Not me. So yeah, this is a level of a nice liminal boardwalk next to the beach. Some spots more dangerous, some spots less dangerous. But overall, I think it gives off pretty good vibes and I enjoyed it. It's levels like these that are actually my favorite kind of levels in the back rooms because of the juxtaposition between the level looking safe, you know, this level takes place on a boardwalk next to a relaxing beach and ocean, but it's actually not safe because, you know, the factors of the ocean teleporting you away or there being smilers in the shadows. Those are the things that makes the back rooms great to me. How it's so unpredictable and how you can't ever see what about to happen even though you might think you're safe you're probably not safe in fact you're not safe but levels like these are the ones that i do enjoy a lot and i hope you do too Backrooms level 990 is classified as a class 3 difficulty and is unsafe and unsecure and has a small but dangerous entity count. The level itself is nicknamed the Soundless Subterranean, which is such a cool name by the way, that's, that's cool. And it's physically a pretty cool description. The level appears to be a large cave network that has winding curvy hallways, big open caverns, and rooms that are intercut with some old mine shafts. All over the walls and the ceilings and the floor, there are cobwebs and moss and different kinds of algae growing. And some parts of the caverns are flooded, but they are not just flooded with normal water. They're flooded with liquid pain. Liquid pain is a red liquid in the back rooms that normally hurts you, if you didn't know. Except this liquid pain here is pretty safe to the touch, just don't stay in it for long. The caves that are flooded with it can be anywhere from 10 to 20 meters, or 32 to 65 feet deep. But some of them are even deeper than that, which is really crazy. The caves are not very safe to walk through because they can go from just being a normal cave to being a huge cavern instantly. Or they can go from being just a normal cave to a really claustrophobic tight tunnel instantly. None of it has any reasoning. It just happens like that. And on top of all the stuff I just talked about, there are random mine shafts that intersect into tunnels and caverns here. These shafts are made out of regular wood, but it's all really decayed and really cracked. In fact, the mine shafts are so old and broken that they can just randomly collapse at any time with just the slightest touch, which would be pretty bad if you were walking near or walking under one. The shafts sometimes have railways on them that go over into the actual caves themselves. And there's even some mine carts that have been seen there as well that are full of coal and other types of ore. But it doesn't make any sense that the carts are here because there's no way that humans got here with those carts since some of the things are so clumsy claustrophobic, you couldn't have even fit the cart through them, so who knows. Just like some of the other levels of the back rooms, this level has some non-Euclidean effects that just make it dangerous. However, these effects aren't really noticeable until a few miles back in the cave, but once you get back there, you'll notice the pathway is changing and glitching and folding on top of themselves, and you'll sometimes even be going around in circles even though you're going straight. This level is almost fully unexplored because of how many passages and caverns it has, and there's no way to say for sure how big it is, however, some of it has been mapped out but this could be just a small chunk who knows but what is known is that it gets pitch black in the caverns of this level and some spots are literally so dark that the flashlights you have don't even help like they don't even light anything at all up these pitch black areas are the most enigmatic and weird parts of the level radio waves and gps stuff only partially work here but if you do use a GPS to see your location, it will actually say that you're in Slovenia, which is weird because why would a backrooms level say that I'm in Europe? 
strange. Compasses aren't even useful here either because the needle never points the right way, so you never truly know what direction you're going in. Pretty much nothing works as it should here, which is one of the reasons it's truly dangerous. Now level 990 is actually really cold, and sometimes there's a fog that will roll through the tunnels and caverns. The ambient noise of the level is a relaxing water trickle with a slight echo. But sometimes that peaceful, relaxing background can be interrupted by really strange disturbances. These disturbances are audio hallucinations and an entity that I'll talk about later. But these audio hallucinations are thought to come from entities deep inside the level. A weird thing that's been seen far into the caves are a few random windows. These windows are dusty and old looking, and they're actually in the side of the rock walls of the cave, like they're shoved into them. But you can see through them, and it looks like there's hills and flowers and a sunset behind the windows. These are not full-grown window entities that we know of, because they don't try to eat you. It literally just looks like there's the world, the earth, on the other side of this glass window. No matter how much the glass is broken on one of these things, the image of the hills and flowers never changes. Which means it's gotta be some kind of entity, right? I mean, whew. Speaking of entities, there are a few confirmed ones, like facelings, that have been seen wearing old explorer uniforms and hats with flashlights. There's also been a few death moths that have been seen in the huge caverns. But the level exclusive entity is called a Ravager Ape. Now these things are found deep into the caverns and caves of this level and they need to be avoided at all cost. I repeat, they need to be avoided. So a Ravager Ape is kind of like a Sasquatch or a Bigfoot from real life, just way more aggressive. These apes hunt humans, and they're very dangerous because they can seemingly no-clip through walls and floors anytime they want to. So one could literally be in a passageway over to the left of you, sense you, and then jump through the wall to get you. Cool. The good news is, since they're pretty big, they can't get into small parts of the cave, so you could probably just run into a tiny hole and escape them. There are currently no colonies in this level, except there was one that tried to build one, but different events, like falling into liquid pain or falling into a deep cavern and never being seen again, made the group lose too many members, so now there's no one. To enter this level, you can find a hole to jump in in level 100 to be sent here, or you can noclip into a red substance found on level 15 to be sent here. Most of the entrances listed involve nature or the woods in some kind of way, which I find pretty interesting. And to exit the level, you have to find a ladder on a mineshaft in this level and start climbing up it to presumably be sent back to the level you came from. But no one knows for sure because the people just disappear when they're climbing the ladder. So yeah, a huge cave system with random caverns, drop-offs, flooded corridors, and a home to giant apes who hunt humans for food. Sounds great to me. So backrooms level you cheated is classified as a class dead zone and is very unsafe. And I mean very unsafe. The level also has the presence of lethal entities and on top of that, the properties of the level are constantly changing, so it's hard to map how dangerous it is. But as you can tell, it's not going to be safe at all. Now, the level physically looks like an old server closet. You know what I'm talking about, you know, those rooms with old server towers and boxes and wires, dust and old computers and that kind of stuff everywhere. This level is pretty much a prison for people who try to cheat their way through the backrooms levels. And I'll tell you what that means in the exit portion of the video. But this level is so dangerous because if you move or mess with any of the clutter here, you will instantly fall over unalive. Like you will literally just fall over and not be alive. On the spot, no questions asked. And if you think you're going to be smart and try to no clip through a wall or a floor, well then you'll instantly be sent to the void level if you do that. And that isn't even close to the worst part of what can happen here. Within just five minutes of being here, the cheater, or you, because the person in this level is always referred to as the cheater, will start to notice the level itself changing a bit. Parts of the ceiling will start to collapse on top of you, and entities will start to pour in the room from the roof. 
As the time passes even more to 10 minutes, even more of the ceiling will fall open, and it opens up more opportunities for entities to jump right on top of you. If you somehow make it to the 20 minute mark, you'll see the electronics start to literally explode. Computers, monitors, servers, wires, all of it is just blowing up and causing fire to spread throughout the entire area. At this point, the level has fire, entities, a collapsing ceiling, and you will pass away if you touch or move anything. Cool. After around the 30 minute mark of being in the level, the power will completely go out and it'll be pitch black besides the light that the fire brings. At this point, a set of doors will also be opened up randomly, which you better run to those doors before it gets worse because if you don't, the room's gonna combust and blow up. So, and that room that is about to blow up that you're hopefully running out of was called the main room. But now that you left this main room, you will be entered into a maze of winding and turning hallways. These hallways are very claustrophobic and they have arcade systems throughout them. And while you're making your way through these hallways and walls and everything, these entities and that fire from the main room will follow you out and chase you. After an hour of being in this terrible level, if you're still alive, you'll need to run around the hallways until you find a quarter laying somewhere on the ground. And when you find that quarter, you have to run and find the nearest arcade machine to put the quarter inside of. Once you do that, you'll be given the ability to leave the level and go back to where you entered from as sort of a retry at the back rooms. But if you don't put the quarter in, well then a Smiler is probably gonna eat you. Speaking of entities like Smilers, the main ones here are Smilers and Skin Stealers, but there are also some other entities that are unique to the level, like the server boxes themselves. Now they aren't just technology servers like from real life, they're some kind of sentient entity. There's also other unidentified entities that chase you around that aren't like any other ones. Even if they were though, it would be kind of hard to see what they were because you're running around for your life through a maze of hallways. I think the last thing you're going to be worried about is looking what entities are following you. Now this level calls you a cheater for a reason, because it's like a sick form of punishment for people who try to cut corners in the back rooms or cheat their way through it. For instance, one reason you might get sent to this level is because you tried to no clip back to reality within the first five levels of the back rooms. So let's say you're on level one and you're like, well, let me just try to glitch back to the real world. Well, that's considered cheating to the back rooms, I guess. And if that happens, you'll be sent here to level you cheated. Or if you cheat on an arcade game in level 3999, which is a backroom's exit level, you'll be sent here as well. So don't cheat. And there's other things like that as well. There are other things that can send you here, like trying to open up locked doors or trying to no clip past levels that you don't want to go to. If you're trying to avoid level exclamation mark or something, that'll get you sent here as well. Or at least that's the leading theory, because only a few people have survived this level to tell the story. This level honestly probably deserves to be in the top five scariest levels in all of the back rooms, simply for the fact that you can be sent here without even knowing you're going to be. Like imagine just glitching out of reality, falling into the back rooms and learning how to no clip, and then thinking to yourself, you know what, I think it'll be fine if I just try to get back home. All for that to just send you to this level where you have to run around for hours on end avoiding entities and fire just to escape that level and be sent back to the back rooms where you came from. I mean, that's literally one of the worst fates imaginable in all of the back rooms. Let me know what you think down below. Is this level worse than level exclamation mark or is it the same or is it better? Because to be honest with you, I think it might be worse. Level exclamation mark has a straight hallway to run through while this one has curving hallways, fire and more entities. And to get to this level, it's literally just completely random. So I don't know, it's a toss up. To exit the level, you have to survive an hour, then find the quarter I mentioned to put into the nearest arcade machine, and you'll be sent out where you came from. And then hopefully you learned to not cheat in the back rooms, because the back rooms as a whole doesn't like cheaters, apparently. So I was scrolling through the Wikidots when this video idea hit me right in the head to find the oldest level. And after a while of looking, I found a couple of them for the episode, and those levels are levels 499 and level 199. Level 499, aka the Terrestrial Paradise, Wow, that's a cool name, bro. Is classified as a class 1 difficulty and is SSMEC. 
or SMEC, which is short for saying safe, secure, and minimal entity count. This level's physical layout and description is pretty unique because it's described as a complex maze of different settings or habitats or natural places that have kind of crashed into each other and mended together. Specifically, the different settings are jungles, caves, rivers, waterfalls, adobe houses, stuff like that and they're all glitching into each other and no clipping constantly. Inside of these structures, the hallways will just randomly end and turn into forests, and rivers will flow right through rooms. Like, there's no problem with it at all, it just happens. The only thing that isn't quote-unquote weird on this level is that there's a ton of vines and leaves and trees just hanging out, and it kind of seems like a forest when you're outside of these temples. Also, gravity as we know it doesn't really seem to obey our physics, for natural things, because there's streams that will float straight upside down, and waterfalls that will literally just go in the opposite direction. But sadly, wanderers still do obey normal gravity for some reason, so you're stuck on the ground. Which kinda sucks. There's no visible sun here, and the only light source comes from something called ghost lights, which are just giant floating spheres that float in the sky. And these ghost lights populate the structures and the outside areas, but sometimes they aren't in some areas, and those specific places are really dangerous because there's no lights, and you might get lost in the structure, or you might get lost in the outside, because you can't see anything. This level is also extremely massive, and it expands vertically and horizontally, so it pretty much just goes out in all directions. To me, it seems like it's been there for an extremely long time, since like the ancient ruins time area. Obviously, that's not a real time period, but you get what I'm saying. There's also an ancient religious group that lives here called Amor Incrementum, which doesn't have any info on it, but I'm pretty sure Amor means love. So, I don't know. It just sounds old. You can enter this level by going down hallways in level 4 that eventually transform into foresty tunnels, and you can exit by finding a random merge point of levels, like for example this level, level 499, merging with the forests of level 62, and you can just walk over that threshold and be in level 62. But yeah, this one seems pretty ancient. What do you think? The next level I want to talk about is level 199, or as it's called, the Wonoric Forest or the Honoric Forest, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. This level is really weird and extremely old. It has a survival difficulty of NA or non-applicable, and is non-existent, devoid of matter, and unfit for life? Okay then. But the first sentence of this description says that the forest has been a major part of the backroom's folklore for a long time, so it's definitely old. The level is more of a mindset dream world, and is said to only be able to be accessed through your dreams. It looks like a huge expanse of rivers, valleys, lakes, mountain ranges, and thick forests spread out over a huge vast expanse of land. The plants here are supposedly so crazy that the human brain can't even comprehend them, so I would love to see that. This level is also dotted with ancient ruins from what seems to be sentient humanoids but it looks like they've been gone for a long time. There's square structures, pyramids, and other old world looking things that are all overgrown and forgotten about. Now the time on this level works in very weird ways because minutes can feel like hours or hours can feel like minutes. It just depends on where you're at on the level. Now there's a specific hidden area in the level that's called the Twisted Garden that can be accessed by wandering extremely deep into the level. This is the area where most of those structures are, and some of them are shaped weirdly and entangled around each other. Think of buildings that grow like plants and twist and turn around each other. Now this garden area is also full of voids and dead ends and canals, which seem to just drop off into nothingness, but the canals also point to the fact that there were humans here at one point, since why else would you need working waterways, I mean, you know? There's also signs of an unknown language that's carved into stones and onto streets on this level, which pretty much solidifies the fact that there was, at one point, an ancient group of sentient beings living here. Now, the main theory is that at one time, this city was huge and populated and teeming with life, but some kind of huge cataclysmic event blew it all up or messed it up somehow which is pretty cool. There's only one quote-unquote entity that lives here, and it's called Orbs. 
and they kind of just float like orbs and they guide people around the twisted garden area and they kind of look like the biblical description of angels which is pretty neat and creepy there aren't any bases here since it's like a dream world and no one has ever seen anyone else here because this level can only be accessed through dreaming so you're pretty much alone to the entire level to enter this area you have to be dreaming obviously but it does help to be dreaming in a place where there's lots of forests like the crimson forest or something like that and to exit well you just gotta wake up but yeah i do think this one was older than the first level i went over and it's pretty cool and unique at the same time it's got good vibes so first up for today's video is a level from Big Convoy called My Leg! Exclamation mark. This level is a survival difficulty of painful and is funny, ouch, and has a low entity count, okay? This level is literally just Fred the Fish from Spongebob repeatedly saying my leg over and over and over again. Now sometimes he does say my face but it's mostly just my leg. And that is literally it for the entire level itself. Like I said, the only entity here is obviously Fred. And to enter this magnificent, well-written level, you have to unalive due to a starfish on level 11,234. And to exit, you have to get beaten up by Fred himself to be sent back to level zero. This is the shortest one today, so I wanted to go ahead and get it out of the way, but I'd say we're off to a pretty strong start. Next up is a level from Silently called The Bin Rooms. This level has a survival difficulty of class contested, non-human, and there's an entity superiority as well as unsafe conditions for humanity. That sounds pretty fun, right? The Bin Rooms looks like level zero, but the only thing there is Bin. You've all seen Ben, you know Ben. He's the only entity here and literally is the only thing here besides like the walls and floors and stuff. Ben is very dangerous though because he can make anyone go insane very quickly because he just repeats words over and over again like yes and no and that stupid laugh thing that he does all the time. You know what I'm talking about. If you listen to him say this stuff for more than a couple minutes at a time, you will literally go insane. To enter this level, you have to call I show speed in real life and say the following code to him. Yes, yes, no, no, yes, no. And then you'll wake up in the bin rooms. <laughs> the good news is that you can actually exit, but uh, it's pretty much impossible. So I don't know why I said that. Because to leave, you have to stay here in the bin rooms for this amount of years. I'm not even gonna try to say it without going insane in order to be sent out. As far as bases and outposts go, the entry says that everyone went mentally insane. L-M-F-A-O-O-O-O-O rip bozo. And that's it. <laughs> oh man. This might be the best level that I've ever covered or received in a joke levels video. I'm not even kidding. Well done, sir. Well done. Next up is a fantastic level from Hissy Gamer called Level Go Outside. This level has a survival difficulty of too hard for you. Oh, come on, man. And it's unsafe, but only for Genshin Impact players, or however you pronounce it, I don't even know. The level itself looks like a quote, nice place where you should touch some dang grass and look at the nice, nice nature. I literally could not have said that better myself, man. I appreciate the way you spoke that. When you get to this level, and especially if you play Genshin Impact, you'll be forced to touch grass in the fields there, and if you don't do that, then Hissy Gamer themselves, the author of this level, will make you touch grass. The only group here is your mom, Expedition Group, and the only entities here are Hissy Gamer and the outside world. <laughs> and the only way you can enter is if you download Genshin Impact, and if you do that, you'll be sent here. If you want to exit, all you have to do is take a shower, then go outside and touch grass, and then uninstall the game. And you'll be fine. Sounds like a win-win to me. You know, I take back what I said about the Ben Rooms being the best entry I've ever gotten, because this, by far, is the new best entry I've ever covered. So these last two entries will actually be joke entities, because they're just hilarious and one of them i promised my discord i would go over but that'll be the last one but the first one up is entity 1874 aka skippy and was submitted by skippy over on the discord server 
Skippy is apparently 7 foot 1 inches tall and weighs 20 pounds, and his behavior has been described as quote, goofy, by other wanderers. Skippy actually has his own level cluster called the Skippy Rooms, but it's not recommended to travel into the Skippy Rooms because if you do, you'll apparently meet a fate worse than unaliving itself. Although Skippy does have his own level cluster, he's mainly found on level 188 and is always saying things like sussy to anyone he sees. <sighs> Skippy has also been seen trying to drag people back to the Skippy rooms with some of his weird appendages arms type things that he has, and he has apparently a 12 foot wingspan so you can't really run away from him. The only image we have of Skippy is this POV shot of him devouring a bowl of ramen which you can literally see how fierce this entity is, just based off of the way that he grabs the bowl. Truly scary stuff, ladies and gents. But yeah, that is literally it for this entry. I have at least 50,000 less brain cells now, but uh, we're still vibing. <sighs> and lastly for the video today is a joke submission that I promised my Discord that I would go over in this video. And it's submitted by Darth Cheese. The level, it is slightly vulgar though, so I'm going to censor the words out so Susan doesn't get angry at me. But the submission is called Ass Smilers. <laughs> yes, you heard that right. Ass Smilers. These Smilers are in some kind of way a Smiler subspecies that only live on level 8008 inside of people's ass and in toilets. <laughs> what am I, literally what am I reading bro? Now it's completely unknown how they get there, but the basic thought is that they can teleport. These smilers are said to be really painful and can cause someone to unalive almost 100% of the time if they choose so. Now they do let you leave, but I'll talk a little bit about that later. They are quote, unstoppable, they are inevitable. So good luck trying to avoid them if you're stuck in this level. They mainly live inside of toilets however on the level, and they actually will let you leave if your poop is big enough. I literally cannot make this up, like I'm having to type this out and then record it and then like edit it. <sighs> if these smilers like your poop enough, then they'll send you to a specific level based on how much they like it. Thank goodness this is over, I mean literally like sorry that you had to endure that as a listener. <laughs> Guesty called level flat. Oh gosh. This level has a survival difficulty of class flatty and is quote swaggy and real flat but it's also costa rica what does that even mean level flat is a huge grass field where you finally touch grass like the internet tells you to do and here's a direct quote from the entry this level is so flat and big that it's like your mom very poetic guesty for colonies and outposts, there's actually two of them, the Joes and the Mamas. And Joe, 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 I live inside of your walls. <laughs> what even is this, bro? You can't enter here or exit here because of a skill issue that you have. And yeah, that's literally it for the submission. Looks like the video was starting off pretty strong. Next up in this wonderful video, we have Foxy's level called Level Let's Go. This level has a difficulty of zero, and the only thing here is James and Chelsea's wedding, which James A. Janice is the host of Dead Meat, if you didn't know. Let me know down in the comments below if you also love the Dead Meat channel, because I do. That's why I included this joke submission, but uh, I think it's pretty funny that one of you literally submitted an entire level that's literally just James's wedding. Cool. Next is a very interesting level to say the least from our scene called a level criticize yourself for having no girlfriend lol lol <laughs> this level difficulty is your single l and has a three mental hazard warning on it pretty much when sent to this level you spawn in a huge white room with papers on the walls and floors that insult your existence for not having a girlfriend if you stay here for more than three minutes, you go insane and you start to say, I want a girlfriend over and over again. If you say it for more than three hours, you won't live. And if you somehow stop saying it and do end up living, an entity called balls will stab you with artificial balls. Lovely. To enter this level, all you have to do is stay in the back rooms for 18 years and make sure you don't get a girlfriend in that time. 
And to exit, all you have to do is pretty simple. You have to admit how cringy you are. And you'll be sent out of the level. I kind of be honest with you, this level is uh, canon now. So, the next level in this monstrosity of a video is I Stole Your NFT by Reich. I think that's how you say it. Not sure. The difficulty is 1 trillion for NFT owners and is unsecure for NFT owners as well. The only entity on this level is Reich themselves, and this entity is very dangerous because he'll literally just steal your NFT. Pretty much if someone buys an NFT in real life, then they're sent to this level and then stalked by Reich himself, and once he finds you, he'll screenshot your NFT and he'll take it away from you. I fully support this. All the homies hate NFTs. Next up is level potato. <laughs> Submitted by some. The survival difficulty is class potassium, and the level is safe and secure. The level is completely made out of potatoes because the walls and the floors and the ceilings and even your existence is all potato. This is who you are now. There is no escape. You and everything around you is a potato. Points for creativity, I guess. The second to last submission for this video comes from Very Smarto and it's called Level Twitter. Oh gosh. The level has a survival difficulty of you're dead plus ratio plus no one asked. And physically, this level is a place in the back rooms where you're forced to use Twitter, which in turn turns you into a Twitter user, aka the worst fate imaginable. The entities here are other Twitter users, and the only base here is called Base Cancel Culture. <laughs> the listed entrance is, and I quote, for your sake, no. And finally, wrapping up this video is a level from Smilebird called Level Don't Go in the Backrooms at 3 a.m. Gone Wrong. Almost died. This level puts you in a cringy 3 a.m. video, specifically a video made by none other than morgues themselves. There's no way to escape this level, and you'll just die of a cringe attack. To enter the level, for whatever weird reasons you have, you have to yell, morgues is cringe, at exactly 3 a.m., and you can't even exit the level because the morgues entity will stop you. I gotta be honest with you, this one's probably more scary than it is funny, but, uh, Oh well. Is a Mr. Raccoon's level called Level Goldfish. This level has a survival difficulty of 5, and the description goes like this. A goldfish that wants to break your back and children's backs too, and watch you unalive slow. Okay, we're off to a good start. There's one entity here called the Goldfish God, and you can enter this level just by eating a goldfish. I mean, that's pretty easy, right? You can't exit it though, and you'll be chased around by a giant goldfish for eternity. Truly a masterpiece, truly. Next up is a level from Pew Blaster called Level Credit Card, which is classified as a class money, and on this level, your mom is here and you took her credit card. Run before she catches you. Specifically, you took your mom's credit card to buy Robux and other stuff. <laughs> There's actually two entities here. One of them is your mom, and the other one is the IRS. <laughs> okay. To enter this level, you have to find your mom's house in the back room somehow, and to exit, you have to evade your mom's capture until the IRS catches her first. Nice! The next level is called Level 13 Days of Brugmas from Trojan Prometheus. This level has a difficulty of Bruglic, meaning it's Brug safe, Brug secure, but is Brugly bunch infested. <laughs> oh no, that can't be good. The level description goes like this, Brugly on crack. Nice. The level is basically level 1, but with the Brugly face reveal faces all over it. And if you're not careful, you will see Brugly grab you from the floor and you will disappear for an eternity. I can't make it up, that's what it says. The entities here are Big Brugly, which of course is me, and then the Brugly Bunch, which is described as quote, a funny group of degenerates. It's honestly not too far off from the real thing, to be honest with you. 
On this level, there's actually a base called the Hall of the Brugley Bunch, where people worship Brugley, <laughs> and Brugmas is always being celebrated. Cool. To get to this awesome sounding level, you have to watch your Brugley video. Simple as that. And to exit. Well, to be honest with you, I don't think you need to. The next entry is from Massimo, and it's called The Bathrooms. It's classified as a class fard level and has poop smell. And quote, I forgot how to fard. Massimo is truly poetic with his words. The level looks like level zero, but it's a massive bathroom instead. And it smells terrible. And surviving here will be impossible. And here is a quote from Massimo himself that describes the true danger of this level. If you hear a fard, may God save you. End quote. <laughs> My, what is this? What is this? There are two entities here. One is called the Crapper, and the other one is called the Pea Slime. You can pretty much guess what those are. To enter this very clean and sanitary level, you have to, quote, fard on level zero. And to exit, all you have to do is poop yourself. This is what I have to go through, people. Next is a level from Andrew Nersh called Level Abacrumus. Oh gosh, I think I know where this might be going. The survival difficulty is... Sussy. The entire level is that you were spinning on an Among Us character. Like, that's the level. That's the entire thing. To enter, you have to get a Steam gift and to exit, you have to prove that you're sus. <laughs> so this is what it's really come to. Wow. The next level comes from Michael Jackson and is called Level Meatloaf. The level has a difficulty of, quote, choking hazard, and it looks like a huge table with a chair in the middle. On this level, you will be force-fed meatloaf for the rest of your life. Okay. To enter, you have to eat meatloaf on level 69, and to exit, you have to not choke on meatloaf. Man, these just keep getting better and better. I'm not even going to lie to you. I'm joking, they're getting worse and worse and worse. <laughs> Lastly for today's video is from The Cool Kid, and it's called Level 4 Million, aka Assassinate the Large Soviet Pig. This level has a survival difficulty of Piggy, and the level looks like an old Soviet-era town with a huge crowd of people surrounding this giant pig. No seriously, a giant pig. Your only goal on this level is to kill the giant pig. However, this isn't as easy as it seems because, well first off, there's hundreds of people surrounding the pig, and second of all, you have to be a good shot with a sniper, because that's all you spawn in the level with. And it's important that you hit the shots on the pig, because if the pig notices you, it will quote, fart so hard that your sense of smell will cease to exist. My tears grow every day. And if this somehow doesn't make you want to get out of there, then the pig will quote, fart again, but even louder, to the point of your ears bursting and unaliving yourself. Nice. The people in the crowd aren't even affected by this stuff. Also, apparently you can actually survive that second fart attack, but if you do, then the pig will chase you down and trample you and then eat you. So pretty much what I'm saying is, you just gotta hit your shots. To enter this level, for whatever demented reasons you have, you need to break a comically large piggy bank on any level. And to exit, just successfully shoot the pig, and then you'll have access to a car that will take you to level 69. Honestly, this level should be canon, and I'm not even kidding. The next level in today's lovely, lovely video comes from Alito One, and it's called Level Godzilla Flying Dropkick. Oh boy. This level has a survival difficulty of funny, and is a bad comedy, crappy, and there's a two kaiju to one robot ratio for entities. Nice to know, I guess. The level is described by Elita One as, quote, It was a funny bruh moment, for Godzilla just did a flying dropkick to beat up a Megalon, which apparently is this thing. Yeah, I didn't know that either. But that is the entire description of the level. Like, that's, that's all. The only entrance to this level is by going to a theater in real life and watching an old Godzilla movie, and the only way to exit is to quote, run out of here. 
You know what? Yeah, I'll, I'll make sure to remember that when I'm being chased by Godzilla flying towards me feet first. I can't believe I just read that entire entry, bro. Next up is an entry from Shadow Knight 620 called The Cage Rooms. This is a very dangerous level and is classified as a class 4 survival difficulty. The description of the level says it looks like a typical house, but it has pictures and cutouts of Nicolas Cage faces on everything. Everything. And Nicolas Cage himself is also an entity here. And you're gonna need to quote, run from Nicolas Cage, he will find you. And that's it. That's all they wrote. That's the entire entry. Cool. To enter the level, you gotta hold a picture of Nicolas Cage on level 69. <laughs> and to exit, you gotta give Nicolas Cage a picture of himself, and he'll send you back to level zero. There's also a meg base here called Outpost Cage. Pretty nice. Next is an entry from Cool Kid Balls called 19 Eyed Brugs. This description says, do not be afraid. He has come. Do not resist. And that's it. Like, that's the entire text box. Honestly, I'd be pretty scared too if I randomly glitched into the back rooms while walking to my nearest gas station and the first thing I saw was this. I mean, that's terrifying, right? <music> Lastly for this video is an entry from Mr. Tide Pod called Level Mug. And it's a class 3 mug difficulty. Quote, Mug, mug, mug. <laughs> the level is described as a room full of mug cans. And to enter this room of mug, all you have to do is, quote, love mug for life. End quote. That's pretty easy, right? To exit, you just have to, quote, stop loving mug for life. End quote. I don't know, that's gonna be pretty hard. The only entity here is the mug dog, which is always watching you from the cans. So if you like mug, if you like root beer, if you like the back rooms, this is the spot for you, man. Also, I think I'm gonna slap an honorable mention here at the end of the video called The Lean Rooms. Yeah, you heard that right. The Lean Rooms, which is literally just the pool rooms, but with purple water. Okay, that's it. Level, yes. And is classified as yes. The level looks like a very yes area, but the entities are not yes, though. <laughs> The level is a giant Chuck E. Cheese with an arcade and pizza and stuff everywhere. And there's even a game where you can catch a yes. If you win the game, you can cash in a yes for more yeses. And there is even a yes outpost and a yes colony here. And Rob Lee says they're both pretty yes. So that's good. As far as the entities go, there are not yeses, which are party poopers who constantly complain. The next entity is called a very yes, which is pretty much just a party goer. And then there's the yes prize machine, which gives out yes yeses for yes. The last entity is an animatronic pizza that walks around giving out pizzas to everyone. Nice. The main people on this level are the most yes people from the discord. Okay. Which is myself, Rob Lee, and Meg. Honestly, I'm just gonna say it. Yes. So for this next submission, if you somehow find the word nuts, offensive or whatever. I say it like 25,000 times in this entry, so just be warned, I guess. So this level was submitted by a legend over there on the Discord server called Baller. His level is called Level Nuts, and its survival difficulty is a class 5 because is quote itchy and cringe i like the uh, descriptive words there buddy he says that level nuts consist of a ton of interconnecting hallways with the walls the floor and the ceilings being made out of a really thick itchy carpet material the second you enter this level you'll start to itch all over but especially while well, you're nuts <laughs> what the deeper you walk into this level the more the itchiness will become unbearable and at around the five mile mark most people just give up and pass out which will cause them to no clip through the floor and end up on a random level. To enter this level, you simply must say, my nuts itch. <laughs> on any level, and you'll be sit here. Nice. And like I said earlier, to exit, you just have to walk five miles until you pass out. Typical baller stuff though. <laughs> Next up is EERP's level, called level monkeys. The survival difficulty is, well, monkey. And if you come here, you'll just instantly become a monkey. After you become a monkey, you'll notice this huge jungle where there's a bunch of other little huts and you and your monkey brethren will live here forever. There are no entities, only monkeys. And there are no colonies, only monkeys. 
Okay, nice. Next up is Bluesy Cobra's level, called level... I think he meant fish, but this is how he spelled it, people. I can't make this up. The survival difficulty is a dead zone. Nice. And the level looks like an ocean with deadly fish everywhere. And all of them look like this. Nice. That's literally all I got. But to make up for that level, Bluesy Cobra submitted another level called Level Brugly. The survival difficulty is a mental hazard. And the level looks like a tiny room where you're forced to watch, and I quote, Brahogli only owns videos for the rest of your life, and you never fall asleep. <laughs> what? Next is Inverted Jack's level, called Level Brugly as well. This level is a class 4, and it looks like an empty field of really tall purple grass. There are also rolling hills and fog in some of the areas as well. If you venture far enough into this level, you'll see something in a robe and in a really weird mask. The second you see that thing, you'll suddenly get the urge to follow it, and it'll lead you to a library that's full of books about the back rooms. At the desk, there's an entity just sitting there and reading. You can't take any of the books off the shelves because there's some kind of force field stopping you, and there's no available food or water, and there's no day or night cycle either, so it's really easy to lose track of time really quickly here. The entities on this level are called the cult members, and these are the entities that were in the robes and the masks, and you follow that one here. And you'll actually get a headache if you look at one of them for too long. If you speak to one of them, they'll only say one word. Bread. If you know, you know. The last entity is called Wise Man Brugly. This is the entity that was at the desk that has read every book on the back rooms possible. Brugly looks like a human, but is really tall and skinny, with a huge forehead and a ton of eyes. Yeah, so pretty much me in real life. The entity has a vast amount of knowledge about the back rooms and the front rooms, so he will answer your questions if you ask nicely if you wait here for too long though the cult members will be told to eat you okay <laughs> to enter this level you can open up any book about the back rooms that you find on any other levels and to exit you have to ask wise man brugly how do i leave nice the next level is submitted by another patron named assassinators his level is called yoinky sploinky <laughs> what the survival difficulty is as follows bread crust ice White bread is better. PB and J. Nice. That yoinky sploinky consists of, let me make sure I'm getting this right, yo mama taking up the whole room. <laughs> Her sheer weight is enough to break the fabric of reality itself. She only eats the crusts of bread in order to stay healthy. That doesn't seem to be working. Yo mama is the only entity here, and if you're not careful, she'll engulf you at will. There's actually an outpost here called the Yo Papas, and he's the exact opposite. He's tall and skinny and has a tin pack. Like a Brugly. Yup! Yo Papa makes you remember how you would eat your candy like a filthy rat. What is this, bro? To enter this level, you have to gain over a thousand pounds on level 6.1, and to exit, you have to go back 50 pounds by joining the Papas. <laughs> Next up is a pretty simple level from Sonic Blaster called Level Cheese, and the survival difficulty is, well, cheese. It's cheese safe and cheese secure, and too much cheese is everywhere. The only entity here is the Cheese Man, which, as you can tell, is a man made out of cheese, and the only colony here is the Cheese Factory. You know, I wonder if this guy likes cheese. Next up is a Mugs level called Level 69. The survival difficulty is nice, and you can't stop saying nice. Nice. And lastly, for this pilot episode of the fan-made joke levels, we have a level from Meg called Level Among Us. Nice. Nice isn't the part of the name, I just said nice because, well, whatever. Among Us is class 5, and is unsafe and unsecure, and it's infested with entities. This level probably is one of the worst levels here, and the sound that's being constantly played will make you go insane if you listen to it for long. So whatever you do, please don't no clip here. That's a quote from Meg. The entities are the Among Us, which will end you instantly if you see one. And then there's the sounds, which are entities that literally emit a noise that makes you go insane at lightning speed. And there's no data on how to enter or exit. Nice! Backrooms level 148, aka the living level, is classified as a class 5B, which means it's unsafe, unsecure, and has environmental dangers. Really bad environmental dangers. So just based off of its name, you can tell that this level feels almost like it's alive, because it has this very weird ability to change itself in shape, size, and even change all objects inside of itself. And this level makes those changes happen whenever it senses movement. Even movement as small as your footsteps 
can make the level warp and change itself. Now, you might be asking yourself, you know, what does this mean? Well, why does the level change itself? Well, no one really knows, of course, but the main theory is that this level is some sort of intelligent entity. And not only does the level have intelligence, it uses that intelligence to manipulate and actively do things with malicious or bad intentions. So it uses 100% of its intelligence to try to hurt wanderers that get sent here. One person even claimed that the level talked to them with an actual voice. But who knows if that's true, because people could just go insane in the back rooms and start hearing stuff but i think it is true you're about to hear why so there are two different states that this level can be in the first is called the basic state and the second is called the alarm state in this basic state the level looks like a bunch of randomly put together halls and open rooms and corridors that are made out of concrete or concrete blocks and some concrete staircases, as well as some random voids that are out of the walls. But pretty much it's just a labyrinth of claustrophobic concrete hallways. And an interesting note is that even in this basic state, things like Smiler repellent and other useful substances have no effect here. They don't even work. It's like the level suppresses them. The next state is the alarm state, and during this alarm state, the level is at its most dangerous part. This is when the entire thing is awake and is causing the most chaos. If you remember when I said earlier that the level might be an entity with intelligence, yeah, this alarm state is when the entity wakes up. If you're running around the level or you're walking loudly, the entity will be able to sense your vibrations and will change the room or hallway or staircase into something dangerous and even deadly to try to trap you or unalive you. On top of this level being angry towards you and actively trying to unalive you during the alarm stage, the lights are also turned off. So that's just fun. And it gets even worse. Just wait till the traps section of this video. The best thing to do during this alarm stage is to just sit down somewhere in the smallest and most enclosed space you can find. That way the level can't hear your vibrations or your footsteps or anything. And then you can just wait it out. Both the basic state and the alarm state can last anywhere from a few hours to several days. So it's advised that no one should come to the level without proper supplies or, you know, just don't come to the level at all, and you won't have to worry about it. As I said earlier, the level is called the living level, and it's for more reasons than what I just told you. Yes, the level can do even more than hunt you and try to change itself to hurt you even more. And I'm gonna explain why right now. It can also feel things and communicate with you in weird ways. One documented way is that the level can write on its own walls in English to the Wanderer. When this happened, it was at its basic state and it wasn't attacking the Wanderer, so it's unknown why it tried to contact that person, but yeah. In another sick and twisted example of this level just being plain mean, it also manifests fake exits in its walls in the form of the Mimic Entity, which is just a fake door that can lead to a high fall or to a void where you're doomed to be there forever. And these doors are random and they're unmarked, and if you go in them, the Mimic Entity will consume you, uh, so I just recommend not opening any doors here. The level has no actual vision or eyes or anything like that, and it seems to only be able to find people and objects through vibrations. So your best bet is to move slowly and carefully and to make as little noise as possible to get out of here alive. Now is the trap section of the video, and I'm going to be going over the specific level traps that this entity and intelligent thing tries to put you in. The first one is called the flood, and it happens in random hallways and random rooms and corridors, but the level pretty much floods that hall or room with freezing cold water all the way to the ceiling with hopes of getting you stuck in it and drowning. So if you hear a rumble or see a rush of water coming, run the opposite way and get as high up as possible. The second trap is called the squeeze and it's like those rooms that squeeze together slowly except on this level the walls and the ceilings and the floor all close in on each other to try to crush you. This crush can happen in hallways and rooms so if it starts happening try to get out of there before you become a pancake. The next trap is the swivel, which is where the room or hallway you're in bends and curves like kind of a wringing out of a washcloth. Everything is distorted and curved, and it can hurt you pretty bad if you're not careful. 
Next is another dangerous trap, where the level introduces mental issues by trying to control your brain and talking to you. Ugh. And then there's the fire trap, where a huge section or the entire hallway you're in is set on fire. <laughs> so yeah, not fun at all. But this might be the most innately dangerous level. There's one person of interest who's stuck on this level named Knox, and he's the one who discovered it in the first place. Now, he's not involved with any backrooms organization like Meg, he's just a guy who was unfortunate enough to get sent here and get stuck. Even though other people have been here and escaped, Knox can't. And since the escape is random, you have no choice over it. Interestingly enough, this level actually seems to talk to Knox more than any other person who's been here, which means the level is smart enough to develop a relationship, which is kinda cool, I guess. There is one base here called the Dome, and it's where Knox lives. Now, the dome is accessed by tiny crawl spaces, which all lead to this small dome-shaped ceiling room. And like I said, this is where Knox stays, and if you can get there, you should be pretty safe. To enter this level, first off, you shouldn't. But if you can't help it, you have to go, you can no-clip through any floor of a basement type area and be sent here. And to exit, you have to accidentally be no-clipped out. You have no choice, it just randomly happens or it doesn't. And only a few people have been able to do it. So, good luck. The Promised Land is classified as a Class Zero and is extremely safe and secure, and it actually used to be considered a level only in Legends or Tales because no one actually knew if it existed or not. But now it's been pretty much explored extensively, so most of the level is documented. The level itself is a huge building with exactly 300 floors and around 1,000 rooms that are spread throughout. And each floor has these pink glowing lights in the ceilings, which would drive me crazy to be honest, but whatever. These lights have been known to randomly turn on or off, so just be aware of that. And all the floors have windows that look out to the outside area, and when it turns daylight outside, the curtains and the windows will disappear, and a floor made out of clouds will appear directly outside the window. Kind of like the floor of level Zenith. This cloud floor actually has these trees that grows in the ground, and they produce a weird fruit, which you can actually eat. The day-night cycle here is pretty much the same as real life, so the windows disappear during the day, but they'll reappear at nighttime. I mentioned earlier that there are over 1,000 room types, so here are some of them. There are bedrooms, living rooms, kitchens, dining rooms, bathrooms, infirmaries, lounges, shops, an outside area, nightclub area, the business area, and the promised land resort. Each of these areas are pretty much exactly how their name sounds, so I'm not going to describe them. Like, the bedrooms, the bedrooms, the dining rooms, the dining rooms, it's pretty simple. Now a common question asked is, well, where did the promised land come from, or how did it get figured out? Well, according to the fandom, the level's first ever mention was found on a note in level zero near a ripped partygoer's mask. The note said, quote, the last of us are here, and there was a picture of the promised land level next to it. Now, nearby that note, there was a book called the promised land that pretty much had all of the level's explanation inside of it. Obviously, the level is really chill, and as soon as the book was read, rumors of this sanctuary level spread quickly throughout the back rooms. So lots of people tried to get there, but very few did. There are only two entities here, and those are the cloud trees, which I mentioned earlier, and storks. Which are pretty much storks from real life, except they're more intelligent and tameable. As far as bases here, there are actually a few. The first one is the Backrooms Colonists, which is just a conglomerate of colonies that are loosely linked together. Then there are the Forgiven FOJs, which is a group of the followers of Jerry that somehow got to the level. And as always, they're nice unless you talk trash about Jerry. Lastly, there is the Reliquay Outpost. Not sure if that's how you pronounce it. Which is just an outpost of soldiers that fought in a war that actually happened on this level a long time ago called the Summer War. To enter this level, you can dive through a painting on level 384, but just like all of the entrances I'm about to say, it's extremely rare for them to work. And there's also a rumor that no clipping into a pink light on level negative 150 will work, but again, just a rumor. It's thought that you can also fall downstairs on that big, long, numbered level that I went over a few months ago to get here. 
But as always, you just gotta get lucky. To exit this level, you'll actually be exiting the back rooms. So you just gotta find a door labeled exit, and when you walk through that door, you'll be at the same place where you entered the back rooms from. Pretty cool. This might be one of my favorite theorized exits because it's literally so rare. I feel like it's kind of a myth in a way, you know? Pretty cool. Now, unlike most other levels I've covered, there's actually been some documented expeditions to try to find how to get here. There are six expeditions, and the first one was made by four members of the Republic back in 2004. They were sent back to level zero after making it to level 1051. Now, the second and third expeditions were not documented, but the fourth one was. This one was made by seven people from the Backrooms Colonist Group. It happened last year in 2021, and this is marked as the first conclusive successful mission to get to the Promised Land. Because when the group made it to level 384, where that painting is, which by the way is an extremely safe level, a member of the group disappeared. And it's thought that they went through the painting and made it to the Promised Land, and feasibly out of the back rooms. The fifth expedition had five more explorers, no clip into the painting on level 384, and they haven't been heard from since. So it's just thought they either made it, or they're somewhere else. The last expedition had 17 explorers, and it's officially known that four of them are currently in the Promised Land and have not escaped the backrooms. Cool. Backrooms level origin is classified as a class dead zone and is unsuitable for life. Exceedingly unstable, and there is one really powerful entity here. Now, as I said in the intro, this level might not actually exist physically in the bounds of the backrooms per se, because the connections to it are very wishy-washy and tumultuous at best, and they don't often work. This level is very similar to the void level in that it's an apparent infinite empty space that has almost no light at all. There's also no gravity and no physical objects and you'll just be floating around a black void. Oh, and there's also no oxygen and I'll explain more on that stuff in a second. This level is what's called a true vacuum, which means there's legitimately no particles of anything in here besides, you know, if there's a person or something. This also means there is no oxygen or air, so unless you can hold your breath or have oxygen tanks with you for some reason, you might meet your end due to suffocation. So, you actually get to this level, level origin, from the void level by staying in there longer than it's recommended for an hour or so, which in turn means that level origin is a very dangerous and unpredictable level due to the fact that a large amount of objects can randomly be no clipped in and out constantly from the void and since the void is so big and expansive there could be thousands and millions of objects in there they can just teleport into the level of origin so theoretically you could just be floating around level origin and a rogue entity that got stuck in the void could be no clipped right next to you and then eat your feet off or something i don't know this is why level origin origin is indeed considered one of the most dangerous levels of all time. Plus, there are also random rips in the space-time continuum. You know, nothing too crazy. However, it's actually thought that no clipping into one of these rips might send you to reality, but more on that later. Other than the constant stream of things glitching in and out of this area, there's thought to be one single very smart entity that looks over the level and controls it all in some way. And this entity seemingly changes how time itself works. So five seconds in level origin could actually be days out outside of the level. Since there isn't a physical shape to the level that can be seen, like it is in a big square in a big rectangle room or something, it's thought that the shape might be a four-dimensional shape. This would mean objects and stuff will seem to stay in one spot, no matter how far away or how close you get to them. Spooky stuff. On top of that weird stuff, you also won't be able to see any other people that are sent here as well. Even though you'll be able to see almond water bottles, other objects, and entities that get sent here, you won't be able to see actual people, which is a weird common phenomenon in the back rooms. So, so far this level is a vacuum void with no oxygen and objects constantly clipping and no clipping in and out that could hurt you. And there's no way to perceive time or space because the level is 4D and controlled by a crazy entity. Now I'm sure you're asking, well how can that get worse? But oh wait, it can. 
There is a certain anomaly hidden in this level called the doorway, which is an extremely bright rectangle that leaks perfectly white light from inside of it. Now, the structure doesn't seemingly have any depth or dimension to it, it's just a 2D glowing rectangle, but that could also be wrong since the entirety of level origin is 4D and you can't perceive shapes, but this rectangle emits some kind of electromagnetic radiation in bursts. No one knows what's inside the rectangle or what's past it, but it can be assumed that the entity that I've been hinting at lives behind it. And that entity is called the unknown. And now I'm going to explain it. Unknown is a very powerful entity that has the ability to control reality inside of level origin and possibly even further out into other levels as well. It has mild telepathy and can seemingly choose objects to fly in and out of the void and also choose where they go. Unknown can also alter time and space however it wants and it can make hours last seconds and vice versa. And these powers I just said are thought to be just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the full reach of powers the entity might have. It could have a lot more. It's also thought that the entity is tied to some deeper roots in the back rooms and maybe even the creation of it. But all that's just speculation right now, and no one knows for sure. There's a log on this level entry page where some wanderer got sent here and unknown said he had to unalive the wanderer due to a promise. So whatever that means. Creepy stuff. Why did this entity promise he would unalive wanderers? I don't know, man. There are no outposts here, of course, and to enter, you have to be in the void for a long time and get chosen to be sent here by unknown. And to exit, there's probably no true way. But it's thought that you might be able to get sent to real life if you no clip into one of those random space-time continuum vacuums that I talked about. Just a theory, though. It could be totally wrong. Or it could be another fake exit, which the backrooms loves to tease us with. My suggestion is to not go to that white rectangle because I don't believe it's a real exit, but who knows? So Backroom Civil 941, aka Holiday Spirit, is classified as a class 1 difficulty and is safe, secure, and as a small entity count. The level physically looks like a house that's been decorated for Christmas. There's Christmas trees, fireplaces, wreaths, lights, garland, and literally every type of Christmas decoration that you would see in a big fancy house. Now the house itself is way bigger on the inside than it looks on the outside and it has a ton of rooms. But the main thing about this level is the calming feeling that it gives everyone who comes here. Just a relaxing Christmas type of vibe. I mean, how can it get any better? In every room, there is a radio system that plays old Christmas music. And when that's turned on, it just adds to the chillness of the level. Now alongside there being living rooms, there's also kitchens connected to them. These kitchens are full of food, specifically food that you'd find at a traditional American Christmas dinner. Ham, gravy, turkey, mashed potatoes, apple cider, jello, that type of thing. There's also desserts, if anyone's wondering. The food is always fresh and it's always safe to eat. And this level is just getting better and better to me. Now, if you walk out of the kitchen, you'll be in a living room. One of them, at least. They're all massive, and they all have huge Christmas trees in them. All the trees have presents under them, and everything's just fully decorated and maxed out. It's like Christmas threw up all over these rooms. There's actually a few spots in the level where you can find a staircase that goes up. These staircases, of course, are also decorated with garland and lights, but if you walk up the stairs, you'll see some bedrooms and bathrooms, which also are decorated for Christmas. And that's all fun and dandy inside, but you can actually go outside of the house if you want to, and if you do, you'll see a yard that's covered in snow. The level stays around 20 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 6 Celsius, and it's pretty chilly, so you probably should wear a coat. Now, the house itself is actually alone, and it's in the middle of a forest, and there are no other buildings close to you. It's just one normal-looking house that's way bigger on the inside than on the outside, sitting out in the middle of the forest with decorations everywhere. If you do wander into the forest, it doesn't matter how far you do, you'll eventually no-clip back to the front of the house. But you might think the holiday joy stops there. 
Well, you'd be wrong. If you walk down the dirt path that leads to and from the house, you'll eventually walk to a town. Now, you can only do this by finding where the dirt road is, because if you don't go and you just go out to the middle of the woods, you'll get sent back to the house. The dirt road will be covered in snow, but you have to fight it to get to the town. The town itself is a very festive and populated town, and it's populated with faceling entities. Of course, you guessed it, the town is decorated for Christmas. There are shops and buildings, and it looks like a nice older town. The buildings are inside and out decorated, but there are a few specific buildings that I will mention. A food market, a skating rink, and a Christmas tree store. There's even a candy store. But yeah, it's pretty much like a Christmas town. How can you go wrong with a Christmas town? Let's be real. Now, you might think that the holiday joy ends there too, maybe. But again, you'd be wrong. Because if you walk to the end of the road through the town, you'll find a mine. Yes, a mine. And this mine is more like a cave, but inside of it, you'll see a Christmas decoration heaven as well. Hanging lights, presents, garland, everything like that in this mine is just amazing. It's just a Christmas mine. I mean, what else can I say? Inside the mine, there are actually gems that smell like peppermint. That's pretty much it. It's just like Christmas vomited inside of a mine. If you want to go back to the original house from the town or from the mine, all you have to do is walk off the road, back to the woods, and you'll be teleported back to the house, and then you can just chill there as long as you want to. That's where I'd be staying, because I love Christmas, and I couldn't get enough of it. But whatever you do, listen to what I'm about to say. Do not go to this last part of the level, because this spot is dangerous. The last part is the basement, and it can randomly be accessed if a set of downward stairs appears. They're pretty rare, but if they do, do not walk down there because nobody has a clue what's down there. It could be entities, could be nothing but darkness. All we know is that we can't see all the way down. It's just dark. Stay upstairs where it's chill and colorful. I mean, why would you want to leave? But yeah, how can you not love an entire level dedicated to Christmas? If you don't like it, there's a good chance that you're a Scrooge, for real. And who wants to be a Scrooge? Backrooms level negative 69, or the Roads to Abyss, is classified as a class 1A obstructive, which means that it's safe, has no creatures or entities, but has a very strange abstract environment that could be potentially dangerous. The level also has another nickname, which is the Foggy Avenue, because it looks like a huge, expansive landscape of nothing but metropolitan roads, bridges, overpasses, that kind of stuff, with fog everywhere. So, the Foggy Avenue. The level is kind of laid out similarly to a huge dystopian city, but without the buildings. And it's like this because of how many roads there are that overlap each other, go into the ground, come out of the ground. It just seems so awe-inspiringly big. And that thick layer of fog never leaves the level, and it's really just everywhere at all times. It makes it impossible to see to the sky, so no one knows it's up there. And it also makes it really hard to see far in front of you. I mean, you can hardly even see 10 feet in front of you. And the fog itself can be any color, but the main common colors are orangish or bluish. And sometimes a mix of both. The actual architecture here is pretty weird too, because the roads and the bridges are made out of normal concrete and that kind of stuff from real life, but it's all stiff and foreign looking to humans. It looks almost like a blank slate for something that's not done yet, and there's nothing except the roads, signs, stoplights and stop signs and stuff like that, and just this unfinished, unrefined look. On top of all that weird stuff, some of the bridges and overpasses have these really weird geometric patterns carved into the sides of them, which leads some people to speculate that this level wasn't created by humans, that it was created by another race of something, like aliens. Some places look like there should be skyscrapers there or some kind of building, but there's nothing, just a huge concrete slab. And there's no buildings at all on this level. There also aren't any vehicles either. Though the entire level is made up out of roads, there's no cars to be on them, which is cool and weird. Most of the actual roads don't have any visible starting point or stopping point, but there are some that pop out of the ground in random places and go straight up or sideways or right back into the ground. It, uh, it's weird. There are also traffic lights, stop signs, yield signs, intersection signs, and stuff like that placed in extremely random locations as well, and some of the lights aren't even at street corners or intersections, and they're just 
placed in the middle of the road randomly where there wouldn't even need to be a stop sign or stop light. So it makes us all question, what are the purposes of these lights and why are they randomly placed? Some of the roads are looping and twirling. They almost look like roller coasters, which just adds to the confusion of trying to map out this level. But because unlike in normal real life cities where the roads are laid out in grid patterns or similarly recognizable patterns, this level has no pattern. There is no method to this level. It's completely random and you can't even map it out or understand it because there's no usable geometry to do it with. Some think that in the past there might have been a group of people that lived here but fled for some reason, which leaves the level with this sort of post-apocalyptic feel. But that might not be true because there's not any graffiti or anything like that here, or marks in general. In fact, there's not even any chips in the concrete, no potholes, no chunks missing, no weathering of any kind. It doesn't exist here. And since nothing is broken or chipped, and none of the concrete looks sunbaked or broken whatsoever, the level is thought to be maybe invincible to time. Time might not affect stuff here. And the level is also constantly nighttime, so that'll help with not fading things away. The level also has some other anomalous features, which I'm about to get into. The first one is that it is impossible for two people to be sent to the same spot here at the same time. So if you and a friend no clip from a different level to try to get here, you will not end up in the same spot. Even if you no clipped from the same spot, you'll be sent to opposite sides of this level, and this level is infinite, so there's no point in finding them. The next anomalous feature is that fog that I talked about. It's the main anomaly here, well, because it's always there, and because it can change completely in color depending on where you are in the level. It could be in one section and it could be blue, and then 600 feet over, it could be orange. It all depends. The fog also induces this feeling of paranoia and anxiousness, and it makes you feel like you're being watched because you can't really see into it or see past it, so you never know what's lurking in there looking at you. And those feelings of paranoia and stuff like that are amplified when the level starts to randomly play all the music throughout its streets. Yes, that's right. The third anomaly is this random music that comes out of nowhere just when the wanderer is at their most paranoid point. That's when it starts, is when you're getting real paranoid. And that just pushes you right over the edge to insanity, I would say. And these next two anomalies that are the last ones add a really strange level of creepiness to this level. The first one is called the upside down no not stranger things and the other one is called the lights so this upside down is an anomaly where randomly the entire level inverts itself into two halves one half's on the ground and one is in the sky both versions have a gravity field and they can both be walked on if you can somehow get up there but after a few minutes the upside down anomaly will just disintegrate and leave anyone who is up there at the top falling into the void now that's really tough isn't it the last anomaly is the lights, and they look like these sparkling fireworks in the sky. Uh, the cause for them isn't known, and they only happen a few times a year, but uh, no one knows anything about them. So there's not much to say. There are no outposts here, and to enter this level, you can come from the regular level 69, which is just a huge straight road with concrete walls on each side, and to exit, you can get up in the upside down part at the top and fall down into the void to maybe be sent out, we don't know. Or out of nowhere, this level can send you out with no warning to level 413. No one knows how this happens or where it happens or why, it just does, and you can just be randomly sent there. That's pretty neat. So on the Backrooms Wikidot, there are two enigmatic levels called the Whiteout and the Blackout. So I decided to go ahead and cover them both in one video, and I'll start with the Whiteout. This level is classified as a Class 0 and is extremely safe with no entities. It looks like a house, but everything is perfectly white, hence the name Whiteout. This house seems like it's always having repairs done, and it's always under construction, so you might run into some construction tools or stuff like that. The level is also really bright constantly and reflects off of the white surfaces. It's so bright, in fact, that when people come here, they claim to go temporarily blind when they immediately enter. Nice. Now, since the level surfaces are all whites and the light is so bright, wow, I'm rhyming here, it's possible that you could get lost inside the level and maybe forget where you came from. So it is recommended to only stay here for a really short amount of time. It's also important to not stay here for long since the doors to leave the level, to go back to level negative one, will disappear and reappear randomly. 
So you need to find them as fast as possible and don't dilly dally. Like I said earlier, there's no known entities here, but that was kind of a lie because there's one really mysterious entity called the Maker that frequents this level. Although it is thought that he doesn't actually live here, but he's been seen here multiple times. Apparently the guy can talk and he even refers to himself as the Maker and he wears a white suit and sometimes a matching white hat too. Some witnesses say that he actually has a face, although they can't remember what the face looks like, so something weird's happening there. The guy can also walk right through walls with ease and is impervious to any physical contact or anything like that. It just goes right through him. But he is physically there because you can like touch him. No one knows where he gets his power from or how he got to the back rooms, which makes it even more mysterious. But to be honest with you, he sounds cool to me. There's only been one recorded conversation with him by a Meg Explorer, and the Meg Explorer asked, What are you? And the Maker answered, quote, Whatever you think I could be, end quote, and then faded out of existence. That, what? That is cool. There aren't any big bases here, since it's kind of hard to live, you know, with being blind and all. But there are some small communities that meet here, and to enter this level, you have to go through a door on level negative one, but it's not known which door it is, and to exit the level, you have to go out the door that you came in from if it hasn't disappeared yet. That's the only problem, it disappears sometimes, and it'll take you right back to level negative one. So yeah, this level is a level, completely blindingly white. Looks like a house, and there's a random guy in a white suit that appears randomly and fades away randomly. Nice. Now next up obviously is the blackout level, and it's considered to be a parallel level to the whiteout. It's classified as a class 5, so it's really dangerous, and has creatures, which completely contrast the whiteout. And it mirrors the whiteout level in its specific design and layout, but instead of it being perfectly white, it's an abandoned, nasty house covered in cobwebs and broken floorboards. Smilers and hounds are the main entities here that roam the halls, but sometimes random voices have been heard echoing down the hallways, so there might be something else down there. There's also been reports of random screaming, so uh, yeah. The windows on this level can actually be looked out of, unlike the whiteout level, where if you look out those windows, you'll just see white. Here, you'll see a field at nighttime. You can't break the window to go out there and explore, but the field is the exact same location and thing you see out of every window, so it might be a fake thing, but we don't know. Sometimes wanderers report looking out those windows and seeing tall shadows with white eyes walking around, which is scary to say the least. The level also has a level exclusive entity called the Bride. She looks like a pale ghost in a wedding gown and normally just follows people around the level. She's sometimes heard and even been seen crying in random rooms. So that's kind of sad. The maker entity from the whiteout seems to have some sort of connection to the bride because there's pictures of them together on the blackout level, but he's never been seen physically here. So like, maybe they're not able to get to each other. I don't know. There's no basis here and every group that comes here hasn't made it out to tell the tale, because it's really dangerous from the entities. And the only way to enter the level is to go really deep into the whiteout until you find a gray door that opens up to the blackout, and when you go through it, it shuts and locks itself. And there really isn't even a confirmed exit, so it looks like you're doomed to wander the smiler and hound infested halls with the ghost bride crying lady following you. Sounds fun to me. So, Backrooms Level Vitrum Madness is classified as a Class 1 difficulty and is safe and secure, but there are a couple psychological issues that might come up later, but I'll discuss those in depth in a minute. The level itself was discovered way back on April 30th, 1934, and the first known picture of this level, which is this one, was that same day, and it literally might be the first ever picture taken in the Backrooms. This picture looks way different than the level does now, 
which means that the level somehow changed its environment over time. Cool. The level itself is made up of linear corridors made out of greenhouses, or conservatories. These greenhouses look like they're meant to host some kind of event, because a lot of them have tables and chairs and furniture that look like people were sitting in them. The floor in these greenhouses are made out of stone, and a long stone pathway runs through each of them. But sometimes there's a wall of glass, or just the greenhouse wall ends, and they won't connect properly. But that's whatever. If you look outside of the glass walls to see where the level takes place, it's definitely not where you think it would be, because the level seems to be positioned inside of an empty, obscure sky. Like there's just nothing, it's floating up in a misty void. Now some people think there are support beams under it, and some people think it's just floating. No one can agree on what's holding it up, so just believe whatever you want to. Now on your journey through the greenhouses, you'll eventually run into one that's filled to the brim with plants. Specifically, flowers, and there will be bouquets and ferns and that type of thing everywhere. Most of them seem to look like flower shops from real life, and some even have welcome signs and checkout places too, even though they're all empty. Most of the signs and tags are weird though, because they're either blank or have blurred text. But yeah, who knows? It's the back rooms. What else did you expect? Now the tables I mentioned earlier that look like people were sitting at them, most of them actually have plates of food on them, and some of the plants in the greenhouses also grow what looks to be edible food. But whatever you do, do not eat anything you see here, no matter how good or how normal it looks, because if you eat something, you'll start to develop sharp body pains that could lead to cardiac arrest. So no matter how hungry you are, do not eat anything. I repeat, do not eat anything. The weather and climate inside of this level stays pretty normal throughout the whole year and throughout most of the greenhouses. It hovers anywhere from 15 to 20 degrees Celsius, or 59 degrees to 68 Fahrenheit, so it's a comfortable temperature. But there's something else that you might need to watch out for, and that is the rain showers. These rain showers are very common in this level, and they actually happen about every hour. Sometimes though, a heavy storm can pop up with thunder and lightning, but it's normally just a misty rain. And this misty rain makes it extremely relaxing. It also makes the entire place smell like almond water. But no one knows if the rain is almond water, or if it's just a coincidence. Now I'm sure you're asking yourself, you know, why doesn't someone just try to break the glass and see what's outside? Well the answer is, you can't. You cannot break the glass, it's indestructible, no matter what's been tried, no one can break it. So for now, we'll go with the theory that this is just an infinite floating greenhouse. The level has a constant sound of slight drizzling and the atmosphere feels damp and cool, and to be honest, it seems like just a really relaxing place to sit in the chair and chill. But. You might not want to do that, because now it's time to talk about the psychological issues that I hinted at earlier. So after a short amount of time in this level, you'll start to hear music softly playing off in the distance. This music is very captivating and calming, and it's actually addictive to listen to. The source of the music is unknown, but some people have theories about it. Some posit that it's a hallucination, that you're just hearing things, but then again, there's been audio recordings of the level that show that the music is real because it's in the recording. Some people think that the music comes from an undocumented entity hiding deep in the greenhouse somewhere that tries to lure you in closer. But none of that has been confirmed. For all we know, it could just be music randomly playing. Whatever you do though, do not let the music pull you really deeply into the level because people have never been seen again once they've gone chasing after it. The next psychological issue is this thing called the Vitrum Madness, which is actually the name of the level, of course, but that's also the name of a madness or a psychological disorder that happens only on this level. This is a psychological phenomenon that literally only happens when you're on this level. It causes you to hallucinate or actually see things we don't know. Some people have reported seeing an expansive, thriving environment outside of the glass walls of the greenhouses. Which which, like I said earlier, there's supposed to be nothing outside of these walls, it's just a white void. So this madness and this psychological phenomenon is causing people to see things that aren't there. Once they see this environment with their own eyes, they start to break down psychologically and they'll have mental breakdowns and have panic attacks and that kind of thing. They go crazy. 
So yeah, there's definitely some funky stuff happening in this level. Just watch out when you get here and try not to go crazy. Go check out the full article in the description if you want to know all about this madness syndrome, because there's way more stuff that I couldn't cover in this video. It's too long. But if you're interested, go check below. Getting to this level with someone or a group of people is apparently impossible because the entrances have been tried with groups and none of it works. <laughs> so yeah, good luck with being lonely. It's also important to note that entering this level normally happens by accident because no one purposely comes here. It normally just so happens to be an accident. The same goes with leaving. It's all accidental. There's only one entity that lives here and it's this thing. It's called the Philodose or Philodose, I think is how you say it. And they live in the soil inside the flower pots of this level. They normally stay really chill and just look like big slug worm type deals. But if you try to cause harm or cut them or something, they'll rapidly grow larger and try to attack you. Uh, yeah, wish I was making that up, but I'm not. It's really hard to enter this level and it's kind of like a roadblock for people who are trying to get past it to explore more of the back rooms. But there are about 10 confirmed entrances that have worked before. However, at any given time, none of them could be working. One is from level zero. You have to find a glass door that's just in a wall there. And there are nine other ways to enter too. You can check them out in the description. Now to exit, there's only been two confirmed ways, and one of them is if you suddenly lose consciousness and pass out, you might wake up on level 45, or you could just randomly be walking and just wake up on level 14. That's all we got. There's literally no real confirmed exit. Those are just where people have gone, we think. It's hard to leave this place, so I just recommend not going. Up first for the video is a level that a ton of people over on my Discord server have sent me in the past few days. If you want to join the Discord, it'll be in the description. And I literally thought that it was a joke at first, but apparently it's real. And it's Backrooms level 756, aka, quote, On Big Island live only one cow. End quote. Yes, that's exactly what it's called. Level 756 is classified as a class zero difficulty, so it's pretty safe and you won't really have to worry about any entities except the cow. The level is split up into eight different islands that are apparently floating in a void of fog and mist. And there are sometimes oak trees on the islands, but mainly they're just made up of grass and dirt. The island that's in the very middle of this cluster is actually smaller than a regular city block, and the rest of the islands surround it in a circular pattern, and they're all connected by these rope bridge things that you've all seen before. The first weird thing about this level, minus its name, is that there's a distorted sound of piano music being played constantly on the level from an unknown source. And no, it's not the cow. People who have actually been here say that the music calms them down, and they actually refer to it as relaxing and melancholic. Nice. There's even an account of a wanderer saying that the level makes all of your thoughts and memories of your real life fade away, and then the level overwhelms you with the feeling that you're just a small speck in the sea of existence. That's pretty weird, if you ask me. The level has no entities except for that one single cow that lives in the middle island. The cow only notices people, it doesn't actually interact with them, and it never even moves from the spot it's in. It just stands there in the same position and looks at people. Some people have actually touched the cow and they say that when they did that, an overwhelming sense of sadness washes over them. So Brugley says don't touch the cow. There isn't a confirmed entrance to this level, but it is known that when people come here, it's sudden and quick and random. And most of the time, people who come here have been reportedly not right in the head before they were here. So spooky. And when people get here to exit, they typically just lay on the grass and eventually fall asleep, which then makes them wake up in their bed, feeling content with life and much happier. So yeah, I mean, it's a cool level. It's pretty weird, but it's cool. But it's really weird. The next level for today's video is level 409, aka the Paper Rooms. This level has a class 1 survival difficulty and is relatively safe. The level is a massive expanse of rooms that are changing all the time, but are completely made out of paper, like the paper you write on. The walls are literally just two pieces of paper thick. 
and this means that the walls themselves can easily be broken and are really fragile so anyone can just tear them or rip them or do whatever they want to it's just paper the level is said to look kind of like level zero but with slight differences in the wallpaper design and layout but obviously the main difference is that the walls here can just be torn down by anybody the ceiling on this level is actually a perfectly white void that also emits a kind of light for the level. Apparently, the light's really bright. And the floor of this level is actually made out of cardboard, which is just barely more durable than the paper walls and can easily be torn into. And actually, if you break through the cardboard, you'll be able to see down into level 410. So that's pretty cool. This cardboard is actually a resource that's harvested for the base here called Fort Origami. Yep, that's right. The paper rooms has a base called Fort Origami. Creative. Fort Origami is the only big group here on level 409, and they're set up in a huge open area that they made by tearing down paper walls to have a huge open room. There's 19 people in the whole base, but there's actually a subgroup inside of this group that's about six people, and those six people travel around to different levels, searching for supplies and food to keep the entire 19 people alive. And they apparently chose to set up shop on this level to avoid the clutter of other levels. Based? The next group on this level isn't really a group, but it's a BNTG outpost. It's called BNTG Outpost Intercia, which is just a settlement set up by the BNTG group while they finish a full base here. It's located on the outskirts of the level and it houses supplies, weaponry, food, clothing, just, you know, typical stuff. But it's like a temporary base until they get their full base up and going. There's actually one entity here, believe it or not, and it's called the Folds. These things are large pieces of paper that from far away look like crumbled up jumbles of paper. But when you get closer, you can see that each fold is deliberate and that it's not one piece of paper, it's individual cards. These cards no-clip through each other and end up making non-Euclidean shapes, which is supposedly mesmerizing and even hypnotic in a way to people passing by because the cards themselves will slowly rotate and fold in on themselves and create this sort of hypnosis thing. The fold entity is completely harmless and they have been seen repairing the broken walls or floors on this level. And they've even been heard singing to wanderers as they pass by. That's right, singing. And on top of this, they're actually invincible because the paper that makes them up can heal itself when it's torn. So if you like tear a piece off of a fold, it'll literally just grow back instantly. So don't try to break one. To enter this level, you can find a set piece on level 104 that's made completely out of paper and you just go into that set piece and look away from the exit door and you'll be sent here. You can exit this level by a couple ways, one of them being breaking it directly through the floor and jumping into level 410, or you can just go through a random door that'll open up to exit to level 1 or any other random level. Yeah, I think this is pretty weird. It's literally level 0 but made completely out of paper with a cardboard floor. I mean, that just seems creepy. Backrooms level 11.3, or the Red Light District, is classified as a class 5 difficulty and is very unsafe and unsecure, and it is infested with entities. But not the normal ones, I'll tell you about it in a few minutes. But it's always good when a level starts out that way, isn't it? This level is a dark and sinister and cryptic corrupt cityscape that's thought to be located somewhere near the regular level 11. The level itself looks like a huge city with a creepy red glow coming from the sky. Even the actual air itself in this level is toxic, and it can lead to visual and audio hallucinations. The middle of the city has tall skyscrapers and bridges, and the outside of the city has warehouses and apartment buildings and other private areas, all of which are abandoned. And the deeper you go into the level, the denser and more convoluted and confusing the concrete maze of buildings becomes. And this maze of buildings can be extremely confusing because, you know, the air is toxic and the streets 
are like a maze and entities are swarming you. All this adds up to a pretty confusing level. But trust me when I say that it gets worse. The weather and the temperature of this level can range anywhere from being sweaty and muggy to being freezing and snowing in just a few minutes. That's right. It can go from literally 100 degrees to like 20 degrees. During the snowstorms and heat waves, there is sometimes red lightning that strikes in the distance over the city. This sudden change in weather and the lightning can also be very dangerous if you stay out in it for too long. Now so far, every building that's been searched into has been completely empty and barren. Almost like it's been picked through already before, so no one knows if there was once any people living here, or if it's just been taken over by others already. But as far as we know, the level just got discovered. So Now as I said in the beginning, this level is infested with entities. But it's mainly just one single entity called the Servants. Now, these Servants are semi-humanoid creatures creatures that have ashy dark skin with red colored eyes. They seem to have some kind of social class system where some are dressed better than others and some are less aggressive than others, some live in better buildings than others, but the servants are called the servants because they serve a more powerful race of entity called the ambassadors, which I'm going to make an entire entity short on, but pretty much the ambassadors are these sentient floating alien-like cubes that are very, very old and smart, and they can control things in very strange ways. Like, these things go deep into the history of the backrooms, and they seem to have been there since the existence of it, and they control the servant entities here. Most of the servants here are not instantly aggressive when they see a person, but if you get in their way or you make them mad or something, then, yeah, they're gonna get mad, and they're probably gonna chase you. And when they do get angry, they will try to lure you or chase you and corner you into a dark alleyway and trap you there. And when you're stuck in this alleyway, they use your fear and your paranoia to harm you into being so scared that you can't move. And once you're that scared, they'll then attack and they'll restrain you. But they won't fully unalive you, in fact, they will take you somewhere alive. No one knows where it is, but the wiki.entry literally says, quote, do not be taken alive, end quote. Maybe they take humans and transform them into whatever they are, or something like that. Either way, it's pretty terrifying to think what they do to people who they capture. There's a recovered audio log on the entry that might give some clues onto what the servants do with people or what they even are. So go check that out if you're interested. It's pretty cool. And in the audio, there is an ambassador entity that talks to the person and it says, you have two options. You can pledge loyalty and serve, or you can try to resist and be enslaved as a mindless tool for eternity. So I'm pretty sure I was right about them capturing humans. It seems like the ambassadors capture people and turn them into these servants to do their bidding for them. It's pretty creepy stuff. It's kind of like doomsday in a way. There's also been really weird books found in this level that talk about a huge thing called the red capital, which apparently is a red rot type of substance that is a curse to all upcoming civilizations. The books also talk a lot about the ancient civilizations of the backrooms and the people that have been here forever, and they show pictures of very weird architecture and people worshipping the ambassadors. Just a ton of really weird, creepy, cryptic stuff. The ambassador cube entities I mentioned earlier seem to go to this one specific building deep into the maze of skyscrapers here. The building has been nicknamed the Embassy, and it's heavily defended by servants, so no one knows what goes on inside of it. All that's known is that a weird hum comes out of it. So this is the back rooms. None of it makes sense. And that's exactly why it's amazing. To enter this level, you can come from level 11, the regular one, by walking to the outskirts of the city and no clipping into a dark alleyway. Or you can find anything that's a little more red than normal in level 11 and no clip through it. To exit, you have to run as far away from the center of the city as possible until you find some sort of bridge that goes over the water. And these bridges are said to lead back to the regular level 11, but there are tons of servants guarding them, so uh, good luck! Level 981, or False Tranquility. Level 981 is classified as a class dead zone because of a bunch of environmental dangers and an anomalous, powerful entity that lives here that I'll talk about in a second. 
The level itself looks pretty safe, actually, when you first get here. You'll see a nice scenic sidewalk that has cherry blossom trees on each side and fresh green grass as well. This path goes on forever in forward direction and the backwards direction, so you're just taking a nice stroll in this level, right? Wrong. At the beginning, you'll think this level is safe until you start to stay here for longer. Because once you stop looking at those pretty trees, you'll notice that you can't actually leave the path to get to the grass, so you're kind of stuck on this one sidewalk, and that there's an invisible barrier keeping you on this sidewalk. You'll also start to feel electricity in the air, and this electric field around you, and then after about 10 minutes of feeling that stuff, those cherry blossom trees will emit a toxin into the air that's extremely dangerous. When you breathe in this toxin, which you literally will have to, because you can't run away, you're stuck on the sidewalk, you'll start to notice a change in the level. A very dark change, you could say. It's pretty trees and grass in the sky will change to empty trees, dead grass, and a gray sky, and every alive thing from earlier will start to look decayed. The nice path you were on will turn into an old wooden plank path, and it's rotting and cracking and full of termites. After an hour of being exposed to this toxin and on this level, you'll start to get very, very paranoid about everything. The trees will start to look like they're moving around and walking and trying to grab you, and the pathway will look different too. And scariest of all, you'll start to see a figure dashing between trees on each side of the path. It's moving so fast that you really can't see what it is, but you kinda can, just not for sure. And this figure is called the Pestilence Keeper. Almost nothing is known about this entity's motives or about the entity in general, but what is known is that it's a pretty tall humanoid shape that has a huge swarm of bugs that make up the outside of its body. The entity is seemingly waiting for you to give up from all the paranoia and craziness that you're experiencing from this toxin and to just lay down and stop moving moving so it can attack you. Now once this entity starts dashing around, everything in the level is starting to go pitch black. The ground is covered in tar and the grass isn't even there anymore, and the sky is brown and black, and everything is fully decomposed. And the Pestilence Keeper is slowly walking towards you as the level decomposes around you. Nice. There is no outpost here, obviously, and to enter this level you have to fall asleep on level 39 under a cherry blossom tree, and to exit, well good luck finding one. When you hop on the internet at your own house, your personal IP address is sent up into the cloud to whatever website you're on, and people or companies or spyware and whatever can literally see where you're at. They know you're there, which is why today's sponsor, NordVPN, comes in so clutch when it comes to protecting yourself online. When you use NordVPN, your personal IP is masked and it's hidden from all these malicious ads or spyware or hackers and whatnot. You can set your IP to pretty much anywhere you can think of by just selecting a country on the list. So if I go over here and I click connect to the UK, everything online will think I'm from the UK. And the best part is NordVPN will protect you without even slowing down your internet or your gaming or your streaming services. So you can do all those things worry-free of malicious people and worry-free of lag. It's 2022, y'all. Everybody should be using a VPN, and NordVPN is a great one to use. And if you want to support my channel, go to nordvpn.com forward slash brugly, and you'll get a massive discount on the two-year plan. And you get four additional months completely free. There's also no stress because you can try Nord risk-free thanks to their 30-day money-back guarantee. So check out Nord nordvpn.com forward slash brugly to get protected thank you nordvpn for sponsoring this video and let's get back to it shall we Next up for the video is level 145230 from Miko Zero over on Discord. This level is also known as level Railway Runout, and it's classified as a class 3 difficulty, with it being unsafe and unsecure, with a pretty high entity count, honestly. The actual level is an infinite railroad with trains that run along it constantly. This railroad cuts through scenic wilderness, streams, hills, and valleys, and overall just dense forests. However, when you get to the level, you don't actually spawn on the train, you'll be in the wilderness near it, where all the entities are. 
The train itself is moving decently fast, but you can manage to get onto it if you grab a handle and just jump on. And then if you do that, you'll be safe from the entity hordes in the woods. The weather here is always cold and snowy, and the sun never fully rises. It's stuck at sunrise forever. And as I mentioned just now, the wilderness around the train is covered in creatures like hounds, smilers, skin givers, and other common ones in the back rooms. But you can avoid them by getting on the train. The entire higher level is infinite, and it seems that new wilderness keeps being made over and over again. It keeps being generated. The inside of the train looks like a cozy retro interior with tables and booths, and overall, it's pretty relaxing. It's kind of like the train from Polar Express. To enter this level, you can jump through a window on level 4, and to exit, you have to get on the train and make your way to the front to find the stopping emergency brake, and then if you pull it, you'll be sent out. But yeah, this one was a super liminal space type level. I really liked it, and I hope you did too. Next for the video is Level Heaven from Capitan Pavel. This level has a survival difficulty of zero and is safe and secure with no creatures. Level Heaven looks like an endless swirling maze of hallways and walls and roofs, all of them being made out of glass. The floor of the level is light gray and is the only thing that isn't actually glass. Since the walls and the ceilings are see-through, well, you can see outside, and what you'll see is a very relaxing, pretty sky. And in the sky, you'll see clouds and that kind of deal, and it's normally perfectly blue. There are not any entities in this level, it's just you and hundreds of miles of huge glass hallways looking out over an infinite sky pretty chill if you ask me. To enter this level, well this is when it gets tricky because you have to unalive. Which is actually why this place is called Heaven, because there is a small chance that you'll be sent here if you do unalive in the back rooms. Because no one really knows where a person goes if they kick the bucket in the back rooms. But it is known that being sent to this level, Heaven, is a possibility. To exit the level, you have to walk for miles and miles until you find a black door which will just randomly appear. Once you find that black door, you have to open it up and you'll be sent out of the level. Pretty neat, but I wouldn't try to unalive just to come here. And lastly for this video is Level Moon Beach from Izzy. Level Moon Beach is classified as a class 1 survival difficulty and is safe and secure and is pretty vibey. The level is split into a few different islands with one main one being the center of attention. And this main island is full of lush plants and sand and all of it is covered in different shades of blue. The sky in the level only has a moon in it. No stars, no clouds, just a moon. Which never moves and it never changes changes and it casts a blue glow onto everything below it. There's actually a few abandoned villages on some of the other islands that surround the main one, and the houses in those villages are made out of a stone called Blue Stone, which has never been found anywhere else except here. It's indestructible and it glows faintly blue, like all the other things here, and it's kind of worshipped by the entities that live here. There is one specific entity that worships them, and it's the only entity that lives here, and there is no name for this entity, but they're medium-sized humanoids that are bald and they wear rags. So, kind like a monk or something. These creatures seem to worship the blue moon in the sky, and they have this blue moon relic stone thing in their camps that they're very protective of. They kind of worship it and pretend like it's a god or something. Very interesting. They're pretty nice if you don't ag them on, you know, you don't want to rough them up or anything, but in passing, they're pretty chill. To enter this peaceful level, you have to find some objects that are shaped like a crescent moon on any other level and touch it and you'll be sent here. But yeah, that was a pretty peaceful level if I do say so myself. However, I don't really trust the cult that much. So level Globophobia, or level Balloon, as the normies call it, is a scary expanse of hallways that are partially or fully filled with balloons. The balloons here have been reported to be any color, from red to blue to yellow to green, you get the point. They're all colors. Now the actual balloons themselves are in very strange spots on the level. I don't know if you've ever let a balloon go in your house or something, but if you do that, they'll typically just float up to the ceiling, because they're full of helium. But the ones here 
can literally be anywhere. They could be floating in the middle of hallways, on the floor, stuck to the wall, and just literally in the most random places possible, with seemingly no explanation of why they're there. And the ones that are stuck to surfaces like walls and ceilings and floors are really stuck. Like, it's gonna be extremely hard or impossible to pull them off that structure. And there's not even any tape or glue or anything holding them there. They're just naturally stuck. Weird. Now, with all that out of the way, I can finally talk about the physical level itself and the balloons. To be honest, this level is something that you might see in a nightmare. It's a winding, snake-like structure of interconnected hallways with stucco walls, which are just like plaster, and then wooden floors. It seems like a place that you'd be running away from something inside of a nightmare or a dream, except you aren't dreaming here, you're actually here, so good luck. Anyways, the colors of the walls can also range from red to yellow to green to blue, just like the colors of the balloons, which actually kind of adds to that weird trippiness of the level. As far as we know, the level actually does abide by regular Euclidean geometry, which means there's no crazy things where you can walk one way and end up the other way, but that does not change the fact that you'll probably get lost while exploring this level and this is mainly because the hallways are so twisty and turny and interconnected and unpredictable and weird structures of staircases everywhere it just makes it extremely hard to explore and map and if you're with a group you're 100 percent gonna get split up somehow there's also weird staircases that connect to more hallways that then connect to more doors that open to more hallways and since it's all so colorful and trippy and filled with balloons it can be very easy to find yourself lost so as you probably guessed by now, the word globophobia itself means the fear of balloons, which typically might make somebody have anxiety or throat tightening and such if they see balloons, but that fear is something that everyone here on this level will have, even if you don't have it in real life. And it's not only because the balloons are scary that it might pop, it's because the balloons might be creatures and entities themselves. We don't know. More on that in a bit though. But the main reason this is scary and you'll have this globophobia here is because the level gets so terrifying in the deeper and darker part of it because there are sections of this level in the hallways with no windows and in those sections it'll be a hundred percent dark and you can only imagine how scary it would be to walk through a massive section of hallways that are completely dark with weird floating balloons all around you it would kind of feel like that scene from Finding Nemo when they go through those cluster of jellyfish. You know what I'm talking about. So these dark zones actually have a specific name on the level, and they're called Globophobia Zones. Very unique name, I know. But you should never, ever, under any circumstance, ever go to the Globophobia Zones because it's pretty much just a death wish. But if you absolutely have to go through a Globophobia Zone, or if you're lost, or if you find yourself in a hallway, whatever you do, don't touch anything, just walk straight and try to avoid them. It might be impossible because some of the Globophobia phobia zones actually have balloons everywhere like it's impossible to not touch one but if there's a possible way to get past them without touching you have to take that way and the reason is if a person makes contact with any balloon they will instantly be pulled into the darkness in front of them by a pair of hands that seems to be covered in paint and these hands just reach out of the darkness and grab instantly that person that touches a balloon Whatever these hands are connected to is just out of sight inside the darkness, and no one really knows what they're connected to. They could just be random hands, or they could be entity hands. My theory is that they're entity hands. Apparently, this has happened many times to pairs or groups of people who have gotten lost in this level, which is a terrifying way to lose a friend. Nobody has ever been seen again once they've gotten yanked into the darkness by those hands, and it seems that the only way to avoid getting ripped into the darkness and never seen again is to just not touch the balloons. Now, as you might expect, there are several theories about this level and why it behaves the way it does and why it attacks you. And of course, since theories are my favorite things about the back rooms, I'll be getting into them right now. So theory one is that the balloons themselves are alive. Now, there's actually pretty decent evidence to support this theory, since balloons have been used by party goers in the back rooms before to lure people towards their imminent demise. And it's also been thought that balloons themselves are carnivorous. And there's an entity called the carnivorous balloons that pretty much just lure you to them and then eat you, which is always fun, I guess. But people think that the balloons here get mad when you touch them or they trigger something when you touch them and it just triggers those hands to reach out of the darkness to grab you, kind of like a reflex. As I just mentioned, there's also been whispers of a balloon entity that floats around and bites you when you walk past it and these things are known to have like big mouths and sharp teeth and glaring eyes when you look at them for long enough. 
But when you just pass them regularly, you can't really see anything besides just a balloon. So who knows if that's what the balloons are here or if it's just a coincidence. We don't know. The next theory is that the level itself is alive. So this definitely plays into that first theory that I just talked about, but it takes it a step further by saying that the entire level works together like a body or an entity to eat victims, or you, or your friend in this case. There are plenty of other levels that are sentient and alive and exist as one massive creature, so it definitely wouldn't be too crazy for that to be the case here. The hallways themselves could be the trap. You could walk into that trap and accidentally touch the balloons, which could be bait. And then when you touch the bait, it triggers the trap to close on you, which would be the hands closing on you. So it kind of does make sense. But let me know which theory you think is right about the level in the comments. Are the balloons carnivorous entities that eat people? Are the hands connected to the balloon somehow? Or is the entire level itself alive with one single goal? To capture and to consume poor wanderers like you who gets in here. Let me know in the comments below what your theory is on that. And also let me know if you would have your birthday party here. Because I feel like that'd be pretty fun. Just kidding, it definitely like would not be fun at all. If you just watched the entire 10 hours of that, thank you so much. Wow, that's actually crazy. Uh, hopefully you didn't have anything to do interesting about 10 hours. I love and appreciate you all. Thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity to explore this amazing internet creepypasta. Once again, if this gets 80,000 likes, I'll do a 24-hour one next year. I don't know if it'll get that much. I don't even know if I have a video with that much, but a guy can wish. Thank you all so much. I love and appreciate you all, and I will see you in the next video.